Chapter 81 More Elk Cats Uh, it seems okay. Meow. They didn't fall to the ground together as expected, but as if they hit a soft sponge. After a bounce, what long was unharmed. It turns out that big breasts also have such benefits. Naya. As for Catherine herself, although she was hit by Wolong, she still relied on her own strength to catch Wolong steadily. She only took half a step back and completely stabilized her figure. This is probably because Catherine often used the big sword to block during this period. She used the big sword to block the enemy's attack. And the force of the opponent's attack would also be transmitted to herself through the big sword. She seemed to have no idea how to do this. I already have a considerable amount of experience in resolving the impact force transmitted through the body, and how to transfer these forces to the ground through the body as quickly as possible to reduce the load on the body, and being able to do this without knowing it. It should be said that he is quite talented, Wolong thought in his heart. Wow, Mr. Cat, it's great that you're okay. I'm so worried. Seeing that Wolong was okay, Catherine hugged Wolong tightly again. Wait a minute, I'm going to be out of breath again. Naya. At this time, Wen Long finally understood the reality that every time Catherine hugged him hard, his body felt even more uncomfortable than when he had just bumped into Catherine's arms. In other words, Catherine's strength holding her has actually exceeded the strength of the rapid impact just now. Oh meow! After hugging me so many times, I was not strangled to death by this woman. Is it because of the buffer? Thinking of this, Wen Long broke into a cold sweat. Okay, stupid woman. Let me go! Meow! Wolong struggled and jumped out of Catherine's arms. After landing, Wolong looked around and found that the dark green-haired Wanli bachelor named Lindy's did not seem to be beside Catherine. Woman! Where is the Wanli bachelor named Lindy's? Meow? Wolong asked. Sister Lindy's has rushed back to take care of Mr. Claude, but she said that she will visit later when she has time. She hopes to discuss the topic of Star Dragon with you. Catherine replied. Have you already gone back? At this time, Da Hui and Xiao Hui also rushed over. It's great that the hero is okay. Meow, Big Hui said. If the hero is injured, we will really blame ourselves for the rest of our lives. Meow, Xiao Hui said. Humph, how could I be so easily injured? Wenlong said. Okay, this mission is completed. We have to rush back to Milad Village to hand in the mission right away. Meow, is the hero going back to Milad Village? Big Hui and Xiao Hui suddenly said together. At this time, Wolong noticed that Big Hui and Xiao Hui were staring at him, as if they had something to say. So Wolong said, What else can you do if you don't go back to Milad Village? Do you think there is something wrong with you? Meow? No. No. We definitely don't dare to trouble you. The Hui said. It's just that Xiao Hui and I just discussed it, and we both decided that we want to follow the hero. Meow? Yes. I think so too. It would be our greatest honor to be with the hero. Meow. Xiao Hui also said. You want to follow me? My uncle? Seeing Da Hui and Xiao Hui seriously asking to follow him, Wen Long began to weigh the pros and cons in his heart. It just so happens that the farm needs someone to take care of it in the future. And it is also necessary to recruit two Elu cats. Moreover, these two Elu cats can be selected as members of the Hunter Guild Elu Cat Rescue Team. They must be very brave people. In this way, in the future even if I go out hunting, the farm is not afraid of monsters coming to cause trouble. Of course, hiring El Cat also requires payment of wages. But that small amount of money is nothing compared to the money I can make in the future. It's just... After thinking for a while, Wenlong asked again, But what about your work in the Hunter Guild? You can't become the El Cat Rescue Team of the Hunter Guild casually. Right. Is it really okay to lead the El Cat Rescue Team and follow me like this? Meow? No problem. We have considered it carefully. In the entire Elecat world, you are the only one who has achieved such great achievements. If we don't follow you, who can we follow? Meow. Duh we said. Then shall we also added. And because of our mistake, the flatbed truck used for work has been crashed just now. If we go back to the Hunter Guild now, we will definitely be scolded again. It is better to follow the hero, and you will have a better future. Meow. Well, that's it. I understand what you are thinking, but I have to say ugly things in front of you. It will not be easy to follow me. And if you don't do well, I will punish you. Fired. Meow. Please rest assured. Hero. We will do our best. Meow. Dahui and Xiao Hui responded to Wen Long in unison. Well, 
Very good. Then from now on you will be my subordinates. Meow. At this time, Catherine on the side also came over. Hey, Mr. Cat is also going to accept El Cat? What? Do you have any objections to my hiring two younger brothers? Of course not. The more cute El Cats the better. Catherine said. I have wanted many El Cats a long time ago. But I was a little worried that you, Mr. Cat, would be unhappy. What can I be unhappy about? Meow? One long asked in confusion. Because I'm afraid that if I hold other El Cats in my arms, Mr. Cat, you will be jealous. No. 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 I'm not jealous. And if you want to hold me in your arms, it's impossible for an ordinary Ella cat to be able to hold it. Meow. Wen Long explained quickly. Don't worry. Mr. Cat. My arms are only open for you. Because Mr. Cat is my favorite. Really? But I told you that I'm not jealous. If you want to hire a few L cats to do odd jobs, as long as our income allows, I won't have any problem with it. There's really no need to worry. I won't hire other Elkits. As long as Mr. Cat is there. That's enough. I'm really not jealous. And I'm not worried at all. Meow. In this way. Wen Long and Catherine kept arguing while walking back to Milad village. And behind them. Big Hui and Xiao Hui were also whispering. The relationship between Hirosama and Miss Catherine is really good. Naya. Well. I have to say that we have a really harmonious relationship. Naya. Chapter 82 Investigation Task Delivery By the time when Long and Catherine returned to Milad Village, it was already evening. A few minutes before the Hunter Guild's office in Milad Village took a break, when Long and Catherine came to the receptionist Sasha. The mission has been completed. The monster that caused the mutation this time is Star Dragon. Meow. When Long said, Star Dragon? Is it really the legendary Star Dragon? When she heard this term, Sasha clearly showed an expression of disbelief. It felt as if she had heard something incredible. Yes, it is the appearance of the powerful dragon-shaped creature called Star Dragon that has squeezed the living space of other creatures that originally lived here. As a result, monsters deep in the forest are constantly invading the surrounding areas of Milad Village. Meow. The Star Dragon is a legendary creature. No one has seen or hunted it before. So this report alone is not enough. Is there anything that can prove your discovery? Of course. The thing is right here. Naya. As he spoke, Wen Long opened his palm, revealing a scale like fiery red glass in the middle of his palm. These are the scales of the star dragon that I have never seen before. But please wait a moment. So Sasha took out a thick information book, opened the book, and turned to one of the pages. There was a pattern of star dragon scales on the page. Although it's just a scale. Overall the scales about the star dragon recorded in this ancient book seem to be the same. Well, congratulations on completing this mission. I will go get the gold coins for you right away. With that said, Sasha turned and walked towards the storage room in the back. Not long after, Sasha came back again, holding a small bag in her hand. Here are 20 gold coins. Please count them in person. Otherwise you will not be held responsible if you leave the counter. No need. It's only 20 gold coins. It's better than nothing. Meow. With that said, Wen Long took the bag from Sasha's hand and put it into his pocket. Indeed, to Wen Long now, 20 gold coins were nothing. So after collecting the gold coins, Wen Long was ready to turn around and leave. Please wait a moment. Sasha suddenly said, Because you have completed this investigation mission, the Hunter Guild's recognition of you has also improved a lot. So I wonder if you are interested in continuing to take on new promotion missions? Oh. The King Wen Long seemed to realize something, and then asked, In the past, we always discouraged us from accepting promotion tasks. Why do you suddenly want us to accept promotion tasks this time? Meow? I was worried about your safety before. So I hope you can accept the mission more safely. After all, there are too many cases where some people fail missions or even lose their lives because they can't see their own strength clearly. But it's different now. You have completed a lot of tasks that two-star and even three-star hunters have not completed. So I have the confidence to give these tasks to you. And it is also very beneficial for you to upgrade your hunter level as soon as possible. Firstly, it will help our hunter guild discover truly powerful newcomers. And in addition, you will also be able to enjoy more complete guild support. Which is very beneficial to both of us. Really? Wen Long thought for a moment and then asked. We are now one star high level hunters. If we advance further, we will become two star low level hunters. So let me ask you. 
What are the benefits of current two-star low-level hunters? Meow. Regarding the treatment of two-star low-level hunters. In addition to the fact that you can accept missions with higher bounties, there is also a more important benefit. When you go to the wild, you can use the wild camps provided by our hunter guild for supplies. In this way, it will undoubtedly help you save a lot of medicines and improve the living conditions of hunters in adverse environments. I wonder if such benefits are attracted to you. So that's it. The higher paying tasks and the right to use the wild camp are really good benefits. Meow. Wolong thought about it for a moment. And he was really moved. Putting aside higher paying tasks. The right to use the wild camp is indeed what Wolong needs. In the past, Wenlong's hunting places were usually near Milad village. Which meant that they were not far from Milad village. Hunting in these places usually starts in the morning and returns before the sun sets. So the demand for the hunting camps of the hunter guild is not high. But once you reach the level of a two-star hunter, the tasks you receive will not only be limited to the vicinity of Milad village, but may also require you to leave Milad village far away. In this case, it would be difficult for a hunter to set out in the morning and come back before dinner. Therefore, a hunting time will also become longer, and it is likely to take several days to complete the hunting. At this time, the importance of the supply camp becomes apparent. These supply camps are generally located on the outskirts of hunting grounds. They are relatively safe places with enough rooms and beds to provide shelter from the wind and rain. There are also some stored dried meats and recovery medicines that can be provided to hunters for emergency response without a way to easily return to Milad village. These supplies and facilities will undoubtedly bring considerable help to hunters. So Wolong, who had considered it, nodded and said, Well, it is indeed a good benefit. So what is the hunting for this two-star low-level promotion mission? Meow? It's a mission to hunt a big strange bird. The mission location is still Siofeng Valley. But this time you need to go deeper to encounter it. That's great. Siofeng Valley. I'll take over this mission. Isn't it just a big strange bird? Hey, let's see how I deal with him. Wen Long said this while accepting the mission letter. Early the next morning, Wen Long was not in a hurry to go out for hunting. Instead, he went to the market first to buy some tools and facilities needed to build and improve his manor. After all, the two-star missions he is accepting now are two-star missions. In many cases, two-star missions take several days to complete. So Wen Long is not in a hurry. This includes a hoe for digging the soil, a beehive purchase from a beekeeper, strains for cultivating various mushrooms, enough gauze to cover a large area, and other necessary items. Because Wen Long currently has enough gold coins, even if the bet has not been paid to Wen Long because of Claude's coma, Wen Long still has enough funds to purchase these tools. And the most important thing is that this time Wen Long has two more Ilu cats to help him. The advantage of having two more Ilu cats is that he can finally use all these tools. Otherwise, when Long's one Ilu cat will be there is no way to take care of such a large piece of land. So naturally there are no need for so many tools. After everything was purchased, Wen Long hired a herbivorous dragon to transport goods to help him deliver the purchased goods to his cave in Siofeng Valley. Chapter 83 Arranging Tasks Returning to the cave where he had been away for two days, Wen Long couldn't help feeling a little emotional when he looked at the huge rock at the entrance of the cave. After all, when we left here last time, there were only one Long and Catherine with one cat. It was only two days later. And when they came back, there were two more Ella cats. I really don't know what it will develop into in the future. If we want to build a large manor with this cave as the center, it will definitely be a big project. And if we want to develop and expand, we will definitely add more in the future. Alumeo, please help. One Long couldn't help but think to himself. So one Long said, Hey, woman, please move this stone away first. We have to go hunting later. We don't have much time to delay. Meow. Move away. Before Catherine could take action, Da Hui and Xiao Hui looked surprised. Da Hui said, Sir Hero, I'm sorry for blabbering, but how can you let a beauty like Miss Catherine do such rough work? And there is no way to move such a big stone with one person's strength. Meow. Xiao Hui also said, That's right. This stone is so big. Although my brother and I are considered to be strong men among Elu cats, even with the combined strength of our two cats. There is no way to move it. Meow. Really? Actually, I think the same thing as you. But there are some things that you should take a closer look at. Meow. Wen Long shrugged, saying that he was too lazy to explain because there were some things that really couldn't be explained. I saw Catherine walking to the door of the cave, then bending down slightly. 
dragging the bottom of the boulder with both hands. And then using force, she lifted the boulder. Then he took two steps to the side and put down the boulder. At this moment, the cave behind the boulder was completely revealed. Well, the stone has been removed, Catherine said. It turns out that Miss Catherine is also an amazing heroine. She is so admirable. Meow. Big Gray couldn't help but admire. Xiaohui on the side said, The hero's partner is indeed a heroine. It's great to be able to serve the two of them. Meow. Okay. Stop talking nonsense. Remember you have to work. Meow. Wen Long couldn't help but remind a Hui and Xiao Hui. Yes. Lord Hero. Meow. As soon as Wen Long spoke, Big Hui and Little Hui immediately stood in awe. So Wen Long began to arrange tasks for Da Hui and Xiao Hui. Wen Long first told Big Hui and Xiao Hui that they could live here first. After all, although the cave was simple, the basic utensils were still available. Big Hui and Xiao Hui are very grateful for this. Of course, Wen Long also gave orders to Da Hui and Xiao Hui, asking them to guard the cave and not let others approach. After all, Wen Long still left some materials in the cave, and Wen Long planned to sell these materials after the trade route from Milad village to Midge Bolton was reopened in a while. In addition, there are some tools that I just purchased from Milad village in the morning. Since they are not needed yet, they are piled in the cave. In addition to guarding the cave, Wen Long also asked Dahui and Xiaohui to be responsible for reclaiming a large area of wasteland below the cave during this period. These wastelands will be used to plant various crops in the future. During Wen Long's hunting period, Wen Long asked Dahui and Xiaohui to cultivate at least one acre of land. Don't worry. Lord Hero, we will definitely complete the mission. Meow. As he spoke, Dahue had already picked up the hoe. Don't worry. Lord Hero, we were originally from rural areas, and farming is our specialty. Meow. Shall we also said. Well, that's good. Meow. One long nodded with satisfaction. In line with the principle of employing people without suspicion and distrusting others. One long gave Dahue and shall we the greatest trust. Of course, this was also related to Wenlong's special affection for the Elu cat pushing the cat cart. After all, when I was playing the game, when any hunter collapsed from exhaustion due to being attacked by a monster, it was the Elu cats who pushed the cat cart to rescue the hunter from the monster's claws. They bravely the spirit of sacrifice is definitely something that every hunter will never forget. Wenlong is naturally no exception to this. So not long after they met, Wenlong arranged for Dahui and Xiao Hui to live in the cave, and also asked them to take care of the materials inside, without worrying that De Hui and Xiao Hui would commit theft. Then, it's time to go again. Meow. So, after arranging work for De Hui and Xiao Hui, Wen Long took Catherine on the road again. Although the hunting target this time is also in Xiaofeng Valley, which is not too far from the cave where Wen Long is now, Wen Long has spent a lot of time from morning to now. He wants to kill the prey before sunset. So time is still quite tight. Master Hero and Miss Catherine, I wish you both a safe journey. Meow. Even though Wen Long and Catherine had walked quite far away, they could still hear the voices of Da Hui and Xiao Hui coming from a distance. After leaving the cave and heading west for about an hour, we reached the depths of Xiaofeng Valley. The trees here have become more dense, and some wild beasts that are not easy to see have become more common. This is obviously more inaccessible than the previous edge areas. Whoa! Mr. Cat! Look over there! There's a waterfall! What a huge waterfall! Suddenly Catherine's voice sounded. Wen Long looked in the direction pointed by Catherine's finger. And sure enough, he saw a huge waterfall coming from the mountain wall. Falling up and down. Like a silver white canvas. This is probably the most famous scenic spot in the Xiaofeng Valley. It's famous for its large drop and wide waterfall. According to the information provided by the Hunter's Guild. The prey we are going to hunt this time should often appear around here. Meow. That's right. Mr. Cat. Catherine said excitedly. But in addition to this attraction, there seems to be a famous large cave nearby. Which is also a good attraction. Yeah. It's true. Although when Long kept chatting with Catherine about something, his eyes and ears had begun to concentrate. Paying attention to all the changes around him. Since according to the information, the big strange bird is nearby. Then we must be more vigilant. Naya. At this moment, Wen Long suddenly heard a strange cry. He looked up and saw a big bird falling from the sky. It's a big strange bird. Wen Long recognized the identity of the big bird at a glance. And judging from the posture of the big strange bird, 
it seemed that the target of the big strange bird was a running elf deer on the ground. The elf deer seemed to be aware of the approaching danger and began to run as hard as it could. However, the speed of the big strange bird seemed to be faster. It swooped down and completely pinned the elf deer down under him. At the same time, its sharp claws easily the skin and muscles of the elf deer were torn open. And so, this nimble elf deer became the food under the big monster's beak. Chapter 84 The First Battle with the Big Strange Bird 1. The big strange bird in front of me has red scales and cyan wing membranes. It has huge scarf-like ears and sensitive hearing. Of course, it also has a huge mouth, which is said to be used to dig up earthworms in the soil. Food. However, in addition to earthworms, other foods such as the meat of small and weak animals and the fruits of plants are also acceptable to the big strange bird. I'm so lucky. I didn't expect to see a big strange bird hunting for food as soon as I arrived. Theoretically, this is the best time to make a sneak attack. But instead of making a sneak attack, I'd better test the results of that stupid woman's special training during this period. It's more interesting. Meow. One long thought to himself. For most monsters, because their attention is usually focused on food when they are hunting, it is easy for hunters to take advantage of them. At this time, as long as one long wears a protective stone with a hidden effect, quietly approaches the big strange bird, and uses Granny Reese's upgraded double swords to make a surprise attack. He will most likely be able to kill it with one blow. Of course, Wen Long did not intend to do this, because Wen Long knew that considering the long-term interests, it was the best choice to let Catherine hunt the big strange bird alone, because Wen Long can know from his previous experience in the game that the process of hunting big strange birds can be regarded as a textbook for many novice hunters. Many players even call big strange birds newbies. Teacher. This was true in the game. And now in the real world. One long believes that it should have the same effect. First of all, because of its strong reproductive capacity, the big strange bird is a relatively common bird dragon species and is suitable for hunters to practice hunting. There will never be a situation where no trace of a big strange bird can be found after many days of hunting. Secondly, as a bird dragon species, the big strange bird has quite a lot of characteristics of the flying dragon species and compared to large flying dragons such as the male fire dragon and the female fire dragon. The big strange bird is relatively weak. So for newcomers, hunting big strange birds is a preview for facing powerful flying dragon species such as male and female fire dragons in the future. It was precisely because of this factor that Wenlong decided to let Catherine hunt the big strange bird alone. Are you ready? Woman? Wenlong could only ask softly because the big strange bird's hearing was very good. I'm ready. Mr. Cat. Okay. I didn't have a chance to let you play when I was hunting the star dragon before. So now let me take a look at your special training some time ago. Meow. Um. Before Wenlong finished speaking, Catherine had already rushed out. Idiot. You made too much noise. Meow. When she went out, Catherine's body brushed against the nearby bushes and easily made a not too loud noise. However, even this not-too-loud noise immediately attracted the attention of the big strange bird in the distance. Sure enough, it is absolutely correct to say that the big strange bird's hearing is very sensitive. Naya. The big strange bird immediately stopped eating. At the same time, its two oversized ears adjusted its direction like radar blades. And Kaiser's position was quickly determined. The big strange bird turned around and flapped its wings excitedly then kicked up its feet to express its protest against someone coming to disturb its feeding. The protest was ineffective. Catherine was still running forward with long strides. And at the same time, she had put one hand on the big sword behind her back to ensure that she could draw the sword as quickly as possible to attack when she got close. Mr. Cat has already fought against the star dragon. How can I shrink back from a big strange bird? But I really, really want to be an outstanding hunter like Mr. Cat. The thoughts in Catherine's mind strengthened her belief and she continued to move forward without hesitation. At the same time, she recalled in her heart all the information about the big strange bird that Wen Long had told her. The moves of the big monster bird are pecking with its beak, collision with the body, fireball spitting as a long-range attack, and sweeping tail flick at close range. In addition, after the big monster bird enters the angry mode, it will also use a move called monster, bird attack move. Then at this distance, the most likely move to use is fireball breathing. Just as Catherine expected, the big strange bird suddenly raised its head high, and then a fireball as big as a human head shot out from the mouth of the big strange bird. 
and then drew a parabola towards Catherine's position was smashed over. But this time, Catherine did not draw the sword on her back to defend herself. But it was extraordinary. He suddenly changed direction with a roll and avoided the attack of the big strange bird. As for the fireball, it fell on the open ground, forming a fireball on the ground and continued to burn for a while before extinguishing. Oh, that's good. Instead of directly drawing out the sword to defend, she used rolling to dodge. She has never been specially trained in this posture. When Long couldn't help but touched his beard and admired from the side. Any old hunter knows that when the distance is relatively long, rolling is a more efficient method than using a sword to defend directly. If you use a big sword for defense, although you can also defend against the fireballs spit out by the big strange bird, pulling out the big sword will also affect your forward speed. After all, when holding a big sword, your body's center of gravity is not very good. Due to control reasons, the mobility and body agility are lower than when carrying a big sword. At this time, it will not be easy to close the distance. Catherine used the roll to avoid this very well. And more importantly, it also proved that although Catherine was facing the big strange bird for the first time, she was able to make calm judgments and to a certain extent, predict the most likely attack by the big strange bird. Dodging the fireball spit out by the big strange bird, Catherine was already close to less than 10 meters away from the big strange bird. This time, the big strange bird used another move. Collision. Although the collision of the big strange bird is fierce. As a bird, it only has two legs. So it is easy to lose balance after the collision, causing itself to fall to the ground. This is undoubtedly the best time to attack. Catherine repeated in her mind the key points that when Long had explained to her. So she drew out the sword on her back without hesitation and took a defensive posture. Well, it's right to use a defensive posture at this time. After the collision, the distance between the two parties is shortened, and the big strange bird will easily fall to the ground. Then it will be easy to attack with the big sword. If it rolls, it will be easy to miss. The target was rushed straight towards by the big strange bird, causing the distance between the two sides to widen again. Just like a football commentator, while Catherine was fighting, Wen Long was also carefully observing Catherine's fighting from the sidelines. And at the same time, he kept making comments in his heart. After all, as Catherine's teacher, Wen Long also hopes in his heart that Catherine can grow up faster. So always understanding the strengths and weaknesses of his students, praising the strengths, and promptly pointing out the other shortcomings are what every teacher must do. To things. Chapter 85 The First Battle with the Big Strange Bird 2 the fact was exactly as Wolong expected. The big strange bird's collision was easily blocked by Catherine. Although the level of the big strange bird is higher than that of the big wild boar king. In terms of the power of charging, the big strange bird may not be stronger than the big wild boar king. Therefore, it is not a big deal for Catherine to force the big strange bird to stop. Difficult thing. In addition, the price of the big strange bird's flying ability as a bird dragon is its poor balance ability on the ground. So after blocking the big strange bird, Catherine used the momentum to push, causing the big strange bird to fall to the ground. Immediately afterwards, Catherine immediately raised the big sword in her hand. The whole process was completed in one go without any hindrance. This was undoubtedly the result of Catherine's hard training during this period. What a great opportunity! Let's see if we can seize it! If we can hit the head with one move, then this hunting will end early. Meow! At this time, the big strange bird was still lying on the ground, struggling to get up. But Catherine's big sword had already slashed it down. Although it is just an ordinary vertical slash, Catherine's huge power is enough to achieve amazing power. One long even thought that this ordinary vertical slash has reached the point where some ordinary hunters use all their strength to perform the charged slash. Degree. The big strange bird lying on the ground seemed to be aware of the astonishing destructive power of this attack. While making a disturbing chirp, it tried to rotate its long neck in an attempt to avoid Catherine's blow. Ah, uh, it's so noisy. Catherine hesitated for a moment. And this hesitation gave the big strange bird a chance to save its life. In the end, the big strange bird succeeded, at least partially. Catherine's heavy bone sword struck down with a sound of breaking through the air. But it did not split the big strange bird's head in half. Instead, it fell against the big strange bird's head with a slight difference and the big strange bird's head fell. One ear was cut off. Blood flowed all of a sudden. The big strange bird made a shrill cry, and at the same time its whole body struggled fiercely, and stood up faster than before. I almost cut off my ears, but it will be more troublesome next time. Naya, 
different from the previous monsters. The big strange bird is a bird dragon species that has some characteristics of the flying dragon species. After being attacked to a certain extent, it will enter a state called an angry state. In this form, the big monster bird's attack power and agility will be greatly improved. And some moves will also be enhanced. If Catherine had been able to cut open the head of the big strange bird just now, then the poor big strange bird would have lost its life before it could enter the angry state. But it is different now. The big strange bird that entered the angry state immediately showed signs of a more terrifying strength than before. First of all, the speed of getting up was much faster than before. So much so that Catherine had just retracted her sword when the big strange bird had already stood up again. This makes it impossible for Catherine to immediately use the second hit as a combo if the first hit misses. The big strange bird that had just stood up immediately began to use one of its unique tricks. Pecking. To fight back against Catherine. The huge beak of the big strange bird is quite lethal if used to attack the enemy. And the peck is not a simple attack, but a continuous peck at the opponent with a huge beak. It's like a boxer throwing punches continuously, causing an intensive sense of oppression to the opponent in a short period of time. Catherine immediately defended herself with her big sword. But the angry bird seemed to have increased its strength. The continuous pecks made Catherine retreat one after another. What a powerful force. Is this the difference between anger and normal state? While defending against the big strange bird's peck, Catherine noticed another characteristic of the big strange bird in its angry state. That is, there were obviously burning flames coming out of the big strange bird's mouth. Kaiser knew that this meant that the monster's metabolic rate had been increased in an angry state, and the abilities of various organs in the body had been greatly enhanced. For example, the fire bag that allows the big strange bird to spit out flames from its mouth becomes a state where the stored flames overflow when it is angry. At this time, the big strange bird can spit out multiple fireballs in a row. Can you spit out fireballs continuously? It seems that you have to pay attention later and try not to be distanced. But to deal with the opponent at close range, once this round of pecking is over, there will definitely be a flaw. While Catherine continued to resist the big strange bird's pecks, she carefully searched for the big strange bird's flaws. The flaw soon came. After two consecutive rounds and about ten times of pecking, the big strange bird seemed to feel that Catherine's strong sword could not be knocked open with its mouth. And finally stopped. Had the opportunity! As soon as she saw that the big strange bird had terminated its attack, Catherine immediately made a counterattack gesture. And the big sword that was already lying across her hand swept over with a horizontal slash. Idiot! You're still too slow! Meow! From defense to horizontal slash. It can be said that Catherine's attack is not bad in connection. It can even be said that if it were an ordinary big strange bird, Catherine's horizontal slash should be able to hit the opponent. But the current big strange bird does not not a normal state, but an angry state with more responsive reactions. Just as Catherine swept over with a horizontal slash, the big strange bird suddenly turned around, and its whip-like tail immediately swept toward Catherine at a faster speed. And obviously, the big strange bird is faster than Catherine. Before Catherine's big sword hit the big strange bird, it was already hit by the big strange bird's tail. And because of her height, the big strange bird's tail hit Catherine's shoulder and suddenly threw Catherine three meters away. Seeing this situation, Wen Long, who was just watching from a distance, had already paid attention to closing the distance between Catherine and pulled out the two knives on his back, ready to take action when Catherine encountered an unsolvable danger. The shoulder must be injured. Even though he is wearing the suit of the big boar king, it is impossible for his shoulder to be hit by the big strange bird's tail, and nothing will happen. Wen Long thought to himself. However, Catherine seemed to see that Wen Long wanted to take action, and was eager to take action. So she said, Mr. Cat, please don't interfere this time. I will handle it myself. After such a long period of training, I believe I can do it. Well, let me see your strength. Meow. Looking at Catherine's firm eyes, Wen Long nodded, and put the two swords he had drawn back into the scabbard. Chapter 86 The First Battle with the Big Strange Bird 3 Mr. Cat has already fought against the Star Dragon. But am I still unable to defeat the Big Strange Bird? Catherine thought in her heart. While Catherine was thinking, the Big Strange Bird did not stop attacking. Instead, it raised its head again and spit out fireballs at Catherine. Because he was already in an angry state. This time, the big strange bird spit out four fireballs in succession like a cannon. The four fireballs continued to fall around Catherine, who had just been thrown down by the big strange bird with its tail. Catherine on the ground quickly got up and ran away. 
trying to avoid the attacks of these four fireballs. Catherine dodged the first fireball. And Catherine also dodged the second fireball. But the third and fourth fireballs were directly to the left and right of Catherine. So Catherine, who was about to move sideways, was hit by one of the fireballs. Bang! The exploding fireball knocked Catherine to the ground again. At the same time, the high temperature generated by the fireball also ignited the fur of Catherine's big boar king suit, giving off a strong burnt smell. Woman! Quick! Roll over! Meow! Seeing this scene, even when Long couldn't help shouting, the resistance of the big boar king suit to fire is not very good. After all, it is mainly made of leather armor and is decorated with fur. In this case, it is easy to ignite when attacked by fire. However, Catherine did not panic. After hearing Wen Long's instructions, he immediately took action and rolled directly to the left. Soon, the originally ignited part of the equipment was crushed by the wet soil. But even so, Catherine still had several burns on her body, and there was also a trace of soot on her face, making her look quite embarrassed. Woman, just say it if you can't hold it anymore. Don't force it. Meow. When Long saw that Catherine had been hit by the big strange bird skills twice in a row, and he became a little worried. No. It's okay. Mr. Cat. I want to try again. It's only three times. I believe it won't be like this the third time. Regardless of the wounds on her body, Catherine once again assumed a fighting posture because she was hit by the tail of the big strange bird. Catherine's right shoulder was already injured at this time and there were several large and small burns on her body. Originally, if she took the recovery medicine G, most of these injuries could be recovered. But an important reason that prevents Catherine from doing this is that the big strange bird in front of her is attacking Catherine like crazy, leaving Catherine no chance to breathe and take the recovery medicine G. For example, right now, after using the fireball attack, the big strange bird flapped its wings and jumped over again and pecked at Catherine with its huge and hard beak. It's this trick again. The big strange bird has used the peck once before. But this time it was used. Catherine's reaction was completely different from before. The first time, Kaiser used his big sword to catch the opponent's pecks. Although he resisted all the pecks due to his physical strength advantage, it resulted in him being pressed down and beaten by the opponent. Passive. This time Catherine changed her strategy and rolled to the side of the big strange bird, preparing to attack from the side. Well, that's right. The big strange bird can't turn its neck at a large angle when using the peck. So you can just go around to the side and avoid it. But what should you do next? Meow. However, Wan Long also knew that it was useless to just go around to the side. Because the angry big strange bird would immediately react and change its attack method. And this time history seems to be repeating itself. Catherine, who walked around to the side of the big strange bird, used a horizontal slash again. At the same moment, the big strange bird immediately stopped pecking and used the tail flick it had used before. As before, Catherine and the big monster bird used their moves almost at the same time. But in terms of speed, the tail flick of the big monster bird in an angry state was still faster. In other words, this time it will still be the tail of the big strange bird that hits Catherine first. Are you going to repeat the same mistake as before? No. Catherine's horizontal slashing posture is not a standard one. The center of gravity of her body is obviously lower than the center of the previous horizontal slashing. Just as Wenlong was sweating for Catherine. Suddenly Wenlong noticed a smile on the corner of Catherine's mouth. This was something I had never seen before. During the life and death struggle with the monster. Catherine suddenly laughed. Has this woman finally experienced the joy of hunting? Hum. It's getting more and more interesting. Meow. The moment Catherine smiled. Wenlong suddenly understood something. At the moment when the big strange bird's tail swept over, Catherine suddenly bent her knees and squatted down. However, while squatting down, the rotation of her body did not stop, and she still drove the power of the big sword towards her. The big strange bird swept past. At this moment, the tail flick of the big strange bird was indeed half a minute faster. However, due to the height problem, it was supposed to hit Catherine's shoulder. However, because Catherine suddenly changed to a half crouch posture, the tail of the big strange bird unexpectedly hit Catherine's shoulder. It was swept from above Catherine's head with a very small gap. Catherine bent over and dodged. But the tail of the big strange bird still hit Catherine's helmet, causing it to fly up. And because the helmet was blown away, all of Catherine's silver white hair fell out. And with the force of the helmet being blown away, a silver white waterfall was drawn in the air. 
It's simply so beautiful. Seeing such a scene, Wen Long felt as if he had seen the mythical Valkyrie and couldn't help but admire in his heart. The next moment, it was Catherine's turn to attack. After escaping the big strange bird's tail flick, Catherine's big sword struck the big strange bird's legs covered with scales. In an instant, Wen Long saw one of the big strange bird's legs cut off like this. He fell down, and the big sword also left a deep wound on the other leg. The big monster bird that suffered a huge attack on its leg was about to fall down, and its original angry roar turned into a painful cry. However, at this moment, the big monster bird was using its remaining foot to barely support itself. At the same time, he suddenly flapped his wings vigorously, making his body float. Are you going to run away? This time Catherine stood up immediately, and then waved the sword in her hand towards the sky but it was still a step too late. The big strange bird flew away without hesitation, but also whined with fear, and continued to flap its wings to increase height. When the height was high enough to reach the level of the treetops, the big strange bird then changed the way it flapped its wings and flew away into the distance. Chapter 87 Tricks and Prediction It actually flew away! Seeing the big strange bird flying away, Catherine was stunned for a moment, as if she was still immersed in the hunt just now. After a while, she complained unwillingly. We were obviously going to win, but actually ran away. Don't be depressed. As far as I'm concerned, you've done a pretty good job. Meow. Wen Long said seriously. Really? Really? Mr. Cat? Wen Long said this, and Catherine's originally depressed mood improved slightly. Humph. Have I ever lied to you? Of course. If you compare with me, you are definitely far behind. Meow. Although Wenlong still couldn't help but brag about himself, he must admit that Wenlong's praise of Catherine just now was truly sincere. In the previous hunting, the big strange bird used its flying ability to avoid Catherine's pursuit at the last moment. However, judging from the performance just now, Wenlong believed that Catherine had two abilities that ordinary people did not have. These two abilities are one. One kind is called dismantling by Wenlong and the other is called precognition. Moreover, in Wenlong's view, the ability to dismantle moves and predict are often two important abilities that a top hunter must have. After all, a person with only brute strength cannot become a truly top hunter. This was clearly shown when Catherine avoided the tail flick of the big strange bird. The first time, Catherine was hit in the shoulder by the big strange bird with its tail. But the second time, Catherine immediately learned in order to take advantage of the flaws in the opponent's moves he can dodge the attack and counterattack at the same time. This is the so-called demolition. The speed of understanding the flaws of the opponent's moves and taking them apart in such a short period of time is not unsatisfactory. But if it was just the speed of dismantling the moves, Wen Long would not be too surprised. The reason is that it is not too difficult to individually analyze the flaws of a certain move and then dismantle it. What is difficult is how to predict the opponent's move, which is the so-called prediction. There is no perfect move in this world and every move has flaws. If a hunter can predict the monster's next move, it will be much easier to crack the monster's move. In fact, many experienced hunters, even experienced hunters, can do this. And even novice hunters, like Catherine, can do this to a certain extent after when Long teaches her the experience. For example, when she first came into contact with the big strange bird, Catherine predicted that the big strange bird would most likely attack with fireballs from a long distance, and took precautions in advance so that she could roll away at the most appropriate time. He blocked the opponent's fireball attack and helped himself close the distance with the big strange bird in the early stage. What Wolong is most proud of is his ability to predict. As someone who has been in the game for many years, Wolong has accumulated rich hunting experience. It is these experiences and his own understanding that make Wolong Dragon can not only guess what the monster will do next most of the time, but sometimes he can even guess what the monster's next move and the subsequent consecutive moves will be. This was the case when fighting the Star Dragon. From the beginning, I used concealment skills to pry off the Star Dragon's scales, to being attacked by the Star Dragon with its sharp claws, then being chased by the Star Dragon, and surrounded by the Star Feather Butterflies. Finally, I liked to hide from the world. Xinglong gave up the chase and left on his own. Except for the fact that Xinglong flicked his tail and suffered some hardships due to Wenlong's negligence. The entire incident can basically be said to have been foreseen by Wen Long from the beginning. It's like playing chess. If a chess player can predict the opponent's next five moves, then this person should be considered an amateur master. 
if a chess player can predict his opponent's moves within 10 moves, then this person is definitely a professional player. And what if you could predict the opponent's 20 moves? Those who can reach this level should be the best among professional players. This is naturally the same for hunting. Those who can understand the entire hunting process, including the series of reactions that the prey will make before taking action, are naturally the top hunters. Of course, Catherine is not as good as Wen Long. But just now, even if Catherine didn't explain, Wen Long has already noticed that Catherine has seen through the big strange bird's two consecutive moves. This is undoubtedly a very significant progress. The reason was Catherine's calm smile when she rolled to avoid the second peck from the big strange bird. That smile was like a hunter laughing at his prey for falling into his own trap. And the purpose of this trap was to elicit the big strange bird's second move. Tail flick. It was from this smile that Chinese dragon read Catherine's thoughts. When the big strange bird starts pecking, just roll to avoid the big strange bird's peck and move to the side of the big strange bird. At this time, the big strange bird will have no time to readjust its direction and will most likely use I had hit Catherine once before. So I thought it would be a very effective tail flick to attack. Then I seized this opportunity and lowered my body center of gravity just enough to avoid the big strange bird's tail while inflicting huge damage to it. To be able to predict two moves in a row so quickly and separate them. Huh? It's not in vain that I have been training for so long. It's true that famous teachers make great disciples. Meow. Wen Long also thought with some pride in his heart. Just when Wen Long was thinking this, Catherine's mood, which had just improved slightly because of Wen Long's praise, began to feel depressed again. Well, Catherine sighed softly and looked in the direction where the big strange bird had just flown away. It was obvious that she was still a little unwilling to let the big strange bird that was about to successfully hunt escape just now. Mr. Cat, can we still find that big strange bird? So Catherine asked. This time, it should be possible. Because the big strange bird can't fly very far. And the amount of bleeding is so heavy. The other party must have stopped to treat the wound. When Long replied. So that's it. Mr. Cat, let's go chase that big strange bird. Catherine said excitedly. Well, don't worry. Let me check first. Meow. When Long waved his hand leisurely signaling Catherine not to worry. So Wen Long bent down and carefully observed the blood on the ground. Because the severed leg of the big strange bird was bleeding heavily. Even if the big strange bird had taken off, the blood stains scattered on the ground were still large enough to be clearly discerned. Based on this, it is not difficult to track the big strange bird. Chapter 88 Blow Away the Fireball Fortunately, there are blood stains this time that can be used to search for traces of the big strange bird. Otherwise, it would be very troublesome to find the big strange bird after it flew away. Next time. Be sure to remember to bring the dive ball with you. That's it. Meow. When Long while identifying the blood stains. He said to himself. Dying ball? What is that? Catherine heard when Long talking to himself and asked curiously. Don't you even know about the dyed balls? Well, it's also because the monsters we hunted before didn't have flight or other escape abilities that we couldn't easily track. So there was no need to use such things. But in future hunts, as the monsters we encounter have stronger and stronger movement and hiding abilities, the application of things like dying will become more and more common. Meow. That means the dyed balls are used to track prey? Catherine guessed with some uncertainty. Yes. That's it. The dyed ball is actually a kind of dye that is extremely difficult to remove and has a strong smell. Once this dye is sprinkled on a monster, it cannot be removed in a short time. And the color is very bright. Even if even if it is hidden in the trees, it is easy to be discovered. In addition, with a strong smell, even humans who do not have a particularly outstanding sense of smell can easily find the location of prey based on the smell. It can be said to be a good tool for tracking escaped prey. I see. Then you must prepare dying balls next time. Catherine also nodded. Well, you really need to prepare dying balls. When you go back, Remember to pick some dying fruits and sticky grass on the way. With these two things, you can mix them into dying balls. By the way, you also need to collect a wild bee's hive. Transfer the wild bees inside to the beehive, so that you can produce honey in your own manner. Recalling that he had just started to reclaim the manor, and there were so many things to do. Wen Long felt that his head was getting a headache. Everything is difficult at the beginning. Wen Long comforted himself in his heart. But it's time for this woman to learn how to identify plants. Otherwise, it would be a bit unreasonable for me to have to do everything myself. Wen Long and Catherine searched all the way 
and quickly found the place where the big strange bird lived by following the blood traces. It was a large cave. There was an opening at the top of the cave, and sunlight entered from above, providing basic lighting for the cave. The big strange bird with one leg and one ear cut off was lying on a piece of hay in the corner of the cave, which was undoubtedly the big strange bird's nest. The big strange bird that was still resting seemed to have noticed that the enemy just now was here again. It stared hard at Catherine, who had caused it harm, and struggled to stand up. Catherine didn't have any intention of evading, but drew out her sword, and then walked towards the big strange bird step by step, because Catherine had noticed that there was too much blood on the ground. And there was so much blood that the big strange bird probably couldn't fly to escape at this time. You actually pulled out the big sword so early instead of waiting to draw the big sword to attack when you got closer. Could it be that you were preparing to break through from the front? When Long thought to himself. Ouch, the big strange bird screamed, and finally stood up on its only one leg. At the same time, it raised its head and spit out a fireball towards Catherine. After losing a leg, the big strange bird can hardly complete skills such as tail flick and collision. It is even difficult to maintain the balance of the body even using skills such as pecking. In this case, breathing fireballs naturally becomes the only attack skill that the big monster bird can use. Catherine, who has accumulated some experience, certainly knows this. But something strange is that Catherine did not roll to avoid the fireball as she had done before, nor did she take a defensive posture to hide behind the broad sword. Instead, she directly waved the sword in her hand and faced the fireball. Bang! The fireball collided with the sword, making a huge noise. The scene at this moment was like a baseball player hitting a baseball. The big sword was like the bat in Catherine's hand. And the big fireball was the ball, which was knocked away by the big sword in Catherine's hand. I'm even more calm than before. I've only seen the big strange bird spit out fireballs twice. I'm even familiar with the movement of the fireballs. So can I catch the fireballs easily? Although when Long had vaguely guessed something from the beginning. But when Catherine made such a move, it was still somewhat beyond Wenlong's expectations. In fact, due to the structure of the big monster bird's mouth, the flying speed of the fireball it spits out is far less fast than that of the powerful male fire dragon. And the flight trajectory is also a somewhat slow parabola. In this case, use a broad sword to it's not too difficult to hit the fireball with a sword. What surprised Wen Long was that no player had been able to do this in the game before. This was not because the player's reaction speed was not fast enough, but because there was no such setting in the game. So in the game, even if you accurately hit the fireball with a big sword, the final result will be that the hunter is surrounded by flames. And it is impossible to knock the fireball away like a baseball. Reality really has more possibilities than games. Naya. The moment when Long sighed, Catherine had raised her sword again. It's over. The big sword was swung down. And the big strange bird fell to the ground without struggling. The big strange bird that was killed in one blow fell to the ground like a turkey with its head cut off. Mr. Cat. I won. I am also a two-star hunter. Although Catherine acted very calmly when she gave the big strange bird the last blow. After the hunting was completed, Catherine immediately showed her innocence. One side. Well, you won. This time you defeated the opponent completely with your own strength. It deserves praise. But now you have just reached the level of two-star hunter. There is still a long way to go as a hunter. You must not be complacent. Do you understand? Meow. I know. Mr. Cat, I will definitely work harder and I will never embarrass you. While saying this, Catherine ran towards Wen Long. At first Wen Long thought that Catherine was going to hug him again. But this time, it was a little different. This time, Catherine, who was already a little carried away, put her hands into Wen Long's armpits, then raised Wen Long high, and said at the same time, It's all thanks to your guidance. Mr. Cat, okay, let me go. Wen Long kicked Catherine in the face, and jumped down. Ugh! I thought you would like this. Mr. Cat, I'm not a kid anymore. I don't have time to play lift high with you. Next, I have to break down the materials for the big strange bird. Let's get to work quickly. Meow! Chapter 89 The Material of the Big Strange Bird and the Nest of the Wild Bee Compared with monsters such as the Big Boar King and the Beaver Beast, the meat on the big monster bird's body can be said to be very little. However, some materials on the big monster bird are not found on many monsters. And they often play a different role when building equipment. For example, the flame bag. Since when Long entered this world, this is the first material that can produce fire effects. 
It is the reason why the big strange bird can spit out fireballs. Wen Long knew that if this material was used on an attacking weapon, it would add fire damage to the attacking weapon. It seems that by building a set of monster bird suits, you can use weapons with fire attribute damage in the future. It will definitely have a good effect when dealing with monsters that are weak to fire. Meow! Of course, in addition to the flame bag, there are many materials on the big strange bird that are of considerable use value. For example, strange bird claws, strange bird scales, strange bird beaks, strange bird wings, etc. These materials were broken down by Wenlong and Catherine with hunter's knives and then put into the poisonous monster bird skin in a big bag. After a while, with the cooperation of Wenlong and Catherine, the work of extracting the material of the big strange bird was completed. Then there are two things that need to be done. One is to look for dyed fruits and sticky grass. And the other is to find the hive of wild bees. Stupid woman. You are responsible for looking for dyed fruits and sticky grass. Oh, that's right. If you see any herbs on the road, pick them up and bring them back too. Meow. Hey, Mr. Cat. I still don't know what dyed grass and sticky grass look like. Catherine has seen medicinal herbs before, so she can tell them apart. However, Catherine has not seen sticky grass and dyed fruit yet. It's easy to distinguish. So remember it, Wenlong said. Adhesive grass is a gray-white herb with many fine hairs on it. There are not many gray-white plants like this. And if you are not sure, you can try touching it with your clothes. If it sticks to your clothes and is difficult to remove, it means it is stuck to grass. Meow. As for the dyed fruit, it is a kind of fruit that grows on low shrubs. Its color is pink, which is rare in nature. If you put your nose close to smell it, you can smell an obvious strong smell. So it should be easy to identify. That's right. I know. Mr. Cat, Catherine said. Then let's do it quickly. I'm still looking for the wild bee's hive. Meow. In this way, Wen Long and Catherine began to act separately. In the past, Wen Long would not have dared to separate from Catherine casually. At that time, Catherine had no experience and poor psychological quality. So Wen Long was very worried that Catherine would be in danger. But now, there is no such concern. After all, Catherine has reached the level where she can hunt big strange birds alone. It can be said that there is nothing that can threaten her nearby. So Wen Long naturally chose the more efficient approach of two people acting separately. I remember that the omnivorous bird dragon species, like the big monster, also likes to eat honey. Especially during the breeding season. It often uses its big mouth to swallow the entire honeycomb together. If this is the case, there is a big monster where the birds roost. There should be a wild bee nest not far away. Because Wen Long had a considerable understanding of the habits of the big strange bird. When searching for the hive of the wild mountain bee, Wen Long started his search centered on the large cave where the big strange bird lived. Sure enough, it didn't take long for Wen Long to find a huge beehive hanging on a tree. A large number of wild bees were flying around the hive. Unlike the previous smoked hives and then destruction of the hives to obtain honey. Wen Long's purpose this time was to obtain wild bees that could produce honey. So Wen Long's approach was different this time. First, Wen Long wrapped the gauze he bought in Milad village in areas without armor protection. Including his eyes. Although the eyes are also covered by gauze. This kind of gauze has just the right size of gaps to ensure that the eyes can see the outside situation without completely blocking the sight. At the same time, it is much smaller than the body of the wild volcano, which avoids the wild volcanic bee. Get in and sting someone. After everything was ready, Wen Long took a thick big bag and began to approach the wild bee's hive. When Wen Long approached, these wild bees obviously noticed Wen Long's arrival, and some of them had begun to surround Wen Long, preparing to attack Wen Long. Wen Long naturally ignored these worker bees who tried to attack. Occasionally, some of them flew in front of him, and he would drive them away with his hands. After all, Wen Long's whole body was covered now, so he didn't have to worry about what these wild bees would do to him. Harm. In this way, he walked to the bottom of the hive with almost no obstacles. And then Wen Long began to climb up the tree trunk, trying to get closer to the huge hive. In the process of climbing the tree, Wen Long tried his best to avoid irritating the highly aggressive wild bees. Fortunately, Wen Long, as an Ilu cat, is a good tree climber and climbed to the trunk of the hive very easily. At this time, Wen Long opened the thick cloth bag in his hand and suddenly covered the entire hive. Got in. Okay, we caught them all. Meow. Because Wen Long moved very quickly. When Wen Long completely covered the hive with a bag, 
Only a small number of wild bees remained outside the bag. These wild bees attacked Wen Long desperately, trying to repel this intruder who tried to occupy his hive. But it still had no effect. After trapping the beehive, Wen Long quickly tied the mouth of the bag with a rope. He looked around and found that only a small number of wild bees were not trapped in the bag, which made Wen Long very happy. Very good. Most of the wild bees are put into the bag together with the hive. In this way, the smaller the loss of the wild bees, the greater the honey production can be preserved when used to collect honey. Meow! With this thought in mind, Wen Long climbed down the tree trunk again. Instead of using the more convenient method of jumping directly from a tree trunk that was not too high, for fear of accidentally injuring the wild bees inside and affecting the subsequent production of honey. Yield. After all, Wen Long knew in his heart that honey is so important. As a material, it can be used in the preparation of many potions. It is a very useful and highly consumed material in the world of Monster Hunter. In a sense, ensuring the production of high-quality honey means ensuring the production of precious medicines such as recovery medicine, forcible medicine, ghost medicine, sclerosing medicine, etc. Precisely because honey has such a wide range of uses. Wen Long naturally we treat them with caution, for fear of accidentally killing these precious wild bees. So after landing, Wen Long looked at the bag in his hand again, and felt relieved when he heard that the wild bees inside were still humming energetically. Chapter 90 Mution Polygonum Okay, it's almost time to go back. No matter how strong these wild bees are, we can't let them stay in the bag for too long. We have to send them to the beehive as soon as possible. And where is that stupid woman? Haven't you finished collecting the materials, Meow? Wen Long looked around and soon found someone running from a distance. After taking a closer look, it turned out to be Catherine carrying a big bag. From the swollen bag in Cather's hand, it could be seen that Catherine had gained quite a lot. Mr. Cat, I'm back. Catherine said this, opened the bag, and showed her results in front of Wen Long. There are indeed a lot of things in the bag. But what makes Wen Long dumbfounded is that the three things, dyed fruits, sticky grass, and medicinal herbs only account for about two-thirds. And the other third is a kind of one long a strange plant that looks familiar but cannot remember its name. What are you doing? Don't you want to pick three things, dying fruits, sticky grass, and medicinal herbs? What's going on with all those strange plants? Meow, one long then noticed that these plants were vines, and there are some green berries growing on it. Mr. Cat, this is Polygonum acuminata. I happened to see it when I was picking colored fruits. So I picked it back together. Don't you like it? Catherine explained quickly. When? Bootyon Polly. Heard the name. When Long remembered. Oh. It turns out to be Mutian Polly. Although I have always known that there is such a thing. I have almost never used it when playing games before. So I am not familiar with it. I don't remember what this plant looks like at all. Meow. Carefully recalling the role of Mutian Polygonum. When Long only remembered that this thing is a prop that Elcat likes very much. It can be used to make Elcat feel excited. And it can also be used to attract Elcat's attention. Force. The reason why Polygonum bicolensis has such effect is mainly because it contains a substance called Kiwi Base, which is said to have a great impact on cats. Woman. How do you recognize Mutian Lee's appearance? When Long felt a little strange. Why was Catherine, a woman, aware of things that he, as a top hunter in the game, was not familiar with so clearly. Because I like Elu cats the most. I specifically learned about this aspect from my brother. My brother also told me what Mutempo looks like. So that's it. But Long said again. Okay. Now that you picked them. Just take them back. Anyway. You can carry these things on your own. Hey. Mr. Cat. Don't you want these polygonums? Catherine asked. I don't want this kind of thing. Meow. Wen Long said disdainfully. In Wen Long's mind. It is natural that this kind of thing used to amuse cats is a bit childish. And there is no need to understand it at all. Especially since Wen Long has traveled through time for so long. He has never forgotten that he is a human at heart. Therefore, there is some psychological repulsion towards the things that Elu cats like. But after thinking about it carefully, Wen Long felt that if Aluma liked this thing, Dahui and Xiao we should also like it. So it would be a good choice to take these Mutian polygonum back to them. That's why Wenlong agreed to let Catherine carry these wooden vines back. So Wenlong and Catherine, one person and one cat, carried their respective trophies and hurried home together. The so-called Wenlong and Catherine's home, of course, refers to the cave where Wenlong and Catherine lived before. 
When he returned to the cave, Wolong noticed that the sun on the horizon was about to set, leaving only a red sunset. Master Hero, Miss Catherine, welcome back. Meow. Seeing Wenlong and Catherine return, Big Hui and Xiao Hui immediately ran over, holding up their cat paws to greet them eagerly. So Wenlong nodded to the Hui and Xiao Hui, and then asked, How did you complete today's mission? Meow. Reporting to the hero, This mission has been completed. An entire acre of land has been opened up, and various plants can be planted at any time. Meow. Dahue said. In addition, we also built a wooden shed for the beehives you bought. Mr. Hero. To prevent wind and rain from affecting the beehives. Meow. Shall we added. Okay. Very good. Then take me to see those beehives first. Meow. Okay. Lord Hero. And Miss Catherine. Please come with me. Dahui said again. In this way. Dahui and Shao Hui led the way, followed by Wen Long and Catherine, and soon came to a flat land on the top of the mountain, where Wen Long saw a newly built wooden shed, and underneath the wooden shed was there are three beehives. It looks good. I didn't expect you guys to be able to do carpentry work. Meow. Wen Long praised it. Hero, thank you for your award. This is because we used to be members of the Yellow Cat Rescue Team. We often had to repair the flatbed trucks we used for work. So naturally, we also know a little bit about carpentry. This time, it was Xiao Hui who followed one. Long explained. Well, then you guys stand far away first. I'm going to start immigrating these wild bees into these hives. If you stand too close, it will be bad if you get stung. Meow. Okay. Mr. Cat. Catherine said. Okay. Lord Hero. Big Hui and Xiao Hui said in unison. Then Catherine. Da Hui. And Xiao Hui began to leave a considerable distance from Wenlong, while Wenlong took out gauze from the bag and rewrapped his exposed parts. Then, Wenlong turned around to confirm, and found that Catherine, De Hui, and Xiao Hui were already at a safe distance. Wenlong then tried to open the bag containing the wild bees' hive. In an instant, a large number of wild bees came out of their nests. Seeing only one creature nearby, they immediately surrounded him and prepared to attack Wenlong. But Wenlong's protection work was very good. Even if the black cloud-like wild bees surrounded him, there was nothing he could do about Wenlong. At most, it just allows Wenlong to spend more time driving away the wild bees that block his sight. After Wenlong completely poured out the honeycomb from the bag, Wenlong placed the honeycomb on a stable stone slab. Then Wenlong took out the hunter's knife he carried with him, and then began to aim at the wild mountain bee's honeycomb, preparing to cut it. Wenlong had also cut the hive of another wild bee before. But at that time Wenlong's purpose was just to obtain honey. So when doing these things, Wenlong's methods were relatively rough. But things are different now. Wenlong knows that if he wants to make wild bees move, the most important thing is to find the queen bee in the hive first, and then move the queen bee into the hive. Then other worker bees and drones will follow. In this case, in order not to hurt the queen bee, Wenlong could only be more cautious. Chapter 91 Plant the Seeds and wait for the harvest. Wenlong slowly cut open the hive and searched carefully. Soon Wenlong found a queen bee in the hive. Then Wenlong carefully caught the queen bee, opened the beehive that had been set aside, and put the queen bee inside. Sure enough, as the queen moved, other wild bees also began to move into the beehive, and soon settled down in the artificial beehive. However, Wenlong discovered that some of the wild bees in the original hive did not move away with the queen, but continued to stay in the damaged hive. This made Wenlong feel a little confused. Is there more than one queen bee in this hive? Meow? According to Wenlong's knowledge, there is usually only one queen in a hive. Most of the time, if two queens exist at the same time, conflicts will arise between the two parties. In the end, the death of one party will often end the battle. Of course, sometimes, in order to avoid conflict with the new queen, an old queen will leave the hive with some worker bees and drones, and then go to build a new hive elsewhere. But this is not always possible. Meat. With such suspicion, Wenlong continued to use a knife to divide the wild mountain bee's hive. And sure enough, he saw traces of a queen bee soon after. So Wenlong caught the queen bee and threw it into another beehive. Immediately the remaining wild bees followed and occupied the second hive. I'm really lucky. There were two queens at the beginning. And it is said that this wild bee has a very strong reproductive ability. It shouldn't take long for all the beehives I bought to be filled up again. Meow! Seeing that the wild bees in the two beehives had begun to adapt to the new environment, Wenlong felt quite satisfied. 
He even felt as if he had seen golden honey flowing continuously from the beehives. Look around. The hillside is full of flowers, which are the best honey-making raw materials for wild bees. The worker bees of wild bees that have adapted to the new environment have begun to go out to collect honey. Well, the plan to brew our own honey is going well. The honey from wild bees is much better than ordinary honey. And the natural effect when used to prepare medicine is also much stronger. Selling it at a good price shouldn't be a problem. So, what's next? Let's think about sowing the farmland. Leaving the hillside full of flowers. Wen Long came to the farmland that had been reclaimed at the foot of the mountain. It had to be said that Da Hui and Xiao Li worked very hard. The land, which was about an acre in size, had been cultivated in one day. Okay, now I'll give you the seeds. It's already a little late today. You can plant these crops early tomorrow morning. Meow. Wen Long said to Big Hui and Xiao Hui who were accompanying them. You will definitely fulfill your mission. Hero. Meow. Big Hui and Xiao Hui said at the same time. So Wen Long handed a big bag to Da Hui. Da Hui opened the big bag and found several small bags inside. These bags contained some different types of plants or plant seeds. Lord Hero, what are these seeds? Da Hui asked. There is a bag of medicinal herbs, a bag of dyed fruits, and a bag of sticky grass. There are also five seeds of strange power and five seeds of endurance. Do you know how to grow these crops? Meow? No problem. Lord Hero, Xiao Hui said. It only takes a few days. Lord Hero, you will see the results. Meow. Does it only take a few days? This growth rate is much faster than on Earth. Wen Long thought to himself. It is true that in the game, the crops planted only require the player to go hunting once and come back to grow and bear fruit. However, Wen Long did not expect that after coming to this world. The plants here grew so fast. However, Wen Long then thought about it. Since there are some ancient dragon species as huge as city walls in this world, it is understandable that the growth rate of plants is faster than on the earth. Well, that's good. I'll look forward to your performance. Meow. As he said that, Wen Long touched his beard. But at this moment, Wen Long suddenly noticed a pile of dark brown soil beside the field, which made Wen Long feel a little strange. Hey, Da Hui, Xiao Hui, what is that dark brown soil? Meow. Da Hui said, I'm telling you, Lord Hero, that it's river mud in the nearby river. It was washed to the shore when the tide rose in the morning. And Xiao Hui and I collected it together when the tide retreated in the afternoon. Meow. And Xiao Hui also said, This river mud is rich in humus, which is good as a fertilizer for crops. Meow. That's it. Wen Long nodded. I didn't expect that you have even prepared the fertilizer needed for planting. It seems that it is really not. Okay if I don't give you some rewards. Meow. As he spoke, Wen Long began to dig into the pockets he carried. Da Hui. Master Hero. These are what we should do. How dare we ask for any reward? Meow. Shall we? Master Hero. If you have anything to do, just ask us. We didn't come here for rewards. Meow. Although both Da Hui and Shall Hui expressed their refusal, Wen Long still took out the contents of the bag. As soon as he took it out, Wen Long found that Da Hui and Xiao Hui's eyes were straight. Is this Mutian polygonum? Meow. Big Hui and Xiao Hui said in unison. Oh, it turns out you all know this thing. So I'll reward you with this thing. Meow. So Wen Long took out two polygonum SPP from the bag and gave them to Da Hui and Xiao Hui respectively. Although Da Hui and Xiao Hui kept saying, No, 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 no. They were still very honest. He took Mu Tianli over. Hirosama, you actually gave us such a valuable thing. There is simply no way we can repay you. Meow. We will definitely work harder to repay the hero. Meow. Well, as long as you work hard, there will be more rewards in the future. Meow. Wen Long said. However, Wen Long was thinking in his mind. Sure enough, all Aluma cats are very interested in this with celery. How about I come and try it someday? What does it feel like to eat this thing? Afterwards, Wen Long saw that it was getting late. So he ordered Da Hui and Xiao Hui to take a rest first. Unexpectedly, Da Hui and Xiao Hui seemed unwilling to rest. Instead, they lit torches to illuminate the newly cultivated farmland and continued nonstop. The work of sewing began. Seeing Da Hui and Xiao Hui working so hard, Wen Long didn't want to say anything more. So he followed Catherine back to the cave. 
although Big Hui and Little Hui were also arranged to live in the cave. This spacious cave did not feel crowded at all. The place where Wen Long and Catherine lived was a relatively spacious place deep in the cave, while the location arranged for Big Hui and Xiao Hui was close to the entrance of the cave. There are two beds made of big wild boar furs, which are the bedrooms of Big Hui and Xiao Hui. Chapter 92 Future Vision Walk all the way forward until you reach a spacious open space deep in the cave. Where is Wolong and Catherine's bedroom? Although it is simple, it is still cozy, with a bed made of stones and a whole beaver fur used as a mattress. Nearby, an oil lamp lit with the grease of game animals illuminates the cave. The materials obtained by Wolong and Catherine's previous hunting were placed in a corner not far away. And in the middle of this area was an extinguished bonfire. No matter what, this cave is still too crude as a residence. Meow. When Long suddenly expressed emotion. No, Mr. Cat. I think it's pretty good here. Catherine on the side said. When Long saw that Catherine was a little guilty when she said this. So he said, Stupid woman. Don't be brave. After all, a cave is just a cave. If the cave is good, there will be no need for humans to build houses now. But there is no need to worry. We will soon have something like a house. And as we have more and more money in the future, I will build a super castle that is bigger and more luxurious than the king's palace. And then recruit a group of people. Hundreds of cat-eared maids are here to serve me. Meow. A castle bigger than the king's palace? Catherine was shocked when she heard this. Of course. How can a building like that be worthy of my great achievements in the future? And you stupid woman. Haven't you noticed that even Levi, a two-star low-level hunter, actually has a villa in Milad village? Now as long as you return to Milad village and complete this mission, you will also be a two-star low-level hunter. If you still live in a cave, it would be a bit of a loss of status. Meow. Wen Long said, Although that is true, there is no need to build a castle bigger than the king's palace. I didn't say that we would build such a big castle from the beginning. But at least, we had to build a mountain villa first before we could make sense. Although this would cost a lot of money. Money is what it is meant to be spent on. Meow. Wen Long said as he began to fiddle with the extinguished bonfire, add some new dead branches, and then light the bonfire in order to prepare for tonight's dinner. After all, I have been busy before and have no time to do this. I understand Mr. Cat. If it is your wish Mr. Cat. Humph. What's wrong with you? A woman. Other women especially like to live in big and beautiful houses. But you, a woman, are still picky? Meow. Wen Long said a little unhappy. No. 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 That's definitely not the case. Catherine quickly explained. Of course I'm happy to have a big house. But I'm still a little worried about money. We don't seem to have that much money to build a villa now. Right? No. But it will be available soon. In addition to being able to live in it. This villa is also an investment. If we go to a big city like Midge Bolton in the future. The villa here can also be rented out. We can make back the money we spent on the villa in the future. Meow. While Wen Long answered Catherine confidently, he also set up a shelf on the bonfire and took out pots, pans and other cooking utensils for cooking. These were all purchased together by Wen Long and Milad Village. The purpose is to make the food more diverse in the future. After all, no matter how delicious the barbecue is, you will get tired of it if you eat it every day. Investment? For Catherine, investing is indeed a very unfamiliar concept. So she doesn't understand it at all. Don't you understand investing? Well, forget it. You will know it later. Wen Long thought about it for a moment. But after thinking about it, he was too lazy to explain to Catherine. After all, Wen Long's investment philosophy came from his previous experience as an earthling. If he really had to explain it to Catherine, it would be difficult for Catherine to understand it. However, in Wen Long's mind, the plan had already been drawn up. First of all, if a villa was to be built, the location would be on the top of the mountain. Looking down from there, one could have a panoramic view of the most beautiful scenery in the vicinity. The vast sea of flowers on the hillside, the neat ridges of fields at the foot of the mountain, and the winding river a little further away. This unique natural environment can be turned into a business model similar to a farmhouse, specially designed to entertain people from big cities. Rich people, let them experience a different rural life, and even let them pick up imitation hunter weapons. Hunt docile and less offensive prey such as elf deer and herbivorous dragons nearby. And experience the experience of being a hunter. Different life experiences. At this time, the pot had been set up. 
And when Long began to pour some water and some spices into it and began to cook it, Catherine on the side was asked by Wen Long to cut fresh meat into thin slices. Mr. Cat, are you making hot pot? Well, it's hot pot. It's more convenient to make this kind of thing at this time. When Da Hui and Xiao Hui are done with their work, you can invite them to eat together. Anyway, just put the chopped meat and vegetables in it. By the way, there are also delicious specialty mushrooms. As a result, the topic between Wen Long and Catherine soon shifted to food, and the previous issue about building a mountaintop villa came to an end for the time being. Not long after, the water in the pot was boiling, and Wen Long was ready to put some sliced meat in it. At this time, Catherine suddenly said, That won't work. Mr. Cat. What? Meow? Wen Long asked a little strangely. You should put more fatty meat at the beginning, because there is not much oil or water in the soup base in the hot pot at the beginning. If you put the fat meat first, you can cook out the fat inside, so that the oil and water are just right. When you add lean meat later, it will be more alright. I see. I didn't expect you to be so knowledgeable about eating. Meow. As a time traveler from a big foodie empire, Wen Long felt that his dignity had been challenged. But at this moment, Big Hui and Xiao Hui also finished the work at hand. They smelled the aroma of hot pot in the distance and walked in. Wow. Lord Hero. I didn't expect you to cook dinner yourself. What a surprise. Meow, said Big Hui. This is our dereliction of duty. Because we have been busy with work, we forgot to prepare dinner for you. The hero, Meow. Xiao Hui also said, No, it's nothing. I also arranged your work. Compared with dinner, of course work comes first. You did nothing wrong. Meow. Wen Long said quickly, and at the same time, he waved to Da Hui and Xiao Hui came over to enjoy dinner together. Come on. Let's eat together. Hot pot is only lively when a group of people eat together. Meow. Chapter 93 The Function of Mutian Polygonum Early the next morning, when Wen Long woke up, he only felt a little headache. What did you do last night? I remember we all had hot pot together and chatted. Why did we fall asleep afterwards? After thinking about it, Wen Long felt that there seemed to be a blank in his memory. He recalled it carefully and found that the blank should have started when he threw Mutian Polygonum into the hot pot. I seem to have a very happy chat with the Hui and Xiao Hui. And then I heard that it would be good to add a Denium Striata in hot pot. So I put a Adenipium SPP in it. But the memory after that was completely gone. Meow. Thinking of this, Wen Long couldn't help but want to know what happened last night. Then he looked around and found that Catherine was no longer there. Since this woman got up so early, she must be training. Wen Long thought to himself. So Wen Long ran to the entrance of the cave and found that Catherine was training with a big sword as usual. Hey, woman, why are you up so early? Meow? Wen Long asked. Ah, it's Mr. Cat. It's already getting late. You got up too late today. If you don't believe me, just look at the sun. I woke up too late. Meow? Wen Long looked at the sun in the sky and found that it was almost noon. He looked at the fields below the cave and found that Big Hui and Xiao Hui were already busy at the fields. It was obvious that he was the only one who had just woken up at this time. I actually slept for so long. Wen Long felt a little surprised. So he said, What on earth did I do last night? Meow? Last night? Catherine suddenly laughed. Mr. Cat, you were very cute last night. How cute? Meow? Yeah. Usually when I hold Mr. Cat. Mr. Cat always seems to dislike me. But last night Mr. Cat was very proactive. Hey, what did I take the initiative for? What did I do? Tell me clearly. Meow. It's Mr. Cat. You took the initiative to come into my arms. And then you rubbed and rubbed. And then rolled on the ground. You kept making long sounds and meowing. It felt really cute. You can be said to be Mr. Cat. This is the closest you have ever been to me. When she said this, Catherine's face was filled with a happy smile. One long, on the other hand, froze on the spot. And after a while, he slowly said, Uh, I, I, I actually did such a shameful thing. Meow? How can you be ashamed? Isn't it normal for a Luma to act coquettishly in a girl's arms? Catherine corrected her righteously. It's not normal at all. When Long couldn't help complaining in his heart. How can a 20-year-old man still act like a coquettish woman in a woman's arms? He rubs and rubs with nothing. And rolls on the ground and keeps dragging her. Meowing in a long tone. Isn't that how ordinary cats behave when they're in heat? It's over. I'm so embarrassed to see people. Forget it. 
I'm not a human now anyway. After calming down for a while, Wenlong began to look for the reason why this happened last night. However, judging from his memories, Wenlong was almost certain that Mu Tianliu was the one who caused the trouble. Is it really because of Mu Tianliu? Wenlong said to himself, But why do Big Hui and Xiao Hui seem to be fine? Meow? That's because Mr. Cat seems to have never eaten Mutian polygonum before. Catherine heard Wenlong talking to himself. So she interjected, although Big Hui and Xiao Hui looked very excited. They were not. Like Mr. Cat. Is that so? So it turns out that my resistance to this thing is relatively weak. After thinking about it, Wenlong accepted this explanation. Indeed, according to some knowledge he had investigated before. The kiwi fruit contained in Polygonum Sibiricum has the effect of excitating cats. And the smell of this stuff is somewhat similar to that of cats. The hormones of scientific animals. Coupled with the fact that it was the first time for me to come into contact with such a thing. It was natural that such a result would occur. As for why Wenlong fell asleep, it was because after being excited, he would enter a period of fatigue. And this period of excitement and fatigue are like the highs and lows of a wave. The higher the level of excitement, the greater the level of fatigue afterwards, the higher it is. So compared to the Hui and Xiao Hui who got up early, when Long slept the longest. Forget it. Don't think about it anymore. Meow. After regaining his energy, Wen Long remembered that there were still many things that needed to be done today. So he said to Catherine, Woman, get ready to pack your things. Today we have to go back to Milad village to deliver a mission. Meow. Okay. Mr. Cat. Catherine nodded, then put down the sword in her hand and began to prepare the luggage for departure. While Catherine was packing her luggage, Wen Long came down from the mountainside and walked straight to the edge of the field. At this time, both the Hui and Xiao Hui were still working. When they saw Wen Long coming down, they immediately stopped what they were doing and paid tribute to Wen Long. What instructions do you have? Master Hero? Meow? Da Hui and Xiao Hui said together. There is indeed something going on, Wen Long said. I see that you have planted all the seeds and crops I gave you yesterday. But if you want to make the entire farm stronger, there are still some things you need to do. Do? Like these things. As he spoke, Wen Long took out another bag from his pocket and handed it over. Da Hui and Xiao Hui opened the bag and found that it contained some blue mushrooms for making ingredients. Wen Long continued to explain. The mushrooms here are almost blue mushrooms. They need your vigorous cultivation. I have important uses. I hope to see your results when I come back next time. Meow. I understand. Lord Hero, Da Hui said. As for mushrooms, we have grown them in our hometown. Sprinkle the spores of blue mushrooms on the wood in a dark and humid environment. And new blue mushrooms will grow in a few days. Shall we continue? Yes. Lord Hero, we will make an awning to ensure that the mushrooms are not exposed to direct sunlight. And water them all the time to keep the interior moist. If poisonous mushrooms get in, we will be the first to do so. Clean it up within time. Meow. Well, that's it. But besides that there is one more thing you need to do. Meow. Wen Long said again, as you command, Hirosama, meow. Then Wen Long took out another thing, which was a wooden basket like a cage, surrounded by gauze, leaving only a hole. Inside the wooden basket, there was a bottle containing perfume, which kept flowing out, exudes an attractive aroma. Sir Hiro, this is it. Da Hui and Xiao Hui put their faces close to each other. This is a cage for catching insects. I bought it in the village. You can make more like this. Put the scent of black insects in it. And then hang it on the trunk of the nearby forest. And then, there will be bugs coming in with the scent. Meow. After saying that, Wen Long took out another small bottle, which was full of black liquid. It could be seen that it must be the black perfume Wen Long mentioned. I bought this perfume in Milad Village. It's a little expensive. Just use it sparingly. Meow. Master Hero. I understand. Meow. Big we said together again. Chapter 94 promoted to a two-star low-level hunter. After assigning tasks to Big Hui and Xiao Hui, Catherine also checked their luggage. And then Wen Long and Catherine set off again. But this time when he returned to Milad village, Wen Long found that the people around him looked at him and Catherine obviously differently. There was obviously admiration in their eyes, making them look like idols who were under the spotlight. It must be that the fact that we completed the previous mission to investigate Xinglong has spread. After all, Milad village is not that big. One day is enough for the news to spread throughout the village. 
Meow. One long thought to himself. The strongest hunter in Milad village is a two-star low-level hunter. So if he can complete this investigation task that even the hunters dispatched by the hunter guild have not completed, he will naturally become a talkative figure in the village. Sure enough, it didn't take long for someone to come over and strike up a conversation with Catherine. Excuse me, are you the hunter who completed the investigation mission and got the scales of the star dragon? The person who spoke was a young hunter. Oh, ah, yes, that's us, Catherine said. It's amazing. There hasn't been a hunter as powerful as you in the village for a long time. And you're so beautiful. I wonder if you can be my girlfriend. Yes. I'm sorry. She didn't expect that the other party would say that she wanted to be a girlfriend as soon as she came up. Catherine's face suddenly turned red, and she quickly quickened her pace to get rid of the other party. Hey. Don't go. Just when the young man wanted to continue to pester Catherine, a female hunter holding a bow and arrow came over, pushed the young man away and then stood in front of Catherine, and saw the female hunter being herself introduced. My name is Rita. Are you interested in forming a hunting team with me? If we become partners, we will definitely be able to hunt any monster. As soon as the female hunter holding a bow and arrow finished speaking, someone on the side said, No one else will take a fancy to you. You are only a one-star mid-level hunter. What qualifications do you have to team up with a person who solved the Star Dragon investigation mission? Ah. Uh? Hearing what someone said, the female hunter holding a bow and arrow blushed suddenly. She turned around and found that the person who said this was the man she had just pushed away. Say it again? You're such a badass. You still want to be someone else's boyfriend. And you don't even look in the mirror. If others can take notice of you, it's a ghost. Huh? Who can tell me clearly about fate? Maybe the other person thinks I'm handsome. I bother. While the two were arguing, Catherine quickly got rid of the entanglement of the two and walked quickly towards the Hunter Guild's office in Milad. But soon, more and more people gathered around. Among them were those who were just here to strike up a conversation, and those who were trying to get Catherine to join a team for hunting. There were also those who wanted Catherine's autograph, and some who hoped that Catherine could introduce some information on how to become a successful hunter. Hunter's experience. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Don't get in the way. Otherwise, I will go crazy. Meow. Seeing the crowd surrounding them. When Long shouted while helping Catherine separate the crowd from the front. Only then did Catherine successfully reach the Hunter Guild's office in Milad. Hey. These people. Have you never seen a master? They are stalking you like a star chaser. Although I admit that I am very charming. Meow. When Long couldn't help complaining. Although those who gathered around wanted to rush into the Hunter Guild's office. They were stopped by the guards at the door on the grounds that they could not disrupt the normal office order. As soon as they entered the door, Sasha, who had been standing behind the counter, came over and said, You guys have really become very popular. Moreover, seeing how confident you are, your promotion mission should have been completed this time. Of course, I've completed the promotion tasks and so on. With me here, is there anything I can't complete? Meow. Before Catherine could answer, Wenlong answered first. Then Wenlong placed a big bag on the counter. As the bag opened, what was in front of Sasha was the head of a big strange bird. Yes, it's confirmed to be a big strange bird. Sasha then said to Catherine, Congratulations. From now on, you have become a two-star hunter. You are also the first person to become a two-star hunter since the establishment of our hunter guild. It's the shortest time required. I'll get the new badge right now. After a while, a delicate small wooden box was delivered to Catherine. The logo of two stars could be clearly seen on the lid of the wooden box. Catherine opened the wooden box, revealing a badge with two stars, one large and one small. One of the golden stars was the larger one, and the copper star was the smaller one. This is the badge of a two-star low-level hunter. Please keep it. Then we must take back the badge of the previous one-star high-level hunter. Please put the old badge in this wooden box, said Sasha. Then he placed a wooden box engraved with a star on the counter. Okay. Okay. Catherine quickly took out the high-level hunter badge with only one golden star from her pocket, and then put the badge into the recycling wooden box prepared by Sasha. Well, the old badges have also been recycled. Congratulations again for entering the realm of two-star hunters. In addition, the bounty reward for this mission is also here. After saying this, Sasha handed over another small bag, this time with Wynn. Long took the bag. I opened the bag and counted it. There were about 100 silver coins in it. 
You Hunter Guild is so stingy. Hunting a big strange bird only costs 100 silver coins. If converted into gold coins, it only costs one gold coin. It's better than nothing. Meow. Although he was a little dissatisfied, Wa Long still put the bag into his pocket. Middle. There's no way around it. The guild's operating costs are also very high. And your hunter's main income doesn't come from mission bonuses. Sasha explained with some embarrassment. Well, that's true. Wen Long shrugged, indicating that he didn't care about it. After all, as Sasha said, the real income of the average hunter comes from selling prey materials. In addition, if someone like Wen Long is proficient in prop blending, the gold coin income obtained from prop blending will be even more. Well, this little bit of mission bounty is really nothing compared to it. Let's go then. Woman. Meow. After collecting the silver coins, Wen Long took Catherine out of the Hunter Guild office. And behind Wen Long came Sasha's confused voice. Hey, aren't you taking on a new mission this time? No, I have other things to do recently. Meow. Wen Long waved his hand and replied without looking back. Chapter 95 in order to be a qualified partner. Mr. Cat, can I wear this badge now? Catherine asked Wen Long. Of course you can. I didn't take any action from the beginning to the end of this promotion mission. It all depends on your own efforts. In other words, this is something you earn through your own efforts. You can wear it whenever you want. Meow, Wen Long said. So she put the badge on her chest. And Catherine proudly showed it in front of Wen Long. While asking Wen Long if the badge looked good. Ah, good looking, good looking. Meow, Wen Long said casually. But even though it was perfunctory, it could still be seen that Catherine was very happy after hearing the compliment. Generally speaking, most hunters don't wear badges on their chests. After all, they often have to crawl around when hunting. If you wear this kind of badge on your chest, it will be lost accidentally. So it is usually only worn on the chest. Wear the badge only in formal occasions when you need to identify yourself to others. But the meaning of this badge is really important to Catherine. After all, this is the first mission that Catherine has completed independently. And it is also a promotion mission for a two-star low-level hunter who hunts big strange birds. It is natural for her to be so excited. So Wen Long didn't bother to say more. But let Catherine proudly show off her two-star badge. Okay, stupid woman. I don't have any problem with you pinning this bad badge on your chest. But can you stop giggling like a nympho while staring at the badge? Meow? Okay, okay, Mr. Cat. After Wen Long said this, Catherine restrained herself a little. So, Mr. Cat, what are we going to do next? The next step is to collect the money first. Of course. Meow. According to Wenlong's plan, the next step is to go to Claude to get the gold coins he won before. After all, there is half a box of gold coins and some potions there, which is a lot of wealth for Wenlong. Moreover, Wenlong has already inquired about it. The young man named Claude should have woken up from his coma and is still resting in the luxurious guest room of the Silver Dragon Pavilion. So Wenlong and Catherine left the Hunter Guild office and came to the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel. Although the group of people surrounding Catherine had dispersed, the passers-by along the way all cast envious glances at Catherine. Wenlong knew this that's the effect caused by that badge. A group of ignorant people are so envious after seeing a two-star badge. No wonder that guy named Levi is so arrogant in the village. Meow. Wenlong slightly despised these people who have never seen the market. People. Then he took Catherine straight to the innermost luxurious room on the second floor of the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel. After lightly knocking on the door, the door of the room was opened by a maid. El Cat. Wen Long saw Claude lying on the bed with gauze tied on his forehead. Next to Claude was someone he had seen before. Wang Li's bachelor. Lindy's. Mr. Wen Long. And Miss Catherine. I guess you are almost here. Please take a seat. Claude said. According to what Claude said, Catherine and Wen Long found a chair and sat down. It looks like you're not seriously injured. Meow. Wen Long said as soon as he sat down. Fortunately, the doctor said that I hit my head against a tree when I was blown away. I seem to have a slight concussion. But it's almost healed now. It's just that the doctor told me to rest for a while. Lindy's on the side also interjected. Then just listen to the doctor and have a good rest. Wen Long said. That seems pretty good. Since your head is almost healed. You should also know what we are going to do. Of course. I am a gentleman and I will never go back on my word. You want the wooden box containing the gold coins and medicine? I will ask the maid cat to get it for you right now. Saying that, Claude clapped his hands. 
Sure enough, a maid cat came in holding a box. Take a look. Everything you want is inside. Opening the box, Walong took a quick glance and found that all the gold coins and potions were inside. Half a box of gold coins. In addition to the other potions that I already have. Such as the recovery potion G. The hardening potion. The ghost potion. And the force removal potion. There are also antidote. Cold drinks. Hot drinks. And other potions that I haven't had time to prepare yet. With these potions. You can save time and mix them yourself. Meow. So when Long nodded with satisfaction and closed the box again. I can't see that you are quite cheerful. So I won't disturb your rest. I'll take my leave now. Meow. Seeing when Long getting up and preparing to leave. Claude said again. Wait a moment. What? Meow. I will not give up. Claude's voice was not loud. But firm. Meow. I mean. I won't give up on letting you be my Elu cat. Mr. Wenlong. Although I lost this time. I am more interested in you. I only thought you were strong before. But I didn't expect you to be able to defeat a star dragon alone. And since God allowed me to meet a powerful Elkit like you. It must be because we have a faithful connection. So next time. I will definitely get you. The more Claude talked. The more excited he became. If Lindy's hadn't been holding him down. He almost stood up from the bed. I will never let Mr. Cat go to you. Catherine said quickly after hearing Claude's declaration. Really? Then do you have the guts to bet with me alone? Let's see who is worthy of forming a partner with Mr. Wenlong. When he said this, Claude had a sly smile on his lips. Don't listen to him. He is using provocation. Meow. Wenlong whispered in Catherine's ear. However, Catherine did not listen to Wenlong's suggestion at all, but agreed to Claude's proposal without hesitation. Just bet. What are you betting on? Of course, it's a competition about whose hunting skills are better. But not now. For the time being, I will rest for a while, as the doctor said. And then the recovery period will take some time. Let's wait until you arrive in the big city of Meechpur. How about tanking? Anyway, with your strength, you shouldn't be willing to stay in this small Milad village. Right? When we get to Bolton, there is a huge hunting arena there. And we can all the winner will be decided in front of an audience. Hmm? I wish I could ask for it. Catherine said. Hey. Hey. Since when did I become a bet for you too? Meow. Wen Long protested. Mr. Cat. Catherine suddenly turned to Wen Long. Meow. Have you always thought that I'm a noob and always hold me back when hunting? Well, there are some cats. Wen Long admitted. I feel the same way. I also feel that I am so useless. I often need Mr. Cat to save me. So I am very afraid that Mr. Cat will leave me. I don't know what will happen to me if Mr. Cat leaves me. And I often I was thinking. If there is a hunter who is much stronger than me, and wants to find Mr. Cat as a partner. Mr. Cat, will you abandon me? Wen Long didn't speak, but Catherine continued. But these days I have figured it out. The best way to solve this problem is to make myself stronger. I want to become a partner that Mr. Cat can rely on. So that Mr. Cat you will never leave me. Come on. And this Mr. Claude just provides me with this opportunity. So I won't lose. Chapter 96 Information About Star Dragon Humph. It's just boring. Wen Long put the wooden box containing gold coins and potions into the bag he had prepared, and then carried it on his back. Mr. Cat. Woman. Let me ask you. You are going to compete with a two-star high-level hunter, and it is one-on-one -on -one in the arena in full view of everyone. I can't help you. In this case, you still do you think you'll win? Meow? Of course. Mr. Cat. I will win. Catherine said firmly. Huh? Obviously when I made the bet before. You were still determined to live and die. But now I have become willful. Well, forget it. If you can't even compare to this kid, then I really don't have to stay with you. But, when Long then turned to Claude, what if you lose? Do you have anything else to bet on this time? Meow? Of course there is. Although I don't have it with me now. I can assure you that when the time comes, I will put out something worth more than double this as a bet. Oh, is it more than double the value of this bet? Well, Okay. I look forward to seeing your outstanding performance. Then, we will meet Major Bolton in one month. Meow. After saying that, Wen Long turned around and left the room. And Catherine immediately followed Wen Long out. I'm sorry. Mr. Cat. Why are you saying sorry? Meow. Because I'm willful. Why are you so willful? Meow. Because I think this is the only way to truly prove that I am your most suitable partner. 
Mr. Cat. Instead of always relying on your protection. Mr. Cat. So, I am really sorry. It's okay to be sorry. Anyway, I think you can win. But you can't be careless. Since that kid dares to bet again. I'm afraid he still has some trump cards that we haven't seen before. Meow. When Long shrugged his shoulders. It means there is nothing to care about at all. At this moment, the door was opened again. Wang Long looked back and saw that Lindy's also left the room and chased after her. Mr. Wen Long, I have something to tell you. Lindy said, What's the matter? Meow. Wen Long was a little strange. Why he couldn't say something inside just now, but needed to chase it out. Mr. Wen Long, what I want to say is about the problems that appeared in the previous Star Dragon. In fact, after the survey mission was completed, I sent a report about the Star Dragon survey to the Gulong Observation Bureau. It should not take long. The Gulong Observation Bureau will send investigators to Milad Village. Lindy said, Gulong Observation Bureau? Wen Long searched his memory and then remembered what the Gulong Observation Bureau did. To put it simply, the Ancient Dragon Observation Bureau is an observation institution specially established for the powerful ancient dragon species. It is mainly used to observe and record the data of the ancient dragon species and provide data reference for preventing disasters caused by the ancient dragon species. Many times, whether, when and where the ancient dragon species will appear needs to be predicted by the data provided by the Ancient Dragon Observation Bureau. Once the prediction is successful, it will help minimize the losses to human society. Oh, it's the Ancient Dragon Observation Bureau. However, although the Star Dragon is powerful, it has not reached the level that can cause natural disasters. It should not fall under the observation scope of the Ancient Dragon Observation Bureau. Right? Meow? Wenlong asked. Indeed, as Mr. Wenlong said, the Star Dragon is not a type of ancient dragon, and its power is not dangerous enough to cause natural disasters. However, according to ancient books, as long as the Star Dragon appears, the world will a major event occurred that could affect the world. So we suspect that the Star Dragon is likely to be connected to some extent with the emergence of large-scale ancient dragon species. So that's it. It's for this reason that the Ancient Dragon Observation Bureau also monitors Xinglong's traces? Meow. That's it. But Star Dragon is just a legendary monster after all. And whether the legend is true or not is still controversial, even within the Ancient Dragon Observation Bureau. Although now, Mr. Wenlong, the scales on your hand have confirmed that Star Dragon existence. But we still don't know what the so-called major events that can affect the world are. After all, judging from the current situation, there are no signs of large-scale ancient dragon species being active. Therefore, many people suspect that our previous speculations were wrong. Got it! Then what does this have to do with me? Uncle? Meow? Wenlong pouted, saying that he was very busy and had no time to listen to Lindy's explain these things. I'm sorry, Mr. Wenlong. I don't mean to delay your time on purpose. But judging from your experience fighting Xinglong, I'm afraid you are the one who knows Xinglong best in the world. Right. So I guess ask Mr. Wenlong for your opinion. Well, Wenlong pretended to be thinking. And after a while Wenlong said, Your guess is correct. Star Dragon is indeed closely related to the large-scale activity of ancient dragon species. Of course, this relationship is not a direct relationship, but a more obscure indirect relationship. Meow. Can you tell me what kind of obscure indirect relationship it is? And Mr. Wenlong, how did you know? Do you have any information in your hand that we haven't seen? If so, can you lend it to me? Let me take a look. Lindy's immediately asked four questions in succession. What do you want to know so much about? In short, you just need to tell the old men at the Ancient Dragon Observation Bureau that there will be ancient dragon species appearing in the near future. And the ancient dragon species on the entire continent will gradually enter the active period from the latent period. As for this, how the uncle knows this is a personal secret. Please forgive me for not telling you. Meow. I can't say that I only know this because I have played the game. As he spoke, Wenlong thought to himself. Well, Mr. Wenlong, the information you provided us is indeed very important. I will report it to the Gulong Observation Bureau as soon as possible. As for other things, if there are any new discoveries, please tell me as soon as possible. Okay. You know, this is something related to the fate of the entire human society. The fate of the entire human society? When Lindy said this, Wen Long was stunned for a moment. When he was playing games before, Wen Long had never thought about it so much. After all, 
compared to the disasters caused by the so-called ancient dragon species to humans. The game is naturally more about letting players experience how to hunt these powerful monsters. Now being reminded by Lindy's, Wolong well, also felt bad. Well, if there is any new discovery, I will tell you as soon as possible. Meow. Wen Long said affirmatively. Okay. Please excuse me, Mr. Wen Long. Lindy's bowed very politely. From her attitude, Wen Long could clearly feel that she was sincerely thinking about the entire human society. Chapter 97 Persuading Old Man Hessen. Saying goodbye to Lindy's, Wen Long and Catherine slowly walked down the stairs on the second floor of the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel. Mr. Cat, is that kind of ancient dragon very powerful? Catherine asked as she walked down the stairs. Ancient dragon species. It's okay. As long as I'm here, there's nothing to be afraid of. Meow. Wen Long said. But having said that, I am still a little worried about the so-called ancient dragon species Wen Long. Because judging from what Wen Long has learned now, since the star dragon has appeared, the period when the ancient dragon species is active will not be too far away. At this time, Wen Long was still wearing the suit of the big boar king. This level of equipment could not even kill the star dragon let alone the much more powerful ancient dragon species. Oh, meow. You must speed up your plan. Otherwise, when the ancient dragon species appears, it will be really a headache if you don't even have the equipment to defeat it. Meow. Then, it's time to go find the old man named Hessen. Open up the trade route as soon as possible and sell the hunting supplies to Major Bolton. Only in this way can you make a lot of money. After all, you can't do it without money. Otherwise, the consumption power of a small Milad village is really too low. And even if it has enough materials, it won't be able to sell them at a good price. Meow. Thinking of this, Wolong quickened his pace. Returning to the first floor of the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel, Wolong looked around and began to look for Old Man Hessen. I remember that according to previous intelligence, since the trade route was blocked, Old Man Hessen should have been drinking alone in the hall on this floor every day. Sure enough, after looking around, Wen Long saw the figure of Old Hessen in an inconspicuous corner. Hey, old man, I have something to tell you. Meow. Wen Long walked over and said, You are? Old Hessen squinted his eyes for a while. And then he recognized Wen Long. Oh, it's the Elu cat from some time ago. Why? Now you have time to help me get through the connection with Major Wave. Are you on Erton's trade route? Yes. I happen to have some time recently. But it's not that simple. In fact, if you want me to help you open up the trade route connecting Milad Village and Midge Bolton, I have one condition. Meow. Oh. What are the conditions? Let me tell you. Old Man Hessen squinted his eyes slightly, looking slightly drunk. But Wolong could still see from his eyes that the old man was actually very sober. I can also ensure your safety when traveling between Midge Bolton and Milad Village. But I want to cooperate with your Basie Chamber of Commerce. That is, from now on, I will be the leader of your Basie Chamber of Commerce in Milad Village. Soul partner. What do you think? Meow? The only partner? Old Man Hessen's eyes opened a little. And he seemed to be thinking carefully about what Wen Long just said. Did I hear wrongly? Why is the number one chamber of commerce in our mainland in Milad? The village can only ask you to be a partner when doing business. Of course I am not just bragging. Because you have no choice. Now I am the only one in Milad Village who has the ability to open the trade route to Midge Bolton. What do you think? Are you willing to cooperate with me? What a joke. Old man, he's in blue his beard. And then glanced at Catherine standing next to Wen Long. So what if you are the most powerful hunters in Milad Village? I only need to wait a few more days. Okay. The request to clear the monsters on the trade road from Milad Village to Major Bolt and has been submitted to the Hunter Guild. And it won't take long for the Hunter Guild to send hunters to clean it up. Really? Wen Long smiled and said, but after so long, they still haven't come. Right? Meow? It's almost over. Just a few more days. A few more days for sure. Old Man Hessen argued. Don't have any illusions. When Long waved his hand, the Hunter Guild can't spare any extra power to solve the trade problems of small villages like Milad Village. Now the continent is full of raging monsters. Hunters the Guild doesn't have enough manpower anymore. Meow. But monster turmoil will always subside one day. There are so many three-star or above hunters in the Hunter Guild headquarters. These monster riots should be resolved soon. Maybe. But old man, I'm afraid you won't be able to wait for that day. Because the current monster turmoil is just a prelude to the disaster. Next, 
more large monsters will come out of inaccessible forests, deserts, and snowy mountains and begin to move towards humans. The gathering place will migrate, and in the future, even the ancient dragon species will begin to enter the active stage. I say this. I think you should understand what is going on. Right? Meow? Wenlong said confidently. At first, old man Heezen didn't care much about Wenlong's words. But after hearing Wenlong say that the ancient dragon species on the mainland were about to enter an active stage, he finally couldn't help it anymore. The ancient dragon society has entered an active stage. How did you know? Old man Heezen asked. Actually, I just got the news from the Gulong Observation Bureau. In order to make his statement more credible, one long simply used the tiger skin of the Gulong Observation Bureau as a banner. Otherwise, if one long said it was his news, the other party might not believe it at all. Come on. What did the Gulong Observation Bureau say? Throughout the entire continent, the ancient dragon observation bureau has always been authoritative in predicting disasters caused by large ancient dragon species. So when he heard the news coming from the ancient dragon observation bureau, old man Hessen naturally couldn't sit still. Humph. You must have heard about this Xinglong incident. Right. When Long deliberately let it slip and began to speak slowly. I know. Didn't you solve this problem? I have to admit that you and your partner are the strongest in Milad village. But don't be complacent. Compared with a small village like Milad village, it's different. In a big city like Midge Bolton, there are many hunters who are much stronger than you. Really? Regarding my strength, I am too lazy to argue with you. I just want to tell you that since you know the Star Dragon, you should have heard the legend about the Star Dragon. For example, once the Star Dragon appears, it often old man, you must have heard of the saying that something major has happened. Right. Meow? Old man Hessen nodded. Although he had never seen Xinglong, he had always heard the legends after living a long life. You've heard that. So you mean the legend is true? Yes. The information I have received is that the legend is true. And the so-called major event is actually that the ancient dragon species around the world will begin to enter an active period. What will happen to the world then? Uncle Hessen. Don't you don't know? Right. Meow? Is this really the case? Old man Hessen couldn't help but wipe his forehead where beads of sweat had already appeared. Because old man Hessen knows that once the ancient dragon species begins to enter its active period, it will not be something that can pass in a short time. During this period, not only will there be a large number of monster attacks on humans, but there will also be incidents caused by the ancient dragon species. Huge Natural Disaster Chapter 98 Kill Three Birds With One Stone How about it? Only if I take action can you run a stable business. Otherwise, it will be a few years before the Hunter Guild can find the manpower. Right. Meow? Wolong struck while the iron was hot and continued. Well, okay. I believe you. Old man he's inside helplessly. It is true that you are the only one who can do it in Milad village now. But let me tell you first. This mission is not that good. It's easy. We need to pass through the Thundering Sand Sea, where we will encounter powerful monsters you have never seen before. Aren't they just some salon kings and thunderbirds? Meow? Wen Long said nonchalantly. Oh, it seems you guys are pretty clear about it. I hope you won't disappoint me then. Don't worry, old man. I also want to cooperate for a long time. I will need your help to make money in the future. How can I disappoint you? Meow? Well, then, I will gather my caravan now. I will probably be able to set off early tomorrow morning. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Meow! When he came out of the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel, Wen Long was in a particularly refreshing mood. Wen Long knew in his heart that if the cooperation with Mr. Hessen was successful, it would mean that he would reach a cooperative relationship with the Basie Chamber of Commerce, the number one company on the continent, in the future. After that, Wen Long was not only able to use the Basie Chamber of Commerce's sales network to sell the materials and props he obtained to other parts of the mainland obtaining a large amount of money for himself that was unmatched before. But he was also able to conveniently use the Basie Chamber of Commerce's network to collect some important materials for yourself that you can't usually collect at all. Of course, in addition to the above two reasons, Wenlong also has a hidden purpose in his heart. That is, through this cooperation with the Basie Chamber of Commerce, he can attack Levi and the storm hunting group he created. As the saying goes, kill three birds with one stone when he questioned several of Levi's men before. When Long got information about the financial sources of the storm hunting group, 
so Wen Long knew very well that most of the funds Levi needed to maintain the storm hunting group were obtained by selling recovery medicine. Of once Wen Long opens the trade route between Milad Village and Midge Bolton. A large amount of goods coming from big cities will impact the original prices of Milad Village. Which naturally includes the price of recovery medicine. If the price of recovery medicine is affected, Levi's financial resources will naturally be greatly affected. Of course, this is just one of Wen Long's methods to bring down the storm hunting group established by Levi. In conjunction with this method, there are other methods. However, it is not the time for Wen Long to start these methods yet. So Wen Long temporarily there's just no movement yet. But since that old man Hessen won't be setting off until tomorrow morning. Let's make some preparations as early as possible. If there's a thundering sand sea, it's safer to prepare some things as early as possible. Meow. Now that he had to prepare, the first thing Wen Long thought of was to build new equipment. He happened to hunt a big strange bird before. And he could use the materials of these big strange birds to build a new set of equipment. But when Wenlong came to Granny Ruisi's forging house, Wenlong found that the materials of just a big strange bird were not enough to build Catherine and his own equipment. In short, we can only build one set of equipment. Either this lady's or yours. Granny Ruisi said to Wenlong. Why was it that the materials of a big wild boar king could be used to create two sets of equipment? But the materials of a big strange bird could only be used to create one set of equipment. Meow? Wenlong asked a little strangely. When did you? A cat. Become so stupid that you don't even understand this. Last time, the Big Wild Boar King's equipment was upgraded from the Big Wild Boar's equipment. It consumed a smaller amount of materials. So it was able to barely defeat the two of you. The equipment is all fully built. This time, the equipment of the Big Strange Bird and the equipment of the Big Wild Boar King are not of the same system. There is no way to upgrade and can only be rebuilt. So this little material is not enough. Understand? Oh. I almost forgot about this. Wen Long scratched his head in embarrassment. Then make me a set first. Meow. You're not polite. You cat. Won't you give the good equipment to the girl first? Grandma Ruisi rolled her eyes at Wen Long. Then turned to Catherine aside. Because there is insufficient material. I will give it to this one first. Is it okay for silly cat to build equipment? No problem. Mr. Cat would be better suited to utilize the power of the equipment than me. Well. Okay then. Just stick to the old rules and pick it up tomorrow morning. With that said, Granny Reese accepted the bag of materials for the big strange bird and then waved her hand, signaling Wen Long to come back tomorrow. So Wen Long and Catherine returned to the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel. This time, Wen Long asked the hotel owner for a guest room, intending to have a good rest in this room until tomorrow and not go out again. Let's clean up the things we need to bring tomorrow so that we won't be in a hurry tomorrow morning. As soon as he entered the guest room, Wen Long took out the sandalwood box he had taken from Claude, then opened the box and began to count the contents. You must bring cold drinks. Well, there are also hot drinks. There are even sonic bombs and dying balls. As for the recovery potion G, I have plenty of them. But the things Claude prepared for daily hunting are not enough. It's quite complete. If you have all these things, there's no need to bother to reconcile them for the time being. Meow. Seeing the complete hunting props inside, Wen Long thought of the storage box he had when playing games. It was also filled with various hunting props and money. But compared to this small box, the quantity was much larger. The types are also more abundant. It's a pity that the equipment and props in the game cannot be directly traveled through time. Which is also a pity for Wen Long. Mr. Cat, what are these things for? Why haven't I seen them before? Seeing Wen Long cleaning the props, Catherine came over curiously and said, Stupid woman. There are a lot of things you haven't seen before. Listen. First of all, it's this thing. We usually call it cold drink because this time we need to pass through a vast desert to escort old man Hessen to Mitch Bolton. So in order to prevent heat stroke, this thing is essential. Meow. Wen Long began to explain seriously. Oh, so that's what happened. What about this one? Catherine pointed to a bottle of red liquid and asked. This is a hot drink. It has the opposite effect to a cold drink. It is used when it is cold. It can make the whole body warm and resist the invasion of cold air. Meow. Eh? Isn't it very hot in the desert? Why do you need both cold drinks and hot drinks? Catherine was a little confused. It's normal. The desert is very hot during the day. But at night, it can be so cold that you shiver. Meow. Chapter 99 set off immediately. 
just like when Long said, It is really cold in the desert at night. But during the day, if you hit a raw egg on a stone, you can see it being cooked immediately, precisely because the environment of the thunderous sand sea is so harsh. Even if the threat posed by monsters to humans is excluded, the disaster brought by the endless desert itself to humans is already quite terrifying. But unlike humans who have difficulty adapting to the environment of the thundering sand sea, this is a paradise for some monsters. Although the environment of thunderous sand sea is harsh, it has a completely different ecology from Xiaofeng Valley and Hermit Forest. Monsters known to pose a strong threat to humans include Huang Velociraptor, a close relative of Blue Velociraptor, which can sneak into the sand, the mobile saloon king in the sea, the sand beast that cruises near the desert oasis, and the sand bird with an almost crazy desire to attack, in addition to cold drinks and hot drinks. Well, sonic bombs are also necessary. Otherwise it will be easy to fall into an unfavorable situation when dealing with monsters that can lurk in the sand. After Wenlong put the cold drinks and hot drinks into his pocket, he then took out two gray spherical objects. After thinking about it carefully, Wenlong handed one of the spherical objects to Catherine at the side. The other one was put in the pocket like the previous cold drinks and hot drinks. Eh? Mr. Cat, what is this for? This thing is called a sonic bomb. It is a small explosive bomb. It is not very powerful. But it can emit high-frequency sound waves when it explodes. It is a particularly effective weapon for some monsters with particularly sensitive hearing. Oh, that's right. Then how should I use it? It's a little too early to explain to you how to use it. Put the things away first. This thing is very important. I will use it when I tell you to use it. Do you understand? Meow? Ah. Okay. Mr. Cat. Following Wenlong's instructions, Catherine also put the sonic bomb in her pocket and put it away. Then Wenlong collected the various props in the sandalwood box again. Wenlong temporarily left some props that were not needed in the box, while others that might be used were put on his back. Among the backpacks, those that need to be used immediately in emergencies are put into the pockets. After all the props were sorted and put away, Wenlong recovered the box and put it into a big bag. Okay, all the props that need to be prepared are ready. Since we are leaving early tomorrow morning, let's go to bed early today. Meow. Um, although it was said that they had to rest early, Wenlong and Catherine still had to do daily training. After completing their respective daily training, Wenlong and Catherine took a hot bath in the bathtub to release their body energy. Fatigue. I lay on the bed and quickly fell asleep. Early the next morning, the sky was still slightly bright. When Long and Catherine, who were fully prepared, directly picked up their packed luggage and set off, because they had to go to Granny Ruisi to get new equipment first. When Long and Catherine Catherine's wake-up time was even earlier than that of old Heezen, who needed to assemble the caravan. Soon, when Long got the equipment as agreed. The armor was a set of light armor made of the red scales and carapace of the big strange bird and the weapon was a pair of pairs of bones made of the big strange bird with shark claws. Knife. And the fire bag attached to it adds a bit of fire attribute attack capability to the weapon. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> One long held two double knives and waved them in the air several times. In addition to the air-breaking sound caused by the double knives cutting through the air, One long could also clearly feel a burning breath coming from the ground. Obviously, this was the flames. The scorching energy released by the bag heats the surrounding air. Later. Wenlong put on the armor of the big strange bird again. This time, Wenlong felt the soul power from the big strange bird. The power of the soul this time is attack plus two. Well, not bad. Really good. Ha uh ha. -huh. Wenlong was secretly happy in his heart. If calculated according to the general weapon and armor levels, the level of the big strange bird suit should be level 10. And with Granny Ruiz's craft bonus, then the big strange bird suit that Wenlong is currently equipped with has reached level 10. It's level 14, but taking into account the special effect of plus 2 attack brought by the big strange bird suit. In fact, the strange bird double evil. In Wenlong's hands made of the big strange bird material is equivalent to reaching level 16. It's two levels higher than the armor's level 14. Well, is it your work, old lady? It's still so sophisticated and has this fire attribute attack. Although most of the monsters in this thundering sand sea have relatively high fire resistance. Having fire attribute attacks is better than not having it at all. Meow. One. Long couldn't help but praise. Humph. You cat. Since when did you start saying nice things again? But even if you praise me, I won't give you a discount. Here you go. 
a total of 20 gold coins. Who said I want you to get a discount? I am the kind of person who only cares about money. No. Cat? Meow? With that said, Wenlong opened a money bag and counted it. There were 40 gold coins in it. Then Wenlong threw the money bag directly to Granny Risi. There are a total of 40 gold coins here. Take them all. And I will reward you. Meow. Who cares about your money? In anger, Granny Risi threw the money bag back to Wenlong. Unexpectedly, Wenlong took the money bag and suddenly laughed. Do you think I am really willing to give you 40 gold coins? It's just that I know you will throw the money back. Ha ha. But, old lady, it's not because I won't give you this money. It's because you don't want it. Meow. You damn cat. No matter what Granny Ruisi said, Wan Long put the money bag back into his pocket without hesitation. And then left Granny Ruisi's forging house in a swagger. Arriving at the entrance of the village wearing the newly made equipment, Wan Long found that old Hessen's caravan was almost assembled. About twenty herbivorous dragons gathered on a grassland at the entrance of the village. These bulky but docile herbivorous animals have considerable strength. So they are the best helpers for most caravans to carry goods. In addition to Old Man Heezen, there are other businessmen who are also with Old Man Heezen. And they are all quite young. The youngest one looks to be in his 40s. And the older ones are probably about the same age as Old Man Heezen. But even even so, it can still be seen that in this caravan, Old Man Hessen is the greatest authority. Hey, old man, I'm here. How long does it take for your caravan to set off? Meow. As soon as they met, Wen Long first asked Mr. Hessen about the departure time. Immediately. Immediately. You see, all the herbivorous dragons have arrived. And there are still a small amount of goods that need to be tied to the backs of the herbivorous dragons. After finishing these, you can set off immediately. Old Man Hessen's answer was different. No rush. Chapter 100 Entering the Thundering Sand Sea so Wen Long and Catherine waited on the side of the road for a while. Watching Mr. Hessen and his merchants laboriously carried large bundles of goods onto the back of the herbivorous dragon, and then skillfully used thick hemp ropes to lift them. These goods are tied securely. Judging from the smooth movements of these merchants when bundling goods, they should all be veteran merchants with considerable experience. However, from the movements of most merchants struggling to move piles of goods, Wen Long could still see that these merchants were because I'm a little older. I feel a little incapable of doing physical work. Hey, old man, why don't you recruit more young people when your caravan is full of old men? Meow. Wen Long expressed his doubts. Young people? Old man Hessen sighed. Well, who doesn't want to recruit young people? But there are very few young people who like to do this nowadays. For example, the eldest lady in our chamber of commerce, who is young, instead of inheriting the family fortune, he went to become a hunter. Oh. So that's it. Meow. Wen Long touched his chin thoughtfully. Then, Uncle Hessen, let me help you. At this time, Catherine suddenly said, You? Although we are old men, we are too embarrassed to let you, a girl, do such rough work. It's okay. This is quite easy for me. As she spoke, Catherine had already picked up two bundles of goods and placed them on the herbivorous dragon's back very easily while a businessman on the side quickly tied the goods with ropes and fixed them. It's really amazing. I didn't expect it to have such great power. Many businessmen burst out in wonder. Then Catherine took several bundles of goods and put them on the herbivorous dragon's back one after another. The whole process did not pause. But her face did not turn red. Her heart did not beat. And she did not even take a breath. So with Catherine's help, the merchant's task of tying the goods to the back of the herbivorous dragon was quickly completed ahead of schedule. Thank you so much, Mr. Hessen said sincerely on behalf of the surrounding businessmen. It's okay, Uncle Heezen. Everyone should help each other. And this is also very easy for me, Catherine said a little embarrassed. You can't say that. It's rare to see young people like you who are helpful to others. Besides, you are much better than the alcat you raised. You are polite and know how to help others. When he said this, old man Hessen glanced at Wenlong, who was resting under the big tree and looked like it was none of his business. No, Mr. Cat may have a bit of a bad mouth, but he has a good heart. Catherine quickly corrected him. Oh, is that so? As he spoke, old man he's inside again. Oh, it would be great if our chamber of commerce could also have young people as capable as you. By the way, the eldest lady in our chamber of commerce did it in the first place. I was about the same age as you when I was a hunter. 
I haven't seen him for a long time. I don't know where he is now. I don't know if he would like to come back and inherit the Chamber of Commerce. I think you will be able to find her. Uncle Hessen, Catherine said. Okay, let's not talk about this anymore. People, as they get older, they like to gossip. Please don't be offended. Now that the goods have been tied up, it's time to set off. As he spoke, old man Hessen raised the whip in his hand and hit the herbivorous dragon leading the caravan with a snap sound. Then the herbivorous dragon let out a low snort and began to walk forward. Let's go! Old man Hessen held the reins of the herbivorous dragon and walked at the front of the caravan, targeting the leading herbivorous dragon. The following herbivorous dragons also moved. It can be seen that the leading herbivorous dragon is the leader of the entire group of herbivorous dragons. The other herbivorous dragons all follow the actions of the leading herbivorous dragon as your own code of conduct. This is somewhat similar to being the leader of a flock. Others, including Wen Long and Catherine, walk behind the other herbivorous dragons. This was mainly to find the herbivorous dragons at the end of the team that were lagging behind, or because the goods on the herbivorous dragons' backs were not tied up properly, and the situation of falling. Just like that, the entire team turned into a long, slender snake and began to move. According to Wen Long's plan, the entire caravan passed near the cave where Wen Long and Catherine lived after setting off. There, Wen Long ordered De Hui and Xiao Hui to move out all the prey materials they had accumulated in the cave. And then these the goods were carried on the back of the herbivorous dragon and set off with the entire caravan to the large city of Mijbolton for sale. As for the money for these materials, they will be settled after Major Bolton arrives. At that time, the settlement value will be calculated based on the real-time market price of similar products on the market that day. Two days later, after two days of climbing mountains, and wading through rivers. The caravan finally arrived at the edge of the Thundering Sand Sea. Before this, the caravan was traveling on the Himilun Mountain Road. Everything was normal, and no powerful monsters were encountered that posed a threat to the caravan. It can even be said that most of the monsters consciously chose to retreat after seeing such a caravan consisting of more than 20 herbivorous dragons and 7 or 8 people. Only a few who did not know life or death dared to rush up and were then killed by Wen Long and Catherine easily taken out without any effort. It can be said that the journey for these two days was very smooth and there was no danger. However, everything changed once we entered the thundering sand sea. It's so hot! Wen Long took a big sip of water, but the water immediately turned into sweat and flowed out, and it didn't seem to have any cooling effect. Looking up at Catherine, she found that sweat had soaked Catherine's hair, and her bangs were stuck tightly to her forehead. Breathing that should normally be steady has become a little rapid. This made Wen Long a little unable to hold himself back. Hey, old man, what time is it now? Is the time already up? I'm almost going to be a dog from the heat. Meow. Wait a minute. Let me take a look. Old man Hessen took out a pocket watch from his arms and looked at the time on it. Then he raised his head and squinted his eyes, half shielding his hands to look at the sun in the sky. Wen Long knew that this was Uncle Hessen using two different methods to confirm the time to ensure the accuracy of the time. Otherwise, if the pocket watch in your hand is broken, it is very likely that you will draw wrong conclusions about time. It's almost there. Both the pocket watch and the sun show that it's five minutes before noon. If you can't bear it, just drink the cold drink. Chapter 101 The Sound of Beasts and Thunder Huh? Wen Long opened his pocket with relief. Took out two bottles of crystal clear liquid and then handed one of the bottles to Catherine. Thank you, Mr. Cat. These two bottles of crystal clear liquid are what are called cold drinks. There is a special kind of ice crystal inside that can continuously release cold air to the surroundings. This allows one long to see these bottles of cold drinks even in the desert. The bottle is surrounded by a thin layer of white mist. Then let's drink it. Naya. With that said, one long and Catherine opened the lid of the cold drink at the same time, and then drank the crystal clear liquid in one breath. In an instant, the cold air entered the stomach along the esophagus, and then slowly spread, following the blood circulation, until it spread all over the body. Wow! This is so comfortable! There is nothing more comfortable than drinking a cold drink in this hot weather! Meow! Wen Long shuddered with excitement, and then said, Catherine's condition has obviously improved a lot, and her somewhat rapid breathing has stabilized. Her skin, which had been moistened by sweat, has also become much refreshed after wiping it with a towel. No more sweat has leaked out for the time being. After Wen Long and Catherine drank the cold drinks, other people in the caravan took out the cold drinks in their packages 
and drank them one by one. Like one long. These people immediately showed a lot of emotions after drinking the cold drinks. For a happy expression? Of course. There is a reason why the group of people in the caravan chose this time period to drink cold drinks. Generally speaking, the cooling effect of a bottle of cold drink lasts about four hours. Although the sun usually reaches the center of the sky at 12 noon, the highest temperature of the day is around 2 p.m. So starting at 2 in the afternoon and extending for two hours. That is to say, the period from 12 noon to 4 p.m. is the hottest time every day in the entire thundering sand sea. Therefore, considering that cold drinks themselves are not cheap, most people will choose to drink cold drinks at 12 noon to help themselves get through the hottest period of the day. So the caravan continued to move forward. As the caravan gradually deepened, people began to hear a loud noise like thunder. Boom, boom, boom. Such sounds kept ringing. Even though the sky was still clear and not even a cloud could be seen. But the thunder sounded from far to near and never stopped. Mr. Cat, what is that sound? Because the thunder was very loud and almost continuous. Catherine asked almost at the top of her voice. It's nothing to be surprised about. It's just the sound of the wind. Meow. Wen Long also shouted loudly. Eh? Can the wind be so loud? The wind in the desert is already strong. But it's just that the wind is not strong enough to make such a loud sound. The sound seems to be related to the special sand here. Which is also a major feature here. So it is called thunder. Sand sea. Meow. Oh. That's what it is. Catherine nodded. And then said. Mr. Cat. You know so much. You even know this kind of thing. Humph. How can I be compared to ordinary people like you? Halfway through his words. When Long seemed to feel something and suddenly stopped and made a stop gesture at the same time. Seeing this gesture, everyone including Old Man Heezen stopped. And then the herbivorous dragon team following Old Man Heezen also stopped moving forward. This is the contact information that has been determined before the caravan enters the Thundering Sand Sea. Let Wen Long and Catherine walk in front of the team with Old Man Heezen. Once they encounter problems, they can use gestures to contact them immediately so that the team can respond as soon as possible. Obtaining information also ensures that the entire team can act according to the instructions as soon as possible. What's going on? Seeing Wen Long actually asking the team to stop. Old Hessen, who was walking with Wen Long, asked, Be quiet. This time the thunder is mixed with the cry of wild animals. Meow. Is there a wild beast? Old Man Heezen's eyes widened. It's not that Old Man Heezen didn't believe Wen Long's words. But he was a little surprised that Wen Long could actually distinguish the subtle cry of wild beasts in the distance from the huge noise. That's all. Okay. It should be coming soon. And there are more than one. Oh, meow. Hurry. Surround them. Hurry. When Wen Long said this, Old Man Hessen immediately realized the seriousness of the problem. He shouted, Hurry up and form a circle for defense. He raised his hands high to form a circle so that the people at the end of the team could people can also pay attention to their own instructions. Soon, the caravan moving in a long snake formation began to change. The front and end of the team began to turn in one direction, and then splice together. The original long snake became a circle connected end to end. Shape. Among them, the sturdy herbivorous dragons were located on the outside of the circle like a city wall, while the humans entered the inside of the circle. Some of them drew out the daggers in their hands and some were even equipped with easy-to-use crossbows. But when Wen Long could tell at a glance that these weapons were just ordinary weapons, not special weapons for hunting. At most, they could only be used to deal with ordinary bandits. Therefore, it is basically impossible to use such a weapon to hunt monsters. If you are lucky, it will only serve as a deterrent at best. This circular formation is also a conventional defensive formation that most caravans will choose when encountering danger. After all, Although the bulky herbivorous dragon has a strong load-bearing capacity, its movement speed is relatively slow. If it does not adopt defensive shaping, it can easily be defeated when it encounters enemies. Of course, unlike most people who retreated into a circular defense, when Long and Catherine stood outside the circle, they drew their weapons and assumed a posture of being ready to face the enemy at any time. Not long after, traces of some monsters were revealed behind the sand dunes in the distance. These monsters had obvious characteristics of bird dragons, but they did not have wings like the big strange birds, but instead had four limbs, the hind limbs being much more developed than the four limbs. When moving, they mainly rely on the strength of their hind limbs, and they are also covered with yellow-brown scales, and their eyes are cunning and sinister. Wolong recognized their identities at a glance. 
It's actually a yellow velociraptor, and there are quite a lot of them. It's really a bit of a problem. Meow. It stands to reason that Huang Velociraptor is not a powerful monster. But Wen Long knew that since he encountered a group of Huang Velociraptors in the desert, there must be a yellow Velociraptor king in such a Huang Velociraptor group. Sure enough, not long after, a larger and more sinister-looking yellow speed dragon king also appeared among the Huang speed dragon group. Chapter 102 Huang Sulong King's Trick According to the Hunter Guild's classification of monster threat levels, the Huangsu Dragon King should be a monster of the same level as the Big Strange Bird, both of which can be hunted by a two-star low-level hunter. But unlike the Big Strange Bird, the Yellow Velociraptor King usually brings a group of Yellow Velociraptors together, and the group is often larger than their close relatives, the Blue Velociraptors. Therefore, one long believes that the Hunter Guild's threat level to Huang Speed Dragon is not very appropriate. If it is a group consisting of a Huang Speed Dragon King and about 20 Huang Speed Dragons, then Wenlong admits that this is indeed as threatening as a big strange bird. After all, simply comparing the Yellow Speed Dragon King and the big strange bird in terms of single target ability, the big monster bird has the upper hand. However, according to book records, the number of Yellow Velociraptor groups is often not certain. In many cases, the number of Yellow Velociraptors often exceeds 20. There are even records in some ancient books that there have been incidents with thousands of yellow velociraptors in the past. A group attack on a large caravan. So in this case, the threat level of Huang Sulong King must be much higher than that of a single big strange bird. Therefore, what Wulong has to do is to first determine the size of this group of Huang velociraptors. Otherwise, if he takes rash actions without understanding the size of the opponent, it is likely to cause irreparable consequences. However, Wulong seemed to be relatively lucky. Soon after the Yellow Speed Dragon King appeared, no more Huang Speed Dragons appeared from behind the dunes. Wen Long roughly counted the number of Huang Speed Dragons at about 20. However, it can only be regarded as a small-scale Huang Velociraptor group. And this undoubtedly made Wen Long breathe a sigh of relief. But what made Wen Long feel a little puzzled was that these Huang Velociraptors did not immediately attack the caravan, but just watched from a distance, neither approaching nor intending to leave. Mr. Cat! Let's go and fight these yellow velociraptors away now. Catherine couldn't help but suggest. Don't worry. Wen Long thought for a moment. And then said. Woman. You stay here. I will take care of those yellow speed dragons. Meow. Eh? Mr. Cat. Are you going alone? No problem. It's just a group of yellow velociraptors. But you have to remember that you stay with the caravan during this period and don't leave. Do you understand? Meow. Okay. Mr. Cat, I will protect the safety of the caravan. Of course, Wen Long couldn't leave this group of Huang Velociraptors alone. Because in this case, once being targeted by the Huang Velociraptor group, it meant that the caravan could not move normally and could only stay in place and maintain a defensive formation. Such long-term consumption is undoubtedly very detrimental to the caravan. But if these Huang Velociraptors really want to be wiped out, Wen Long feels that these yellow Velociraptors have other intentions. So Wen Long chose to go alone to meet these cunning Huang Velociraptors, leaving Catherine to help the caravan defend itself. Seeing Wen Long walking towards him, the Huang Speed Dragons also put up a fighting posture. However, unlike the large wild boar group led by the big wild boar king, in the Huang Speed Dragon group, the Huang Speed Dragon King stood still. At the rear of the team, the remaining Huang Sulong began to spread out on both sides, obviously trying to surround Wen Long. Oh meow! This is what I hate about Huang Speed Dragon. After all, enemies with bright brains are more troublesome than enemies that rely purely on strength. Wen Long thought this and drew out the two swords on his back. Under the illumination of the poisonous sunlight, the double swords with fire damage seemed to become even hotter. And Wen Long also accelerated at this moment and rushed over. The target was of course Huang Sulong King, who was behind the encirclement. Since you want to hide behind, I'll catch you out first. Meow. Wen Long knew very well that he could not follow the opponent's pace. So before the Huang Sulong group's encirclement was completed, Wen Long took the lead in launching an attack. In Wen Long's view, as long as the Huang Sulong king who gave orders was eliminated, then the entire the Huang Velociraptor group will completely lose their combat effectiveness and turn into a ball of loose sand and disperse in a rush. Of course, things did not go as smoothly as Wen Long thought. Wen Long's surprise attack seemed to be expected by the Yellow Speed Dragon King. Soon. Five Huang Speed Dragons took action to stop Wen Long in a dense formation. In front of the dragon, 
Other Huang Sulong also began to circle around from both sides and the rear, and began to close the unfinished encirclement of Wen Long. As for the Huang Su Dragon King standing at the back of the team, he did not participate in the encirclement and suppression of Wen Long. Instead, he raised his head and shouted, Oh! 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 to the sky, as if sending some signal to the distance. Generally, at this moment, although the enemy was already in front of him, Wen Long still took the time to glance behind him. This time Wen Long finally understood the meaning of this signal. Behind Wen Long, close to the caravan, two more groups of yellow speed dragons appeared, and the number was completely beyond Wen Long's expectations. Damn! Why are there so many? Meow! At first, Wen Long was indeed wary of this strategy of diverting the tiger away from the mountain. So Wen Long asked Catherine to stay near the caravan to help the caravan defend itself. But Wen Long's initial expectation was that a yellow speed dragon king would use more than 20 Huang speed dragons as bait to lure the hunters away, and then send another part of the Huang speed dragon group to sneak attack the caravan. Because there is at most one Huang speed dragon king in a Huang speed dragon group. Wen Long believes that even if dozens of Huang speed dragons appear, Catherine can handle them alone without the help of the Huang speed dragon king. But the current situation has exceeded Wen Long's expectations because what appeared near the caravan was not another part of the Huang Velociraptor group, but two new Huang Velociraptor groups. In other words, Wen Long expected that a group of Huang Velociraptors would separate their forces for a sneak attack, but the actual situation was that three different Huang Velociraptor groups united to carry out this sneak attack, because Wen Long has seen that in the other two groups of Huang Speed Dragons, there is also a Yellow Speed Dragon King appearing in each. This is enough to prove that the two groups of Yellow Velociraptors that appeared later are independent and equal partners in cooperation with the group of yellow velociraptors in front of us. It turned out to be a joint battle between three yellow velociraptor groups. It seems that it must be resolved as soon as possible. Meow! Wen Long knew that even if Catherine could hunt a big strange bird by herself, it did not mean that Catherine had the ability to deal with two organized groups of yellow velociraptors. What's more, even if Catherine can survive the siege of the two yellow velociraptors, those businessmen who can only hide behind the herbivorous dragons will probably be killed by the cunning yellow velociraptors. Chapter 103 Death Realm In order to deal with the enemy in front of him as soon as possible and then go back to reinforce Catherine, Wen Long swallowed a forceful pill without hesitation. At this time, the first Huang Sulong had come forward, but before it could touch Wen Long, its neck had been cut off by Wen Long's dagger. Wen Long noticed that, unlike ordinary wounds, the one attacked by fire attributes the section cut by the Strange bird evil did not flow out a large amount of blood, but turned into a burnt black mark due to the burning of the fire, and at the same time emitted an unpleasant burnt smell. Come if you are not afraid of death, Wen Long shouted. At this time, the effect of the forcible drug had already taken effect in Wen Long's body, and Wen Long began to enter the state of ghost transformation. Wen Long rushed forward at a faster speed, and two more yellow speed dragons were torn apart by the double sword. Strange bird demon but more Huang Velociraptors have gathered around. And these yellow Velociraptors began to attack Wen Long with their teeth and front claws in an attempt to block Wen Long's advance. Huang Velociraptors' teeth have paralysis bags that can secrete neuroparalytic toxins. Once the wounds on the attacked opponent accumulate to a certain extent, they will be affected by these paralyzing toxins and lose their ability to move. In the end, they can only let these Huang Velociraptors slaughtered. However, Wen Long simply turned a blind eye to these attacks and even allowed these Huang speed dragon attacks to hit him. Do you think this uncle's equipment is just for decoration? Meow? The reason for Wenlong's confidence was the equipment of the big strange bird. Compared with the ordinary Huang Velociraptor, Granny Ruiz's armor made of the scales and carapace of the big strange bird had absolute defensive capabilities. In this case, let alone using the fangs to inject the nerve paralyzing toxin into Wenlong's body. Even if he pounced, he would not be able to hurt Wenlong at all. Therefore, the real threat to Wen Long was the Huang Sulong King located at the rear of the team. Before that, Wen Long could ignore the attacks of other Huang Sulongs. Sure enough, just as Wen Long thought, although these Huang Sulongs kept attacking Wen Long, they did not hurt Wen Long at all in the end. They could not even stop Wen Long's attack. At most, they could only attack Wen Long. There were shallow scratches left on the armor. Wen Long, on the other hand, focused his attack on the target directly in front of him. Anyone who blocked Wenlong's path would be mercilessly killed by Wenlong's double swords. Soon, Wenlong rushed to Huang Sulong King, 
This king of yellow speed dragons didn't seem to expect that an Elu cat like Wen Long could break through the defense and rush to him so easily. In a hurry, he made a forward move and used two sharp front claws. He rushed towards Wen Long. Compared with the ordinary Huang Sulong, Huang Sulong King's body is larger and his strength is naturally more powerful. After all, it is a monster of the same level as the big strange bird. Wen Long naturally does not dare to underestimate it. But just now, Wang Sulong King had made a fatal mistake. That is, when facing an opponent like Wen Long who was known for his speed, he actually used a powerful attack, but relatively lacking in flexibility. The attack that uses the well-developed feet to leap forward is indeed very lethal. If it can hit directly, Wen Long will be thrown directly to the ground, and the surrounding Huang Sulong will immediately swarm up and kill Wen Long. Trapped, however, the weakness of the attack is also obvious. That is, when jumping high, Huang Su Long King has no way to change the direction of his action in the air. This also makes Huang Su Long King's attack direction extremely easy to judge. And this also this gave Wen Long an opportunity to take advantage of. Wen Long's body was slightly dodged to the left to avoid Huang Su Long King's attack. And then he swung the short knife with his right hand to cut Huang Su Long's well-developed hind limbs. Bang! As the blade cut through the scales of King Huang's speed dragon, flames began to erupt from the blade. A black mark instantly appeared on Huang Su Long King's hind limbs. Huang Su Long King's thick hind limbs are an important part of its movement and maintaining body balance. Wen Long's blow was enough to make Huang Su Long lose his balance when he landed. Sure enough, when Huang Velociraptor leaped high and landed, one of its hind limbs was injured, and it was difficult to maintain balance with the other hind limb alone. So it couldn't help but fall forward. Oh! Huang Sulong King, who fell to the ground, did not give up his struggle. Instead, he screamed again, trying to summon the surrounding Huang Sulongs to protect him. Of course, Wen Long did not give these Huang Sulongs a chance. Go stance wildly! The move Wen Long used at this moment was one of the signature moves after the ghost-like double swords. He swung the double swords at a dizzying speed to completely defeat the target, possessing great destructive power. This is also the first time Wen Long has used this move in actual combat after his strength and speed have reached the standard of using Ghost Dance after a period of training. In an instant, a curtain wall composed of the sword light of the strange bird demon surrounded Wen Long. In front of Wen Long, the Huangsu Dragon King who was struggling to stand up found that something had appeared on his body before he could figure out what happened. A series of dark scars. This is the advantage of the double sword. Not only is it more flexible than the big sword, but because the weapon is light and the two hands dance in turn. Its attack speed is far beyond that of the big sword. Although the attack of a single shot is far inferior to that of a big sword. With the blessing of ghost transformation and force moving medicine. The attack speed of more than a dozen swords at this moment quickly completely finished the yellow speed dragon king in front of him. In fact, not only was the Huangsu dragon king in front of Wen Long killed instantly. Wen Long still had no intention of stopping after killing the Huangsu dragon king and used the two swords that he quickly slashed out as a barrier to form a barrier around his body. An airtight wall was formed, and those Huang Sulongs who tried to rush over to attack Wen Long suffered the same fate as their king, being chopped into pieces of burnt flesh in the storm of the double swords. At this point, the time limit for the first bottle of forcibly taken medicine has ended, and only the corpses of Huang Sulong and their king who fell on the ground are left around Wen Long. These corpses formed a ring around Wen Long. A total of 22 there was only one yellow speed dragon and one yellow speed dragon king. None of them fell at Wen Long's feet. This also means that during the entire attack, no Huang Sulong broke through Wen Long's sword-like curtain wall and came into contact with Wen Long's body. All the yellow speed dragons were blocked by the rapidly dancing double swords. Anyone who stepped into the attack range of the double swords would be dead without exception. Hey! We finally killed all these yellow velociraptors within the time limit of a bottle of force-taking medicine. Meow. Although Wen Long felt a little exhausted due to the fatigue caused by the disappearance of the forcibly taken medicine, Wen Long still did not relax because Wen Long knew that he must rush back immediately to reinforce Catherine. Looking in the direction of the distant caravan, Wen Long could see that the situation had become very bad. Chapter 10 for the Precarious Circular Defense. The two groups of yellow velociraptors totaled about 50 yellow velociraptors, as well as two yellow velociraptor kings. The two groups of yellow velociraptors that suddenly appeared quickly rushed towards the caravan's ring defense. The result of the large number of yellow velociraptors rushing on the sand was that the dust was raised 6 to 7 meters high. 
It's a yellow piece. At first, the two yellow velociraptor groups did not choose to attack the caravan's defense circle directly. Instead, they ran around the entire circular defense in a clockwise direction from a certain distance. Their advanced skills were obviously useful when running. His hind legs kicked up the sand vigorously, and a large amount of sand and dust was raised all around the caravan in an instant. Because of the sand and dust, the surroundings had become blurry to the people in the caravan. The scales of the yellow velociraptor were originally a brown color close to the color of the sand, and when mixed with the raised sand and dust, it became completely blurred. Can't tell. Asshole. It's all dust. I can't see where the enemy is. Someone soon complained. So what if we can see clearly? Our weapons can't cause fatal damage to those monsters anyway. If it could hit the eyes or some weak points, it would be possible to repel it. But now, let alone aiming. I can't even see the general direction clearly. While the merchants in the caravan complained, Catherine did not speak. She just pulled off a piece of cloth and wrapped it around her face as a mask to isolate the sand and dust. At the same time, she silently clenched the sword in her hand. At this time, the circling action of the two yellow velociraptor groups had been completed. During the circle, the two yellow velociraptor groups began to disperse, gradually completing the full siege of the caravan. Immediately afterwards, People heard the high-pitched cry of Huang Sulong King. Like ghosts that suddenly appeared, those yellow speed dragons rushed out from the dust in the sky and began to officially launch an attack on the caravan's defense circle. Quick! Shoot the arrow! Several businessmen holding crossbows pulled the triggers in their hands, but the arrows they shot had no idea where they went. There is yellow sand and dust everywhere, and it is impossible to see the opponent clearly from a little distance. The yellow velociraptor is shuttled in the sand and dust and its figure is completely disappearing and appearing. At this time, long-range weapons cannot capture the target at all, and they will naturally lose it. Effect. So after the first few arrows were fired, the experienced businessmen immediately gave up their crossbows and drew out their daggers, preparing to rely on the wall, composed of herbivorous dragons to resist. At this time, more than 20 herbivorous dragons have been chained together, in order to avoid running around when they are attacked and because these herbivorous dragons were tied together and unable to move. They could only silently form a circle and use their own bodies to resist the attack of Juan Velociraptor. Soon the ferocious attack of Juan Velociraptor arrived. Because the encirclement network had been formed, there was almost an all-round attack from the beginning. There were almost Juan Velociraptors attacking at every note of the entire circular defense circle. Those yellow Velociraptors began to continuously pounce on the city wall, composed of herbivorous dragons. Their claws continued to cause damage to the herbivorous dragons, and those herbivorous dragons would only shake their bodies the moment they were attacked, throwing off the yellow speed dragons that were much smaller than themselves. At this time, Catherine was also attacked by a large number of Juan Velociraptors. At first, Catherine was a little uncomfortable with this environment full of yellow sand and dust, but after being attacked several times in succession, Catherine was gradually able to distinguish the yellow speed dragons that used the yellow sand as cover. Fortunately, although the armor made of the big wild boar king material on Catherine is slightly worse than the armor on Wenlong's big strange bird, it is still enough to defend against the attacks of ordinary Huang Velociraptors. Therefore, although Catherine was caught several times by the claws of Huang Velociraptor at first, it did not cause any harm, and the nerve paralysis toxin contained in Huang Velociraptor's teeth did not invade Catherine's body. After a short adaptation period, Catherine immediately began to launch an effective counterattack. Horizontal slash. Seeing a swaying shadow in front of her, the swinging sword swept across it instantly with the sound of whistling wind. At that moment, Catherine even felt that the yellow curtain formed by the dust in front of her eyes seemed to be swept open by the whistling sword. Even if Catherine didn't use her eyes to confirm specifically, she could still tell from the obstruction transmitted from her hands that this simple sweep hit at least three targets. In the face of Catherine's huge power, these three unlucky yellow velociraptors were directly knocked away. Of course, when they flew away, their bodies had been cut into two pieces by the big sword. With her first successful experience, Catherine simply gave up on careful identification, and instead immediately swung her sword across wherever there was movement, usually hitting one or two unlucky Huang Velociraptors. After all, there are too many Huang Velociraptors in the sand, and Catherine's sweeping range is really wide. There is no need to carefully identify the opponent's position before taking action. But no matter how powerful Catherine is, she can only block the Huang Velociraptors in one direction. In other places, 
a large number of Huang Velociraptors are still pouring into the ring defense formed by the merchants. Soon a herbivorous dragon fell down. Although the herbivorous dragon has rough skin and thick flesh, and is much larger than the average yellow speed dragon, after being attacked many times, even if it does not collapse due to excessive blood loss, it will still accumulate a lot of energy in its body. Nervous paralysis toxin caused general paralysis and collapsed. The first herbivorous dragon that fell fell down because too much paralysis toxin had accumulated in its body. When it just fell, you could still see that the fallen herbivorous dragon's body was still twitching. But there was nothing that could be done about it. Stood up. Once the herbivorous dragon fell, it meant that its death was coming. As expected, not long after the herbivorous dragon fell, a yellow velociraptor bit its defenseless neck. If it had not been paralyzed, the herbivorous dragon could probably throw the Huang Velociraptor away with its strength advantage. But now the herbivorous dragon was powerless and could only let the yellow Velociraptor bite through its neck artery. So the first herbivorous dragon was killed by Huang Velociraptor. And a small gap began to appear in the circular defense that had barely maintained its stability. The other Huang Velociraptors nearby immediately tried to jump in through the open gap. Hurry up and block the gap! Don't let those things come in! It was Old Man Heezen who gave the orders. Old Man Hessen himself is already too old and has almost no fighting ability. However, with decades of business experience and the prestige accumulated by the Basie Chamber of Commerce over the years, he is still quite qualified as a commander. Soon several businessmen holding short knives and shields made of wooden barrel lids rushed to the gap that had just appeared. They worked together to block a yellow velociraptor that tried to jump in, temporarily maintaining the circular defense. Of stability. Chapter 105 Hunting the Yellow Velociraptor Group 1 Old Man Hessen knew that this was just a precursor to the complete collapse of the entire circular defense. Because since one herbivorous dragon had already fallen, it meant that there would soon be more herbivorous dragons due to the same attack. Fell down for a reason. Bang. Sure enough. Just as old Hezen thought. Soon another herbivorous dragon's heavy body fell to the ground under the load. The goods on the back of this herbivorous dragon were also scattered on the ground with the fall of the herbivorous dragon. And the moment this herbivorous dragon fell, it suffered the same fate as its previous counterparts. Those crazy yellow speed dragons immediately jumped on it and bit off its neck. Seeing that another yellow velociraptor was about to jump in, Old Man Hessen and two other businessmen had no choice but to pick up a wooden barrel lid and a short knife to meet it. Go away! Monster! Old Man Hessen brandished a short knife. But before the short knife could hit Huang Athlon, Old Man Hessen was thrown to the ground by Huang Athlon, who jumped in. Fortunately, the lid of the wooden barrel held by Old Man Hessen was the outer layer. The one covered with iron sheets would not be scratched to pieces by Huang Velociraptor at once, and could barely block Huang Velociraptor's sharp claws. The other two businessmen wanted to help Old Hessen, but they saw two more yellow Velociraptors rushing in from the gap. At this time, the two of them could only barely protect themselves, and had no energy left to help Old Hessen. It's over! If we can't stop it, the number is really beyond expectation. Old Man Hessen thought to himself. Get out of the way! I'm here! Meow! At this moment, Old Uncle Heezen heard a familiar voice, and then Old Uncle Heezen saw a shadow rushing out of the sand. Immediately afterwards, Old Man Hessen saw a few flashes of sword light and the three yellow speed dragons that rushed into the defensive circle were instantly cut into several pieces. Is this the yellow cat? Old man Hessen couldn't believe his eyes. Needless to say, Wan Long was naturally the one who rushed out. At this time, Wan Long had already swallowed the second forcible pill and was in the ghost humanization mode. Not only that, he had also taken the ghost human potion and enhancement pill to enhance his attack power. The defensive hardening medicine can be said to have strengthened his body to the extreme. Therefore, Wenlong at this time is more powerful than ever before. The moment he appears, he can completely kill the three yellow speed dragons around him. The speed is so fast that even old man Hessen has no time to see clearly what Wenlong's sword skills are. How to cut three yellow velociraptors into pieces of meat in an instant. Old man Hessen has lived in this world for more than 70 years, and often travels between cities for business. He thinks he is well informed. But this is the first time he has seen an Elecat reach such a level. Such a level of strength. After killing three Huang speed dragons, Wen Long turned around to face the breach and killed two more Huang speed dragons that tried to rush in. During the killing process, Wen Long did not look back. He looked at Old Hessen, but still asked with concern, Old man, are you okay? Meow? I, I'm fine. 
Even though I'm an old man, I'm not so useless, said Old Man Hessen. That's good. I made a miscalculation this time. I didn't expect that there would be so many ambush troops on the other side. So I frightened you. I'm really sorry. But now that I'm back, these Huang Velociraptors won't be able to reach for long. Meow. Even when he was talking, Wang Long still did not stop waving the double knives in his hands. And under Wen Long's double knives, all Huang speed longs, who tried to rush and were turned into burnt pieces of meat. Soon, Old Man Hessen discovered that no Huang Velociraptor dared to come in through the gap. Those yellow Velociraptors retreated back into the dust, hiding their figures again. Seeing this situation, Wen Long chased him out again. And soon Old Hessen heard Huang Sulong's miserable cry. After a while, the surrounding sand and dust seemed to begin to decrease, and his field of vision gradually changed. It became clear, and people noticed that after the dust receded, only an indistinguishable number of Huang Velociraptor meat pieces were left on the sand. It was obvious that these were Wenlong's masterpieces. This strength has already exceeded the level of a two-star hunter, a businessman said in disbelief. But it's just an elu cat, another person replied in disbelief. Have you ever seen a cat who can use two swords and can transform into a ghost? Old man Hessen touched his beard, then threw away the barrel lid and short knife in his hand, and randomly found a wooden box. He sat down on a stool and let out a long breath, seeming to relax. Leave the rest to the yellow cat and the woman. Although it is indeed a very bad experience to be attacked by three yellow velociraptor groups at the same time. I think we have nothing to worry about now. Old man Hesen calmed his breathing a little, and then said, Yeah, we are all old now, and we can't even compare to an elk cat. Just as Mr. Hessen expected, the herbivorous dragon that had been screaming because of the attack by Huang Velociraptor finally calmed down and looked out through the gap between the herbivorous dragons, including Hessen, the businessman, including the old man, only saw Catherine and Wenlong, who were active not far away, sweeping through the two yellow velociraptor groups as if they were in no one's land. Although Catherine and Wenlong have different moves, one uses his own power to fly away two or three yellow velociraptors at once, while the other uses his own speed to constantly shuttle between groups of yellow velociraptors. Kill them! But the common point is that they don't take these Huang Velociraptors seriously. Because even during the battle, from beginning to end, Wan Long and Catherine were staring at the two yellow speed dragon kings not far away from the corner of their eyes, always watching their every move. Because both Wan Long and Catherine knew that the real threat to them was the yellow speed dragon king not far away. It was a completely unscrupulous attack method. Even if it was attacked, it had no means of defense at all. It only relied on its own armor to resist Huang Velociraptor's minions. It didn't take long for the Huang Velociraptor group to begin to collapse. It's time for these two guys to take action. Otherwise we will wipe out all these yellow Velociraptors. Meow. Just when Wenlong was thinking this, the two Huang Su Dragon Kings not far away started to act. It seemed that they had already discussed it. The two Huang Su Dragon Kings bypassed Wenlong and moved toward the side. Catherine rushed over. And as if to stop Wenlong, other Huang Velociraptors began to flock to Wenlong's side. Be careful. Woman. Wenlong immediately warned loudly. Chapter 106 Hunting the Yellow Velociraptor Group 2 Because they wanted to prevent Huang Sulong from continuing to attack the circular defense circle. Wenlong and Catherine did not stand together, but defended at a considerable distance apart in order to maximize the scope of defense. The two Huang Speed Dragon Kings also took a fancy to this and prepared to surround one of them with Huang Speed Dragon and then concentrate their efforts to kill the other person. Judging from the action targets of the two Yellow Speed Dragon Kings, they seem to have decided that Catherine should be the easier one to deal with. So they prepare to focus on attacking Catherine from the beginning. In this case, it is impossible for one long to rush to Catherine's side immediately. So there will inevitably be a situation where Catherine alone can deal with two Huangsu Dragon Kings. However, Catherine's reaction was very calm. After all, she had experienced life and death hunting many times. At this time, Catherine was no longer the novice who made a fuss. At the same time that Catherine heard Wenlong's warning, Wenlong saw Catherine perform a big sweep, knocking away the two yellow speed dragons approaching her, and then inserted the big sword in her hand into the ground. Very calmly two bottles were taken out. They were two bottles of potions of different colors. The orange one was the hardening potion, and the red one was the ghost potion, which Wenlong gave to Catherine. Are you really going to take it seriously? Seeing Catherine taking out the ghost medicine and hardening medicine, Wenlong felt much more relieved. 
Before this, because the attacks of ordinary Huang Velociraptors could be offset by the level suppressing armor on the body. There was no need for Catherine to use hardening medicine. And because the attack of the big sword itself was very high, it was basically impossible to defeat ordinary yellow Velociraptors. Because of the instant kill, the ghost medicine is not necessary. But things are different now. The yellow speed dragon king is much more powerful than the average Huang speed dragon. And there are two of them together. So Catherine has to deal with it seriously. Just after drinking the ghost medicine and hardening medicine, two yellow speed dragon kings were already close to Catherine. One of them pounced from the front, while the other went around to the side, preparing to use the nerve paralyzing toxin stuck on it. The fangs bit into Catherine's body. The paralyzing toxin of the yellow speed dragon king is much stronger than the toxin of the ordinary Huang speed dragon. It can be said that there is almost no need to accumulate it. As soon as it is bitten, it will immediately enter the paralyzed state. Those who are bitten in the process will people will be unable to fight back. Moreover, the armor of the big wild boar king on Catherine was not enough to withstand the sharp and powerful fangs of the Huang Sulong king. So Catherine knew that she had no way out now. Different from the time when she fought with the big strange bird. Being hit by the big strange bird was usually only injured and not fatal. While being bitten by the Huangsu Dragon King would definitely lead to paralysis. Although the paralysis will not last long. It is enough for Huang Sulong King to take his own life. If it were an ordinary hunter, he would probably abandon his heavy sword at this time. Turn around and run away. But if it were you, I wouldn't let me down. Meow! Wen Long said in his heart, just as Wen Long expected. After Catherine drank the potion, she placed her two hands on the hilt of the big sword again. But Catherine did not rush to pull out the sword that was stuck in the sand. Instead, she made a surprising move. Catherine, who was holding the hilt of the sword, kicked the sword directly. In an instant, a huge force acted on the bottom of the sword. The broad sword was like a shovel, lifting up a large ball of sand and shooting it towards the yellow speed dragon king in front. Because Catherine's power is very strong. When the sand particles are thrown away by the big sword, it is like countless small lead bullets flying out densely. Although it is not fatal to Huang Sulong King, it is enough to stop it. The other party attacked. The Yellow Speed Dragon King, who attacked from the front, was knocked back by a large amount of flying sand and fell backwards. Then Catherine took this opportunity to turn her body and pull it out from the sand on the ground. His big sword swept across the body of another Huang Sulong King. The other Huang Velociraptor did not expect that his companion would be blocked halfway by the kicked up sand and the original pincer attack tactic lost its effect. However, at this time, Wang Sulong King wanted to retreat, but it was already too late. Catherine's big sword swept over, and it was a powerful force. Cut it in two. After all, Wang Sulong King's body is not as strong as the big strange bird. In addition, Catherine drank the ghost medicine this time, and her attack power has been further improved. Therefore, Catherine's sword swept across and easily caused a burst of blood. Hua. The originally hard scales of the Huangsu Dragon King became as weak as tissue paper in front of the big sword that Catherine swung with great force. Then not only the scales, but also the muscles and bones inside were also affected by the heavy force of Catherine's swing. It was completely cut off under the giant bone sword. Then the entire Huangsu Dragon King's head flew up, leaving behind a headless body and a large amount of blood spurting out from the fracture. It's unbelievable that he killed the Dragon King Huangsu with one sword and was surrounded by a double team. Someone in the caravan started talking again. This woman should not only be a two-star low-level one. It looks like she is a two-star mid-level one. Oh, no. Even a two-star high-level one is very possible. If you had known that she was a newcomer to the industry half a month ago, I'm afraid you wouldn't have said this. You just joined the industry half a month ago? Isn't the speed of improvement too fast? At this moment, when Long had also cleaned up the remaining Huang Speed Dragons, and then rushed over to join Catherine. The Huangsu Dragon King, that was knocked away by the flying sand, got up again. Seeing that his subordinates and companions had been killed, he finally gave up the plan of attack and thought of escaping. How could I let you run away? Meow! In terms of speed, the ghost-like Wen Long was obviously faster. The Huangsu Dragon King had just stood up and ran for two steps before Wen Long caught up with him from behind. Then Wen Long jumped directly onto the Huangsu Dragon King's back pierced the body of King Huang Sulong with two knives. Wu! The Huang Speed Dragon King whined and fell down. At this point, the three Huang Speed Dragon groups were completely wiped out. We win! We win! 
The crowd in the caravan made an excited voice. This time the caravan was attacked by three yellow velociraptor groups at the same time. Several people expected that they would die here. But they did not expect that these three yellow velociraptor groups would be wiped out so easily. Hassan, at first, I was a little opposed to you finding such a young woman to be the escort of our caravan. I didn't expect that she would have such ability. It's not just this woman. The yellow cat with her is also terrifyingly powerful. Old Hessen, your vision is really vicious. It's not that I have a vicious vision. Old man Hezen smiled bitterly. And then said, In fact, I didn't expect them to be so powerful at first. But fortunately, they were chosen as Milad Village's cooperation partners this time. At this time, Old Man Hessen recalled his previous agreement with Wen Long regarding Milad Village's only trading partner. Chapter 107 Overnight in the Canyon Because of Wen Long and Catherine's activeness, the damage suffered by the caravan after being attacked by three yellow velociraptors was not particularly serious. Only two businessmen suffered minor injuries on their arms and two other herbivorous dragons. Losing their lives, the other herbivorous dragons had more or less external injuries. However, although overall it was a near miss, in this case the caravan had to stop and rest. The first thing is to deal with the two dead herbivorous dragons. The cargo on their backs must be unloaded and then distributed to other herbivorous dragons. Although this will increase the load of other herbivorous dragons. Fortunately, there are many people in the entire caravan. More than 20 herbivorous dragons, spread out like this, are still bearable. As for other herbivorous dragons, merchants chop the herbs they carry with them with knives, then mix them into the prepared forage and feed them to the herbivorous dragons. This is done firstly because herbs can help heal wounds, and secondly because these herbivorous dragons generally consume a lot of physical energy after this battle and need to replenish their physical strength. Secondly, Wan Long and Catherine were busy stripping the two yellow speed dragon kings of materials. After all, the Huangsu Dragon King is a monster classified at the same level as the big strange bird. The materials on it can not only be used to build equipment, but can also be sold at a good price. Especially the unique material, paralysis bag, of the Huangsu Dragon King, which is where the organ that secretes neuroparalyzing toxins is located. Once used in a weapon, a special weapon with a paralyzing effect can be created. And this special weapon often has unexpected miraculous effects when dealing with certain enemies. Of course Wen Long would not give up these high quality materials. So as soon as the battle ended, Wen Long and Catherine immediately began to peel off the materials from Huang Sulung King and put them all into the poisonous monster bird skin to make it a big bag. It's just that the materials for ordinary Huang Velociraptors can be sold for some money because the quantity is quite considerable. But considering that the carrying capacity of the entire caravan has been reduced after losing two herbivorous dragons, it cannot be transported. Wen Long still had no choice but to give up. When all preparations were completed, the caravan immediately set off again. There is no time to stay. Even though most people are very tired, they still have to rush as soon as possible in order to find a safer place to spend the night. Otherwise, once night falls, this sand sea will become more dangerous. Not only are the yellow velociraptors that may reappear, but there are even more terrifying ones. The Sharon King that can sneak in the sand, and the crazy and violent sand thunderbirds. Just like this unpredictable desert, these terrifying creatures may appear at any time. Of course, in addition to these creatures, the thundering sand sea at night may also usher in the terrible natural disaster, sandstorm. The sandstorm extremely powerful. It is said that many caravans sleep in the desert at night. Secondly, he was buried alive by the large amount of sand brought by the sandstorm that morning. In this way, the caravan continued to move forward. Although according to the map, the entire caravan's route to Midge Bolton passed through the narrowest part of the Thundering Sand Sea. So as to minimize the stay in the Thundering Sand Sea. Time. But judging from the current speed, it will take at least two days to truly escape the boundary of the Thundering Sand Sea. In other words, Wan Long and his party had to spend at least one night in the Thunderous Sand Sea. However, until the sun had set and a full moon began to hang in the sky, Wen Long had not yet seen the place where he would stay for the night. Hey, old man, where are we spending the night tonight? Why haven't we arrived after walking for so long? Meow? Wen Long asked Uncle Heezen impatiently. Old man Hessen waved his hand and said with a smile, Don't worry, we should be there soon. As long as the direction is correct, we can definitely get there. After all, I have been on this road for decades and I can't go wrong. Hearing what old Heezen said, Wen Long didn't ask any more questions. After all, 
Wolong also knows that in this desert, no more than in other places, the environment in the desert changes all the time. You cannot simply confirm whether you are on the right route based on how many sand dunes are around or the shape and size of the surrounding sand dunes. Because many times as long as a gust of wind blows, the original sand dunes will move, and the original flat land may also become several sand dunes. In this case, Wen Long couldn't tell his specific location just by relying on his memory in the game. So he had to believe what Mr. Heezen said. After walking for a while, Wen Long and his party crossed a large sand dune and saw a large canyon ahead. There is also lush greenery in the canyon, which are plants that can adapt to dry environments. These plants grow along the canyon and are particularly conspicuous in this desert. That's it. We'll rest in this canyon tonight. Everyone, hurry up, old man Heezen said. In fact, Uncle Hessen didn't need to say anything. When Long could clearly feel that most people's spirits were lifted when they saw the Grand Canyon. The fatigue from the previous day seemed to be wiped away, and the pace of progress was obviously accelerated. From this it seems that these people must have been camping and resting in this canyon before, because of the special terrain of the canyon. It is very little affected by wind and sand. These plants will not be easily buried by wind and sand during their growth. Moreover, there is a section of the underground river that is common in the desert that is exposed above the ground in this canyon. This is also the growth of plants in this vicinity provides ample water. Mr. Cat! Mr. Cat! There is an oasis in this desert! Catherine exclaimed in surprise when she saw the canyon with plants growing in front of her. It's indeed a good place, Wenlong said. And in places with water sources. Monsters like Salon King who like dry environments will generally not come close. So sleeping at night will be much more peaceful. Meow. Hey, is King Sharon very powerful? Because it was rare to hear when Long care about a certain kind of monster. Catherine asked curiously. It's not that powerful, but it's a little troublesome. This King of Sharon is a monster that likes to travel in dry sand. Although it doesn't live in water, it belongs to the ichthyosaur species like many aquatic monsters. It's very fast, and moving in the sand is like swimming in water. All in all, it's much more troublesome than something like the Yellow Speed Dragon King. Meow. When Wen Long talked about the King of Salon, he thought of how he was beaten badly by the King of Salon when he was a rookie in the game. At that time, Wen Long encountered this kind of monster that spent most of its time moving under the sand for the first time. He didn't know how to deal with it. Instead, he was hit many times by the opponent, and he was almost killed. Thinking of this, Wen Long touched his pocket unconsciously when he felt that the gray ball called the sonic bomb was still there. Wen Long felt relieved. Chapter 108 An Unusually Rich Dinner Soon the caravan drove into the canyon and settled down in the canyon. After stopping, some businessmen began to collect dry wood to make fire for cooking. And because there was a river nearby, they did not have to worry about water sources. Another group of businessmen took out fodder and fed it to the herbivorous dragons. This was the last meal of the day for the herbivorous dragons. When Wen Long saw these businessmen feeding the herbivorous dragons at night, he couldn't help but think of an idiom. A horse cannot grow fat without night grass. No wonder these herbivorous dragons are so strong. They seem to have been carefully fed. Meow. In Wen Long's view, these herbivorous dragons seem to have established deep relationships with the merchants. Most of the time, these herbivorous dragons were extremely docile and worked hard without complaining. While these merchants were busy, Catherine also volunteered to join the merchants and took the initiative to take on the task of lighting fires for cooking. Because traveling long distances in the wilderness, it is impossible to have good conditions to make exquisite dishes. So a group of people chose the most common barbecue for dinner. Set up the barbecue grill and light a bonfire under the barbecue grill. When the smoke disappears, all that remains is how to control the heat. Catherine did this very well. She put the pork on the barbecue grill from the big wild boar that she hunted while passing through the Himilon Mountain Road the day before. She roasted it until it was golden brown and tender. When it was finished, she coated the barbecue with a layer of honey. You can smell the attractive aroma from a distance. Miss Catherine, your cooking skills are really good. While Catherine was concentrating on grilling meat, a businessman with a big beard came over. Thanks for the compliment. Catherine responded with a smile. But, just eating barbecue is not enough. Since we escaped today, as the saying goes, there will be blessings after a disaster. So we should celebrate it properly. So, uncle, I brought some good things. Ah, hey, what good stuff. Humph, that's it. As he said this, the bearded businessman took out a bag and took out some dark things that looked like smoked meat. 
This thing is called Bobo's Tongue, the bearded businessman explained. It was bought from the locals when I was transferred to a place called Buckeye Village some time ago. It was specially smoked for long-term preservation. Yes, it tastes great. Come on, Miss Catherine. Bake this, and we can enjoy it together later. Is it really okay? It's such a precious thing. Catherine felt a little embarrassed. Hey, no matter what is precious or not, it is actually quite dangerous for us to do this business. We should enjoy ourselves in time and share all the good things we have. And if you hadn't worked hard to protect us, Miss Catherine, I'm afraid our lives would have been it has been thrown away a long time ago. A few bobo tongues are not enough to express our respect for you. Hey, you are bragging about your bad tongue again. To express your respect for Miss Catherine, is your thing better than mine? At this time, another businessman wearing a hood also came over. Catherine noticed that he was also holding a bag in his hand. Miss Catherine, look at this, the businessman said. He also opened his bag, revealing some brown mushrooms. They looked like specialty mushrooms, but they were better than ordinary specialty mushrooms. It's bigger and the color is better. This thing is called carefully selected mushrooms. It is selected from specialty mushrooms. Generally, only one such carefully selected mushroom can be selected from a hundred specialty mushrooms. We roast such carefully selected mushrooms on the fire and then coat them with some sesame oil. The taste is definitely much better than his tongue. The hooded businessman also said, Go away! Go away! Who do you think you are? Miss Catherine is our savior. And you have the nerve to entertain her with something like this? At some point, old man Heezen also came over. Look at me! This is the liver of the king of Ceylon! And it has been marinated in the finest brandy and sauce. It is a hundred times more delicious than the ordinary Ceylon liver. I bought this from a three-star high-level hunter. Today I just take this thing out. After that, the remaining merchants also brought out their own delicacies. And soon what was supposed to be a simple campfire barbecue turned out to contain a lot of precious ingredients. And businessmen are constantly arguing among themselves about which ingredient is more delicious. Hey! Hey! I have put in a lot of effort to save you. How come no one comes to bring out delicious ingredients to thank me? Although I really want to complain to these businessmen. When one long thought for a while and decided to forget it. A man is a man after all. Even if he lives to be 80 years old. He still likes young and beautiful beauties. This woman can obviously rely on her face to make a living. But she still wants to come here to be a hunter. Meow. When Long was a little confused after seeing all this. Helplessly he held his forehead. But no matter what. The dinner on this day turned out to be extremely sumptuous. Although it was just a night meal and sleeping in the open air. It should have been simple and convenient. But it unexpectedly brought together famous and high quality specialties from all over the mainland. Such delicacies are even served at many high-end dinners. Can't enjoy it. This also gave one long a rare treat. After dinner was over and people were about to start taking a rest, the merchants took out the sleeping bags made of large wild boar furs that they had already prepared, and then got in. Soon someone was snoring regularly. After all, the night in this desert is completely different from the day. Once the sun sets, the heat will be lost quickly, and the temperature will immediately drop. If there are not enough cold protection measures, it is very common to be woken up by the cold in the middle of the night. Therefore, sleeping bags like this one made of big wild boar fur are also necessary items for traders traveling to and from the thundering sand sea. So only when Long and Catherine were still awake. On this night, as hunters, the two still had to be responsible for the night's vigilance. Hey, woman, I will be responsible for the first half of the night, and you will be responsible for the second half of the night. Meow, Wen Long said to Catherine. Okay, Mr. Cat. Catherine nodded and prepared to rest. However, Catherine and Wen Long did not have sleeping bags made of large wild boar furs that could be used to keep warm like the merchants. So when Catherine was getting ready to sleep, they simply took a beaver fur from the materials they carried and used it as a sleeping bag. Blankets were wrapped around the body to keep warm. As for Wen Long, because he had to keep vigil all night, he did not wrap himself in a blanket that would easily hinder his movement. Instead, he watched the surroundings vigilantly and sat close to the bonfire. On the one hand, this is to get some warmth from the burning bonfire. And on the other hand, it is also to make it easier to add dry wood to the bonfire to ensure that the bonfire can burn until dawn. After all, one long knew that where there were flames, most beasts would not dare to approach. This flame is like a warning to the beast which can avoid a lot of trouble for Wen Long and his party. 
Chapter 109 Close Relatives of Beaver Beasts The night was very long. And when Long kept himself warm by the fire, while always paying attention to the changes in the surrounding situation. However, there was no special movement for a long time, which made Wen Long relax a little. He looked up at the sky. He could still see the bright moon in the gap in the canyon. The moonlight was shining along the canyon, giving people a very strange feeling. Dreamy feeling. Mr. Cat. Vaguely, Wen Long heard Catherine's voice again. Why did you wake up? It shouldn't be time for your night shift yet. Right. I woke up somehow. Catherine said as she walked to Wen Long wrapped in the fur of the beaver beast and then sat down by the campfire like Wen Long. I advise you to go back to sleep. The second half of the night is still very long. If you don't sleep now, you may not have enough sleep during the day and become lackluster. Meow. It's okay. Mr. Cat. I can't sleep now. Catherine deliberately moved to Wen Long again and then asked Wen Long with some pride. Hey, Mr. Cat. What happened when I beat Huang Sulong King before? How about a move? Well, it's not bad. I can barely give it an 8 points. Meow. Wen Long said disapprovingly. Hey, I thought that move I made before was very cool. If you are really powerful, you don't need to use those little tricks. However, you can adapt to the situation and use the big sword as a shovel to stir up a lot of sand to buy yourself time. Avoiding being attacked by two yellow speed dragon kings at the same time and using the time difference in killing a yellow speed dragon king is indeed commendable. Meow. Wen Long also had to admit. That's right. I also came up with it on the spur of the moment. Although I didn't think so much at first. I don't know why I didn't feel panic at all when facing the two yellow speed dragon kings. All in all, it's just a natural way to go straight to the bridge. The feeling. Is the boat naturally straight when it reaches the bridge? This should be because you are becoming more and more confident. Right? Is that true? I think so too. In the past, when hunting, I just wanted to make myself stronger so that I could be closer to my brother. But now it seems to feel completely different. Oh, what's different? When Long asked a little strangely, I feel like I'm becoming more and more interested in hunting. I like hunting more and more. It turns out you are such a woman. Your words really reminded me. Meow. In Wen Long's mind, he suddenly remembered the situation when he was playing games in the past compared to becoming stronger now. Wen Long at that time thought more about the fun of the game. It should be said that hunting itself is a kind of fun. I used to be immersed in it. But now it has become more and more utilitarian. Sometimes I want to go back to the time when I hunted for fun. Naya. Wen Long thought in his heart. Catherine on the side did not notice the change in Wen Long's expression. But continued. Hey, Mr. Cat. Do you think there is such a kind of person in this world who does not come here for things like money? honor and status? Hunting. But just for fun? Yes. Wen Long replied affirmatively. Is it true? Have you seen Mr. Cat? It's true. I've seen a group of people like that before. As he spoke, Wen Long stood up, then walked to the herbivorous dragon resting on the ground, took out a piece of the great wild boar king's fur from the merchandise and draped it on himself. Since you are so energetic, I will go to bed first. Woman. I will ask you to keep a vigil in the second half of the night. Meow. After Catherine had grown up during this period, Wen Long said this about letting Catherine stay vigil alone. There is nothing to worry about anymore. Hey, Mr. Cat. Come and talk to me again. If you want to talk, there is plenty of time during the day to talk about Meow. After saying that, Wen Long covered himself with the fur of the big wild boar king and then lay down. At this moment, Wen Long suddenly felt something shaking on the ground. Earthquake? No. Wen Long suddenly stood up like a carp, and then took a few steps back. The next second, a huge shadow rushed out of the soil where Wen Long was just now. Then the shadow fell to the ground, and at the same time it struck with a palm, hitting the spot where Wen Long was before. Bang. Because of Wen Long's quick reaction, the black shadow's attack failed. Oh meow. It's actually a Sarimon. He only came for a sneak attack in the middle of the night. You are so patient. Fortunately, I reacted quickly. Meow. At this time, through the bright moonlight, Wen Long recognized the true identity of the shadow at a glance. This so-called sorry beast is actually a close relative of the beaver beast. Or it is actually a subspecies of the beaver beast. But in terms of strength, this sorry beast is much stronger than the beaver beast. And judging from the fact that he only came to carry out a sneak attack in the middle of the night, I am afraid that not only his physical fitness, 
but also his IQ is one level higher than that of Beaver Mon. In terms of levels, the Beaver Beast is a monster at the same level as the Big Wild Boar King. It is a monster that can be hunted by a one-star high-level hunter. However, the Sorry Beast is different. If you want to hunt the Sorry Beast, you must reach the two-star intermediate level. This is even higher than the levels of Big Strange Bird and Huang Sulong King. At this time, there was already quite a commotion due to the sudden appearance of the Saiyan Lion. So Catherine suddenly became alert and immediately picked up her weapon and rushed towards Wenlong. As for the businessmen, they were also awakened by the noise. When they got up, they saw Wenlong and Catherine confronting a yellow-haired sand beast. And they immediately got up and picked up their weapons. Although these so-called weapons are of no use at all. Hey, old man Hessen, take your colleagues and leave quickly. This place is about to become a battlefield. Wenlong reminded kindly. Why is it so obvious that there have never been any sorry beasts around here before? Old man Hessen said in disbelief. The past was before. And now is now. Times have changed. Now is the early stage of the ancient dragon's active period. Go. Take your herbivorous dragon and leave this neighborhood as soon as possible. Well, following Wen Long's instructions, Mr. Hessen and several other businessmen immediately went to hold the tied herbivorous dragons. While Wen Long and Catherine stood in front of the Sali Beast to prevent the Sali Beast from having any resistance to those herbivorous dragons. Businessman starts. This made the sand along beast a little angry. This yellow beast, like its close relatives, hated other creatures invading its territory. So at this moment, the sand along beast roared and rushed towards Wen Long. Chapter 110 Battle with the Sherry Beast 1 Probably because the environment in the desert is harsher. Although the salmon has a bulkier body than the beaver, it is more agile and more powerful than the beaver. Huge. Mr. Cat. Seeing the sand beast rushing over, Catherine immediately drew out the sword on her back, then made a defensive posture and stood in front of one long. Bang! The thick claws of the beaver beast hit the blade of Catherine's big sword. There was a metallic collision sound, and Catherine took two steps back. Only then did Catherine really feel the former beaver beast and the current sand beaver beast with her body. Compared to Tanuki, there is really a huge difference in strength. After all, with Catherine's current strength, her strength has been greatly improved compared to before. If it was just an ordinary beaver beast, it would no longer be possible to beat Catherine. However, Catherine still firmly blocked the attack of the sand along beast. However, just when Catherine was about to counterattack, the sand along beast slapped her again. Catherine had no choice but to continue to defend. The heavy bone sword in her hand kept making dull sounds which even made Catherine feel that the heavy bone sword in her hand seemed to be almost unable to hold up. And the beaver beast kept attacking back and forth with its two giant claws, leaving no chance for Catherine to fight back. This attack is so fast, it's impossible to find a flaw, Catherine thought to herself, because Catherine was temporarily suppressed. Catherine, who wanted to ask for help, glanced around her with the corner of her eye and found that when Long had disappeared. Hey, where is Mr. Cat? Mr. Cat, where have you been? I'm here. Meow. Suddenly with a shout, Catherine felt her shoulder sink. And then she saw when Long's figure passing over her shoulders. It turned out that just when Catherine blocked the attack of the beaver beast, when Long took the opportunity to jump on Catherine's shoulders. And then jumped on the back of the beaver beast with the help of Catherine's shoulders. Go to HL. You beast. When Long, who jumped on the back of the sorry beast, immediately drew out his two swords and then stabbed the sorry beast on the back. However, the sand along beast is not a big wild boar king after all. As soon as the sand along beast felt something crawling on its back, it immediately tilted its body and rolled to one side. This time, when Lung's double swords were just barely after piercing it a little deep, he was forced to jump off the back of the sorry beast. If he had been a little slower, when Long might even be crushed into a meat pie by the huge body of the sorry beast. The limbs are well developed, but the mind is not simple at all, Wen Long commented in his heart. However, Wen Long's attack still brought severe pain to the Shaili beast. The angry beast became even more violent after being attacked, and gave up attacking Catherine, and instead began to target on Wen Long, who had jumped off his back. The sorry beast roared and kept waving its giant claws and rushed towards Wen Long. Wen Long used his body's agility to dodge left and right, barely avoiding the opponent's attack. But Wen Long, like Catherine, was facing there was no way Wen Long could get close to the sharp claws that kept waving around the sand along beast. This can be said to be a disadvantage caused by physical differences. 
because Wenlong's body is relatively short. Even if Wenlong's arm length is added to the length of his two swords, Wenlong's attack distance is pitifully short. So if he wants to attack Sha, the raccoon beast can cause effective damage. And Wenlong can only do it if it is close to the body. Under the continuous attacks of the San Limon, Wenlong's advantage in agility is difficult to use. Even if he finally gets close to the body of the sand lion like before, this smart beast will respond immediately. Throw Wenlong away. If that's the case, then let's destroy the sandalin beast's palms first. Naya! Although Wenlong has determined his target, it is not that easy to destroy the palms of this sand beast. The palms of the sorry beast are very fast in the process of waving. If you force it into a head-on collision, it will feel like standing on the edge of the railway track and using a sword to chop a fast-moving high-speed train. Maybe the sword can cut the train is running on the carriage. But the person holding the sword may also be knocked away by the huge impact of the train. Therefore, Wenlong must strike at the moment when the palm of the sand lion is the slowest. Only at that moment can Wenlong escape unharmed after causing damage to the opponent. But for now, Wenlong doesn't have that chance. The giant palm swung by the sorry beast swept in front of Wenlong like the wind. One after another without stopping. And judging from the reaction of the sandalong beast, this beast's physical strength is unusually abundant. Which even made Wenlong suspect that as long as the sandalong beast is willing, it can probably fight from now until the morning without stopping. Since there is no chance, then let's create opportunities. Meow. Wenlong thought to himself. Suddenly, Wenlong changed his avoidance mode. Previously, Wenlong would retreat and dodge left and right to avoid the attack of the sandalong beast. But this time, when the giant claw of the sandalong beast swept over again, Wenlong suddenly leaned down and pressed his body tightly to the sand. Originally Wenlong's body was relatively short. But when he suddenly leaned down like this, he looked as if he was clinging to the ground. And the huge claws of the huge sand lion swept over Wenlong's body and didn't hurt Wenlong at all. Then, the attack method of salmon began to change. The previous Sandimon used its huge claws to sweep towards Wenlong. But now, the Sandimon raised its claws high. This is a natural reaction for most creatures. When faced with an opponent who is much shorter than you and cannot even reach the height of your instep after falling to the ground, the most appropriate way is no longer to sweep, but to step on him. After all, facing such a small opponent, a sideways sweep would probably just knock the opponent away. But a direct slap or a step on the opponent would be truly fatal. Just like when humans face a bug lying on the ground. They often only step on it with one foot. But when faced with a wild dog that is barking at them, they just kick it. The height of the opponent determines the attack to a large extent. The attacker's attack method. Then the Shalimon, who noticed that Wenlong was close to the ground, also did the same. One of the Shalimon's giant claws was raised high. And then he slammed it down. Of course Wenlong was already prepared. And suddenly rolled up and dodged to the side. The moment Wenlong stood up, the huge palm of the sandalong beast had already hit the ground. Bang! There was a dull sound on the sand. The sound was like a large pile driver driving piles on the flat ground, giving people a strong sense of power. At the same time, a large number of waves suddenly rose around the palm of the sandlion's hand that hit the ground. Of dust. Chapter 111 Battle with a Sherry Beast 2 When Long almost let this giant palm hit him, and when Long also knew that if he was really hit by such a palm, then even the giant strange bird armor might not be able to save him. But no matter what, the giant claw of the sand along beast finally stopped. Although it was only for a moment. When the giant claw slapped on the ground, it inevitably entered a short-term stationary state from the accelerated falling motion. And then, the Shalimon will retract its claws. For one long, this was a rare opportunity. And of course, he would not let it go. So at the moment when the giant claw of the sand along beast slapped the ground, one long, who had just escaped the attack of the giant claw, hit the monster, Bird Shaw, stabbed hard at the back of the sand along beast's giant claw. Thanks to Granny Ruizzi's superb forging technology, the two strange bird demons successfully pierced the thick skin of the sandalong beast and finally penetrated deeply into the thick and fat claws of the sandalong beast. The beast suddenly screamed wildly, and at the same time, it waved its giant claws and threw Wenlong away violently. Wenlong rolled on the ground several times before barely stopping. Fortunately, it worked. Meow. Looking at the two strange bird demons inserted into the giant claws on the right side of the sorry beast. When Long couldn't help but smile knowingly. Ouch! 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 The sand lion roared wildly. The huge pain made Sandymon become more and more manic. 
after throwing one long away. Looking at the two. Weird bird demons. Nailed to his right paw. Sandeman's first thought was naturally how to get rid of these beasts as soon as possible. Two daggers were pulled from his claws. After all, these two, strange birdshaw, are both weapons with fire attribute damage. If they are inserted into the claws of the salmon, the power of the flames gathered inside the strange birdshaw will continue to burn. Salmon's claws. At this time, Wenlong could already see a scorched black mark on the claws of the sorry beast, and could also hear a sizzling sound like a barbecue. In Wenlong's view, the two strange bird demons inserted into the paws of the Sali beast are like two hot irons, constantly burning the paws of the Sali beast, so that the Sali beast has to first stop and unplug them. Snapped! The first, strange bird shaw, was pulled out by the sand lizard beast, and then thrown aside. Although the wound left by the strange bird shaw was not small, there was not a large amount of blood spurting out from the wound, because along the lines around the wound a large part of the place was burnt. So after pulling out the first, strange bird shaw, Sandimon rushed to pull out another. Strange bird shaw, but did not notice that Catherine had already caught up from behind. Snapped. The second strange bird demon was also pulled out by the sand beast and thrown aside. At this time, Catherine had already ran behind the sand beast and raised the heavy bone sword in her hand high. And from Catherine judging from the red light surrounding her body, in order to ensure her attack power, Catherine drank another bottle of ghost medicine that can increase her attack power. At this moment, Sarimon finally felt someone coming behind him. Sarimon tried to dodge to the side, but it was already too late. Vertical cut! The moment the big sword slashed down, the body of the Salomon had moved half a body to the side, just enough to avoid Catherine's vertical slash. However, the huge tail of the Salomon remained behind and was struck by Catherine. Cut down with the sword. Blood sprayed out, and half of the huge tail of the sorry beast was chopped off by Catherine. Ouch! The sand alive beast roared wildly again. At this time, the sand alive beast finally realized that neither the person nor the cat in front of him was someone to be trifled with. The Sarimon began to run, aiming for the cave left, when the Sarimon rushed out of the ground. Woman! Stop it quickly! Don't let it escape! When Mong shouted, because the double sword, strange bird demon, had been thrown aside by the Sarukaman, when Long was now in a hurry to pick up his weapons so he could only ask Catherine to help block the Sarukaman to prevent the Sarukaman from escaping. Okay, Mr. Cat. Fortunately, Catherine's position at this time was pretty good, right between the sorry beast and the entrance of the cave. She could intercept the sorry beast by slightly adjusting her position. Seeing that the sorry beast was trying to escape, Catherine immediately turned around, blocked the sorry beast's escape route, and took a defensive posture. Bang! Bang! This time, the Sandalin beast first attacked Catherine with its claws, but because one of its claws had been basically destroyed, the attack was not a big threat and was blocked by Catherine. After realizing that the claw attack was useless, the furious Sari beast simply rushed forward and pressed its entire body towards Catherine and kept biting with its sharp teeth. This time, although Catherine still blocked all the opponent's attacks, the heavy bones in Catherine's hands began to make a creep sound. Oops! One long, who had just picked up his weapon and was about to rejoin the battle, suddenly realized that something was wrong. After all, this giant bone sword is only made from the bones of the big wild boar king. It is considered a level 5 weapon. Even with the bonus of Granny Reese's forging technology, this giant bone sword can only reach the level of the level of a 9 level weapon. And the sand raccoon beast is a monster that can only be hunted by 2 star mid level hunters. Its materials can be used to create a 15 level weapon. It is six levels higher than the heavy giant bone sword in Catherine's hand. These two I'm afraid the gap between them is a bit big. Woman, get out of the way. Don't hold on. Meow. One long, who realized the problem, shouted loudly, speeding up and rushing over. Forcibly take medicine and transform into a ghost. In order to make himself faster, one long once again swallowed the force-moving drug and entered the ghost human mode. However, one long was still a step too late. With a loud noise, the heavy bone sword in Catherine's hand finally collapsed. First, the core part of the heavy giant bone sword constructed from the spine of the giant boar king began to crack, and the broken bone fragments scattered. Then other parts that were originally joined together began to fall apart. Finally, the entire heavy giant bone sword suddenly collapsed. The subsection was completely broken in the middle. 
It can be seen that no matter how strengthened the skeleton of the big boar king is, it cannot withstand the saturated attack of the powerful sand lion. And Catherine, who lost her heavy bone sword as a protective barrier, was suddenly thrown to the ground by the sorry beast. This time, the sorry beast's fangs were aimed at Catherine's head. In front of the huge sorry beast, Catherine's human body looked extremely petite. It seemed that as long as the sorry beast took one bite, it would be enough to bite off Catherine's entire head. Chapter 112 Battle with the Sherry Beast 3 The situation was already very critical. And when Long was still some distance away from the sand lion at this time, if he wanted to catch up, Catherine would have to survive at least this attack. But Catherine was pinned to the ground. And she lost her weapon. If only I had made a weapon for this stupid woman when I got the materials for the big strange bird. In that case, it wouldn't be so broken. In an instant, such a thought appeared in Wenlong's mind. Idea. Wenlong felt that his heart was hanging in midair. Wenlong had no choice but to run as hard as he could. Then Wenlong saw the huge sorry beast and bit it in one bite. Catherine! Wenlong called out Catherine's name. Because Wenlong was right behind Sarimon. He couldn't see the situation clearly from the front. But he only knew that Sarimon had pressed its head down. But soon, Wenlong noticed that the head of the sorry beast was raised again, looking extremely painful. It turned out that just when the sorry beast was about to bite it, Catherine forced the remaining half of the heavy bone sword into the sorry beast's mouth, compared with the thick outer skin of the sorry beast. The sorry beast's mouth is much more fragile. Although the sorry beast immediately used its sharp teeth to bite the remaining half of the heavy giant bone sword to pieces, those the sharp bone fragments that burst out still left countless wounds in the mouth of the sorry beast. The painful sand along beast was eager to spit out the bone fragments in its mouth. But at this moment, Catherine immediately seized the opportunity and kicked the sand along beast suddenly in the abdomen, and then kicked it hard, knocking out the huge sand along beast. The beast kicked it away. This woman can actually kick over the sand lizard beast. Even when Long was surprised by Catherine's sudden burst of power, looking at Catherine on the side, she was already struggling to stand up. And judging from Catherine's appearance, one arm should be injured. Hoo hoo. Catherine gasped, standing with difficulty, and at the same time grabbed the upper part of her right arm with her left hand. There was a place where the armor was damaged, and bright red blood oozed from the middle. It was obvious that the damage caused by the sharp claws of the Sandmon when it was crushed by the Sandmon. At this time, Catherine had no weapons in her hands. Although she had just kicked the sand along beast away from her body, Catherine, who was now defenseless, seemed to be unable to fight anymore. And Shalimon turned over and stood up. Although Catherine had just used all her strength to kick the sorry beast away, she could not cause any substantial harm to the sorry beast because of this level. So Shalimon stood up again and started running quickly. Salomon did not seek revenge on Catherine. Because Salomon knew that Wolong was about to catch up. And now was not the time for revenge. For the sorry mon, as long as it runs to the entrance of the cave it rushed out of before, it is considered a victory. Because what is connected below the entrance of the cave is the underground river in this area. Once entering the hidden underground river, humans will not be able to survive at all. It is impossible to catch up with myself again. Seeing that the sand along beast bypassed her and continued to run towards the entrance of the cave, Catherine also started running. At first, Catherine kept holding the wound on her right upper arm with her left hand. After running a few steps, Catherine let go of her left hand and let the blood flow out of the wound on her right hand in order to maintain the normal swing of her two hands. In this case, the center of gravity of the human body is the most balanced. In order to ensure that one can reach the fastest running speed. That's enough. Woman, don't force yourself. Meow! Wolong shouted. Although based on the current distance between Wolong and the Sandalong Beast, it will take some time for Wolong to catch up with the Sandalong Beast. And it is very likely that the Sandalong Beast will escape into the dark hole. But Wolong is more don't want to see Catherine in danger. However, Catherine didn't seem to hear Wenlong shout, and continued to speed forward. The sand beast was about to reach the edge of the cave. And at the same moment, Catherine had just reached the edge of the cave. Bang! The cumbersome Salivemon jumped up. Judging from the distance, after this jump, the Salivemon could jump back into the big hole and then return to the underground river. At this moment, Catherine also jumped up. There was no weapon in Catherine's hand. So Catherine turned sideways, and hit the huge sand raccoon beast with her shoulder. Like two intersecting straight lines, Catherine and Sandmon collided. Although Catherine's body was much smaller than that of the sorry beast, Catherine relied on the abnormal strength of her body 
to knock the sorry beast that was about to jump into the cave and roll it aside. Of course, Catherine's body was even worse. After all, such a violent impact was actually beyond the endurance of Catherine's body. Even though he was still wearing the Great Wild Boar King's armor, at the shoulders, the inner layer of the Great Wild Boar King's armor also had a lining that could be used to absorb shock, but it still could not prevent the huge kinetic energy from being transmitted to Catherine's shoulders, causing Catherine's left shoulder blade was shattered due to the reaction force of the huge impact. Catherine also fell down. This time, Catherine did not get up again. One, Catherine's body was almost unable to move when she fell, although the fracture was only in the shoulder. When the huge shock was transmitted to the whole body, the bones of the body already felt like they were falling apart and unable to move. And because she couldn't change her body position, Catherine couldn't see what was going to happen next. Catherine could only lie on the ground and look up at the night sky, looking at the stars and the bright full moon. The scene in front of me was so peaceful. It felt like the previous battle was just a passing cloud. Only the roar of the sorry beast not far away told Catherine that the hunt was still going on. But soon, Catherine noticed that the roar of the sand beast became lower and lower. And then, the frequency became smaller and smaller. Later, Catherine could no longer hear the voice of the sorry beast. Mr. Cat is really awesome, Catherine said to herself. After a while, a familiar figure appeared in front of Catherine's eyes. Hey, woman, are you okay? Meow? Wen Long asked with concern. The moment he said this, Wen Long felt a little regretful. Because no matter how you look at it, Catherine lying on the ground doesn't look like she's okay. What I asked was simply nonsense. I, I mean, are you still conscious? Do you still recognize who I am? Meow? Wen Long quickly changed his words. It's Mr. Cat. Catherine wanted to reach out and hug Wen Long, but found that she still couldn't lift her hand. Chapter 113 L Cat's Bottleneck Wen Long quickly took out the recovery medicine G from his pocket and opened the lid. Don't move. I'll feed you. Meow. Gently lift Catherine up. Then bring the bottle containing recovery medicine G to Catherine's mouth. And then feed it slowly. After drinking a bottle of recovery medicine G, Catherine's complexion improved significantly. Of course, Wen Long knew that this was not enough. After all, judging from the current situation, this injury was already severe and could not be cured easily. Stand up. At this time, the businessmen headed by Mr. Hessen also rushed back. They consciously took out their own medicinal herbs. But Wen Long refused. Herbs and the like don't work. If you want to use them, just use recovery medicine G. The effect will be better. Get the gauze quickly. Meow. Soon, the merchants brought first aid gauze according to Wen Long's request. So Wen Long took the gauze from old Hessen's hand, then took out a bottle of recovery medicine G and poured the liquid inside on the gauze. Then used this piece of gauze soaked in recovery medicine G to bandage Catherine's wound. Mr. Cat. How? It's okay. I just wanted to shout. Don't be stupid. If you're hurt so badly, just try to talk as little as possible. Meow. There were two serious injuries on Catherine's body. One was a cut on her right upper arm that was scratched by the sharp claws of the salmon. The wound was very deep. Before bandaging the wound, Wen Long cleaned it with a cotton swab. Wound. And then used recovery medicine G soaked in the wound to bandage it. The other more serious injury was on Cather's left shoulder. When she hit the sandalin, Catherine hit it with her left shoulder, just like before. Wen Long also bandaged the injured area with a piece of gauze soaked in recovery medicine G. After everything was taken care of, Mr. Hessen and his colleagues also brought a stretcher over. It's not advisable to stay here for a long time. We will set off as soon as daybreak. If there is a stretcher, just Miss Catherine can lie down. A few of us will be responsible for carrying Miss Catherine, Old Man Heason said. It is said to be a stretcher, but it is actually just two straightened wooden sticks and covered with a whole beaver skin. So although it is a bit simple, its comfort level is still quite good, at least for now. It was much better than leaving Catherine lying on the cold ground. So a group of people helped carry Catherine onto the stretcher, and considering that the temperature was slightly cool, they covered Catherine with another beaver skin. We will set off at dawn. You should have a good rest first. Meow. When Long said to Catherine, Okay. Catherine nodded and closed her eyes. Catherine rested, but Wen Long couldn't rest yet, because Catherine was injured. Wen Long had to stay vigil throughout the night. And for Wen Long, there were still some things that had to be completed before dawn. For example, peel off the materials from the killed sorry beast and then put them into categories. After all, 
The material of the sorry beast is the best material that Wen Long has obtained so far. It is of high value. And he also put in considerable efforts to finally kill the sorry beast. Catherine was also injured because of it. After spending so much time. Of course. It is impossible to give up. However. If this woman hadn't stopped the sorry mon with all her strength. She would have really allowed this guy to escape. But this woman is really. Even more desperate than me. Wen Long thought of the process of killing the sorry beast before which was actually not easy. When Salomon was knocked over by Catherine, Wolong happened to catch up from behind. Then before Salomon got up, Wolong stabbed Salomon's back with his two knives. It entered and caused huge damage to the sand beast. At this point, in addition to one of the claws being destroyed by Wolong, the Saruki beast had two more deep wounds on its back. In addition, half of its tail was cut off by Catherine's sword. Naturally, its combat effectiveness was greatly affected. Under this situation, Wen Long gradually took the initiative in the battle with the Saruraman. So Wen Long slowly took advantage of the Saruraman's increasingly slow movements to approach the Saruraman again and again, and used both hands to the knife. Strange bird Shah left more and more scars on the Shalaman's body. Finally, after the injuries on the Shaili beast accumulated to a certain extent, the giant beast could no longer keep up with Wen Long's speed. Only then did Wen Long seize an opportunity to jump on the Shaili beast and then directly used his double the knife cut open the arteries in the Sartorius's neck, ultimately ending the giant beast's life. Oh meow! It's so hard to take care of a Sarimon! Sure enough, Elu's body is not as good as a human's body. Meow! While Wen Long was thinking this, he continued to peel off the material of the Sari beast. At this time, Wen Long had already peeled off the Sari beast's skin, different from the beaver beast's fur which is mainly orange-yellow. The beaver beast's fur is yellower and more pure, and the quality of the fur is also better than the beaver beast's fur. After peeling off the fur of the Sali beast, Wen Long continued to process the muscles and bones of the Sali beast. But Wen Long was thinking about another problem in his mind. How can I break through the limitations of being an Elkit and become stronger? From Wen Long's point of view, he was definitely very strong when he was a human in the game. At that time, even the ancient dragon species could easily hunt. But now, no matter how hard Wen Long tries, he still can't make up for being an Elu cat. In terms of physical disadvantages, he may be stronger than ordinary hunters. But compared with someone with strange power, like Catherine, it is far from comparable. In fact, Wen Long believed in his heart that among the top hunters in the world, there must be some who are not inferior to Catherine in physical ability. Catherine's talent is definitely not the best in the world. At least Catherine can hunt easily. The brother of the magical beast Chilin is very likely to have a talent comparable to Catherine. And more importantly, Catherine's brother must have more hunting experience than Catherine. How can I become stronger than them then? At least for now. Wen Long has not found the answer to the question. Although Wen Long has been exercising his body. And the results are very good. At least these days. Wen Long's strength has also gradually improved. But just like an ant cannot be stronger than an elephant no matter how hard he exercises. Wen Long believes that no matter how hard he exercises, he will eventually encounter a bottleneck and will never be able to reach Catherine's level. Realizing this, Wen Long began to become a little frustrated. After all, Wen Long is a perfectionist. When he realizes that he can't catch up with others no matter how hard he works in a certain aspect, he will still feel very uncomfortable after all. Chapter 114 The Neglected Ability The materials of the sorry beast have been stripped. Wen Long put the useful materials in a bag and dragged it aside. When dawn came, Wen Long was ready to throw the big bag full of materials to the grass food. On the dragon's back. After all, Catherine was injured now. Otherwise, materials of this level before could just be handed over to Catherine to carry on her back. Now Wen Long can only hope that those herbivorous dragons can bear more weight. Now that the material of the sorry beast had been stripped away, Wen Long wiped off the blood on his hands and came to Catherine's side again. Probably because the previous battle consumed too much energy. Catherine was completely asleep at this time. Breathing evenly. And her face looked much rosier. It was obvious that under the influence of the recovery drug G. Catherine's body the recovery is pretty good. This woman. With her seemingly ordinary body. Can actually explode with that level of power. I don't know where this power comes from. But maybe when I meet her brother in the future. I can figure out what's going on here. Keep it a secret. Meow. Wen Long still couldn't figure this out. So Wen Long simply didn't bother to think about it anymore. Instead, he sat down next to Catherine 
and continued to monitor the surrounding situation while always paying attention to Catherine's recovery status. Mr. Cat. Huh? Wen Long suddenly heard Catherine's voice and thought it was Catherine who had woken up. But when he looked carefully, he saw that Catherine's eyes were still closed. Only then did Wen Long realize that Catherine was just talking in her sleep. It turns out you were talking in your sleep. Meow. At this time, Wen Long suddenly noticed that Catherine moved her body slightly on the stretcher while talking in her sleep. And the fur of the beaver beast that had previously covered Catherine slipped from Catherine's body. You are so old. And you are still kicking the quilt at night. Meow. Seeing this situation, Wen Long complained in his heart. And then put the beaver fur on Catherine again. Mr. Cat. Catherine spoke again. Although her voice was very soft. Wen Long who was right next to her could still hear her clearly. Why are you still talking in your sleep? Meow? Hunting is really fun. Aw? Uh? So it turns out that the injury was not just to the arms and shoulders. But also to the brain. He was obviously injured like this. But he still said that hunting was interesting. Meow? Hearing Catherine sleep talk. Wen Long couldn't help complaining in his heart. This made Wen Long couldn't help but put his hand gently on Catherine's forehead. But there was no fever as Wen Long expected. It doesn't look like the fever has burned your head. Meow. Wen Long, who was a little worried, felt relieved a little. But at this moment, Wen Long suddenly felt that he remembered something. Wen Long remembered a sentence that Catherine asked him not long ago. At that time, Catherine asked, Now, Mr. Cat, do you think there is such a kind of person in this world who is not just for money? Honor and status? Are you hunting something like this just for fun? Wen Long remembered that he was very sure at that time and answered, Yes. Although I used to think hunting was very interesting. But no one likes to be tortured by monsters. Ah. No. When he said this, a familiar feeling suddenly emerged in Wen Long's heart. It felt like meeting his first love when he was a student again after many years. Which made his heart suddenly beat. If a person is tortured by a monster, isn't that what a monster tortures a person? In that case, I think I was tortured to death by a monster back then and still indulged in it. Meow. Wen Long laughed. Wen Long recalled that not long after he came into contact with the game Monster Hunter, when he was still a rookie, Wen Long was often abused by various monsters at that time. Not to mention monsters like the Sand Lion and the Big Strange Bird. Even a blue velociraptor king can beat him badly enough. In fact, it's not just Wen Long, but most players are like this. When they first came into contact with a game called Monster Hunter, every player almost had the same experience as when long they all experienced being attacked by monsters in various ways. A time of ravage. So much so that many people later nicknamed the game Monster Hunter as Monster Abuser. But when I think back, the happiest time of playing games was the time when I was abused by monsters. I improved my methods through repeated failures, exchanged tactics with other players, and constantly explored the various action modes of monsters. Although later, as Wenlong's technology continued to improve, even ancient dragon species could be easily hunted without injury. But the reason that drove Wenlong to hunt ancient dragon species over and over again was no longer the fun of hunting in the first place. But it became for the purpose of building better equipment, or to show off one's hunting skills in front of others. Wenlong's heart suddenly became enlightened. It seems that if you want to make yourself stronger and break through your original self, you must first change your mentality. Meow. Previously, Wen Long had always regarded himself as the strongest hunter. Although his body had turned into the body of El Cat, he always thought about how to be the strongest in a human way. For Wen Long, first of all, this is based on previous experience in the game. Because it was done that way in the game before. So in this world, Wen Long still copies the previous approach. In addition, this is also the reason why Wen Long is afraid of being abused by monsters. As an experienced hunter with superb skills, Wen Long no longer allows himself to fail. But now Wen Long understood that at this time, he had to give up the idea of an old hunter, and instead should treat himself as a new hunter, a new Elucat hunter to improve himself. Use the identity of Elucat to grow up as a new person again. Even if you are abused until your body is completely bruised, you must keep moving forward. So looking back at the things he had done before, Wen Long found that most of them were studying how to use the body of Elcat to do things that humans can do. For example, although it is clearly an Elkit, it is still thinking about how to use a hunter's weapon like a human, and how to use the various skills of a double sword like a human. Of course, this does not mean that Wen Long shouldn't do this. In fact, his previous experience also told Wen Long that since he has this talent, 
he should use the human hunting skills he has mastered to improve himself. But the problem with Wenlong is that in the past period of time, Wenlong relied too much on human skills and ignored various skills related to El Cat. It's great to use El Nico's body to perform human skills, but you should never forget to use El Nico's body to learn and master El Nico's own skills. Although Wenlong previously thought that El Cat's skills might be useful in hunting, Wenlong didn't study hard enough. I just thought that I might be able to slowly understand these skills while hunting. Facts have proved that Wenlong was wrong. Because when Wenlong, as an Elyacat, had been hunting in human ways, it was destined that Wenlong would not be able to comprehend the skills of the Elyacat in battle. After all, Wenlong's thinking mode was different from Elumeo's at the beginning. What are Elcat skills? It seems that we have to find a real Elcat hunter to learn how to use Elcat skills. Then if we combine Elcat skills with hunter skills, what will happen? What kind of hunting experience is it? Thinking of this, I feel a little excited. Meow. Chapter 115 finally saw Major Boltan. Of course, according to Wenlong's idea, in addition to learning El Cat's skills, becoming a human again is also a way to greatly improve one's strength. But Wenlong also knew in his heart that this idea was really outrageous. He didn't know if there was a way for him to turn back into a human being in this world. So how could he expect it? But now it's better to think about how to get out of this thundering sand sea safely. Now that Catherine has been injured, there should be no hope for the time being. If we encounter any monsters again, I will be a little reluctant on my own. Meow. One long thought. As for learning El Cat's skills, wait until you get to Midge Bolton. Midge Bolton is a big city, and it is also a famous port and trading city. Not only the entire West Shred Kingdom, but also people from many other places. There are people traveling to and from Midge Bolton, where you may be able to find some experienced El Cats and learn some useful skills from them. Just as one long was thinking about this, the horizon in the distance began to turn white, which meant that the caravan was about to set off again. But there is still at least one day's journey from Midge Bolton, and there is still the possibility of being attacked by monsters during this period. The merchants began to untie the ropes that tied the herbivorous dragons. Just like before, these herbivorous dragons began to move slowly in the direction of Major Bolton in a long snake formation. Old Man Hessen asked the two youngest men among the businessmen to carry Catherine on the stretcher and followed closely behind the team. Originally, it was a feasible method to let Catherine lie on the back of the herbivorous dragon. But considering that the back of the herbivorous dragon is not flat, and Catherine cannot be fixed on the back of the herbivore dragon like tying cargo. So out of concern for Catherine to avoid falling down if you are not careful, you need to use a more reliable way to carry the stretcher. Fortunately, although several businessmen were a bit older, they were still able to bear the burden of taking turns carrying a stretcher for Catherine. Moreover, everyone had seen Catherine's heroic appearance in the previous battle, and their admiration for Catherine in their hearts naturally increased. So even if they were a little tired, these businessmen were all willing. As for one long, he was a little tired at this time, because he had no rest all night and had a fierce battle. Staying up late caused two dark circles around his eyes, and the fatigue of fighting also made Wenlong's steps heavier than before. Seeing the two dark circles on Wenlong's face, Mr. Hessen simply suggested that Wenlong lie on the herbivorous dragon's back for a while. But Wenlong still rejected this suggestion and still decided to follow the team with his own foot power. Because Wenlong knew that if he lay on the back of the herbivorous dragon, he would probably fall asleep within a minute. And once he fell asleep, he would most likely not notice the approaching monster. When Catherine has no fighting ability, if she waits for the monster to approach and then rushes to fight, it may cause serious consequences. Don't worry. We have passed the most dangerous part of the journey. The possibility of everyone being attacked by monsters will be much smaller in the future. Old Man Heezen said to Wenlong. From now on, we are already far away from Major Boltan. There is only one day's journey away. Although it is still within the scope of the Thundering Sand Sea, there are often hunters from the Hunter Guild patrolling in a certain area centered on Midge Bolton. And most monsters generally do not dare to easy to get around here. Yeah. Wenlong nodded and said, but I'm not tired yet, so I don't need to rest for the time being. Meow. Wenlong knew that what old Heezen said was right, and Wenlong also agreed with what old Heezen said. But Wenlong would never let down his guard until he actually saw the patrolling hunter. This is not only for myself, but also for the safety of Catherine and others. Seeing what Wenlong said, old man Hessen couldn't say anything else, so he could only continue to immerse himself in driving the team forward in order to reach Midge Bolton as soon as possible. So the group of people kept walking like this. And when it was almost noon, 
Catherine woke up. However, because an injury of this magnitude could not heal so quickly, everyone still asked Catherine to continue lying on the stretcher to rest. However, one long also noticed that there were a lot of sweat beads on Catherine's forehead. Even though Catherine was just lying on a stretcher, and in order to prevent Catherine from having heat stroke, one long also used the beaver that had been covered on Catherine before the animal's skin formed an awning to shield Catherine from the sun. But the scorching air was still enough to make her feel unbearably hot. Hey, woman, are you hot? Wolong asked. Well, Mr. Cat, I'm a little thirsty, Catherine said. So Wolong immediately took out a bottle of cold drink without hesitation, opened the lid and handed it to Catherine. Catherine shook her head. Oh, I almost forgot. Your arm is probably not healed yet. Forget it. I'll feed you. Naya. Just like he had given the recovery medicine G before, Wenlong helped hold the bottle in slowly. Little by little, let Catherine drink the cold drink. Thank you, Mr. Cat. Catherine thanked with a smile. It's nothing. I can't just leave you alone. Meow. Wenlong turned his head and looked straight ahead in embarrassment, trying not to let Catherine notice his expression. Mr. Cat. Are you tired too? I'm not tired. This level is nothing to me. Meow. Wen Long still said stiffly. After that, Wen Long and Catherine walked and chatted like this. They talked about a variety of questions. From, the weather is really hot. How much can the fur of a sorry beast be sold for? To, I want to go to the market in Major Bolt and shopping. And, what are the famous tourist attractions in Mage Bolton? And so on. During the chat, Wen Long felt that time was passing faster, and the previous fatigue seemed to be left behind. Unknowingly, the sun that was scorching the earth had turned into a red sun in the west. The sand underfoot gradually faded away, and various green plants began to appear on the roadside. These scenes meant that Wen Long the group of people finally left the coverage area of the thundering sand sea. Soon, Wen Long heard someone in the team shouting loudly, Major Boltan. It's Major Boltan. Major Bolton? Wen Long looked forward, and sure enough, he saw a huge city standing in front of him. Although Wen Long knew that this city should be quite far away from where he was. But now that it can be seen, it means that this trip is about to reach its end. Chapter 116 Ulf Not long after walking again, Wen Long saw a group of hunters holding weapons. This was a typical team of four hunters. Each person carried a different weapon. One of them carried a sledgehammer on his back, and another carried a sledgehammer on his back armed with a hand sword, one with a bow and arrow, and one with a ballista. The four of them rode herbivorous dragons to patrol along the road near Major Boltan. Sure enough, the defense situation around big cities is different. Although they are just a patrol team, these four people look like experienced hunters, and judging from their equipment, they should be at least two-star hunters. To that extent, in this case, any one of them can be regarded as a top hunter in Milad Village. After glancing at the equipment of these four people, Wen Long made a judgment easily. The hunting team composed of four hunters obviously also noticed the approaching caravan. One of the leading middle-aged hunters waved H, low to the caravan. Oh, isn't this Mr. Hessen? I haven't seen you for a while. I thought you had retired. There is no way. Ulf, there are too few young people in the Chamber of Commerce. And I can't retire because of my old bones. Old man Hessen said with a bitter smile. It's just that the trade route from Milad Village to here has not been smooth recently. So I have been staying in Milad Village until I find a reliable hunter to help escort. It turns out that there is really nothing we can do about it. The middle-aged hunter named Wolf touched his chin as if thinking about something. Speaking of which, recently, even the monsters near Major Bolt and have appeared. It's become more frequent. And the guild can't spare any manpower for the time being. You see, even I have been sent out to patrol. Oh, by the way, from the looks of you, it seems that there are injured people in the team. Do you need help? It would be best if you can help. Because the injured one is the hunter who is traveling with us this time. Old man Hessen said a little embarrassed. Well, then let us escort you to the city gate. Although it is not far from Midge Bolton. Occasionally there are still monsters who dare to come here. So this four-person team also moved together with old Hessen's team. From a distance, it looked like a long snake with a shorter snake next to it. Seeing that the four-person team also joined the team, Wen Long finally felt much more relaxed. At least Wen Long no longer has to worry about this team being attacked by monsters. But whether it was out of curiosity or some other reason, Wen Long noticed that not long after walking, 
The man named Wolf came towards him on a herbivorous dragon. Are you seriously injured? If necessary, I can help you contact the best doctor image Bolton. And I can also ask the cat car to send you there as soon as possible. Ulf said to Catherine as soon as he came over. No, that's not necessary. I just need to rest. Catherine replied. Well, Ulf's eyes glanced at Catherine. And then, he couldn't help but frown. He changed the subject and said, Although it's a bit presumptuous, I still want to remind you that a hunter is a very dangerous person. Career. I suggest that a child like you should not push yourself too hard. I'm not a child anymore. Catherine retorted angrily. Really? Looking at the armor you are wearing. It should be made of the materials of the big boar king. Right? Regarding Catherine's rebuttal, Ulf looked a little disapproving at first. But in the middle of the sentence, he suddenly became serious. Where to dare to guard a caravan by one person across the thundering sand sea with such crude equipment is simply nonsense. I'm not alone. I'm with Mr. Cat. Aw? Uh? Mr. Cat? Who is he? Because Ulf was riding on the back of a tall herbivorous dragon. He didn't notice the short stature of one long at first. And he was still walking on the ground. It's me! Meow! One long jumped up in protest. Oh! It turns out to be an elk cat. What's wrong with elu cats? Can't elu cats be more powerful than humans? You are discriminating against us elu cats. I want to protest. Protest. Meow. Wen Long also climbed on the back of a herbivorous dragon. So that the other party can notice you. Ah. Forget it. Ulf did not argue with Wen Long. But shook his head helplessly. Turned around and prepared to return to his team. I am the hero who solved the star dragon investigation incident in Milad village. Isn't he much better than you? Meow? Wen Long's voice came from behind Ulf again. Did you solve the Xinglong investigation incident some time ago? When he heard this sentence, Ulf still stopped. He turned around again and carefully looked at the person in front of him. E Mao. Only then did Ulf notice that although Catherine was wearing the armor of the big boar king, the Alu cat in front of him was wearing the more advanced armor of the big strange bird. And what was even more strange was that this El cat actually uses two swords as weapons. Ulf! The Star Dragon investigation in Milad Village was really completed by Miss Catherine and Mr. Wen Long. I can testify to this. Even though Miss Catherine is still very young. Now! She is still what a terrible young man. This time Wen Long did not explain. But Old Hessen came over and explained to Ulf. Ulf also remembered that there was indeed an urgent commission to investigate a mysterious creature in Milad Village. At that time, in order to find out the truth, the guild sent several two-star and even three-star high-level hunters to investigate. As a result, instead of finding out the truth, they were injured one after another, and some people even almost lost their lives. Later, from the news brought back by the messenger Elucat, we learned that the incident was solved by a hunter in Milad village. And because it was determined that the mysterious creature was actually the legendary star dragon, this investigation of the mysterious creature the incident was officially named the Star Dragon Investigation Incident by the Hunter Guild and was recorded in the Special Hunter Guild event files. It turns out that you are the ones who solved the Xinglong Investigation Incident. It turns out that I am blind. So, is this your first time coming to Midge Bolton? It's your first time here. So what? Do you look down on us country people? Meow? Wolong said impatiently. No. Of course that's not what I mean. For us hunters, there is no difference between country people and city people. There is only the strong and the weak. Of course, we must show respect to the strong. But if it is the weak, I will also be kind. Advise them that rice and Mitch Bolton is expensive. Dot. Wen Long knew that the so-called rice and Mesa Bolton is very expensive actually meant that life in a big city like Mesa Bolton was not easy. So if you don't have the strength, you should not come here. Chapter 117 Parting with the Caravan Then do you think we are strong or weak? Meow? Wen Long asked Ulf directly. Since you have solved the Xinglong investigation incident, you are certainly considered a strong person, at least compared to me. So if you need any help, just tell me. I will try my best to help where I can, and I won't help where I can't. As a senior, I can give you some advice, Ulf said with a smile. Although Ulf's attitude changed a lot after he learned that Catherine and Wen Long were the hunters who solved the Xinglong investigation incident. To be honest, Wen Long did not dislike people like Ulf. Mainly because because Ulf is different from those pure snobs. Although some of his words are not pleasant to listen to. They are all true. For example, Mitch Bolton is a prosperous place where people from all over the world gather. 
The Hunters Guild has also established a large branch in this city to recruit a large number of hunters. However, large numbers of people mean competition. The pressure is high and the waves are turbulent. Only those with real strength can stay. Under such circumstances, it is natural that low-level hunters, like those in Milan Village, who only hunt large wild boars and blue velociraptors to support their families would not have a foothold in the city. From this point of view, Ulf is right to persuade hunters who have no strength to leave early. And judging from Ulf's actions, he doesn't just suppress and ridicule the weak. He also knows how to consider the other party in many cases. It's just that his worship of the strong is more deeply rooted in his heart. So when Long said to Ulf, Then I have a question for you. Meow. Asked. I know. I will definitely answer. Ulf answered very naturally, without showing any flattery. Do you know if there is a place in Major Bolton where Elecats are trained? Meow? A training center for Elecats? I don't think I've heard of this. Ulf touched his chin, thought for a while, but just said regretfully, Sir, you want to learn from Elecats? Combat skills? Yes, this is what I need to learn. Meow? There are training centers for hunters and Major Bolton has the best instructor in the entire West Red Kingdom. But there is no place specifically for training Elcats. Every Elcat is trained through training with itself. The combat skills learned by fighting with their masters, because they have to match their master's fighting style. The moves of these Elcats are different, and there are even many tactics that are original to them, so they cannot be used for special learning. As for the courses, I guess this is the reason why there has never been an Elcat training center. So that's it. Then do you know which Elecat is the most powerful in Major Boltan? Maybe I can ask for advice. When Long asked again, the most powerful Elecat. Although there is no rating system for Elecat's strength, it is generally believed that the stronger the hunter is, the stronger the Elecat who fights with them will be. So if we come, our Major Boltan branch president Sean Lon Roden should have the strongest Elecat. In addition, the leader of Wang Li's hunting group Dragon, I Caesar also has a cat that is different from Chairman Roden. The strength is high and low. But it seems that he believes more in the power of humans. And I have never seen him lead an Elcat. That means that the Elcat next to President Luodin, Sean Lon, is the strongest? Meow? Well, that's right. Ulf replied affirmatively. Okay. Then I'll consider looking for that Sean Lon Roden and his Elucat. Meow. When Long then asked Ulf about Major Boltan. And the two chatted for a while. The caravan soon reached a distance where the guards at the city gate could clearly see Major Boltan. Well, since we still have patrol duties, I will escort you here and wish you good luck. All saluted Wan Long and Catherine, and then said goodbye to Mr. Hessen. Then they left with several other members of their team. After that, Wan Long and his entourage continued to move forward, probably because old Hessen was an old businessman from the Basie Chamber of Commerce. The guards at the city gate allowed the entire caravan including Wen Long and Catherine, to enter Meechpur without asking any questions. Inside the tank. At this time, Wen Long truly saw how different the bustling scene of this city was from Milad village. Although it has begun to fall, Major Boltans has not calmed down at all. Whether it is on the street or at the port, it is still a busy scene. Not to mention the tall and majestic boulder buildings of Major Boltan. The hunters wearing high-end equipment that cannot be seen in Milad village and the royal guards wearing various gorgeous armors. Just look at those who shuttle through the city. The vitality of this city can be seen by shouting at the merchants selling goods. Even just looking at the distinctive local costumes worn by those businessmen. You can see how attractive Major Boltan is to these businessmen who have come all the way from other places. They speak with different meanings. Speaking with accents. They gathered near the dock to bargain with local merchants with goods shipped from all over the world. As for the port of Midge Bolton, there are many large mass sailing ships parked in a row, which makes the trade here even more prosperous. Busy stevedores go back and forth between the sailboat and the dock, moving various goods from the ship. Of course, there are also many land traders, like Old Man Hessen, who drive groups of herbivorous dragons carrying goods through the square in Midge Bolton. Some even simply place their goods on the ground and sell them along the street. Then, Miss Catherine, Mr. Wenlong, we will send the goods to the Chamber of Commerce first. After settling the gold coins there, we will pay you. After entering the square of Major Boltan, old man he's and also he began to say goodbye to Wen Long and Catherine. In addition, the hotel rooms prepared for you have been booked. If necessary, we can also contact you with a prestigious doctor in Midge Bolton. No, I'm much better. Catherine tried to get off the stretcher, 
It could be seen that although she was still a little uncomfortable walking, as long as she didn't run, she could just walk. Thank you very much. You guys have been carrying the stretcher for so long. Where? It is also our honor to carry the stretcher for Miss Catherine. Without Miss Catherine's heroic fight, I'm afraid we old bones would be finished. Also, Miss Catherine, please be careful. Although the fracture is in the shoulder, not the knee, but still maybe it's better not to move around. Okay, I will pay attention. Catherine also smiled and said goodbye to the caravan staff. Chapter 118, They Are All Imported Goods One Long and Catherine walked into the most luxurious hotel in Major Boltan and then asked at the front desk. Sure enough, they learned that someone had booked a room for them. So according to the room number they were told, they went to the guest room on the second floor, opened the door and walked in. Their eyes suddenly lit up, and at the same time a burst of fragrance hit their faces, which was refreshing, different from the traditional West Shore style of the Millard Village Hotel. The room decoration here obviously incorporates more styles from other parts of the continent. In addition, it seems to show the vitality of the city, and the colors of the entire room are also brighter. Mr. Cat. Mr. Cat. What is this? Wow. It smells so good. One Long knew that what Catherine was talking about was a pink-purple stone placed on the table at the entrance. The stone was placed in a transparent metal box. There was a slow fire under the box to heat the entire stone. The refreshing aroma in the room comes from this stone. This is called a flower-scented stone. It can naturally emit a scent like the fragrance of flowers. Because it is rare and there is no such stone produced near Midge Bolton. It is very expensive. Meow. One Long explained, It's very expensive. When Wen Long said it was very expensive, Catherine immediately shrank back, as if she was worried that if she broke this thing, she would need to pay compensation. Hey, Mr. Cat, what about this? Because Catherine couldn't move her hands easily, she just stared at another thing on the table. Oh, this? These things are called chopsticks. They are tableware used for dining in some areas in the eastern part of the mainland. Meow. The tableware can be made so beautiful. It is made of milky white material without any impurities. And there are exquisite carvings on it. Is it made of jade? Catherine exclaimed. No. No. These are not made of jade. These are chopsticks made of bobo teeth. They are also very precious. Meow. Bobo? Was it the bobo's tongue that I ate that night? Yes. That's it. In addition to the tongue being a high quality food material, bobo's teeth are large and long. And the texture is very pure and moist so they can also be used to make various luxury goods. You also know, this bobo it's not a creature that exists in the kingdom of Zishard. In other words, these things are expensive imported goods. Meow. TSK. TSK. Catherine couldn't help but click her tongue. Then Catherine asked about some more things, such as the lampshade made of gray crystal stone, the sparkling gold fish kept in the fish tank, and so on. Although these things have different appearances and uses, they all have one thing in common. That is, everything is an expensive luxury product. And most of them are imported. These things are so expensive. Otherwise, I would like to buy some back from Major Boltan. Catherine said with some frustration. At this moment, the door to the room was opened. And a waiter in a maid uniform walked in pushing a cart of food. Guest, this is the dinner you ordered. Please enjoy it slowly. After placing several plates of sumptuous dinner on the table. The maid bowed politely and pushed the empty dining cart out of the room. This is because Wen Long asked the hotel to deliver food to the guest room because of Catherine's inconvenience. Opening the dinner plate. What was placed in front of Wen Long and Catherine was food they had never seen before. Oil fried scallops. Steamed sea fish. And the largest dinner plate filled with Meyer Bolton's special sea lobster. Wow! It's all seafood! After all, it is a port city. The fishing industry is also very developed. Delicious seafood is also a specialty of this city. Meow. Mr. Cat. Feed me. Catherine opened her mouth impatiently, waiting for Wen Long to bring the food to her mouth. Meow. I can't move my hands right now. Catherine said coquettishly. Alas, Wen Long sighed, and then walked to Catherine's side. Pa, Wen Long put a hand on Catherine's shoulder. Eh? Catherine was stunned for a moment. I said, Woman, your shoulder doesn't hurt anymore. Right. I put my hand on your shoulder like this, and you didn't even respond. Meow. Hee hee hee. Mr. Cat. How did you find out? Catherine had a surprised look on her face. Humph. You guy. Are you so brave now? How dare you play tricks in front of me? 
even though your injury has healed. You are still pretending to be sick? Don't think that I have forgotten this big wild boar king suit on you. What are the additional skills? What is it? Recovery speed plus two. Maybe according to the normal recovery speed, your injury should not be healed yet. But after you have the skill of recovery speed plus two inch. I'm sorry, Mr. Cat. I just wanted to ask Mr. Cat to feed me again. Catherine explained sheepishly. Shut up. As a punishment, you can't have dinner tonight. And you can only eat while watching me. Meow. No. Mr. Cat. Early the next morning, Wen Long received a reward from the Basie Chamber of Commerce. A total of 521 gold coins and 36 silver coins. This included not only the money gained from selling goods, but also Wen Long and Catherine remuneration for guarding the caravan. In addition, the materials of the Sand Along Beast and the Yellow Speed Dragon King that were hunted in the Thunderous Sand Sea were not included because these two parts of materials were needed by Wen Long to build new equipment. So they were not sold. Wen Long and Catherine also received news that Uncle Hessen's caravan would stay in Midge Bolton for about five days. Because during these five days, in addition to the necessary rest for the caravan, Hessen the old man still has enough to buy some new goods. After the purchase is completed, the caravan will set off again. This time it will return to Milad village from Midge Bolton and bring some big cities to the remote Milad village. Special products only available. By then, Wen Long and Catherine will naturally go back with the caravan. Are there still five days left? It should be enough to find someone who can teach me the all cat skills in these five days. Meow. Wen Long thought to himself. So Wen Long prepared to leave the hotel alone on the grounds that he still had some important private matters to do, leaving Catherine alone in the guest room. After all, Wen Long is no longer as worried about Catherine's safety as before. As a hunter with two star strength, Catherine already has the ability to take care of herself alone. But Catherine was still a little reluctant to let Wen Long leave. When Wen Long left, Catherine hugged Wen Long's thigh tightly and then asked with tears in her eyes to follow him. Mr. Cat, don't leave me alone. Last night, I ate a big lobster while you weren't paying attention. I just admit it. Go away. You woman, it's not about life and death. I will be back in a few days. And you are holding my legs like this. It is easy to cause misunderstandings. Meow. Really? Really? Ahem. Of course it's true. You have to practice hard in the room these days. Don't relax or run around. When you come back in a few days, I will test the results of your practice. Meow. Long said to Catherine in a very serious tone. Okay. Mr. Cat. Catherine finally nodded. Chapter 119 Rodin's Elecat Rodin. Leaving Catherine aside for the time being. When Long came to the Major Bolt and Hunter Guild alone. The building of the Hunter's Guild is a large stone building. Although compared with other surrounding buildings, the height of Midge Bolton's Hunter's Guild is not particularly outstanding. But the solid, thick and rough feeling is what the surrounding buildings are like. Incomparable. As soon as he walked into the Guild, when Long heard a rough curse. Kill! Kill! Kill all the big strange birds! Especially those big strange birds in pairs! We must not let them exist! What's going on? Meow? When Long followed the sound, and saw a shirtless man loudly scolding a group of hunters around him. And all those hunters were so obedient that they didn't dare to speak out. Wolong noticed that this man was about 60 years old. But he had an extremely strong physique. His hairstyle was in a very special spiral upward shape. And he also had two exaggerated mustaches. Which looked very distinctive. Judging from the aura displayed by this man, he should be the president of the Midge Bolton Hunter Guild. Right. Although Wolong thought so in his heart. In order to be further sure, Wen Long walked to the reception counter and asked the receptionist standing in front of the counter. Hello. You seem to be a new face I haven't seen before. Is this your first time here? The speaker was a young woman with a weak colored complexion and a graceful figure. Ah. This is indeed my first time here. I see. I'm Preen. The receptionist here. How can I help you? I just want to ask. Who is the president of the Hunter Guild here? Our president. He's right over there. As expected, Preeny pointed at the middle-aged man who was cursing loudly just now. It is indeed him, Wen Long thought to himself. But it's best not to look for our president now, Preeny continued. The president is in a bad mood right now. Why are you in a bad mood? I seem to hear him cursing now just now. Well, although there is some gossip, it is still an open secret in the guild. So it doesn't matter if I tell you, Preeny smiled and said. Because our guild leader has been single for more than 60 years. 
So when you see monsters that are in the breeding season and appear in pairs, you will get angry. No, it is the breeding season of the big strange birds again. So the president began to order his subordinates to hunt the big strange birds on a large scale. I just scolded them it's just a few hunters who are not good at hunting. So it turns out that the resentment of a man who has been single for more than 60 years is really deep. Although the weather at the beach was still cool early in the morning, Walong felt that there were big beads of sweat on his forehead. So, it's best not to go looking for him now. Preeny advised Walong again. It doesn't matter. Actually, I am not looking for President Roden, but President Roden's hunting cat. Because I am also a hunting cat. So I want to ask it some questions. Meow. Are you looking for the L cat under the guild president? Then the one over there is Rodin. This time Preeny pointed to a corner of the guild hall, where there was a brown L cat, sitting on a wooden barrel, drinking wine leisurely. Rodin? Isn't that the same name as the president? Meow? When Long felt a little strange. Yes, although it was not originally called this name. The president gave it to him later. But over time, we have forgotten his original name. Preeny whispered into Wen Long's ear. I heard that he loved lovers like to name their beloved things after themselves. Hey, hey, are you really good at being so dark? No way. These are all open secrets in the guild. Really? Pre laughed and looked away, obviously feeling guilty. Okay, thanks. Wenlong bid farewell to Preeny, and then walked towards the brown Elucat. Wenlong noticed that this Elucat really reflected President Roden's style in every aspect, such as the hairstyle, which was also a strange spiral head. So when Long told the other party his purpose of coming. Want to learn Alcat skills? Meow? Yeah. That's it. I need a teacher with enough experience to teach me. And of course, I can pay for it. Naya. Alcat Roden looked at Wen Long carefully. And then shook his head regretfully. I can see that you should be a very capable and motivated Alcat. But I can't teach you. Meow. Why? Elma Roden added. Because there have been too many things recently. There are monsters everywhere to defeat. And even the president himself has to take action himself. Of course, I can't be idle. You see, it's not easy to hide behind there's no time for a sip of wine in the corner. Meow. Just as Aluma Roden was speaking, Wen Long noticed that guild president Roden had already begun to summon the people in the guild to prepare for the next round of hunting operations. If you really don't have time, can you tell me any tricks or give me some advice? Look. I haven't learned any of Elcat's skills until now. What is the problem? Meow? Wan Long said hurriedly because he was worried that the other party would say goodbye. Even if it is an Elcat skill, there is nothing that can be learned with just a few clicks. And I see that you are very strong. Even though you are an Elcat, you can actually use two swords as weapons. And if I if your guess is correct, you can probably even transform your twin swords into ghosts. This is something that even I can't do. So why do you need to learn from me? Meow? Because I want to become stronger. So I need to learn new things. Meow. Wen Long replied decisively. Do you want to master the hunting skills of humans and the hunting skills of Elcat at the same time? Yes. I want to be the strongest. Meow. Still answered in the affirmative without hesitation. Why don't you become the strongest? Elma Roden first lowered his head in thought. And then after a short silence, Elma Roden seemed to think of something. I still can't teach you. Firstly, because I don't have time. Secondly, if I really want to teach others, I am not qualified yet. Hearing this, Wen Long felt a little discouraged, because it is often difficult to overturn the conclusion reached after thinking. However, soon, Aluma Roden changed the topic, giving Wen Long hope again. But, maybe I can recommend an Elu cat who is suitable to be your teacher. His strength is better than mine, and he is also extremely proficient in Elu cat's hunting skills. More importantly, he has a lot of time. Meow. Excuse me. Where is the Elu cat you mentioned and what is its name? Meow? Wen Long asked immediately. Chapter 120 The Elu Cat Master Who Lives in Seclusion. Do you know about the Volcano Extreme Hunting Battle Incident? Meow? Elu Cat Roden did not answer Wen Long directly, but asked rhetorically. Have you ever heard of the Volcano Extreme Hunting Battle? It must have happened more than 40 years ago. It seems that President Roden also became famous at that time. Meow. Wen Long thought for a while and replied. Yes, that's what happened at that time. It has been more than 40 years ago. Almost 50 years ago. Now that I think about it, it was really a H. Lish situation because an ancient dragon awakened inside the volcano. 
causing a large number of monsters to attack. External migration resulted in a devastating attack on Opal, the mining city closest to the volcano. Meow. It is said that the best hunters in Zishard were sent there at that time? Meow? Wenlong said. Yes. Everything passed. But it failed to stop the ancient dragon. Later, the Hunters Guild even issued an emergency retreat order. The hunters no longer aimed at hunting monsters, but instead focused on covering the retreat of the people as their first priority. In other words, people no longer had expectations for victory at that time, and were ready to completely abandon the mining city of Opal. However, at this time, a team of hunters known as the Dragon Nightmare 4 appeared and fought off the Awakening Gu Long also saved the entire mining city of Opal. Meow. Dragon Nightmare Number 4. When Long did have some impression of this term in his mind, and vaguely remembered that it was a team composed of the four strongest hunters at the time. Among the four hunters of Dragon Nightmare 4 at that time were our guild leader Lu Din, and now the leader of the Wongli hunting group. She saw, if I say this, you should also be able to understand the strength of this team. Right. Meow? It should be the strongest hunter team at that time. Right. Wen Long said. Yes. He is the strongest even now. Of course. Provided they don't part ways. Why do we have to part ways? Meow? Wen Long asked curiously. On the surface, the reason why they parted ways was because they had different ideas. Or because they were getting older and wanted to go back to their hometown to get married or because they were hit by an arrow in the knee or something. But in fact, what caused them to separate was probably the sacrifice of their companions. Meow. Sacrificed? Meow. When Long asked in surprise. Yes. Although we defeated the ancient dragon in the volcano, one teammate paid the price with his life. After that, Dragon Nightmare 4 became Dragon Nightmare 3. And then because he couldn't accept the death of a new person as his replacement, because of his teammates, the remaining three people in the team also parted ways. At this point, El Cat Roden also sighed. I understand, Wen Long said. The one you want to introduce to me is the hunter's Elu Cat who is left. Right? Meow? Yes, that's it. So you can rest assured about the strength of my friend. After all, he was much more active than me in the extreme volcano hunting battle at that time. And my friend died after his master passed away. He has never signed a contract with other hunters but has lived in seclusion alone. As long as you can convince him, he should be able to do his best to help you. When walking out of the Hunter's Guild, Wolong held in his hand a note written by Roden, the Elk Cat, to himself, which recorded the name and address of the Elk Cat that Wolong needed to find. The island located northwest of Mejibolton has a special nautical chart, but since it is on an island, you have to take a boat to get there. After confirming the location recorded on the note, Wolong walked straight to the port. At the port, Wenlong spent a gold coin to rent a small fishing boat, and then headed towards the island northwest of Midge Bolton marked on the chart. It was not until noon that Wenlong was sent to the island. Wenlong then agreed with the fisherman driving the fishing boat that when it was time to leave, he would light a fire on the island and use the thick smoke as a signal, and then let the fisherman pick him up. According to the marks on the chart, this island should be there. According to Elicat Roden's description, the opponent spends most of his time on the beach. In this case, it shouldn't be difficult to find the target by walking along the beach. Meow. So when Long started walking along the beach, and sure enough, it didn't take long before he saw an Elecat wearing a bamboo hat sitting on a huge rock on the beach, holding a fishing rod in his hand, leisurely fishing for fish in the sea. Is this Mr. Luoluo? Meow. When Long walked over and asked, Luoluo is me. I am Luoluo. Meow. The other party didn't even turn his head when he spoke. He just replied, I'm Wenlong, and I'm here to learn from you. Meow. Wenlong said in a rare and very polite tone, Study under a teacher? What's there to learn from this bad old man like me? Meow. I want to learn El Cat's hunting skills. Naya. Huh? I don't know how to do that. I only know how to fish. That's all. Stop pretending. I know you participated in the volcano extreme hunting battle back then. Meow. Who told you that? Meow. Hello, the cat. Meow. This guy actually sold me out again. Luo Luo said in a low voice first. And then said loudly. Ahem. Okay. I admit that I did participate in the volcano extreme hunting battle more than 40 years ago. But so what? I have no interest in hunting after that. And I don't accept apprentices. Meow. I can give you money. Or if you want other rewards. 
I will try my best to get it for you. As long as you teach me how to master El Cat's hunting skills. Meow. I'm an El Cat living alone on an isolated island. What's the point of asking for money? And I don't have anything else that I need. For me. Just fishing on this isolated island and spending the rest of my life quietly is enough. Yes. Meow. Yeah. Wen Long suddenly took a step forward. And then snatched the fishing rod from Luo Luo's hand. Let me see what's written on this fishing rod is the memorial award for the 12th fishing competition of the Major Bolt and Fishing Association. Hey. Hey. You Ella Cat. How can you just grab other people's things? Meow. Luo Luo jumped up and tried to snatch the fishing rod back. But Wen Long immediately took two steps back. And Luo Luo didn't grab it. This seems to be different from what you said. Didn't you say that you just want to spend the rest of your life quietly on this isolated island? Why did you run out to participate in the fishing competition of the fishing association? And if I remember correctly, this fishing the competition must have been held recently. Which means you left this island not long ago. Meow. I just want the prize for the championship in the fishing competition. That's all. What prize will the winner get? Meow. The limited edition gold fishing rod with enhanced power is sold by the Major Bolt and Fishing Association. It is said that it can catch even huge water dragons. So I have always wanted it. Meow. When saying this, Luo Luo was obviously full of expectations. Chapter 121 The Power of El Cat Soul 1 I see. I understand. Meow. When Long said slowly, What do you understand? Let me say it first. I have lived on this island for decades. I have to find some entertainment projects to pass the time. I have been entertaining for decades. I want to go out to participate in a competition and see myself. It's normal to know what level of skills I have. Right. Don't expect to use this excuse to get me to leave this island. Meow. I don't need you to leave this island. I just need you to teach me the skills of El Cat. And as a reward, I can help you win the next major bolt and fishing competition. Really? Luo Luo's eyes lit up. Of course it's true. I mean what I say. Meow. Well, okay. It's just idle time on this island anyway. Luo Luo thought for a moment and said, Although I don't know whether what you said is trustworthy, but since it was introduced by El Cat Roden, then I it's better to reluctantly give him some face. Meow. After speaking, Luo Luo waved and motioned for Wen Long to follow him. Soon Wen Long followed Luo Luo to a simple wooden house. Luo Luo opened the door of the wooden house and invited Wen Long to come in. Just like the simple appearance, the interior furnishings of the wooden house are also very simple, with only a table, a cabinet, a bed, and a stove for making a fire. Luo Luo asked Wen Long to sit down first, then went to boil a pot of water, took out two cups, and put some tea leaves in them. You live here alone, but you have prepared two cups at home. Meow, Wen Long said. It's not because that Elecat Roden occasionally comes to the island to see me, Luo Luo said while boiling water. Anything that wants me to get out of the shadow of the past as soon as possible and not to be depressed anymore is actually dozens of times. Years have passed. The shadow of that year has long passed. And the sadness has long been diluted by time. Meow. Then why do you still live in seclusion on this island? It's very simple. I prefer fishing to hunting now. If I still live in Midge Bolton as before, there will always be some hunters who are not willing to give up and come to see me. Meow. Not long after... Luo Luo brought the tea. Tell me, what do you want to learn? Meow? Everything starts from the basics. All of them? Luo Luo glanced at Wen Long's equipment, and then asked in disbelief. You don't know anything. How did you get a suit of a big strange bird? And your weapon is actually the double swords are made according to human specifications. Could it be that you have been hunting in human ways? Meow? Yeah. Wen Long nodded. It's really interesting. I want to hunt like humans but I can't do it. But since that's the case, let me start with the most basic theory. Originally, these things should be what most elk cats are born with. But there are indeed a small number of elk cats in history who have to learn to understand these. So there are only a few tutorials on this aspect. So Luo Luo took a sip of tea and then began to tell slowly. We all know that as long as humans defeat monsters through their own hunting, they can gain some special skills after wearing equipment made of monster materials. For example, the suit of the big boar king has a recovery power of plus two. The effect is that the big strange bird suit has the effect of increasing the attack. I think you should already know this. 
The main reason why there is such an effect is because these equipment contain the soul power of monsters. Different monsters have different soul powers. So different suits can provide hunters with different skill effects. But once these equipment are lost, humans will have no way to develop new skills by themselves alone. That is to say, although humans can use equipment to obtain the soul power of monsters, their own souls can never inspire any skills. This shows that although humans have extremely high intelligence, they have little control over the power of their own souls. Application is the weakest. Meow. But we, the elk cats, are different. Luo Luo took another sip of tea. Although we can speak the same language as humans, even according to human classification, we elk cats still belong to the orc species. We are a race between humans and monsters. So our soul power is actually stronger than humans. In other words, we can not only gain additional abilities by inducing the soul power in our bodies, but we can also build them through hunting like humans. Equip it to gain the monster soul power. Meow. Having said this, Luo Luo smiled, then looked at Wenlong and said, So, your problem should be because your soul power is too weak. Meow. Sure enough, his reputation is well deserved. He immediately saw the problem with me. I traveled through time, and my soul is a human soul. No wonder I can't activate skills like other ill cats. When Long secretly exclaimed in his heart, of course, on the surface, when Long Long still pretended to be calm. So Long asked, Then let me ask, Is there any way to solve this problem? Meow? Yes, that's meditation. Meow. Meditation? Yes, meditation is the best way to awaken the power of the soul in your body. It allows us Ella Cats to learn to examine the power deep in our souls. In addition, I can also help you a little to help you enter meditation faster. Status. Meow. As he spoke, Luo Luo took out a piece of incense, lit it and placed it on a plate. This incense can help you focus, cat. Okay, I'll try. According to what Luo Luo said, Wenlong began to meditate with his legs crossed, then closed his eyes and tried to get himself into a meditative state. At first, I didn't feel anything special. I just felt that my mood began to calm down under the influence of incense. Slowly, when Long began to feel that some kind of shining light gradually began to appear in front of his eyes that should have been pitch black. At first, this light was like a weak flame. Gradually, the flame became bigger and bigger, illuminating the scene. A world. Snowy mountains? Why did I suddenly come to the snowy mountains? Meow? When everything in front of him began to become brighter, when Long realized that he was surrounded by a vast expanse of white, and the wind and snow blew past him making Wenlong feel a biting cold all over his body. Suddenly, a huge roar sounded, and then Wenlong saw a huge creature covered with white hair appearing in front of him. It's the Snow Lion King. Why is there the Snow Lion King? Oh, by the way, this scene seems a bit familiar. Isn't this what happened before I traveled through time? I remembered that the scar on my face should be on. Left from that time. Chapter 122 The Power of El Cat Soul 2 although when Long still retains part of the memory of that time in his mind. That vague memory is still fundamentally different from the current scene that is like a movie replay. At this time, the Snow Lion King appeared particularly clear in front of Wen Long. It was a large-toothed animal that was more than 4 meters tall and 9 meters long. Its huge head was surrounded by long white hairs that looked like a lion's mane. Hence the name Snow Lion King. At this moment, the Snow Lion King was flying towards Wen Long very quickly. Its speed was completely out of proportion to its huge body. Seeing the snow lion rushing towards him, Wenlong's body began to run involuntarily. Obviously, with Wenlong's current strength without any equipment support, there is no way to fight this giant beast. However, because of the extremely cold weather, Wenlong's body began to become heavier and heavier, and his physical strength became consumed faster than before. This made Wenlong unable to exert his maximum running strength. Elcat's anti-heat and cold technique Activate! Meow! Suddenly, a voice sounded in Wenlong's heart. And in an instant, his trembling body began to feel warmer. The coldness before seemed to disappear all of a sudden. Is this the special skill of Elecat? It seems that it can adjust the temperature changes of the body within a certain period of time. It is indeed a very useful skill. Wenlong thought to himself. With the help of Aluma's anti-heat and cold protection, Wenlong's decline in physical strength finally slowed down which allowed Wenlong's running speed to increase, and the Snow Lion King behind him seemed unable to catch up for the time being. However, just when Wenlong felt that he should have been able to escape, suddenly, 
The Snow Lion King behind him rolled out a huge snowball in the snow. And then suddenly threw the entire snowball into the air. You shouldn't be able to hit me from this position. Meow. Wan Long couldn't help but look back at the situation. Judging from the predicted movement trajectory, it seemed that it was impossible for the huge snowball to hit him. However, Wan Long soon discovered that he was wrong. Because the target of the snowball thrown by the Snow Lion King at the beginning was not him. The snowball was thrown diagonally upward by the Snow Lion King. And then directly hit a cliff in front of Wan Long. And then the snowball, the huge impact of the ball immediately caused a large piece of snow on the snow mountain to completely loosen. And it began to collapse rapidly. Wan Long finally had to stop. Because a large amount of collapsing snow kept falling in front of Wan Long. If he continued to move forward, he would undoubtedly be involved in the avalanche ahead. At this time, the Snow Lion King behind him had already caught up and slapped him with his paws. El Cat's Defensive Technique El Cat's Seven Turns and Eight Rising Techniques Meow At the moment when Snow Lion King's claws came over, Wen Long used two El Cat's skills in succession. Among them, El Cat's Defense Technique can reduce the damage suffered by El Cat, while El Cat's Seven Turns and Eight Rising Techniques can increase its attack power every time it falls to the ground and rises again. Wen Long was hit, but because his body was very light and protected by defensive skills, although he was knocked away, he did not suffer enough fatal damage. Moreover, after rolling a few times on the soft snow, Wen Long the dragon stood up again. The moment he stood up, Alumeo's seven turns and eight rising techniques was activated instantly, and Wen Long felt that his body strength had become stronger. Every time you fall to the ground, the attack power can be increased by one level. I remember it was in the game before, but I didn't expect that this body would actually use such a skill. If this skill is superimposed with the ghost transformation of the double sword, then the attack power can definitely be improved to another level. Meow. Wen Long thought in his heart. However, even with El Cat's seven turns and eight rising techniques, Wen Long was not able to hurt a single hair of the Snow Lion King. The reason was simple. Wen Long had no way to get close to the huge beast. The Snow Lion King seemed to be deliberately teasing Wen Long. Seeing that Wen Long finally rushed over, he easily slapped Wen Long to the ground. Wen Long relied entirely on the defensive skills of Elu Cat. Thanks to the cushioning of the snow, we managed to survive. However, after being knocked down eight times in a row, Wen Long felt that his attack power had finally reached an unprecedented peak. This is also the special effect brought about by El Cat's. Seven turns and eight rising techniques. According to the characteristics of this skill, the attack power is increased every time after falling to the ground. And this increase can be superimposed eight times in total. Eight times seemed to be the limit. But when Wen Long stood up again, Wen Long felt that another voice suddenly sounded in his heart. El Cat's attack technique. El Cat's backing formation. When these two skills were used, Wen Long knew that this was really going to be a last ditch battle. On top of the original limit of El Cat's, Seven turns and eight rising techniques. El Cat's attack technique and El Cat's backwater formation have already increased the attack by eight levels, pushing strength to new heights again. Among them, Alumeo's backwater formation is especially a skill that greatly improves attack and defense capabilities in a short period of time at the expense of one's own recovery ability. Once this skill is used, it means that if Wen Long can do it again this time, if you fall down, your body will not recover. No wonder the scar on my face has not recovered even after using the recovery medicine G. It turns out that it was because I used the backwater formation at that time. Then, the most profound scene in Wenlong's memory left by Wenlong's predecessor finally appeared. Although he didn't have any weapons and equipment. After using El Cat's skills to increase his attack power to the extreme, Wenlong once again rushed towards the ferocious and powerful Snow Lion King. This time, the keen Snow Lion King seemed to have noticed that Wen Long had a completely different deterrent power than before. It gave up its previous casual play and pounced on him with a more ferocious attitude. The Snow Lion King's claws swung over. But this time, Wen Long actually dodged. This was the result of Wen Long being knocked to the ground eight times before. It was Wen Long's best evasion after getting familiar with the Snow Lion King's attacks time and time again. After dodging the Snow Lion King's attack, the Snow Lion King finally entered Wenlong's attack range. Wenlong's claws that had been raised to the limit scratched the Snow Lion King's face. Crack! A trace of blood red flashed across the white world, which was the blood shed when the Snow Lion King's nose was scratched by Wenlong's sharp claws. Wenlong was desperate. 
the move he used with all his strength could only scratch the bridge of the opponent's nose. This made him completely understand the gap between himself and this ferocious snow mountain beast. Chapter 123 The Power of Elcat Soul 3 In sharp contrast to Wenlong's despair, the Snow Lion King was also extremely angry. This giant beast with a body of more than 9 meters long and 4 meters tall never imagined that a small Elecat could hurt itself with just its claws. You must know the level of Snow Lion King, let alone an Elcat. Even an ordinary 3-star hunter is no match for Snow Lion King. And if it is a 2-star hunter or below, it is almost impossible to hurt yourself. Even if their hunting equipment is struck on the Snow Lion King, it will be bounced away. But an Elucat did it. And it was an Elucat that didn't even have a weapon. It only did it with its own claws. At this moment, the damage caused by this Elucat's claws even exceeds that of many hunters' weapons. This made the proud Snow Lion King feel unprecedentedly angry. In anger, the Snow Lion King slapped his other paw. This time, the Snow Lion King no longer attacked casually like before but really used his full strength. Both the speed and strength were the same as before, incomparable to attack. After Wenlong's body tried its best to launch an attack, he could no longer dodge in a short period of time. He could only watch the huge palm hit him. In an instant, Wenlong was hit by a completely overwhelming force. And at the same time, he felt that his body flew out like a stone. At this moment, Wenlong flew farther than ever before. And then his body began to sink rapidly. There were no longer obstacles from stones and snow. Only the sound of wind whistling in his ears. Wenlong knew that this was the result of being beaten down the cliff. And falling from such a high height would already be a disaster. Later, after falling like a revolving lantern, Wenlong felt his body fall heavily to the ground. Then everything began to become blurred. And the picture gradually fell into darkness again. A long dark night. Like the remaining dark scenes played after the previous film movies. After this dark scene passed, Wen Long felt that his consciousness seemed to be awakening again. After that, Wen Long opened his eyes and saw it was still the simple wooden house with simple furnishings. Luo Luo was still sitting in front of Wen Long. But Wen Long noticed that Luo Luo was no longer wearing the same bamboo hat at this time. How long have I slept? Meow? Wen Long asked. About two days. Meow? Luo Luo replied. Two days? It has been such a long time? Although Wen Long's tone was a little surprised. He was still mentally prepared for this situation. Yes, it's been two days. Time flies very quickly during meditation. But since you have been meditating for such a long time, you should have seen what you want to see. Right. Well, you did see what I thought you saw. Meow, Wenlong said. While meditating, Wenlong did see, himself, using various Elcat skills. Of course, the person using Elcat skills was not his real self but when Long's predecessor before time travel. But from this meditation, it can be concluded that the previous memory of Elcat's skills is still retained in his mind. It's just that these memories usually seem to be unable to appear. Is it because when I traveled across time, the original soul that resided in this body had been wiped out? No. If the original soul of this body has really been wiped out, then these memories can no longer be recalled. Yes. Maybe this soul is hiding in a corner of this body and can only be sensed during meditation. Wenlong began to think carefully about the results of this meditation in his heart. But for me, the biggest gain from this meditation is that I personally experienced the process of activating Elcat's skills. Then if I just need to repeat this process according to the memory during meditation, can I also activate these skills? Meow? So according to the process in his memory, Wenlong suddenly shouted loudly, Activate Elcat's defense technique. But nothing happened. This won't work. Even if the movements and postures are correct, it won't work. It's just superficial. To achieve inner synchronization, the soul must be connected. So things like meditation are not done once. If it can be completed, you will need to meditate many times. When your bond with the soul reaches a certain level, and you can connect with the soul in your body even without entering the meditative state, you can use the corresponding Alcat skills. Meow. I don't know when. Luo Luo made another cup of tea for Wen Long. Then he explained it carefully to Wen Long as if he had seen through something. Well, if that's the case, then I'll try again. With that said, Wenlong was about to enter the meditative state again. But he saw Luo Luo shaking his head to stop him. Meditation also requires a lot of energy. It is recommended not to do it continuously. And as long as you master the trick, you can slowly experience it yourself in the future. I believe it won't take long for you to completely master the hunting skills of our Elecats. 
Meow. Okay. After hearing what Luo Luo said, Wen Long had to give up the idea of continuing to meditate. Moreover, Wen Long has now confirmed that the soul of the predecessor of this body still remains in this body. So he feels much more at ease. Later, Luo Luo sent some incense to Wen Long. Luo Luo told Wen Long that if he couldn't enter the meditative state for a while, he could use incense as an aid. However, after he became proficient, incense would be of little use. So Wen Long solemnly bid farewell to Luo Luo. Originally, it was okay for Wen Long to continue to stay on the island for meditation training. But Wen Long considered that Catherine had been waiting in the hotel for two days. And there were some other things that had to be dealt with within these few days. So Wen Long still chose to say goodbye to Luo Luo. As agreed, Wen Long set up a bonfire on the shore. And thick smoke rose. An hour later, a small fishing boat came to the shore. Remember, you must help me win the championship in the next major bolt and fishing competition. Meow! Before leaving, Luo Luo warned Wen Long again. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. Meow! Wen Long said, while waving goodbye to Luo Luo. After bidding farewell to Luo Luo, the fishing boat set sail. This time with the goal of returning to Midge Bolton. Chapter 124 Charge Slash After returning to Major Bolton, Wen Long naturally went to the hotel to find Catherine first. Mr. Cat, you are finally back. Hey! Hey! I told you not to hold me so tightly. Meow. As usual, as soon as Wen Long entered the door, Catherine rushed over and hugged Wen Long tightly. Mr. Cat, I miss you so much. I thought you would never come back. Only then did Wen Long notice that there were tears in Catherine's eyes. How come? I've only been out for two days. At this point, Wen Long immediately thought of changing the subject. Oh, by the way, how have you been practicing these two days? Meow? I have been practicing hard. If you don't believe it, look at it, Mr. Cat. As she said this, Catherine pulled out her big sword and then excitedly performed several vertical and horizontal slashes to show her strength. I saw a few after images of the big sword being drawn cleanly in the air. It looked like Catherine was waving light branches, which seemed particularly relaxed. However, because the sword was extremely huge, even though it was just a few simple vertical and horizontal cuts, Wen Long still noticed that the huge attack range of the swinging sword still covered almost the entire room. Fortunately, the room where Wen Long and Catherine were located was large enough, and the furniture in the room barely avoided being damaged. Fortunately, nothing was broken. Otherwise, just the compensation would be unbearable. Let her go out and find an open place to practice next time. Wen Long thought to himself, Mr. Cat, what do you think of my practice results over the past two days? Catherine said with some pride. Yes, it's worthy of praise. It's basically comparable to an experienced hunter with five years of hunting experience. Meow. Wen Long also praised objectively. I haven't gone out in the past two days as you told me. Mr. Cat, I have been practicing except for eating, sleeping and bathing. Mr. Cat, please praise me more. Well, that's right. That's really a blessing. However, there is still a long way to go as a hunter and there are countless challenges waiting for you ahead. However, now that you are very proficient in vertical and horizontal slashes, you can almost do it now. I can consider teaching you new skills. Meow. Wen Long thought for a moment and then said, New skills? Catherine was stunned for a moment. Well, vertical slash and horizontal slash can only be regarded as the most basic moves of the great sword. What I want to teach you now are the real skills. Meow. Great. Mr. Cat. Isn't the new skill great? Isn't it great? Isn't it great? Catherine asked excitedly three times in a row. Humph! Of course it's very powerful. Is there anything I've taught you that isn't powerful? Then teach me. Mr. Cat, I want to try it now. Wait a minute. Meow! Wen Long signaled Catherine not to get too excited. And then said, Because the destructive power of this move is too great. We can't practice it in the room. We'd better go out and find an open place. Appropriate. Meow. Okay. Mr. Cat. So Wen Long took Catherine out of the room and out the back door of the hotel, where there was a garden for guests to rest and take a walk. However, because it was almost dusk and the sky was starting to get dark, the garden seemed very empty at this time, and there were no other guests. Listen up. Woman, what I am going to teach you this time is a very powerful skill. One strike of this skill can be as powerful as the usual seven or eight vertical and horizontal slashes. 
And the power of this move is the name is Charge Slash. Meow. Charge Slash? The name sounds like it's a very cool move. Of course, Charge Slash can be said to be the sole move of the Great Sword. Whether this move is used well or not can best tell the level of a Great Sword user. Wen Long said proudly. The following rules are still the same. Sir, let me demonstrate it to you first. Meow. As before, Wen Long wanted to pick up a branch from the ground and use it as a big sword to demonstrate. But after looking around, he found that the garden was very clean and there were no dead branches falling on the ground. So Wen Long simply decided a branch was broken off from an ornamental tree. Okay. Watch it. Meow. Wen Long used the branch in his hand to assume the posture of a big sword and then began to accumulate power. This is a special physical ability that can only be achieved in the world of Monster Hunter. Wen Long's muscles began to contract violently, as if they were rubber bands that could store elastic potential energy. They were constantly tightening, but his body was he maintained the ready posture before swinging the sword without any changes. One, two, three. Wen Long counted silently in his heart. When Wen Long counted to three, all the muscles in Wen Long's body were released instantly as if a rubber band that had been stretched to the extreme was suddenly released. And all the muscles in Wenlong's body were released. All the accumulated strength surged out. Charge Slash It's completely different from ordinary slashes. Wenlong's Sword Slash is obviously several times more powerful. The reason is that when I used branches for demonstrations in the past, although they looked very powerful, after the demonstration, the branches themselves were still fine. But this time it was completely different because just when Wen Long demonstrated the charge slash, although it did not hit the target and was just an air slash swung into the air, the branch was completely destroyed the moment Wen Long made the move. Cracked? That's probably what it feels like. Wen Long threw the broken branch aside and then said to Catherine, A branch is just a branch after all. It's not strong enough. Meow. Mr. Cat. This is really amazing. Catherine exclaimed. Well, but you just saw that although the power is indeed amazing, the activation of this move will be relatively slow. After all, it is called a charge slash. It is inevitable that you need to charge up. But if you have just started practicing, you can start with a paragraph start practicing by charging up, and then slowly practice the second and third stages of charging once you become proficient. Meow. Okay, Mr. Cat. I'll try it right now. Although she had only seen it once, Catherine was no longer a novice now. So Catherine quickly imitated one long and corrected her posture. First start to contract your muscles, but lock your joints and don't move. Meow. Following the key points provided by Wen Long, Catherine began to accumulate strength. One. As a result, as soon as Catherine counted to one, the big sword in her hand was slashed out. Pay attention to how to ensure that the joints do not move while contracting the muscles. The key is that your muscles have just contracted to the first stage and the joints have started to move again. Meow. As soon as Catherine failed to charge up, Wen Long immediately pointed out Catherine's mistake. Yes, Mr. Cat. So Catherine immediately made a ready posture for charging and slashing. Chapter 125 Second Meditation 1. Just like before, Catherine just counted to one when she slashed out with a big sword in her hand. Come again. Meow. Wen Long scolded. 1. The result is still the same as before. Hey, Mr. Cat, this is so difficult. After failing three times in a row, Catherine complained a little. Of course it's difficult. This is a skill, and it can't be compared with basic moves like vertical slash and horizontal slash. Practice it hard. Practice it 500 times first. Meow. Okay. Okay. Mr. Cat. When Catherine thought that the power of this charge slash was far greater than the vertical and horizontal cuts, she felt that her whole body was full of energy again. So she continued to practice. While Catherine was practicing, Wen Long corrected Catherine's movements a few more times and then left Catherine to practice alone. Anyway, the key points of the teaching have been taught and the rest is left to this woman to practice by herself. In addition, I should be able to try the previous meditation training again now. Wen Long roughly estimated that at this time it has been about 10 hours since the last meditation training so it should be no problem to conduct the second meditation training. So Wen Long found a clean place to sit cross-legged, then closed his eyes and tried to enter a meditative state again. After a while, ah, I really can't calm down. There are too many distracting thoughts in my head, so I might as well light some incense. So according to the method taught by Lulu Church, 
Wen Long lit the incense and placed it beside him, and tried to enter a meditative state again. Sure enough, it went much more smoothly this time. After more than ten minutes, Wen Long successfully entered a meditative state, and the same scene as last time appeared in front of him. Still as if he was replaying a movie, Wen Long saw himself being chased by the huge Snow Lion King, and then he ran and kept running, only to be blocked by an avalanche. In desperation, he could only turn around and fight the Snow Lion King. In the end, even after using multiple El Cat skills, he still lost to the Snow Lion King and was eventually knocked off the cliff. Mr. Cat, Mr. Cat. Just when the scene in front of him ended, Wen Long suddenly felt that he heard a familiar voice. Wen Long opened his eyes and saw Catherine holding him in her arms, and then kept calling. Mr. Cat, you finally woke up. It's no use shouting before. I don't know what's wrong with you. Wen Long could clearly see Catherine's anxious look. Why are you panicking? I'm fine. I just fell asleep accidentally. Meow. Wen Long said pretending to be relaxed. Then Wen Long looked around again and found that the sky was still pitch black. So Wen Long asked again. Hey, woman, how long have I slept? Mr. Cat, you must have slept for five hours. It's already midnight now. Is it already midnight? Well, that's it for today's training. Have a good rest. Naya. Okay, Mr. Cat. So Wen Long and Catherine returned to the guest room, probably because they were too tired from practicing the power attack. After taking a bath, Catherine quickly fell asleep on the bed. But Wen Long did not fall asleep. Instead, he kept recalling in his mind the scene he saw twice in a row during meditation. I remember that the first time I meditated, I slept for two days. But this time it only took five hours. This should be because my proficiency in meditation has increased. Meow. If this is really the case, then Luo Luo is not wrong. As long as you practice more, you should be able to solve the problem of El Cat's skills soon. The meditation time will only become shorter and shorter in the future. Communication with another soul will become more and more convenient. And then, there should be no problem in using that soul to activate the El Cat skills in my body. Meow. After thinking about this clearly, Wen Long instantly felt much more at ease. And Su, Wen Long also fell into sleep. Early the next morning, there was still one day left before Uncle Hessen's caravan set off back to Milad village. When they woke up in the morning, Wen Long and Catherine first did some routine training. And then, they had breakfast at the hotel. This time, Wen Long did not ask Catherine to train again. Hey, Mr. Cat, are you going to train today? Well, there will be no training today. After all, we finally came to Midge Bolton, and there are still many things to do. And you, a girl, also want to go shopping in this big city. Right. Meow? He, Catherine smiled awkwardly. Anyway, let's relax today. Let's go to the market in Midge Bolton to see what goodies there are. Meow. Great. Mr. Cat. Catherine jumped excitedly. After leaving the hotel, Wen Long and Catherine walked towards the market near Major Bolt and Square. Along the way, they saw many novel items that they had never seen before in Milad Village. But what made Wen Long feel a little strange was that although Catherine seemed to be interested in many products along the way, such as beautiful clothes, cute trinkets, or exquisite porcelain cups, in the end Catherine did not buy any of them. Hey, woman, isn't there what you want here? Why don't you buy anything? Meow? Mr. Cat, I know that it takes a lot of money to become an excellent hunter. So I want to use all the money to improve my hunting strength, Catherine explained. That's it. Wen Long didn't say anything more, and just continued to walk forward, where there was the largest and most famous blacksmith shop in Midge Bolton. Yeah, Mr. Cat, the blacksmith shop in Major Bolton is much bigger than the blacksmith shop in Milad Village. And there are so many people. Are they all here to forge equipment? Catherine said. Well, it is indeed much larger. In addition, there are many hunters in Major Boltan. So naturally there will be more people who come to forge equipment. And the forger here, Master Luo, is also a famous forger whose strength is not inferior to Granny Ruisi. Because we will set off back to Milad Village tomorrow. And we will have to cross the Thundering Sand Sea again. So it would be better to take out some materials and build some better equipment to improve our strength now. Meow. When he said this, Wen Long and Catherine had already walked to the door of the blacksmith's shop. Wen Long saw a young man with a red airplane head who was concentrating on forging equipment. Next to the young man, there was a dark-skinned, tall, middle-aged man holding a large forging hammer 
who was carefully forging equipment. Watching the young man's forging process. He would give pointers from time to time. Chapter 126 Blacksmith Master Luo Based on the information obtained from previous chats with Ulf, one long knew that this dark-skinned and strong middle-aged man was the most famous blacksmith of Major Boltan. Master Luo The red-haired young man next to Master Luo is Master Luo's apprentice. Named Leo. Guest, do you want to forge equipment? Master Luo, a tall man, asked when he saw Wen Long and Catherine walking into the shop. Yes, I want to forge two sets of equipment. Meow, Wen Long said as he put the materials of the Huangsalong King and the materials of the Shalimon that he brought with him when he went out and placed them on the counter. Two sets of equipment? Is this what the lady next to you is wearing? No, no, no. Saruman's suit is for this woman. And the weapon is a big sword. But Huang Sulong King's suit is for me. And the matching weapons are double swords. Meow. Elucats also need to use double swords? By the way, I don't know how to make weapons for Elucats. Master Luo smiled and shook his head when Wenlong said that he wanted to make two swords for himself as weapons. You don't need to know how. You just need to scale down human weapons to a level suitable for me and me to use. And the rest can be made according to human specifications. Meow. Okay. But for two sets of equipment, it will take at least a week to pick them up. Master Luo said. A week later? Wenlong was startled. Why does it take so long? Meow. There is no way. Look. There are too many orders here to handle. It will be good to be able to have your equipment in a week. Master Luo pointed to the pile of orders hanging on the wall and said. Wenlong knew that Master Luo was probably not lying. Because judging from the customer flow of this door, it was normal for there to be so much business. But to say that there is really nothing we can do about it is impossible. Sure enough, the passenger flow in big cities is different. In comparison, Grandma Ruizzi's forging house is much more leisurely. Sure enough, at that age, Grandma Ruizzi only regards forging as a hobby. Otherwise, what if the shop moves to Major Bolton? It will make a lot more money. Right. Meow? Wen Long thought to himself. But Wen Long can't wait any longer. He will set off back to Milad village with the caravan tomorrow morning. At that time, he may encounter more powerful monsters than before. So when Long needs better equipment to avoid the previous ones. That critical situation where someone gets hurt. So when Long asked straight to the point. I want it tomorrow. Sir, just tell me how much it costs and you are willing to help us build it first. Meow. Ha ha. It's really refreshing. Master Lu laughed. I haven't seen a person as cheerful as you in many years. Oh no, he is such a cheerful cat. And seeing that you and your companions are very familiar to each other, he must be a newcomer who has just arrived at Mitch Bolton. A newcomer can be so courageous, and his future is boundless. Ha ha, tell me quickly, how much is it? When Long urged, the equipment made from the materials of the Huangsu Dragon King is a level 10 equipment, and the store charges 20 gold coins. The equipment made by the Shalimon is a level 15 equipment and the store charges 30 gold coins. These two sets of equipment were originally delivered after a week. You need the goods tomorrow morning. In this case, I will help you build it six days in advance. I will charge 10 more gold coins for each day in advance. Six days is 60 gold coins. 60 plus 50 is a total of 110 gold coins. But I see that you are quite happy, so I will make an exception and give you a special discount. I don't want the fraction of the 10 gold coins. You can pay a total of 100 gold coins. How about it? It's a great discount. Right. Ha ha. It's so shameful. You're obviously trying to steal money like this. But you still make it sound like we're getting an advantage. Wen Long thought to himself. Of course, Wen Long did not express his thoughts. But spoke very calmly and confidently. Okay. 100 gold coins is 100 gold coins. Anyway, this money is nothing to me. I will come to pick it up tomorrow. You have to prepare all the equipment for me. Meow. Wen Long noticed that when he said this, several hunters around him, who also came to forge equipment, were staring at him. So Wen Long deliberately said it loudly so that these people could hear it. As a newcomer, the most important thing when you come to this trading city Major Bolton is to make a name for yourself. You can't give people a stingy impression at the beginning, so that you can achieve both fame and wealth in the future. And this Master Luo, he is also the number one person in Major Boltan and his forging skills are very good. It is worth paying the extra money to build a good relationship with him. Meow. Wen Long thought to himself. 
Okay. I've accepted all the materials. Tomorrow morning. At this time. I guarantee you can see the brand new equipment. After confirming the forging matter, Wen Long and Catherine left the forging house, then walked around the market and bought many props that were not available in Milad village. Mr. Cat, what is this? Catherine said, pointing to one of the square boxes. This is called a trap. It requires a very skilled craftsman to make it. You can't buy it in a place like Milad village. So I just bought ten of them this time. It's a big deal. Harvest. Meow. It looks like just a square box. And a box like this actually costs five gold coins. Catherine couldn't understand how such a simple box reflected the craftsman's exquisite skills. This trap mechanism is of no use yet. So you think it's just a box. But if combined with some important materials, it can be made into a very useful hunting trap. There's no point in explaining it to you now. You will naturally see it in the future. After saying that, Wen Long put the props he bought this time into his backpack and put them away. And then said to Catherine, Okay, I have done everything I need to do today. How about we go to the arena and have a look? Meow? Arena? That's it. Wen Long pointed to a ring building in the distance and said, That's the arena. And it's also the place where you will compete with that kid named Claude in the future. Why don't you go and have a look first? Meow? Go. Go. Catherine nodded quickly and agreed. Then let's go and take a look. In fact, I've wanted to take a look for a long time. It's also a good fun to go to the arena and see how other hunters fight monsters. Meow! After passing through the bustling urban area, Wen Long took Catherine to the northwest corner of Midge Bolton, where the huge amphitheater was built against the mountain. This arena standing on the edge of the city reminded Wen Long of the ancient Roman arena on Earth. But compared to the ancient Roman arena, the hunter arena in Midge Bolton seemed more wild. Leaning against the mountains, many of the built parts have not even been carved giving people a feeling that is closer to nature and more in line with the theme of humans fighting monsters. Chapter 127 Continuous Hunting It's now on the shelves. Thank you for your support. Please also ask for monthly votes, rewards, subscriptions, etc. This huge arena can be said to be a major feature of Midge Bolton. It was originally used as a training facility for hunters, allowing some hunters to challenge their limits by fighting monsters with human protection. Prepare for a real hunt in the wild. But with the passage of time, under the influence of Midge Bolton's open business culture, the arena has gradually added some entertainment attributes. Many hunters who are eager to become famous come here to prove their strength. And those in the city people living here also come here to see the hunters fighting monsters. Later, a chamber of commerce called Blackstone obtained the right to operate the arena. In addition to providing training for hunters, it also began to invite hunters to perform some commercial performances more often and to provide services to those who wanted to watch hunters and hunters. Spectators of monster battles are charged a certain admission fee. What people didn't expect was that this approach caused a huge response. Not only the residents of Midge Bolton City were extremely interested in watching the battle between hunters and monsters, but even many people from other places also went. Watching the battles between hunters and monsters in the arena is considered an important tourist item in Midge Bolton. If you come to Midge Bolton, but don't go to the arena to watch the hunting, then your trip is really in vain. Obviously, Wan Long is also one of those who has such an idea. How much are the tickets? Meow? Wan Long asked when he came to the ticket office at the entrance of the arena. Depending on the seats, the price of the tickets is also different. The most expensive ticket costs 10 silver coins, and the cheapest ticket costs 10 copper coins. The more expensive the ticket, the closer you are to the center of the arena, and the clearer you can see. Otherwise, the price is cheaper. Excuse me, what kind do you want? Guest? Of course you have to watch it in high definition at close range. And 10 silver coins are really nothing. I think during this period, I was either hunting or exercising myself. I finally came out to relax. How could I be wrong just to save money? What about myself? Wen Long thought in his heart. So Wen Long said to the conductor, If you want the most expensive tickets, get two. Meow. After getting two first row seat tickets, Wen Long took Catherine to buy peanuts, melon seeds, popcorn and other snack foods at a shop next to the arena. In addition, one person bought a large cup of foam coke, and the other two, then he swaggered into the arena. As a result, Wen Long and Catherine had just found a place to sit down when the hunting started. The first person to enter the arena was a short hunter. This is a woman with an elegant and beautiful oriental face. If judged solely from appearance, 
She seems to be younger than Catherine. No more than 14 years old. So her body is also thin and Lolita shaped. Her hair is long black hair common to Asians. And is tied into twin tails. But when Long noticed that the petite girl was carrying a bow, an arrow made of sand along material. Named Zayashahel. And she was wearing a set of blue speed dragon king. Of light armor. This made Wen Long feel an extremely uncoordinated feeling. After all, according to the level of equipment, the Howling Sand Roar, made from the materials of the Shaili Beast is a level 15 equipment, while the Light Armor of the Blue Speed Dragon King is a much lower level 5 equipment. In Wen Long's impression, it is very rare to be so heavy on attack and light on defense. But this sense of dissonance only existed in Wen Long's mind for a moment, and was quickly forgotten by Wen Long. After all, Wen Long came here to relax, not to hunt. Others are hunting now, and Wen Long is just a spectator looking for fun. However, Wen Long was still a little surprised when this girl, who looked to be only 14 years old, appeared in the arena. After all, judging from the howling sand roar in this Lolita's hand, this Lolita was at least two stars, a mid level hunter, even one level higher than Catherine. Magibolton is really a place of crouching tigers, hidden dragons. Meow! Even when Long had to sigh in his heart. This made when Long couldn't help but take out the ticket he had in his pocket and look at it. When Long then learned from the game schedule printed on the back of the ticket that this girl had an oriental style name that matched her appearance. It's called Begonia. What High Tang will face will be three consecutive hunts. The so-called three consecutive hunts, as the name suggests, means that the hunter must hunt three times in sequence without rest and supplies. Whenever the first monster is defeated by the hunter, the organizer of the game will immediately put another monster into the arena until three of the game is not over until all monsters have been defeated. And according to the schedule printed on the back of the ticket, this continuous hunting is to hunt three monsters, the big strange bird, the sand beast, and the poisonous strange bird. It's really a great show. You can actually watch three consecutive hunts with one ticket. It feels like opening a bag of instant noodles and finding an extra packet of seasoning packets. Meow! While Wen Long was thinking this, on the other side of the arena, a huge metal fence was slowly opened. Anyone familiar with arena knows that now it's time for the monsters to come on stage. Sure enough, when the metal fence was completely opened, a big strange bird appeared in the arena. It's about to begin. Can this girl Mr. Cat really beat the big strange bird? Catherine couldn't help but whisper to Wen Long. From Catherine's voice, Wen Long could clearly feel that Catherine was really a bit crazy. Worried about the girl named Hai Tang. Of course she can. Didn't you see that she used the hunting bow howling sand roar made from the material of the sand beast? That proves that she is at least a two-star intermediate level. Meow. When Long said to Catherine. That's right. At this time, the game has begun. And the first to attack is the big strange bird that has been locked up for too long. This big strange bird had just been released. And it immediately rushed towards the girl unscrupulously. However. The girl named Haitang had already placed the arrow on the bow. After waiting for the big strange bird to enter the shooting range, Haitang gently released the bowstring in her hand. It was a long bow that was as tall as Haitang. As a level 15 weapon, the arrows it shot were also extremely powerful. I saw that the white feathered arrow flew straight towards the big strange bird after being shot. When the big strange bird reacted, the arrow had accurately hit the big strange bird's eye. In an instant, the big strange bird that was still menacing twitched and fell down. After that, it was impossible to stand up again. It only stopped moving after a few twitches. It can be seen that this arrow not only hurt the eyes, but directly pierced the opponent's eyes and continued to penetrate deeper, and finally injured the brain of the big strange bird, which caused the big strange bird to die. After a brief silence, warm applause erupted from the stands. For no other reason than Haitong's superb skill of hitting the opponent's eye with one arrow. Chapter 128 Sky Arrow Oh oh oh! Catherine cheered along with the crowd. Mr. Cat! That girl is so amazing! Catherine couldn't help but say. It's okay. It's just a big strange bird. Now you should be able to kill a big strange bird with one sword. Right. Wen Long was not as excited as the others. But just took a deep breath. He took a sip of foamy coke and said calmly. I haven't tried it yet so I can't make a conclusion. It's just that I have been exercising for so long recently, and I feel that I have indeed become stronger. But if I compare it with this girl, I still feel that she is more powerful. Catherine was very modest. Said, Oh, really? 
You think you're not as good as others just because you saw someone hunting a big strange bird? How could I teach such a useless student like you? Meow? No. I just think that with Mr. Cat's guidance, as long as you give me another month, I can probably catch up with her. Catherine denied innocently. Huh? I love hearing this. I didn't expect you, a woman, to be more and more talkative after following me for a month. Meow. So when Long and Catherine continued to eat potato chips and drink Coke while watching the game, at this time, the applause began to calm down because people noticed that the monster door of the arena slowly opened again. As expected, what appeared this time was a strong sorry beast. As soon as this monster appeared, it screamed crazily to express its hatred of being imprisoned by humans for too long. Now, there is a human standing there in front of the Sarimon. This makes the Sarimon feel very uncomfortable. So much so that the Sarimon now wants to rush up and bite the human into pieces. But the Sarimon still held back. It stared carefully at Hai Kang standing in front of it. And found that the hunting bow in her hand had a familiar smell. Which made the Sarimon feel a hint of danger. At this time, Hai Tang once again drew an arrow. And then pulled out the bowstring. At the same moment, the Sandalong beast also reacted. Its claws dug deeply into the soil. And then suddenly lifted up a large clod of soil. With a sound of whoosh. The arrow was shot out. And it was supposed to be aimed at the forehead of the sand beast. But when the huge clod of soil flew over, the small arrow was quickly swallowed up by the clod of soil. And then lost its trace. The strength of the hunting bow may be strong enough to allow the arrow to penetrate the clod of soil. But compared to the clod of soul, the arrow is too light. After being hit by the clod of soul, the arrow will inevitably deviate from its original trajectory. It is no longer possible to hit the target. The first arrow hit Hai Tang, which made Hai Tang frown. And because the sand lion used the thrown clods of soil to buy itself time, when Hai Tang pulled out the second arrow, the sand lion had already started to wreak havoc around her. They excavated the soil. And the excavated soil was piled between the sorry beast and begonia forming a barrier to protect the safety of the sorry beast. Everyone knew that this was a sign that the sorry beast was about to escape. And once the Sarimon sneaks into the ground, whether it wants to launch a sneak attack from underground or just dig a tunnel to escape from the arena, it will be much more troublesome to clean it up. Although at this distance, Hai Tang can also choose to give up long-range attacks and rush to the edge of the pit to engage in close combat with the sorry beast. But that would be equivalent to giving up her long-range attack advantage and turning to her inferior side. It is undoubtedly extremely uneconomical to fight against the opponent. Oh, Mr. Cat, that Sarimon is about to dig into the ground. Will it just escape from the arena? Seeing that the Sarimon was about to burrow into the ground, Catherine was obviously anxious. Stand up. No, for such a simple reason. It is impossible that the designers of this arena did not think of it. There are also metal isolation belts underground at the edge of the arena which would not allow such a sandal and beast to escape so easily. Get out. Meow. But the excavated soil is piled in front. Just like a city wall. Can arrows pass through it? Catherine asked in surprise. Don't worry. Since this woman is using a hunting bow made from the material of the Sarukiman, it won't be the first time she fights the Sarumiman. So watch carefully and analyze what the other party does better than you. Where can I do better? Maybe I can learn something. Meow. Yes. I understand. Mr. Cat. Catherine nodded quickly, her expression becoming more serious. Sure enough, the calmness shown by the girl named Hai Tang was not just a bluff. This time, she did not shoot the arrow immediately after drawing the bow to full, but paused slightly. Mr. Cat. Is she also accumulating strength? Well, it's just charging. Bows and arrows can be charged just like swords and hammers. And depending on the type of bow, the shape of the arrow fired after charging will be different. Meow. When Wenlong was explaining to Catherine, the arrow in Hai Tong's hand had already been shot out. But this time it was not shot straight, but thrown into the air. Throw! Sky-shaped arrow! Hai Ang shouted the name of this move. I saw this arrow flying diagonally into the air. After reaching the highest point, it suddenly split into dozens of arrows and began to fall towards the ground. In an instant, it turned into a rain of arrows and enveloped the entire sand lion beast. That pit! Ouch, ouch, ouch. The poor sand lion didn't expect that this attack would come from the air. The pit originally dug, and the earthen wall used to block the arrows became a cage trapping him. Arrows fell from the sky in large numbers. And almost all of them fell on it, on the back of the sorry beast. As a result, after a shower of arrows, 
the sandalong beast hiding in the pit turned out to be like a hedgehog, with more than a dozen arrows inserted into its entire back. How awesome! Mr. Cat, it turns out that other weapons also have such cool moves. Humph. <laughs> there are many more cool moves than this. It's good for you to know more about it now. After all, it won't always be just the two of us hunting in the future. And there may be other hunters joining our team. Come here. Sometimes you need to cooperate with different hunters to hunt together. And to do this, you must first be familiar with the characteristics of other hunters' weapons and their fighting methods, so that you can truly achieve perfect cooperation. Meow. As an old hunter, when Long clearly knows how important cooperation is in a hunter team, if the cooperation is not good and they hinder each other, then the combat effectiveness of a four-person hunter team may not be as good as one person. However, if the cooperation is just right, then the combined combat effectiveness of the four people can be greater than four. But if you don't even understand the characteristics of your teammates, how can you achieve tacit cooperation with each other? So this is one of the reasons why Wen Long deliberately dragged Catherine to watch the game. After all, Catherine still knew too little. Although she had hunted prey several times, she still knew basically nothing about how other hunters hunted. Chapter 129 is both appreciation and learning. Although high tongs, throwing, sky-shaped arrows, are indeed very powerful. The power of the sandalong beast is not comparable to that of a monster like the big strange bird. The moment it was attacked by the projectile, sky-shaped arrow, the alert Sarimon immediately buried its head under its body, and at the same time shrank its body, using its back and buttocks with large muscles to absorb the attack. Most of the damage. So after the rain of arrows from the throwing, sky-shaped arrows, passed, the sorry beast still had a certain fighting ability. It began to endure the severe pain and dig forward like crazy. In the view of the sorry beast, as long as it digs a tunnel, it can avoid the arrows falling from the sky. So the sorry beast does not dare to neglect it. It keeps digging the tunnel. And the direction of the tunnel extension is where Begonia is. S position. Perhaps before this, the Salidman had the idea of escape. But now the Salidman was completely angry. All it wanted to do was dig all the way through. And then suddenly attack the opponent from the ground. This way, it would be very likely to succeed in a comeback. In fact, Sandy Mon has encountered this situation many times before. When it was at a disadvantage, it lurked under the enemy's feet by hiding. And then suddenly jumped out from the ground, killing the enemy to death. This time Sandy Mon thought the same way. And this time, the opponent was a thin human girl. She was still holding a hunting bow that was not good at dealing with close-up attacks. At the same time, she was wearing the blue speed dragon king with extremely low defense. The shooter suit you must know that even if it is armor made of the same blue velociraptor material, the light armor of the long-range shooter hunter is about 30% lower than the armor defense of the melee hunter. The reason for this is said to be that it is difficult for long-range shooters to aim if they wear too heavy armor. In addition, some people think that weapons such as ballisti and hunting bows need to carry a lot of ammunition or arrows, resulting in too much weight. There are many, so the thickness of the armor can only be reduced. But no matter which explanation it is, the general situation is that the defense power of hunters who use long-range weapons is lower than the defense power of hunters who use melee weapons. This has always existed. And it's obvious that this level of armor can't resist the attack of the Sarimon. So when the audience in the arena saw that the tenacious Sari beast had gotten into the tunnel, many people were worried about Haitong's safety. However, to everyone's surprise, this thin girl with black twin tails did not choose to hide. Although this was the safest approach for most hunters, Haitang did not do that. Haitang was still standing there, not only not avoiding, but also tapping the ground with the toe of one foot, as if to tell the sand beast moving underground that she was standing here. This girl is crazy! How dare she do this? You must know that Shalimon uses vibrations to determine where the enemy is. There were already screams in the stands. She is just a child. The arena should not allow such a young child to compete. A woman said with some worry. In fact, accidents happen every year in arena competitions. And some hunters even lose their lives. It can be seen that hunting is inherently a very dangerous thing. Even in the arena. Even if there are some hunters and rescuers around to deal with unexpected situations. Cats are always on call and cannot prevent accidents from happening. This is just like drowning accidents in swimming pools. Even if there are lifeguards. Not to mention that hunting is much more dangerous than playing in a swimming pool. So at this moment, people think that this girl is simply seeking her own death. 
because most people know that if she wears armor with such low defense and is bitten by a raccoon beast or thrown to the ground, she will often be seriously injured even if she is not dead. Mr. Cat, what should we do now? Seeing that High Tank seemed to be in crisis, Catherine was so nervous that she hugged Wen Long who was sitting next to her. Hey, stupid woman, let go quickly. You have crushed all my potato chips. Meow. Although Wen Long wanted to protect the potato chips in his hand, but in the face of Catherine's absolute power, he was fragile. The potato chips were quickly crushed into pieces. It wasn't until the potato chips made a crackling sound that Catherine realized the serious mistake she had made. She quickly let go of Wen Long, and then kept saying, Ah, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Cat. I'm sorry. I really didn't mean it. Ah, oh, forget it. These potato chips are inedible after being broken into pieces like this. But at the worst, I can buy another pack later. Fortunately, there is popcorn here. Although Wen Long felt a little frustrated looking at the potato chips that had turned into pieces, he still patiently explained to Catherine. Generally speaking, most people think that hunting bows are only long-range attack weapons. Once they are approached, they will be in a very disadvantageous situation. However, if you are some masters of bows and arrows, your mastery of hunting bows has reached a very comprehensive level. If so, it is very possible to turn this disadvantage into an advantage. Meow. Can a bow also be used for melee combat? Of course. Some archers even like to shoot close to the body, especially those who use diffusion arrows. In short, now is the time to test an archer's true strength. Meow. Mr. Cat, what are diffusion arrows? Catherine continued to ask. It is to shoot several arrows in a fan-shaped manner to achieve the purpose of covering a large area with the arrow's attack. This technique is originally just a technique used to attack multiple targets. But if it is close to the monster's face, it will if you shoot. Then in this case, all the arrows will hit the same target. And the power will naturally become very scary. Meow. Mr. Cat. I understand. It turns out that the bout can still be used in this way. At this moment, Hai Tang took out another arrow from the arrow basket. But this time Hai Tang did not put the arrow on the bow string like before, but held it firmly in his hand. And almost at the same moment when Hai Tang held the arrow in her hand, the ground under Hai Tong's feet exploded instantly, and the sorry beast rushed out with vengeful fury, with two giant claws attacking from the left and right. Like a giant, the pliers almost caught Begonia in the middle. Everyone knew that if the Shaley beast closed its palms at this time, Hai Tang would definitely die. That petite body will definitely be beaten into a meat pie by the giant palm. And in the end, there will be no chance of rescue. However, Hai Tang still dodged. Although it seemed that it was just a slight tip of the toe, the light body quickly retreated towards the back. Seeing the two giant palms closing together, Hai Tang was not hurt at all. It seems that this woman is really familiar with the sorry beast. She has such a good grasp of the rhythm. Meow. Seeing this scene, even when Long was a little surprised, Chapter 133 Stages of Charging Spreading Arrows When Hai Tang turned around and jumped away, the arrow in her hand was like a sharp sword piercing the sand beast. The sharp arrow was made of the teeth of the sand beast and could pierce the sand very well. The raccoon beast's fur. And then Hai Tang used the rotation of her body to slice the arrow to one side, making a horizontal slashing motion. And the stab wound suddenly expanded, drawing a blood line in the air throughout the entire process. Hai Tong's movements were no worse than those of a close combat warrior. Using arrows as daggers? Do archers have skills like this? This time, not only Catherine, but also many people around her exclaimed. That's why I said now is the time to test an archer's true strength. Meow. Wen Long continued. The situations encountered during hunting are ever-changing. Even an archer may be approached by a monster. If the situation is urgent, instead of directly drawing the bow and shooting arrows at this time, it is better to draw out the arrows and use them as daggers to fight. Although this trick is rarely used in normal times, it has a pretty good effect at certain critical moments. Meow. However, to have become so proficient in such a move that is rarely used in normal times shows how rigorous the training this girl receives. Wen Long did not say the rest of the sentence. However, Hai Tong's attack was not over yet. Although the arrow he had just attacked as a dagger did not cause fatal damage to the sorry beast. It was enough to temporarily block the solid beast's continued attack. In this case, the backward jumping action can maximize the distance from the Sarimon. Like light feathers floating in the air, Hai Tang jumped very far and stayed in the air for a long time. But in fact, 
Haitan's attack started before she even landed. When Haitan's rotating body turned to face the Salomon for the second time, everyone noticed that the arrow that Haitang had used as a dagger had been placed on the bowstring again. The Sand Beast probably also understood the power of Haitang's bow and arrows. When he saw Haitang pulling the bowstring again, he immediately blocked a huge claw in front of him and rushed towards Haitang using his claws as a shield. The arrow was shot. This time, Haitang only used an ordinary shot. When the arrow hit the side of the sand lion, it was blocked by the claws of the sand lion. Only the arrow was left on the claws of the sand lion. Not a deep trauma at all. You must know that the entire palm of the Sarimon, including its claws, is extremely thick. This trauma is not a big deal to the Sarimon. But just like before, this time the shooting once again successfully hindered the progress of the Sari beast. This also made the Shaili beast suddenly become arrogant. It continued to approach Begonia, trying to capture Begonia in one go. But at this time, the distance between Hai Tang and the Shalimon had exceeded 5 meters. With just one jump, Hai Tang had already landed 5 meters away. The distance of 5 meters is nothing. If you can use your claws as a human shield, you should be able to get close immediately. At that time, the Sarimon probably had this idea in mind and continued to approach Hai Tang. But Shalimon probably didn't realize that he had made a serious mistake. In fact, in order to ensure that important parts such as its head and chest will not be shot, the claws of the sorry beast block its field of vision, and it does not dare to leave a slight gap. After all, as long as a gap is left, the accurate arrows may shoot through the gap. Therefore, in this case, the sand beast can only know the location of Begonia by observing the position of Begonia's feet on the ground. The consequence of this is that Shalimon can only know where Haitang is standing, but not what Haitang is doing. But the arena crowd knew, and they let out an ovation because they saw that Haitang actually took out seven arrows and put them on the bow string at the same time, and then pulled the bow string to the maximum. Mr. Cat is really what you said. It seems that girl is really going to use diffusion arrows at close range, Catherine said to Wenlong. Of course, this is the best chance. Meow. Wenlong knew that diffusion arrow was a move that needed to be charged, and under normal circumstances, there was no way to charge it within such a short distance. However, after deliberately eliciting the Sari beast to use its claws for defense. This distance was enough. Because the speed of the Sarimon is based on its movement on all fours. Raising a paw for defense during movement can indeed block ordinary arrows. But it also means that the Salomon it has become a sloping-legged beast that can only use three legs to move. And its movement speed will naturally be greatly reduced. In this case, the distance that was originally not enough to charge the diffusion arrow became achievable. And according to Wenlong's calculations, this distance should be just right. Sure enough, everything was as Wenlong expected. When the Shaili beast approached Hai Tang in this lame posture, the hunting bow, sand howl, in Hai Tang's hand had already completed the three stages of charging the diffusion arrow. The power of the arrows after three stages of charging will increase exponentially. This is the same as the charging of the big sword that Catherine is practicing. It can greatly increase the attack power. And such arrows can still be shot seven at a time at close range. These seven arrows will hit the sorry beast at the same time. In this case, let alone the sorry beast using one claw to block it. Even using two claws together will not have any effect. You must know that what Sherimon blocked before was just an ordinary shot from Hai Tang. But now people already know that in addition to ensuring that Hai Tang can successfully open the distance from Sherimon, that ordinary shot also has another function. Deliberately luring the Sarimon into the illusion that it can block arrows with its claws. Three stages of charging. Spreading arrows. Seven arrows that had been charged with the third level of power were shot out. Blood splashed. And then the sand lizard beast fell completely. It wasn't until the sand beast fell that people could clearly see that all seven arrows had hit the giant claws used for defense by the sand beast. But all seven arrows had penetrated the sharp claws of the sand beast in one row. And then inserted into the head of the Sarimon hiding behind its sharp claws. Oh oh oh. The crowd burst into cheers again this time even more enthusiastic than the first time. And many of those who applauded Haitong's wonderful skills were the same people who had doubted Haitong's strength before. This guy is pretty good at pretending. Out of 10 points, I can give you 8 points. Meow. At this moment, even when Long nodded with satisfaction and showed his appreciation. Chapter 131 The Unfamiliar Poisonous Bird It's amazing. This is the power of using three stages of charged diffusion arrows at close range. Mr. Cat, I want to learn it too, Catherine said to Wenlong excitedly 
after seeing Hai Tang knocking down the sand beast. Don't try to learn everything you see. You're not a bow hunter. Besides, you've only just started using a big sword. Meow. Wenlong dismissed Catherine's idea of learning a bow hunt, and then pointed to the competition. The sitter of the field said, Look, the third game is about to start. Meow. The door to the arena opened again, and this time, a cunning poisonous monster bird appeared, different from the scales on the whole body of the big monster bird. The skin of the poisonous monster bird is a gray-blue and wrinkled gelatinous skin, which can greatly reduce the impact force on the body. There is no doubt that this strange skin makes the poisonous monster the strange bird looks much weirder than the big strange bird. Mr. Cat, is this the poisonous monster bird? Although this was the first time she saw the poisonous monster bird, she had been using backpacks made of the poisonous monster bird's skin. So Catherine was still somewhat familiar with the term poisonous monster bird. Yes, this is the poisonous monster bird. It is a bird dragon monster like the big monster bird. But it is much more dangerous. When Long deliberately strengthened his tone. In addition, the large backpacks and bags we use now are it's made of their skin. And it's very elastic, so it can hold so many things. Meow. Then when Long continued to explain. Pay attention. You have seen the previous two monsters and fought with them. But you have not seen this poisonous monster bird. Now take a good look and get familiar with him. My skills will be of great benefit to you in hunting poisonous monster birds in the future. Meow. Okay. Mr. Cat. I will definitely watch it carefully. Don't keep staring. Because your eyes will twinkle. Meow. Flashing eyes? Catherine didn't quite understand what Wen Long said. Look at the poisonous monster bird. Is there a crystal-like object on its head? That thing is called a light crystal. It can suddenly emit a very strong flash of light and can cause people to become blind for a short period of time. Eh? If a flash of light can suddenly burst out, doesn't that mean you can't see it? Of course not, because the poisonous monster birds will have certain movements when using this move. They will flap their wings first, then suddenly stand up straight, and then raise their heads high. At this time, they will activate the light crystal. It's time, and then you only need to temporarily close your eyes or temporarily cover your sight with your hands to avoid this flash attack. Meow. Understood. Mr. Cat. Catherine couldn't help but blink her eyes as she spoke, as if she was rehearsing for the critical moment with her eyes closed before doing something. While Wen Long was explaining to Catherine, the battle in the arena had already begun. But this time, compared with the previous battles with the sand lizard beast and the big strange bird, Wen Long obviously noticed that Hai Tong's expression was more serious, and that he had lost the sense of calmness and ease before. It seems that this little kid is not very good at dealing with poisonous monster birds. It seems that it is because he doesn't know much about poisonous monster birds? Meow? Wen Long thought in his heart. Facts also prove Wen Long's idea. Because from the beginning, Wen Long discovered that Hai Tang had made a serious mistake. The poisonous monster bird, as its name suggests, is of course good at poison type attacks. So as soon as the game started, the gray blue poisonous monster bird spit out a purple poison ball, similar to the big monster bird spitting fireballs. The poisonous monster bird's poisonous ball also fell to the ground in a parabola, and then exploded on the ground. However, what exploded was not a red flame, but a purple poisonous mist. However, Hai Tang was still very agile. When she saw the poisonous bird's poison ball flying towards her, she immediately jumped sideways and easily avoided the poisonous bird's poison ball attack. Then Hai Tang drew out the arrow again, pulled the bowstring, and made a shooting motion. Then the problem arose. When he pulled the bowstring, Hai Tang felt his vision blur, and he seemed to have a dizzying feeling. His already petite body suddenly lost its balance, although it was only a little. It was enough to affect the shooting. Because of this, the arrow in Hai Tong's hand deviated from the trajectory the moment it was shot and missed the target. You actually think that you can just dodge the poison ball? It's too careless. Oh, no, it's not carelessness. It should be said that it's inexperience. You are obviously so familiar with the habits of the poisonous beast, but you lack the knowledge about the poisonous monster bird. Do you understand? Meow? One Long, who was thinking this way, took another sip of foamy coke and then burped with satisfaction. In fact, Hai Tong's mistake just now was only within a few millimeters. The loss of balance of the body and the deviation of the arrow were all errors within a very small range. So that except for an old hunter like Wen Long, few people noticed it. This was just caused by Hai Tong's accidental mistake. 
But Catherine still noticed something. Mr. Cat, that girl seems to be a little out of sorts. Of course. When she dodged the poison ball, she forgot to hold her breath. So when the poison ball exploded, even though it looked like she had dodged the poison ball, she still sucked in some poison mist, is now in a state of mild poisoning. Meow! Isn't that dangerous? It's okay. If you don't have enough concentration, it is indeed possible that your physical discomfort will lead to abnormal performance. But I don't think this girl will give in like this. But the game must be suspenseful to watch. Head. Meow. Compared to Catherine, Wen Long was not worried about Haitong's safety, but was more concerned about whether the game was exciting or not. At this time in the arena, the poisonous monster bird was still spraying poison balls, and Hai Tang was also constantly dodging. After the first poisoning, Hai Tang was obviously prepared for it. Whenever the poison ball exploded, at this time, Hai Tang held her breath temporarily. When she had retreated to a safe distance, Hai Tang began to take a big breath. In this way, Hai Tang finally escaped a round of poisonous gas attacks. When the poisonous monster bird stopped temporarily, Hai Tang drew the bowstring again. It was obvious that this time Hai Tang adjusted her mentality in time. She stared at the poisonous monster bird with burning eyes, although her face was a little blue, which proved that she was still in a state of poisoning. Her posture had returned to as stable as usual. What an outstanding concentration and adaptability. Meow. Wen Long also affirmed this in his heart. Then, whoosh. With a sound, the arrow shot out. The moment the arrow was shot, the poisonous monster bird seemed to sense the danger. It suddenly flapped its wings urgently, as if trying to avoid the arrow shot by Hai Tang. However, Hai Tong's arrow was very powerful, and it captured the energy accumulated in the gap after the poisoned ball of the poisonous monster bird was sprayed. In this case, even if the poisonous monster bird tried to use its wings to block the flying arrow, it's too late. I saw that the charged arrow easily penetrated the poisonous monster bird's wing membrane, and then shot directly to the poisonous monster bird through the wing membrane. Finally, the sharp arrow pierced the chest of the poisonous monster bird. Chapter 132 Best Actor However, even though it was hit in the chest by Haitong's arrow, the poisonous monster bird did not fall down. This may be because the arrow did not hit the heart. Or perhaps, because the poisonous monster bird's thick gelatinous skin was varied because it is easy to be inserted by arrows, but difficult to completely penetrate. The poisonous monster bird still maintains its original posture. Although it screamed in pain, it continued to flap its wings, then stood up straight and raised its head high. Be careful. The poisonous monster bird is going to use flash. Suddenly, Catherine shouted excitedly in the stands. Catherine's voice was loud, attracting everyone around her to look over. And more importantly, even Hai Tang looked over. Then, a powerful flash of light erupted from the top of the poisonous monster bird's head. Most people's eyes were dazzled by the flash of the poisonous monster bird. Even those spectators with seats further back felt some discomfort in their eyes even if they were not temporarily blinded. But fortunately, the people around Catherine temporarily looked away from the poisonous monster bird because they heard Catherine's voice, thus mostly avoiding the pain of being flashed into the eyes. This naturally included Hai Tang, because both Catherine and Wen Long were sitting in the first row of the stands, relatively close to the center of the arena, and the warning was specifically directed at Hai Tang. Of course, Hai Tang clearly heard Catherine's words. Sound. So when Hai Tang turned her head following the sound and happened to avoid the flash of the poisonous monster bird, Hai Tang also cast a grateful look at Catherine. Hey, stupid woman, why are you talking so much? Meow? Wen Long asked. Because I'm worried about the child, Catherine said. You are a true gentleman watching chess without speaking. You know, it's not good for you to point fingers at others while others are fighting below. Even if there is any danger, there will be specialized personnel to deal with it. So there is no need for us to take action. Meow. Wen Long said so. Oh, okay, Mr. Cat. Then Catherine shrank aggrievedly. The game continues. After dodging a flash, Hai Tang seized another favorable opportunity. Because the body of the poisonous monster bird that stood vertically in order to release the flash needs to return to its usual balanced state. The poisonous monster bird will have a short flaw. Of course Hai Tang would not miss this opportunity. And she started to accumulate strength again. Throw! Sky-shaped arrow! This time, Hai Tang shot another move. Throw! Sky-shaped arrow! Just like when he was hunting the sorry beast before. The arrow was shot diagonally into the sky then began to split in the air, and finally turned into a bunch of arrows. 
Rain is falling from the sky. The poisonous monster bird fell. The poisonous monster bird did not have the thick palms and back to withstand the rain of arrows like the sand lion. And even its wings did not have time to shield and protect its body before the rain of arrows fell. The falling arrow not only pierced the body of the poisonous monster bird, but also hit the light crystal on the top of the poisonous monster bird's head. The light crystal cracked, and the poisonous monster bird fell down as it let out its final cry. You win! Mr. Cat! That girl wins! Catherine stood up excitedly. And not just Catherine. Many spectators in the arena stood up like Catherine. Some of them applauded. Some cheered. And some even boldly took out gold coins and threw them into the middle of the arena to express their respect for these three consecutive wonderful games. After all, this is the last of the three games. Winning this game will mean the end of the game. And it also means that the hunters participating in the game can get a good bonus. This poisonous monster bird is not dead yet. And everyone is getting excited. Meow. Only when Long drank the phone coke lightly, and then muttered in a low voice. Everyone was immersed in joy and did not hear Wen Long's voice. Although this poisonous monster bird seems to be dead, and it looks like it has died miserably. Not only has the light crystal on its head been shattered, but there are at least a dozen arrows stuck in its body. But when Wen Long knew that all this was just an illusion, unlike the big strange bird, the poisonous strange bird has no scales, but is covered with rubber like gelatinous skin. This kind of thick gelatinous skin can not only reduce the impact of weapons on the body, but more importantly, the big strange bird with this kind of gelatinous skin can easily give people the illusion of being seriously injured. It can be said that using a bow and arrow to shoot the poisonous monster bird is like using a needle to pierce rubber. Although the needle can be easily inserted into the dense rubber layer, it will be extremely difficult to penetrate the rubber because every time it goes deeper, the resistance will increase a lot. And the final result is often that it gets stuck in the rubber layer and cannot move. This is completely different from the scale defense of the big strange bird. If you use an arrow to shoot the big strange bird, as long as the arrow is inserted into the big strange bird, it means that the arrow has pierced the scales and stabbed into the body of the big strange bird. So even though the poisonous monster bird seemed to be full of arrows, most of those arrows did not penetrate the rubbery skin, but were only embedded in the thick cortex. The appearance of his body covered with arrows can easily give people the illusion that he is seriously injured or even dead. Therefore, the cunning poisonous monster birds often take advantage of this to pretend to be dead, and then wait for the enemy to get close before suddenly attacking them. Hai Tang obviously didn't know this. She looked around, smiled at the cheering crowd around her, and then slowly walked towards the poisonous monster bird that fell on the ground. Hunting three monsters at one time means that you can peel the materials of three monsters at one time. This is even more important than the bonus for the winner of the competition. You must know that the materials on these three monsters are valuable. Especially in a trading city like Maj Bolton. It is really easy to sell these materials at a high price. Hai Tang was walking like this. In order to extract materials, she had put away the hunting bow in her hand and hung it on her back. And then pulled out the hunter's knife from her waist. Alas! Young people are still inexperienced. Meow! One long side. At this time, Hai Tang had already walked to the fallen poisonous monster bird. Just when Hai Tang was about to squat down to peel off the ingredients. Suddenly, the poisonous monster bird suddenly jumped up. The jumping poisonous monster bird turned its body and swept around with its wings and tail. Hai Tang, who had not thought of this at all, was accidentally knocked to the ground by the poisonous monster bird's wings. The cheers around them stopped instantly. And people looked at the changes in the arena in shock. Hai Tang fell to the ground. And the poisonous monster bird rushed over. Then pressed Hai Tang's thin body under him. And began to attack Hai Tang with its sharp claws. But Hai Tang had almost no power to fight back. She could only roll over in an attempt to escape. However, the poisonous monster bird was even faster. And its two claws easily tore through Hai Tang's light armor. Leaving streaks of blood on her tender body. Chapter 133 Rescue and Bonus The arena rescue team that was supposed to take action when Hai Tang encountered a crisis did not show up or they showed up much later than expected. Catherine was the first to take action. Catherine couldn't help but stand up when she saw Hai Tang being thrown to the ground by the poisonous monster bird. Originally, there was a metal fence separating the auditorium and the arena's playing field. This metal fence mainly played a role in protecting the safety of viewers. But in order to save people, Catherine broke open the metal fence and jumped from the auditorium. But when Catherine jumped down, she found that she had no effect at all. Because when Catherine habitually reached behind her back to draw out her big sword, 
she found that there was nothing there at all. Yes, Catherine was unarmed. When Catherine was fighting with the salmon before, the heavy bone sword in her hand had been shattered. When practicing later, Catherine used the Kirin that was still with her as a souvenir from her brother. Great sword. Although this Kirin sword still cannot exert much power, its feel and weight in the hand are still there. So it is still a good choice as a prop for practice. However, because today's plan was just to relax and have a rest, this Kirin great sword, Catherine, could not exert its power at all and could only be used for practice. Naturally, she did not take it with her, but left it in the hotel. Of course, Catherine also knew that bringing the unicorn sword over would be of no use. Oh, meow! You stupid woman! You don't even have a weapon! Why did you run out as soon as your brain got hot? When Long helplessly held his forehead. Mr. Cat! At this time, Catherine, who had no weapon, immediately turned to look at Wen Long. Wen Long could clearly see Catherine's request from Catherine's eyes. Okay, I got it. I will take action. Meow! In response to Catherine's request, Wen Long drew out the two knives from his back and then jumped into the arena through the hole opened by Catherine. However, Wen Long did not choose to jump directly to the ground, but jumped onto Catherine's shoulders. Then, as if she had a special tacit understanding, Catherine grabbed Wen Long who was standing on her shoulders and then suddenly threw Wen Long out. Undoubtedly this is the fastest rescue method. After all, neither Wen Long nor Catherine had the means to attack from a distance, and close range attacks would take time to close the distance. So Wen Long simply asked Catherine to throw him out. So Wen Long flew in the air like a cannonball, targeting the poisonous bird that kept attacking Hai Tang. At this time, the poisonous monster bird's attention was focused on Begonia on the ground, but it did not expect that Wen Long was flying towards it at an extremely fast speed. By the time the poisonous monster bird realized this, it was too late. Wen Long was so fast that even Wen Long himself couldn't believe it. Even if he took the force-moving drug, he couldn't match this speed. So when the big strange bird realized that something was approaching quickly and turned around to confirm the situation, Wen Long's double swords were already inserted into the big strange bird's neck. Wen Long's two sharp blades were extremely sharp. When they were inserted into the poisonous monster bird's skin, using the kinetic energy when it was thrown out by Catherine, Wen Long's two swords quickly widened the wound. And instantly the poisonous monster bird's neck there were two deep scars on it. While cutting the wound, the strange bird evil in Wen Long's hand emitted scorching flames. This high temperature flame seemed to be able to cause great damage to the poisonous monster bird's body. The rubbery outer skin actually changed due to the flames. It was burnt black and gave off a disgusting smell. Even with two wounds on its neck, the poisonous monster bird still wanted to fight back. But there was no other way. Because for a bird dragon monster like the poisonous monster bird that only had wings and no hands, this kind of jump directly the enemy within oneself is the most difficult to deal with. What's more, after the poisonous monster bird opened two wounds on its neck, it has been seriously injured. Even if Wen Long leaves it alone, the poisonous monster bird may not have much time to survive. Go down. However, Wen Long did not intend to let this poisonous monster bird go. Wen Long knew the cunning of the opponent. So for such cunning enemies, Wen Long always took the approach of putting them to death and then quickly, and absolutely did not allow the opponent to have a trace, a chance to escape death. So Wen Long took advantage of the opportunity to jump on the back of the poisonous monster bird, and then stabbed the two swords into the poisonous monster bird's back with all his strength, and another unpleasant smell was emitted. Wen Long knew that the pair of knives not only burned the poisonous monster bird's skin, but also further damaged the poisonous monster bird's internal organs. I want you to pretend to be dead. See how you can still pretend now. Meow? Wen Long roared. Finally, the poisonous monster bird fell down. This time it really fell down. However, there was no applause on the field. And the audience was very quiet. They were still in shock. And they did not expect that what just happened would be solved in such an instant. Only Catherine was different. While Wen Long was still fighting, Catherine had already taken the opportunity to pick up Hai Tang. When the poisonous monster bird fell, Catherine had already carried Hai Tang to the side of the arena. At this moment, the rescue teams arranged by the arena finally appeared with a stretcher. Quickly! Treat her! Catherine immediately said to the medical staff, and then put the girl in her arms on the stretcher. Hai Tang is fine. Hai Tang doesn't need to be treated. Hai Tang has to continue fighting. What makes Catherine feel strange is that from the moment Catherine picked up the girl named Hai Tang, she has been struggling in Catherine's arms. And it seems that she is not willing to be let go by Catherine. Just like rescue, 
and even though she was already lying on the stretcher, Tang still struggled to stand up. Stop saying that. The injury is obviously serious. Besides, the game is over, and the poisonous monster bird is already dead. Catherine also advised. Death. Dead. To Catherine's surprise, when she heard Catherine say this, Tang did not feel at ease. Instead, her body suddenly lost strength and her expression became depressed. Dead. If so, you won't get the money again this time. Eh? Money? The poisonous monster bird was killed by the Elu cat that was with you. So if you fail this competition, you will naturally not get the bonus. At this time, a rescue worker on the side interrupted. It's just that the hunt for the poisonous monster bird failed. What about the first two monsters? There is no money to get them? Catherine asked again. No. The rescuer shook his head. This is the rule of the arena. If you hunt continuously, you need to hunt all the monsters before paying the bonus. Otherwise, there will be no money at all. This girl is really pitiful. She is obviously only missing it took one step. But it failed. Chapter 134 Raising a Lolita After a simple bandage, Tang stood up and refused further treatment on the grounds that specialized treatment would cost a lot of money. If you insist on refusing treatment, then please accept this. Seeing that Tang refused to receive treatment, Catherine took out a bottle of recovery medicine G from her pocket and handed it over. After Tang hesitated for a moment, he accepted the bottle of recovery medicine G. Thank you. Tang took the recovery medicine G with both hands with a grateful expression and then asked, Tang would like to know your name. Eldest sister? My name is Catherine. That person over there is my partner and my Ella cat. His name is Wolong, Catherine said with a smile. Hai Tang remembers it. Hai Tang stared at Catherine for a while and then glanced at Wenlong who had finished taking care of the poisonous monster bird and was walking towards here and then said, Hai Tang will repay you if there is a chance in the future. Yes, but today, Hai Tang has something else to do. So I have to say goodbye first. After saying that, Hai Tang slowly walked out of the arena step by step. Mr. Cat, Mr. Cat, that girl just now was so pitiful. After Hai Tang left, Catherine said to Wenlong again. What's so pitiful? Meow? Wenlong asked. He was obviously seriously injured. But he couldn't even afford the recovery medicine. I don't feel very pitiful. I just feel a little strange. Meow? Wenlong said. Eh? Weird? What's so weird? Catherine expressed some confusion. Don't you think it's weird that a hunter with such strength would be so poor? Meow? When Wenlong asked this question, Catherine suddenly understood. Ah, that seems to be the case. Mr. Cat, how did I think of it? You stupid woman can only think of that. Meow. Wolong shook his head helplessly, and then continued. Okay, the game is over, and it's getting dark. Let's go find a nice place, let's have dinner at a specialty restaurant. And today's rest is over. Meow. I don't want supper, said Catherine. Meow. Wenlong thought for a moment that he had heard wrong. Although Wenlong has not known Catherine for too long. Wenlong still knows that Catherine is still very good at eating. Not only is she easily tempted by food, but she also eats big lobsters when Wenlong is not paying attention. These are already very. That explains the problem. However, this kind of Catherine actually said not to have dinner, which surprised Wenlong as much as the sun rising from the west. Stupid woman. Your head is not broken today. Is it? Meow? Wenlong asked. No. Mr. Cat. Rather than dinner. I want to help that girl now. I want to know what difficulties the girl encountered. Don't be stupid. No matter which world you are in. Poor people are everywhere. Don't look at how prosperous Midge Bolton is. There are still many people in those unnoticed slums who are too poor to eat. Rice. Meow. No. Mr. Cat. I didn't feel sorry for her. That's why I wanted to help her. Catherine explained. What's that for? Meow. This time when Long was a little confused. Because the child named Hai Tang is really cute. Her face looks like a doll. Especially her eyes are so beautiful. And her hunting skills are so good. I really want to take her back and raise her. And then take care of her. I love you so much. As she spoke, Catherine's face showed a look of madness. Ha hearing this, Wen Long felt weak all over and could only say to Catherine. First of all, you have to understand that the girl named Hai Tang is not a pet that you can keep if you want. She is a lowly. Meow? You ask me why I use the quantifier only to describe Loli? Wenlong was completely stunned. It seems that Mr. Cat, 
You have agreed. In this case, we can add another member to our team. Catherine said excitedly. Who? Who said that I agreed to it? Meow? Wen Long defended. It's just that if you want to raise that girl, just raise it. This is your freedom. But everything about taking care of her must be done. It's up to you to do it. I won't wait on you. Meow. Okay. Mr. Cat. But there is one more thing I need your help with. Catherine said again in a pleading tone. What? Meow? I want to know what happened to that girl. So I think it's best to ask Mr. Cat about this matter. Let me think twice. Meow. So Wen Long thought for a while. In fact, Wen Long has already had the idea of looking for a new teammate. But according to Wen Long's idea, the teammate he recruits should be stronger and have more experience. After all, in Wen Long's mind, Catherine is already a newcomer. If an inexperienced newcomer comes, his burden will be much heavier, especially for girls like Hai Tang. Although her strength is pretty good and she should have some talent, she can barely achieve Wen Long's goal. But she still lacks experience. And more importantly, Hai Tang is too young. If according to the standards on Earth, he was about the age of a junior high school student, but Wen Long didn't want to take care of such a child and felt that it was very troublesome. But since Catherine likes this woman, let's recruit the girl named Hai Tang into the team. After all, People who get along with each other should get along more harmoniously in the future. Meow. Wen Long thought in his heart. So Wen Long agreed to Catherine's request. Okay. I will spare some of my precious time to help you investigate. But first, if there is really something wrong with this girl named Hai Tang, then we will help if we can. If it is beyond our capabilities, range, then don't waste any more time. When the time comes, just pretend that you haven't been to the arena today and don't know a girl named Hai Tang. Meow. After when Long finished speaking, Catherine remained silent for a rare moment before saying, Okay, Mr. Cat. After getting Catherine's answer, Wen Long took out the secret protective stone from his pocket and put it on himself. Then Wen Long's figure began to become blurry. Although the girl named Hai Tang has been away for a while, considering that her injuries are not healed yet and she cannot walk too fast, it should be very easy to follow her now. Meow. With that said, Wen Long secretly followed Hai Tang in the direction where he left before. Chapter 135 100 Gold Coins It didn't take long for Wen Long to catch up with Hai Tang. And then he kept a distance that was not easily discovered and began to follow quietly. Wen Long followed Hai Tang through two streets, gradually leaving the urban area of Major Bol Tan, and then turned into an alley. Finally, Wen Long saw Hai Tang walking into a low bungalow. And Wen Long immediately followed. After Hai Tang entered the door, Wen Long went around to the base of the wall where the window was, lay on the edge of the window, and peeked inside secretly. Wen Long found that the furnishings in the room were very simple, with only the most basic bed, table and chairs. At first glance, it looked like a very poor family. There were two people in the room, apart from Hai Tang. The other person was a middle-aged man. At this time, the man was sitting alone at the table, holding a bottle of low-quality and high-alcohol whiskey in his hand. The middle-aged man did not use a cup when drinking, but drank directly from the mouth of the bottle. However, after the man poured it hard twice, he found that there was not a drop of wine in the bottle. Damn! There's actually no wine left! The middle-aged man cursed and then looked away from the bottle. He glanced at the door and saw Hai Tang walking in. Where's the wine? The middle-aged man said to Hai Tang. I'm sorry that my father Hai Tang didn't make any money and couldn't buy wine. Wen Long noticed that when he said this, Hai Tong's body trembled obviously. It's incredible that this wretched man is actually Hai Tong's father. Wen Long couldn't help but think in his mind after hearing the conversation between the two. At this time, the middle-aged man suddenly scolded Hai Tang loudly. Why haven't you made any money? Then what's the use of raising you so big? Then what's the use of my hard work in training you? You're just a waste. One inch. As he spoke, the middle-aged man stood up with difficulty and Wen Long discovered that the middle-aged man only had one leg. On the other leg, there was only an empty trouser leg dangling back and forth, so much so that when the middle-aged man stood up, he needed to rely on the two wooden crutches at hand, and probably because he drank too much. The man's figure was obviously a little unstable when he stood up, and he almost fell down. Careful! Father! Hai Tang rushed forward and helped the middle-aged man up. Go away! Useless thing! What are you doing here without wine? However, what surprised Wen Long was that the middle-aged man not only did not express gratitude, but instead raised the crutch in his hand high. Snapped. 
the crutch hit Haitong's body, and the location it hit happened to be the location where it was scratched by the poisonous monster bird's claws. At this moment, Haitang couldn't help but let go of her supporting hand, and then took a few steps back. Father, useless thing, what are you doing here? Why don't you go make money for me? The middle-aged man continued to curse and raise the crutch in his hand again. It's really unbearable. Meow! When Long, who had been peeping outside the window, finally couldn't help it. Although at first when Long just wanted to see the situation, and then went back to discuss with Catherine to see if he could bring Haitang in. He had no intention of taking action directly. But when he saw Haitang was about to be beaten again, Wen Long couldn't help but take action. So Wen Long kicked open the window and jumped into the room. Who are you? Facing Wen Long who suddenly appeared in the room. The middle-aged man was startled. It's your uncle. Meow. Wen Long didn't give the other party a chance to react. He jumped up and kicked the middle-aged man in the face. Then the middle-aged man fell down like a scarecrow without support. Father! Hai Tang shouted. You dare to hit me! Where did you come from? A wild cat! The middle-aged man shouted, trying to stand up. But after all, he was missing a leg, and standing up unsteadily was already the limit. He wanted to attack Wen Long but failed. It's simply not possible. Wen Long was too lazy to say anything more, and ignored the middle-aged man's curses as he stood up with difficulty. Instead, he grabbed Hai Tang's hand and pulled Hai Tang out of the room. Wen Long just pulled Hai Tang and ran a certain distance. And soon, he saw Catherine waiting at the street corner. Mr. Cat? What is this? Seeing Wen Long running out with Hai Tang, Kaiser was also confused. Don't ask so many questions yet. I can't tell you the specific situation myself. Let's find a place to sit down and have a good talk. Meow. Wen Long said to Catherine. So, Wen Long took Catherine and Hai Tang to sit down in a small, deserted shop on the roadside then ordered some snacks and prepared to chat while eating. Eat. I think you haven't had dinner. Meow. Wen Long said to Hai Tang. Thank you. Hai Tang is not hungry. I didn't expect Hai Tang to trouble you again. Hai Tang said. It doesn't matter if you're not hungry. You can eat later. So let's talk about your situation first. Maybe we can help you. Meow. Help me. Hai Tang was stunned for a moment. Then looked at Wen Long and Catherine blankly. Why do you want to help Hai Tang? for justice. Bang! Wen Long knocked on Catherine's head, signaling for Catherine to shut up. Actually, we are interested in your hunting skills, and our team lacks someone who can do remote output. So we hope you can join our team. And in order for you to join us with peace of mind, we need to help you solve some troubles in life. Meow! Wen Long explained to Hai Tang. You want Hai Tang to join you? Hai Tang said. Yeah. So we'll split the reward between you. Naya! Begonia needs money. Lots and lots of money. Hai Tang said. How much do you want? Meow? Wolong asked. Hai Tang wants 100. Hai Tang said as if she had made up her mind. It's 100 gold coins. Very good. 100 gold coins. Right. With that said, Wolong took out a bag and placed it on the table. Although 100 gold coins was not a small amount, Wolong did not hesitate. There should be more than 100 gold coins here. I've given them all to you. And if you join us in the future and complete the mission, there will be more gold coins. Meow. Wen Long said, Thank you. When she saw these gold coins, Hai Tong's eyes seemed to sparkle suddenly. These are enough. With these, father will not beat me. With that said, Hai Tang stood up excitedly. Then, she asked the store for two bottles of wine, a roasted wild board leg, and rushed out. Oh, this kid. One long side. Mr. Cat. Will she come back? Catherine asked. Yes. You will be back soon. Meow. One long replied affirmatively. Chapter 136 New Combat Power. Sure enough. After a while. Hai Tang appeared at the door of the shop again. This time. The bag containing gold coins. Two bottles of wine. And a large roasted wild board leg in Hai Tong's hand were all gone. And not only that. The previous excitement in Hai Tang's eyes was completely gone, replaced by a more depressed and disappointed look. Hai Tang is ready. Hai Tang said to Wen Long and Catherine, We may go to faraway places in the future. Is this okay? Meow? Wen Long asked. No problem. My father said. As long as there is money to spend and wine to drink, it will be fine. He doesn't care where Hai Tang goes from now on. At this point, Hai Tang started to cry. That night, Hai Tang cried for a long time and talked a lot. 
especially about her father's deeds. Only then did Wen Long and Catherine learn that Haitong's father was also a very good hunter. Although he has not reached the legendary level, he is still a five-star hunter that most people look up to, and he has solved emergencies that threaten human villages many times. At that time, Haitong's father could be said to be extremely prosperous. He had a very beautiful wife and lived a happy life. According to Haitang, Haitong's father was bitten by a mistake while hunting a monster called Hong Long and lost an entire leg. After that, Haitong's father was kicked out of the team by his teammates. Later, because he had no other skills except hunting, and was unwilling to put down his pride and do some simple jobs, Haitong's father lost his source of income. As a result, Haitong's father's temper became more and more violent, and he got into the bad habits of drinking and gambling. Later, Haitong's mother divorced her father. Her mother was worried that marrying a daughter would be a burden. So Haitang eventually followed her father. Further on, there was this scene that Wen Long and Catherine saw. My father is Haitang's hero. Even so, Haitang still said this. And when he spoke, Haitang still had an expression of admiration in his eyes. My father taught Haitang a lot when I was a child. And Haitang learned all his skills from his father. I will definitely help my father get back on his feet. Boring. Wen Long took a sip of wine after hearing this and then said, Listening to such depressing stories all night is a waste of time. Meow. Mr. Cat Haitang is already very sad. Please don't say that. Catherine said from the side. Humph. Boredom is boring. A man can't extricate himself from the glory of the past and finally gives up on himself. That's not enough to be called a hero. Meow. With that said, Wen Long ignored the strange look from the shop owner, jumped directly onto the table, and then raised the wine bottle in his hand high. Only men like me are true heroes. Even if they lose everything in the past, they will still be able to stand on the top of the world again in the future. Hi, Kang. From now on, forget about your father and worship me to your heart's content. Meow. Mr. Cat, you are drunk. Catherine said worriedly. No. How could I be drunk? Wen Long burped and then turned his attention to Hai Tang. There is still a way to cheer up your father, but it cannot be done simply with money. It will take a little time to do it. But you can rest assured that as long as you follow me from now on, I will definitely help you. Meow. Thank you, Mr. Cat. Hai Tang nodded while wiping her tears. Early the next morning, Wen Long didn't even remember when he returned to the hotel. But when he woke up, Wen Long found that he was still lying in Catherine's arms as usual. But this time, there was another person beside him. Opposite Catherine, lying on the other side of Wen Long was Hai Tang who was still sleeping. This petite girl did not bring her pajamas when she came out. So she is now wearing a loose pajamas given to her by Catherine. The clothes seem a little inappropriate on the petite body. But they also reflect a particularly unique charm. Calm down. I want to calm down. Wen Long finally got up. Then looked at the time and found that it was already late. So he shouted loudly. Get up. Today I have to go back to Milad village with the old men from the Basie Chamber of Commerce. If you go to sleep again, you will miss the time. Meow. Just like that. They called Catherine and Hai Tang. And then the three of them hurriedly washed and prepared together. And hurried out. However, before meeting up with Mr. Hessen and setting off. Wen Long had to go to Master Luo's forge to get the equipment he had made before. So he took Catherine and Hai Tang to Master Luo's forge. After delivering a hundred gold coins. Wen Long Long received a set of armor. And a pair of swords made from the materials of the Yellow Speed Dragon King. While Catherine received a set of armor and a sword made from the materials of the Sandalin Beast. Among them, Huang Sulong King's suit is of the same level as the Big Strange Bird's suit. They are both level 10 equipment, with Master Luo's skill bonus. The equipment level has also reached level 14. However, although the two are of the same level, it is still necessary for Wen Long to forge them. Among them, the Big Strange Bird's double swords are called Strange Bird Evil and come with fire-attributed attacks, while Huang Sulong King's double swords are called ring-scale swords, and come with paralysis-attributed attacks. The attacks of these two attributes will have different effects when facing different monsters. For example, the previous poisonous monster birds were more afraid of fire damage. So using strange bird evil was a very good choice. However, there are also some monsters that are more afraid of the paralysis attribute. In this case, choosing Ring Scale Saber is the right approach. And not only are the attributes of weapons different, but also in terms of armor. 
the armor of the Big Strange Bird, and the armor of the Yellow Speed Dragon King can also bring different hunting skills to hunters. Among them, the skill brought by the Big Strange Bird's armor is Attack Power Level Plus 2, which means that it can increase the attack level of the Strange Bird Evil in Wenlong's hands from level 14 to level 16. Wangsu Dragon King's armor is different. The hunting skills it can bring to Wenlong are Paralysis Resistance Plus 3 and Paralysis Attack Plus 2. This means that when Wenlong wears a complete set of Wangsu Dragon King's armor and when using the Ring Scale Saber, the ability of the Ring Scale Saber to paralyze the enemy will be greatly improved. At the same time, he will no longer be affected by the enemy's paralysis attack. Compared with Wenlong's Wangsu Dragon King suit, Catherine Shaley B's suit is even higher, reaching a natural level of 15, with Master Luo's skill bonus. Its equipment level has actually reached level 19. Chapter 137 Departure New Team The soul of the Sarimon in the Sarimon set can bring two skills to the hunter. One is Earthquake Resistance. In an unstable ground environment, a hunter wearing a sandal and suit can walk as if on flat ground. Another effect is Fire Field Strength plus one. Under normal circumstances, this skill will not be activated. This skill will only be activated when a hunter wearing a sorry beast suit is seriously injured. And it brings the effect of increased defense to hunters. Of course, in addition to the armor, Catherine also got a brand new sword. Terror Fawn Great Sword. Made from the materials of the sorry beast. This is a level 15 sword weapon that uses the fangs of the sorry beast as the blade and the dense bones as the blade. With Master Luo's skill bonus. The actual level of the weapon has reached level 19. Mr. Cat, this feels great, Catherine said as she vigorously danced the Terror 2 sword in her hand as if she was adapting to the feel of the new weapon. Finally getting a new weapon. Kaiser was of course extremely excited. After all, the previous heavy bone sword was just an ordinary level 5 weapon. Even after being carefully crafted by Grandma Ruisi, it was only level 9. Now it is suddenly replaced by a level 19 weapon. Of course, the huge gap between the two can be easily felt. Sister Catherine is so amazing! Seeing Catherine dancing the big sword like an ordinary stick, Hai Tang couldn't help but exclaimed, Little Hai Tang, you will also have better equipment in the future, especially the armor you are wearing. You should also get a new one! Catherine also said to Hai Tang, Hai Tang can also have new equipment. Hai Tang had an incredible expression on his face. Don't worry, we are a team now. And Mr. Cat will help us with the equipment and everything. Catherine whispered into Haitong's ear. Hey, hey, don't think I can't hear you. Why are you instilling this kind of dependence on others to a newbie just after joining her? Meow. Because little Begonia is the youngest. We should take more care of her. Catherine added. Oh, by the way, little Begonia, how old are you? 13. Look, little Haitang is only 13 years old. How cute she is. Catherine couldn't help pinching Xiao Haitong's cheek. We are a hunting team, not an orphanage. When I agreed to your request to let Haitang join the team, it was because of her strength, not just to show off her cuteness. Meow. Mr. Cat Haitang will work hard, and Haitang will never become a burden to the team. Haitang said quickly. Well, in short, don't be too forced. When Long nodded, and his tone became more easygoing. Hunters must learn to protect themselves during hunting. I am tired enough to take care of that stupid woman over there. Yes, you may not always be able to take care of me when you are in danger. Meow. Mr. Cat. Hai Tang understands. Okay, now that we have acquired the new equipment, let's set off quickly. Old Man Hessen is still waiting for us. Meow. So Wen Long took Catherine and Hai Tang to the city gate of Major Boltan and saw from a distance that Uncle Hessen's caravan was already waiting at the city gate. Wen Long also did a rough count and found that the number of herbivorous dragons seemed to have increased this time. It can be seen that after two herbivorous dragons died on the last trip, Old Man Hessen added new herbivorous dragons this time. I'm sorry, Uncle Heezen. We are late because we have something to prepare. Seeing Old Man Heezen, Catherine said apologetically, It's okay. It's okay. We are just getting ready. Uncle Heezen responded to Catherine with a smile, and at the same time moved his gaze to Hai Tang who was standing next to Wen Long. Who is this little girl? Her name is Xiao Hai Tang. And she is our new teammate. Catherine said. So young? Because old man Heezen had already seen the strength of Catherine and Wenlong before. When he saw a girl with such a petite figure, he couldn't believe that she could become Catherine and Wenlong's new girlfriend. 
partner. Don't worry, old man. Although Haikang is not very old, she still has quite a lot of hunting experience in the nearby desert areas. And she can hunt sorry beasts by herself. So you can rest assured that the journey back this time will definitely be smooth. It's safer than before. Meow. Wen Long explained to Uncle Heezen. Oh. Oh. That's it. Hearing Wen Long's explanation, Old Man Heezen's worries were finally dispelled. Then Old Man Heezen nodded and said, Then, just like before, this journey will be a lot of trouble for you. So just like before, Old Man Hessen walked to the front of the team and shouted loudly, Let's go! The whip struck the herbivorous dragon at the head of the queue, and the entire team began to move forward again, because the number of people in the team increased by one more person this time. Wenlong felt much more at ease during this trip, even shortly after leaving Major Boltan. A team of hunters patrolling around the city offered to provide escort for a certain distance, but Wenlong politely declined. The reason is Wenlong's trust in the strength of the current team. After all, one more person means more combat power, and even Wenlong recognized Haitong's strength. In addition, Haitang is younger than Catherine, which means that Haitang still has great potential to be explored in the future. Of course, age is only one aspect, although Haitang is younger than Catherine. Judging from her hunting experience, it is obvious that Haitang still has much more experience than Catherine. This is mainly due to the difference caused by the different childhood experiences between the two. Catherine has always been loved by her brother when she was a child. So she has basically no contact with hunting knowledge, and is obviously lacking in experience and technology. But Haitang is different. Although Haitang is still young, it can be seen from her ability to use a variety of hunting bows that Haitang's hunting time should far exceed that of Catherine, and may even be comparable to some old hunters. As for Haitang not being familiar with the skills of the poisonous monster bird, it may be because the hunting locations are relatively simple. After all, the sorry beast is a creature in the desert, and the poisonous monster bird likes to live in relatively humid places. The living environments between the two are so different that it is basically impossible for them to exist in the same hunting ground in the wild. Both of them can be said to be newcomers with potential. One has great potential for improvement in terms of experience and technology, while the other has considerable potential for physical growth. What will happen in the future? So what do you think? This actually makes me look forward to it. Meow. When Long couldn't help but think this as he looked at Catherine and Haitang who had only known each other for a day and were already walking together like sisters. Chapter 138 10% Soul Synchronization The caravan continued along the caravan route back to Milad village. And fortunately, the caravan did not encounter any threatening monsters on the first day of its departure. During this period, we encountered a group of Huang Velociraptors. As a result, the Yellow Velociraptor group was easily killed by Wen Long before they could get close to the caravan. As for Catherine and Haitang, they didn't even have a chance to take action. In this way, the caravan successfully arrived at the Grand Canyon, where they rested last time as night fell, and stopped to prepare for the night. Woman, go prepare dinner. Hai Kang, you will be on guard. When Long ordered Catherine and Hai Tang after the caravan stopped. So Catherine and Hai Tang quickly went about their own affairs according to Wen Long's instructions. But Wen Long felt relaxed. It's good to have one more person. There are many things that I don't need to do personally. Meow! Seeing Hai Tang patrolling the canyon with a hunting bow, Wen Long felt a lot more relieved. After all, when he was in the arena before, Hai Tang not only ignored the burrowing skills of the Salomon, but also accurately predicted the burrowing ability of the Salomon. Burrowing time. It can be seen that if Hai Tang is here, Wen Long doesn't have to worry about being attacked by the sand lizard beast like last time. However, although Wen Long feels relaxed, it does not mean that Wen Long is really idle. In fact, the biggest advantage of arranging things for Catherine and Hai Tang is that he can have free time to do it. Practice meditation. Wen Long knew that acquiring El Cat's skills was not something that could be achieved overnight. Only by constantly meditating and getting closer to the El Cat's soul hidden deep in his heart step by step could he gain control bit by bit. Master the skills of El Cat. Then let's get started. We have made some progress in the first two times. Let's see if we can master El Cat's skills further this time. Naya. With this thought in mind, Wen Long found a relatively quiet place and began to sit cross-legged, trying to enter a meditative state again. This time, Wen Long did not use the incense that Luo Luo gave him before. Although there was still a few times worth of that incense, Wen Long decided to get rid of his dependence on incense as soon as possible. After all, in Wen Long's view, 
getting rid of dependence on incense, is also a manifestation of getting closer to the soul of El Cat in his body. Facts have proved that Wenlong did it. Compared with the previous two times. This time Wenlong felt that his energy became easier to concentrate. And he quickly entered a meditative state within five minutes after closing his eyes. The familiar scene once again appeared in front of Wenlong. The cold snow mountain. The roaring snow lion king. And himself running non-stop. According to the memory of the previous two times. Wenlong knew that he would soon use. Aluma's method of preventing heat stroke and cold. Myself? When did I already regard the Elkit, who was chased by the Snow Lion King on the snowy mountain as myself? Shouldn't that just be my predecessor? Meow? Suddenly, such a concept emerged in Wenlong's mind. This made Wenlong suddenly realize that the result of these three meditations was that he had begun to regard some of the things that this body had done before time travel as his current real experience. Is this because the souls are getting closer and closer? Such a question suddenly appeared in Wenlong's mind. Yes. This is why our souls are getting closer and closer. At the same time, a voice answered Wenlong's question. The snow-capped mountains that were covered with wind and snow before suddenly turned into pitch black. Wenlong felt that his body began to sink slowly, as if he had entered an endless abyss. This surprised Wenlong. But after the moment of surprise, Wenlong quickly calmed down. So Wenlong asked again. If I guess correctly, you are the soul of the yellow cat in my body? Meow? This sentence is not correct. The voice rang in Wenlong's heart again. This body is mine, not yours. It was you who took over my body when I was seriously injured. Meow. So what? Do you still want to take back your body? Meow. Although he is asking the other party. For Wenlong, this is just an exchange of consciousness between the two parties. So Wenlong does not need to use his mouth. He only needs to speak in his mind just think about the questions you want to ask. And the other person will naturally understand what Wenlong means. No. I don't need to take back my body. In fact, if you hadn't taken over my body, I would have died on the day I fought the Snow Lion King. Meow. So from this aspect, I still need to thank you. Meow. If that's the case, then lend me your power. For example, how to use Elcat skills. You can't use them now. Right. Meow. I heard that the other party didn't want to take it back. Regarding the body, Wenlong immediately got to the point and directly asked the other party if he could help him learn to use Elcat's skills. You are not the soul of Elcat. So if you want to use Elcat's skills, you must synchronize with my soul. The soul of Elcat explained to Wenlong. I know this. The question is how can we synchronize? This is the point. Meow. You regard me as you. And I regard you as me. From now on, we will not distinguish between each other in consciousness. That's it? Wenlong asked with some confusion. That's all. Okay. I try my best to do this. You treat me as you. And I treat you as me. Wenlong was silent for a while and then said. But I don't feel that our souls are in sync. Meow. The fact that you can talk to me now is already a progress. It proves that a small part of our souls have entered a synchronized state. If you use a concept that is easier for you to understand, then our synchronization rate should reach 10%. Come on. Meow. Can you know how I understand it? Wenlong was a little surprised. Of course. Our souls have begun to synchronize now. And of course, I can understand some of your thoughts. Meow. But I don't understand your thoughts. Meow. Wenlong said to the soul of Elucat. Why not? Don't you often say meow when you speak now? That's the result of the mutual influence of our souls. Meow. I see. But only 10% synchronization is not enough. Right. Meow. Wenlong asked again. 10% is indeed not much. But you can already use the lowest Elcat skills. Such as Elcat's heat and cold protection technique. Meow. Chapter 139 Mastering the First Elcat Skill Wenlong woke up. The soul that had been talking to Wenlong gradually moved away. And his voice began to become blurry until he finally disappeared. It took me a long time to learn the art of preventing Elcat from heat stroke and cold. But as the degree of soul synchronization increases, the more skills of Elcat can be learned. It seems that as long as I meditate a few more times, you should still be able to master some more powerful skills. At first, Wenlong felt a little disappointed. After all, the so-called Ilucat's ability to prevent heat and cold could not increase his hunting ability. It could only be regarded as an auxiliary skill at most. And even without this skill, it would still be fine. Use auxiliary props such as cold drinks and hot drinks instead. But thinking about it carefully, 
Wen Long felt that the method of preventing heat stroke and cold was not as useless as he thought at first. At least with Aluma's method of preventing heat stroke and cold. Wen Long would no longer need to blow a fan in the summer or use a stove in cold weather. Moreover, in extreme areas such as volcanoes and snowy areas, Wen Long does not need to bring cold drinks and hot drinks. And the saved backpack space can be used to stuff other props. In any case, it's good to be able to master El Cat's ability to prevent heat stroke and cold. I'll give it a try later and see if it works. Meow. At this time, dinner was ready, and Catherine began to invite everyone to enjoy dinner. But for Wen Long, he had no time to think about dinner at this time. As a result, Wen Long ate something casually and got up to leave. Then he found a quiet place and prepared to try out the heat stroke and cold prevention methods of Ella Cat that he had mastered before. Technique. It happened that the night was already dark at this time. The sun had disappeared. The originally hot desert began to cool down and people began to feel the chills. Some people took out blankets and put them on themselves, and then chatted around the campfire. Some people simply got into their sleeping bags early. After all, a warm sleeping bag is much warmer than outside. For one long, this was a good time to test his Elucat's ability to prevent heat stroke and cold. So when long did not put a blanket on his body or sit by the bonfire, but let the cold wind blow him I was trembling. And at the same time, I silently recited, Elu Cat's techniques to prevent heat stroke and cold. In my heart. But it was of no use. Oh meow. What's going on? Didn't it mean that if the soul synchronization reaches 10%, you can use El Cat's heat and cold protection technique? Why is it still useless? Is there something wrong with your posture? Meow. So Walong began to imitate the scene in his memory when he was fighting the Snow Lion King. And suddenly shouted loudly. Activate. El Cat's anti-heat stroke and cold proof technique. Still nothing worked. After that, Wen Long experimented for half an hour, making seals with his hands and shouting at the same time, running and shouting, meditating and shouting. As a result, he tried about a dozen methods, but still never activated the Aluma's heat stroke prevention function technique to protect yourself from the cold. But it made me shiver a little from the cold. Ah, sneeze. Wen Long sneezed, then thought about it again, and carefully sorted out the conversation with El Cat's soul in his mind. Suddenly a flash of inspiration occurred. And this time Wen Long felt as if he had grasped something. I remember that the soul of El Cat in my body said before that the word meow when I speak is also the result of soul synchronization. If so, how does it activate when I speak with the word meow? Meow? Wen Long suddenly remembered the word. Meow. That he usually used when speaking. But after thinking about it carefully, he found that although the word meow appeared often, he didn't seem to think about how to activate it. But because of his body, the instinct is the same. And it naturally becomes like this. It was so natural that even Wen Long never thought that this was a characteristic of El Cat. Just like people don't think about how to keep breathing in their daily lives. This is a very natural thing. So natural that it doesn't need to go through the brain at all. I see. That's it. It seems that I was too deliberate before. Always thinking about synchronizing with El Cat's soul. But if you think about it a little bit, you will actually find that the more you care about this, the less you can do. Start it. Meow. You think of me as you. And I also think of you as me. The key point should be this sentence. Now the soul of El Cat and my soul are one. There is no need to think about soul synchronization at all. Because the more the more you think about it, the more you will feel the difference between the two. At this time, I just need to regard the soul of El Cat as my own soul. And regard El Cat's heat and cold protection technique as my own skill. Meow. So with this thought in mind, Wen Long temporarily put the matter of soul synchronization behind him and tried it again. Activate El Cat's anti-heat and cold technique. Meow. This time Wen Long finally succeeded. A stream of heat surged out of his body. His body, which was still trembling from the cold, suddenly became comfortable. This stream of heat continued to surge in the body, spreading to all parts of the body, and resides in the body for a long time. Well, that's right. It seems that El Cat's ability to prevent heat and cold is no longer a problem. But try other skills to see if it is really as El Cat's soul said. It can only be activated now. El Cat's ability to prevent heat and cold. But other skills can't be activated temporarily. So Wen Long tried to activate other El Cat skills and found that they still couldn't be activated. Only this El Cat's heat and cold protection technique could be activated. At this time, Catherine came over. She probably saw Wen Longji wearing ordinary Huang Athlon equipment 
and not wearing a warm blanket. So Catherine came over with a blanket. Mr. Cat, why are you wearing only this little thing? Would it be better if you didn't put on a blanket? Catherine said to Wenlong. No, I'm very well now. It's better to say that my body has never been so comfortable as it is now. Wenlong waved his hand, indicating that Catherine didn't need to worry about him, and then said, Oh, by the way, about today, as for the night watch, I will be responsible for the first half of the night, and you will be responsible for the second half of the night. Let Haidang have a good rest. Meow. Okay, Mr. Cat. I'll tell Haidang now, Catherine said with a smile. But Mr. Cat, although you may sound stern, you are actually very gentle to Haidang. What's gentle or not? I just think that children need more sleep every day. I am worried that she will fall asleep when she wakes up in the middle of the night. So I made this arrangement. Meow. Chapter 140 Big Sword A Period of Charging Gradually, people began to fall asleep. After all, after traveling all day, most people felt very tired, and they had to get up early the next morning to travel again. No one wanted to waste precious sleep time. Catherine and Haitang also fell asleep after completing their respective trainings. Only when Long was left standing by the bonfire, continuing to monitor the surrounding movements. However, even if he was on alert, Wen Long did not intend to waste this time, but found an open space to continue exercising. Although meditation can acquire various L cat skills, you must not relax in training your own physical abilities. I must break through L cat's limits. Meow. With this idea in mind, Wen Long practiced for five hours, during which he conducted many running training, weight training, and attack training. Until Catherine woke up, Wen Long was still doing the final attack training. Ah, Mr. Cat. It's so late, and you're still training. Catherine said a little surprised when she saw Wen Long training with sweat all over his head. Hearing Catherine's voice, Wen Long stopped holding the two knives in his hands, then looked at Catherine with some confusion and said, Why did you wake up? It shouldn't be your shift change time yet. Right? Meow? We're already here. Mr. Cat. It seems I slept a little longer. Catherine said, How could it be? When Long was a little suspicious and took out a pocket watch he bought at Major Bolton's watch shop when he was shopping. Then he looked at it and found that it was indeed past his duty time. Strange. Why does it feel like this training time passed faster than before? I have obviously trained for more than five hours. But it feels like only more than an hour has passed at most. When Long was a little confused. But after thinking about it carefully, Wen Long also felt a little relieved. Because Wen Long found that the benefits of meditation during this period of time to him seemed not only to increase the synchronization rate between himself and the soul of El Cat, but also had another benefit. Wen Long felt that he was now concentrated. Strength also increased. There are fewer distracting thoughts in my mind than before. I have become more focused on doing things. And my efficiency has also improved. In this case, I naturally feel that time passes faster than before. It seems that meditation is really a good thing. It took me two days to go to the island to learn how to meditate. It was really not in vain. After understanding this, Wenlong's mood became more joyful. So he happily handed over the task of keeping watch at night to Catherine. He took out the new sleeping bag he had bought in Midge Bolton and got into it. It was a dreamless night like this. When Wenlong woke up, the white dawn could already be seen in the east. The group of people, including Old Man Hessen, had already begun to make final preparations for departure feeding the herbivorous dragon. Then the cargo was tied back to the herbivorous dragon's back. Catherine and Haitang were also busy. Catherine was helping the merchants move the goods, while Haitang climbed on the back of the herbivorous dragon to help tie the goods tightly. Wen Long noticed a lot of sweat beads on Catherine's forehead, which made Wen Long feel a little strange, because with Catherine's strength, carrying goods was just a very easy job, and it was still early morning in the desert. The temperature has just begun to rise, and it is impossible to sweat. However, the doubts in Wen Long's heart were soon solved. Because when Catherine saw Wen Long waking up, she immediately ran over with a proud look on her face. Mr. Cat, my charge slash has been able to complete the first phase of charging. Oh, it turns out that you have been practicing charging and slashing at night. How about showing it to me? Meow? Okay, Mr. Cat. As she spoke, Catherine held the newly made Terror 2 sword. Her body was in a half-crouched position and she assumed a power-charging posture, and then began to charge power. This time, Catherine did not let go as soon as she charged up, 
but successfully completed the first stage of charging. A second later, Catherine's body suddenly took a step forward, and the big sword in her hand was cut down like a mountain. Bang! The heavy voice recalled that Catherine's sword cut a deep ravine on the ground. Judging from the depth of the ravine, the power was at least three times more than an ordinary vertical slash. Well, that's right. A good start is half the battle. Now that you have learned the first stage of charging, you just need to practice more. You should be able to master the second and third stages of charging soon. Meow. That's great. Mr. Cat. Catherine was also very proud when she heard Wen Long's praise. But then Catherine said, But Xiao Haizong's hunting bow can also be charged. And Xiao Haitang can use three stages of charging. Of course. Although others are younger than you. As a hunter, Hai Tang is your senior. Meow. Eh? Xiao Hai Tang is my senior. So is it possible that I am the youngest here? But I always call her Xiao Hai Tang. Xiao Hai Tongs. As if she suddenly realized something. Catherine was shocked. Okay. Don't worry so much. Today's journey is very tight. We will set off soon. Meow. At this time, the caravan's goods had been reloaded. Under the command of Old Man Hessen, the entire team began to move again leaving the oasis in the canyon and continuing to walk towards the depths of the thundering sand sea. The caravan continued to move forward like this. And at noon, the caravan arrived near a gentle sandy land. At first glance, there are no rolling sand dunes here. On the contrary, the sand here is relatively flat and looks more like a plain, which makes old Hessen in the caravan feel a little strange. It's really strange. Why did a flat sandy land suddenly appear at this location? Remember that this place should have been sand dunes before? Because he was really confused about the scenery in front of him. Old Hessen took out the compass again. After confirming the direction, I found that there was nothing wrong with my route. This flat sea of sand is not naturally formed. When Long suddenly said at this moment. Then, what's the reason? Uncle Hessen asked with some confusion. I've been walking on this trade road for decades. Why have I never found anything like this happening on this trade road? Of course because it was caused by a monster. When Long explained to Mr. Hessen, in the past few decades, although this kind of monster has always existed in the thundering sand sea, it has never migrated here. This place, now that they are here, they will naturally change the terrain of this place. Meow. When Malong said this, not only Uncle Hezen, but also Catherine became nervous. Only Haitang on the side did not feel that surprised. Chapter 141 Slider in the Sand Sea Hai Tang thinks that the King of Sharon is here. Hai Tang said in a low voice, as if he was afraid of being heard by too many people. Yes, it is the King of Sharon. Wen Long nodded in agreement with Hai Tang's guess. And there are also the entire group of Sharon who migrated here with the King of Sharon. Meow. Speaking of the Salon King, people like Mr. Hassan have actually heard of it for a long time. However, this Salon King did not live near the trade road from Mijbolton to Milad village before. So Mr. Hassan did not think of this. That's all. So after Wen Long pointed out that it was the result of King Sharon's migration, Old Man Heezen immediately understood the seriousness of the matter. Is it the King of Sharon? And the entire community of Sharon who migrated with the King of Sharon? Old Man Hessen said with a solemn expression. In that case, we have no chance of winning. And I'm afraid we will have to take a detour. Old Man Hessen looked at the large flat sea of sand in front of him and couldn't help but frown which made old man Hessen's face already covered with wrinkles look even older. Decades of experience on the trade route made old man Hessen well aware of the dangers of King Salon. Although a monster like King Salon was not the most powerful existence in the thundering sand sea, it was the monster that the caravan least wanted to encounter. Because this kind of monster is always lurking under the sand layer. It is difficult to detect most of the time. Not only that, the King of Sharon often moves with a group of Salons, and moves extremely fast in the sea of sand. So once he is targeted by the King of Sharon, then it often means that the entire caravan may suffer serious losses, or even be completely destroyed in the Sea of Sand. In contrast, although the Yellow Velociraptor group also acts in groups, their individual combat effectiveness and covert attack capabilities are not as good as those of the Salon group. Although the Salon group can also lurk in the sand, they generally only act alone, so that even if the caravan cannot defeat the Sari Beast, a small number of hunters can be left to contain the sorry beast. And then the entire caravan can take the opportunity to retreat out of danger. Considering this situation, it is understandable that Uncle Hessen decided to avoid this gentle sea of sand. However, before Mr. Hessen finally made his decision, 
Wen Long stopped him. Hey, old man, what are you afraid of? With me here, are you still afraid that you won't be able to get through? Meow, it's not that I don't believe you. Old man Hessen sighed. As hunters, you must also know that the Salon King moves extremely fast in the sand. And it is still a group activity. Once it is targeted by it, basically I can't run away. So how can I dare to take this risk? Don't worry. I have a way to deal with the Salon King. Meow. Wen Long said confidently. What's more, judging from the size of this sand sea, if we really want to take a long detour, I'm afraid we won't be able to get around it in one day. Then if we stay in this thundering sand sea for one more day, the possibility of encountering danger will be greater. It is better to go directly through the area where King Salon is and leave the thundering sand sea as soon as possible. Meow! Seeing Wen Lung's confidence, Old Man Heezen, who originally advocated avoiding this area, also hesitated. So after thinking about it for about five minutes, Old Man Heezen finally said, Okay, I'll do as you said. Do. So under Wen Long's persuasion, the entire caravan continued to move forward and began to enter this gentle sea of sand. Mr. Cat! Mr. Cat! Why do you say there is a king of Salon in this gentle sea of sand? Seeing that since entering this gentle sea of sand, the members of the caravan, including Old Man Hessen, all expressed expressions of confusion, with a serious look on his face. Catherine couldn't help but ask one long. Well, you can tell by looking at the shape of the sand sea. Although King Sharon lives in the desert, he belongs to the ichthyosaur species. So when they move on the surface of the sand sea, they mainly rely on the fins on their abdomen. Sliding. And the result of a large number of salons sliding on the surface of the sand sea is that the originally uneven sand dunes are smoothed by these smooth-bodied salons. Meow. You can actually bulldoze so many sand dunes? Catherine couldn't believe it. Of course. Not to mention the small salons. The big salon king glides like an iron that can smooth out wrinkles smoothing out the uneven places along the way. And for the Salon King and the Salons under it, as a group, they prefer the gentler sand sea. After all, it is more suitable for gliding. So they will also consciously transform the new habitat where the group is located. Meow. How can it be like this? Because she had never seen the King of Sharon. In Catherine's mind, she pictured a big fish like an iron swimming in the sea of sand, which seemed a bit funny. Okay, don't think too much. Since you have decided to face the King of Salon, now start listening carefully to my explanation of the battle plan. Meow. After explaining to Catherine, what Long continued, Hi Kang. Wait a minute. When the Hui Salon King appears, he will definitely be followed by a group of small salons. At that time, the cleaning work of those small salons will be left to you. Try not to let those small salons get close to us. The stupid woman and I will be responsible for dealing with the Salon King. Meow. Hai Tang understands. Hai Tang will definitely successfully complete the task you assigned to Hai Tang. Hai Tang also responded. Well, very good. Then Wen Long said to Catherine again, Stupid woman, can you guarantee that your charge slash can be used at any time in actual combat? Meow. No problem, Mr. Cat. Catherine said confidently. Okay, then I will make King Salon temporarily lose his fighting ability in front of you. Then you can kill him with a charged sword. That's it. Meow. The charge slash can be cut in two with one stroke. But Mr. Cat, you also know that even a charge slash takes a second to complete the charge. After that, there is still time to use the sword. So hasn't the Salon King already run away? Catherine had already inferred from Wen Long's words that the King of Sharon was gliding very quickly in the gentle sea of sand. Although one second was not too long. If she was facing the fast gliding King of Sharon, then it is very likely that the King of Sharon has already glided to another place before the sword is fully charged. Don't worry. Although it's not easy to do this. But with me here, there's nothing you can't do. Meow. At this time, there were some subtle vibrations in the sand. While Long listened for a while with his ears raised, and then immediately waved his hands to signal the entire caravan to stop. Everyone, listen up. King Salon is coming. And a group of his men are probably approaching this area. Meow. As he spoke, Wolong climbed on the back of a herbivorous dragon and then looked forward from a high place. From a distance, he saw something like a fish's dorsal fin approaching at high speed in the sand. This made Wolong think the dorsal fin of a shark in the ocean. When a shark swims close to the sea surface, although its body is still in the seawater, its dorsal fin is exposed like this. 
Chapter 142 Accurate Sonic Bomb After confirming that it was indeed the King of Salon and his group of Salons approaching, Wen Long did not immediately rush forward to intercept them. Instead, he stretched out a paw and faced forward as if gesticulating something. Just like a cameraman composing the scene, Wen Long also used his claws to determine the position of the Salon group. At the same time, he also judged the advancement speed of the Salon King based on the size change of the Salon King's dorsal fin compared with the claws. However, because the cat's claws are not as long as human fingers, the gesture looks a bit funny. After gesticulating for a while, Wen Long had a general understanding of the speed, distance and direction of the Salon group. Then Wen Long jumped off the back of the herbivore dragon and began to determine the tactics for this time. Wen Long knew that for a group of Salons, the Salon King was the most important being in the entire group. As long as the Salon King could be killed, the entire Salon group would lose its combat effectiveness. Otherwise, if they are dealt with one by one as usual, the Salon group that can sneak into the Sand Sea at any time to carry out sneak attacks will be a very troublesome existence. Therefore, Wenlong's initial strategy was to snipe the Saloon King, who was advancing at high speed among a group of Saloons. However, this is not an easy task, because the King of Sharon is sneaking in the Sea of Sand, with only its dorsal fin exposed. Even if the King of Sharon really needs it, even its dorsal fin can be completely hidden in the Sea of Sand so that no one can see it. To trace. However, Wenlong was already prepared for this. Wenlong touched the two gray spheres in his pocket, which were important props that Wenlong had prepared to deal with the King of Salon. It's finally your turn. Meow. Wenlong said to himself. These two gray spheres are called sonic bombs. They are special explosives that emit high-frequency sound waves when they explode. They are used to deal with the King of Sharon, especially the King of Sharon, who has sneaked into the sand layer. Receive miraculous results. The reason is that because the King of Sharon often lurks under the sand layer without light. His eyesight has been relatively degraded. Instead, his hearing has been strengthened. He usually uses his hearing to identify the direction and can also judge the location of prey on the ground. In this case, if you use a bomb that can instantly release high-frequency sound waves, it will be an extremely powerful stimulus for Salon King, who has extremely sensitive hearing. It can instantly make Salon King's muscles twitch and jump unconsciously out of the sand layer, and lose combat effectiveness within a certain period of time. Of course, in addition to King Salon, there are some monsters that are also easily affected by sonic bombs. For example, the same is true for the big strange birds that have been hunted before. However, for one long, the big strange birds are too weak and cannot it will sneak into the soil. So there is no value in using sonic bombs. However, Wan Long also knew that if he wanted to use a sonic bomb to blast King Sharon out of the sand layer, he would need to accurately throw the sonic bomb above the sand layer where King Sharon was. Only in this way can the high-frequency sound waves generated by the sonic bomb be released. Maximize the impact on the King of Sharon. Although this sounds easy, not every hunter can do this when the Salon King is moving at high speed. And Wan Long can do it. When he was still playing games in the past, Wen Long could use a heavy sword or a sledgehammer to accurately knock over the fire dragon charging at high speed. The speed, distance, and timing of attacks of these monsters are all beyond the reach of ordinary hunters. With such strength, it would be no problem to accurately throw the sonic bomb directly above the King of Sharon. So Wen Long began to arrange their respective divisions of labor. First, Wen Long asked Catherine to advance a hundred meters in the direction of King Salon's attack in order to distance herself from the caravan. Intercept King Salon in advance and prevent this battle from affecting Old Hessen and the others behind them. Wen Long then asked Hai Tang to stand beside Catherine. The task assigned to Hai Tang was to protect Catherine's safety. Among them, the King of Salons could be left alone, and any minor Salons approaching Catherine would be shot. Wen Long himself walked to a position about 50 meters in front of Catherine. Then Wen Long stopped and took out a gray sonic bomb from his pocket. At this time, the sharing group in the distance was getting closer and closer. The dorsal fin of the King of Sharon, which before could only be seen clearly by standing on the back of the herbivorous dragon, could now be seen even when looking straight at the sand. Not only that, but also that the huge dorsal fin is surrounded by some smaller dorsal fins, which are the salons that follow the King of Salons. So Wen Long began to count down. Five, four, three, two, one. When the count reached one, Wen Long threw the sonic bomb in his hand. And at this time, King Sharon was already only 20 meters away from Wen Long. This meant that if the sonic bomb had no effect, then the King of Salon will hit Wen Long immediately. 
After all, the distance of 20 meters is not a distance that the King of Salon can cross in an instant. But the Sonic Boom Bomb still exploded. And just as Wamani expected, the Sonic Boom Bomb landed about 5 meters in front of him and exploded. At the same time, Sharon King's head also happened to travel to the right place. At that time, Wan Long had even seen that King Sharon's huge mouth had opened. Although King Sharon's body was still under the sand layer, his upper jaw had already exposed the sand layer, and it seemed that he was about to swallow himself at any time. Zhang! It was not the loud sound when a normal bomb exploded, but a very sharp high-frequency sound that spread instantly even though the decibel was not too high. This sound did not have much impact on either Ella cats or humans. At best, it feels a bit harsh. But for Salon King, who has a wider listening range, it is indeed effective. In an instant, King Sharon's body twisted in pain, like a fish that fell into a pot of boiling water and jumped up with a swish. However, due to inertia, the entire body of Sharon King continued to fly forward the moment he jumped up. Therefore, this ichthyosaur monster with a length of 15 meters and a weight of nearly 6 tons was about to hit one long. Suddenly he changed his way forward and flew directly over Wenlong's head. At this moment, Catherine finally saw the true appearance of this monster. Judging from the general shape, the King of Sharon looks like a slender fish with a dorsal fin, a pelvic fin, and a tail fin. But what surprised Catherine was that this monster actually had a pair of strange legs on its flanks. It can be seen that in addition to gliding in the sea of sand, they can also stand on their legs. The head of King Sharon has a special flat shape like a huge shovel that can flatten the uneven sand dunes in front. Under the shovel is the bloody mouth of King Sharon, which was hit by the sonic bomb. At that moment, she had already opened her big mouth and was ready to swallow along. So Catherine could even see the dense teeth inside. Chapter 143 Kill King of Salon King Sharon flew over when Long's head and fell forward. When he finally landed on the sand, he was just to the left of Catherine. The King of Sharon was still twisting his body crazily when he fell. At the same time, due to his six-ton weight falling from a height of more than ten meters, a large amount of sand and dust was instantly rolled up. This forced Catherine to use the big sword in her hand to block it for a moment before starting to approach King Sharon. According to Wenlong's plan, it would be best if the King of Sharon could land about five meters directly in front of Catherine after landing, so that the impact of the fall would not have a great impact on Catherine. Catherine can also easily complete the charge slash before the Sharon King recovers. However, for now, although the Salon King fell in front and left of Catherine, it was still within the allowable error range of Lai Wenlong. The straight line distance was about 10 meters. It took Catherine two seconds for the Salon King to enter. Own attack range. However, at the same time that Catherine was approaching the Sharon King, a group of Salons had already approached Catherine. They jumped out of the sand one after another, and then attack Catherine. It took two seconds to move before, and Catherine still needs to accumulate strength after approaching the salon. After accumulating strength, there is still time to make a move. At this time, Catherine is basically defenseless. But before that, Hai Kang, who was standing next to Catherine, had already taken action one step earlier than Catherine and the salon group, because Hai Tong's projectile needs to be charged for three stages to ensure sufficient power. Hai Tang had already started targeting Sharon King's landing point and Catherine's subsequent movements from the moment Sharon King was blown up by one long sonic bomb. The direction was calculated, and while calculating the landing point, he took out the hunting bow on his back and started to charge up. When King Sharon fell to the ground, Hai Tang finished charging up, and then shot into the air. Throw! Sky-shaped arrow! This arrow had been shot before Catherine moved, and when Catherine moved to King Sharon, the arrows began to split from the sky and scatter. This is an extremely delicate calculation. When those arrows fell from the sky, they completely covered a radius of 1 to 2 meters with Catherine as the center. But none of the arrows included Catherine at all. At this moment, a group of salons rushed toward Catherine. What's even more frightening is that all this was settled before Catherine moved, which made one long feel a little amazed. Okay, this girl. If Catherine is the representative of the power type, this girl Hai Tang is simply the representative of the precision calculation type. Yes, yes, she has the demeanor of my uncle back then. Meow. Although the hunting is not over yet. Wen Long had already touched his beard leisurely. Because Wen Long knew that the victory had been decided. In an instant, the arrows fell. Surrounding Catherine in the center like a curtain. While the salons that rushed over were like poor fish. 
nailed to the ground by the falling arrows, and some were further away. Sharon also had to change direction and temporarily bypass the circular curtain of death for the sake of his own safety. After a little more than a second, the curtain of arrows dispersed. At this time, Catherine had already raised the terror fong sword in her hand. This means that Catherine's charge has ended, and it is the moment when the big sword kills. The Salon King recovered a little after struggling for a while and was about to stand up, but it was already too late, because the Terror II sword that had finished charging had already fallen, and its target was the joint between King Sharon's head and body. At this moment, this scene reminded one long of those guillotines in movies that can cut off people's heads in an instant. Crack. Blood spurted out. The surrounding sand sea was dyed red, and the head of the Salon was officially divided into two parts. King Sharon was undoubtedly dead. But just before he died, King Sharon was still struggling. His headless body was still twitching. And his head that had separated from his body was still blinking. About two or three seconds later, when a large amount of blood spurted out and the blood pressure had dropped to the point where it was no longer enough to sustain the smallest movement of the body, King Sharon finally became motionless. At this time, the Salon King reminded Wen Long of a home-cooked dish he once liked before traveling through time, called Fish Head with Chopped Peppers. The motionless head of the Salon King, as well as the neatly cut sections of the head and body parts, are really just like the fish head chopped off by the chef with a kitchen knife on the chopping board. And the blood scattered around seems to be used for seasoning. Red chopped pepper. After the death of the King of Sharon, the remaining Sharons were easier to deal with. They either ran away or were killed by one long. Catherine and Hai Tang who caught up. Only a few of them quickly dived into the sand sea again and headed towards the distance. Escape. Wen Long didn't bother to deal with those who sneaked into the sea of sand and fled, although they could also be blown up with sonic bombs. Considering that the value of materials in general salons was not high, and even caravans did not have more the payload takes out all the materials. So Wen Long doesn't have to waste sonic bombs. Mr. Cat, what a great harvest. After the hunt, Catherine said happily while looking at the salon all over the floor. At this time, Catherine's body was still covered with the blood spurted by King Sharon, and then she hugged Wen Long again. Hey, hey, don't get all the blood stains on your body on my uncle. Meow. Wen Long finally escaped from Catherine's arms. Sister Catherine, Hai Tang wants a hug. Unlike Wen Long, Hai Tang said this. Okay, little begonia, come and touch it. Catherine picked up the petite Hai Tang and then touched her head. Little Hai Tang is really amazing. He has such great archery skills at such a young age. Hai Tang started practicing archery when he was eight years old. He has been practicing for five years. Hai Tang said, Huh? Can you pull a bowstring at the age of eight? Meow. This was asked by Wen Long on the side. Well, it was all taught to me by my father. When he said this, Hai Tang's face showed a look of pride. But soon this look disappeared without a trace. At this time, the caravan members headed by Mr. Hessen also came over. They were all astonished by the sight in front of them. Oh, although I expected you to be able to deal with such a large group of salons, I really didn't expect you to be able to kill a group of salons so quickly. And the salon king was still killed with one sword. Yes, it's really wonderful. Wonderful. Old man Hessen, who was walking at the front, was not stingy with his words of praise, and said that he had led the caravan for so long, traveled to many places, and had hired higher level hunters than Catherine and her party but he was able to turn the hunting salon into a hunting salon. This is the first time I've seen Wang do it so beautifully. Chapter 144 Haitong Salon King's Lecture Course Next, a group of people began to strip the salon king and the materials of those salons. Because there were so many salons, even businessmen including Mr. Hessen began to join in to help Wang Long and his party. Strip. Although these merchants do not have any hunting skills, they still have a certain level of ability to extract materials. This is entirely due to the fact that as merchants, sometimes they need to decompose the materials themselves before buying and selling them. This makes them very helpful. There are 22 Sharons in total. Such a lot of materials are worth a lot of money. Oh, by the way, there is also Sharon's liver. It is a high-end ingredient. It will also be super delicious when made into Sharon's liver pate. Meow. When Long was also calculating the harvest while peeling. Of course, the most valuable material here is the Salon King's materials. According to the level of the monster, 
The equipment made from the Salon King's materials is five levels higher than the equipment made from the materials of the Shalimon. In other words, the equipment created is directly level 20. If you add Granny Ruizzi's technical bonus, then it means there will be level 24. Meow! For one long, this is undoubtedly another opportunity for improvement. Soon, the peeling was completed, and the most valuable materials of King of Sharon were broken down, wrapped in a package made of the skin of the poisonous monster bird, and let Catherine carry it on her back. The general salon materials are packed in ordinary bags and scattered on the backs of the herbivorous dragons to ensure that the burden on each herbivorous dragon is not too heavy. After completing this, the caravan started on the road again. Mr. Cat, what are the moves of this Salon King? When the team started on the road again, Catherine on the side suddenly asked, The King of Salon's moves? At this moment, Wen Long suddenly thought that the unlucky King of Salon just now was killed before he could use any of his moves. Although such a quick victory was indeed very refreshing, it also existed. One major flaw was the lost opportunity to familiarize Catherine with the monster's attack patterns. That's right. I have forgotten that this is the first time for you, a woman, to fight against the King of Sharon. I didn't even let you see the King of Sharon's moves. And although this time, I successfully defeated the King of Sharon, but if something unexpected happens, and you need to face the King of Salon alone, you may not be able to handle it easily. Meow. Wen Long thought for a moment, then turned his head to Hai Tang aside, and said to Hai Tang, What about you, little girl? Are you familiar with the moves and habits of the King of Salon? Meow? Hai Tang nodded and said, Hai Tang is familiar with it, as long as it is a monster in the desert. Hai Tang is familiar with it, but the poisonous monster bird last time was indeed the first time Hai Tang saw it. That's it. Okay. Hai Tang, you'll be responsible for explaining it to Catherine. Meow. Okay. Mr. Cat. Hai Tang nodded, and then replied in her childish voice. Sister Kaiser. Hai Tang is about to start explaining. Little Hai Tang, you actually know all this. It seems that I really still have a lot to learn. Catherine was also a little surprised when she heard that Hai Tang also had knowledge in this area. Then, Hai Tang explained to Catherine in her childish voice. This Salon King is a type of ichthyosaur. Currently, the Hunter Guild has designated it as a monster that can only be hunted by two-star advanced hunters. The original level of the equipment it creates is level 20. The Salon King generally likes to move in relatively flat and heavily deserted sand. Its main attack methods are, at this point, Hai Tang stretched out his fingers to count, and then said, There are four types. The first skill of King Sharon is Sand Wave Leap. This is a skill in which King Sharon suddenly jumps out of the sand layer and then jumps towards the target. It is also a skill that King Sharon often uses to hunt prey. In addition, the bike force of Sharon King's upper and lower jaws is amazing. And once he is bitten, he will be in trouble. Sharon King's second skill is Sand Attack. Different from the previous jump, this move is to lurk under the sand and rush over, and only opens its mouth to bite the target when it is close to it. Oh, by the way, the Salon King used the Sand Attack to attack Mr. Cat just now. It was just a little short of the mark, and ended up being blown up by Mr. Cat's Sonic Bomb. Although it looked like it at the time, it seems normal. But Hai Tang knows that if Mr. Cat had thrown the Sonic Bomb a little slower, or faster. It would not have had such a good effect. And Mr. Cat would most likely be killed by the Salon King. When I got bitten, Hai Tang was sweating a lot for you. Mr. Cat. Humph. This kind of thing is too simple for me. It's not difficult at all. I don't need a girl like you to praise me. Meow. Although he said this, a proud look had already appeared on Wenlong's face. Face. Hai Tang continued to explain. The third skill of King Sharon is the Iron Sand Cannon. This is a long-range attack skill. It is an attack method in which King Sharon mixes the swallowed sand with saliva and spits it out. Normally, King Sharon will swallow the sand. It is stored in the sand bag and can be spit out when needed. And the sand mixed with saliva has a certain stickiness. So if it is spit out, it will affect the ability to move. Hey, that's so disgusting. Catherine stuck out her tongue. To be spit by such a monster saliva. Xiao Hai Tang. Have you ever encountered such a thing before? Well, that was when I was hunting with my father. Probably thinking of her father's current appearance again. Hai Tong's mood suddenly dropped. Ah. Um. Xiao Hai Tang. Where is the fourth skill of the Salon King? Catherine, who felt something was wrong in the atmosphere, immediately changed the subject. Oh. The fourth skill is called Ascension Slam. 
It is an attack method in which Sharon King dives into a very deep sand layer and then rushes up from the depths of the sand layer. This skill is one of Sharon King's skills. The most powerful one. The target bitten from below will rush to the sky with the King of Sharon, then fall from the sky and finally be buried deep in the sand. Once bitten, there is basically no possibility of escape. Well, if I meet the King of Salon alone in the future, I must be careful with this skill. Catherine took out a pen and paper at some point and carefully recorded some of the key points that Hai Tang just said. You have to be careful even when you are not alone. Meow. Hearing Catherine say this, when Long on the side quickly corrected him, Eh? As long as Mr. Cat is here, nothing will happen. Right? Don't become dependent on me. Meow. Chapter 145 The Weaver on the Cliff In this way, after killing King Sharon, the caravan kept moving forward. By dusk, it had left the thundering sand sea, and another day passed before the caravan entered the vicinity of the Himilon Mountain Road. Entering the familiar Heimlon Mountain Road, the green atmosphere around it gradually becomes more and more intense. When walking on the road, people's mood gradually relaxes. After all, this is the Himilon Mountain Road. Past experience tells people that as long as they don't go too deep and just walk along the mountain road, most of the time they won't encounter any powerful monsters. Moreover, the climate environment is much better than the previous Thunder Sand Sea. There will not be such short-term temperatures that are hot during the day and cold at night. So it is natural for people to feel at ease. You're not far from Milad Village when you enter the Himilon Mountain Road. But it's getting late now. So let's take a rest. If we start again early tomorrow morning, we'll be able to reach Milad Village around noon. As in the old man said this. And then motioned to the entire caravan to stop and rest. As before, some merchants helped unload the goods on the herbivorous dragon's back. And at the same time took out fodder to feed the herbivorous dragon. So that the herbivorous dragon could get a full rest at night while other merchants were responsible for making fires for cooking. Catherine and Hai Tang Wen Long also helped out. But Wen Long found a way to sit down under a big tree and prepare to meditate again. For Wen Long, mastering more El Cat skills as soon as possible can greatly improve his hunting ability. Naturally, he did not dare to neglect it. So as soon as the caravan stopped, he wanted to seize the time to meditate. But this time Wen Long had just calmed down. And before he could enter a meditative state, he suddenly heard some strange sound. The sound seemed a bit dull, a bit like it was covered in something and couldn't come out completely. However, it still caught Wen Long's attention. What the HL? Meow? Wen Long temporarily stopped meditating and then looked in the direction of the sound. Because it was late at night, there were cliffs on both sides of the Zemilin Mountain Road, and there were dense woods blocking it. Even Wen Long couldn't see clearly what was over there, so Wen Long could only continue walking forward avoiding the obstruction of the trees. And then, he could clearly see the spindle-shaped white object in the dark night. It looks particularly conspicuous under the moonlight. Is this a cocoon surrounded by white spider silk? Meow? At this time, Wen Long was already sure that the sound he just heard came from the white object. Not far from the white object, Wen Long also saw a huge spider hanging on the cliff. On the top, it kept spitting out spider silk to wrap the white object in layers. It turns out to be the ghost hunter spider. Although it was night, Wen Long, who had excellent night vision, recognized the identity of the big spider at a glance. It's only been a few days since I passed the Zemilin Mountain Road, and the ghost hunter spider was actually there. Such a monster has also escaped. Naya, the ghost hunting spider mentioned by Wen Long is different from the monsters he encountered before. It is not a bird dragon like the big strange bird, yellow velociraptor, and blue velociraptor. Nor is it like the big wild boar king, beaver beast. It belongs to the toothed beast species like salmon. Not to mention the ichthyosaur species like Sharon and Sharon king. It belongs to the crustacean species that has not been encountered before. As the name suggests, the ghost hunter spider, which belongs to the crustacean species, is covered with a thick gray carapace. And there are protruding brown spikes at several important joints. And there is a pair of blue-like claws on the carapace on its back. The eye-like pattern makes the ghost hunting spider look like a huge human head when lying on the cliff. Which is a bit creepy. Of course, Wen Long is not afraid of these. Although the appearance of this ghost hunting spider is indeed a bit scary. Wen Long knows that this ghost hunting spider is just a monster on the same level as the big strange bird. For an experienced hunter like himself, it is not what a big threat. And just when Wen Long recognized the identity of the big spider, 
The white spider silk moved again and made a dull sound again. This time when Long was sure that there must be something in the spider silk. Things. And they are still alive. Of course, the so-called alive is only a temporary situation. Because if the entire cocoon surrounded by spider silk is completely closed, then even living creatures will eventually be suffocated to death due to lack of oxygen. Now that you've seen something like this, you can't ignore it. Meow. Although he thought so, the white ball of spider silk was hung on the cliff. And Wen Long, who had no long-range attack ability, could not reach it. Of course Wen Long could also climb up the high cliff, cut off the spider silk, and let the white stuff fall down. But this would be a waste of time for Wen Long. So the easiest way is to just call someone for help. Stupid woman. Little girl. Come and help. Meow. The distance was not too far to begin with. So Catherine and Haitang, who heard the call, rushed over quickly. And like one long, they also saw the same scene. The ghost hunting spider didn't seem to care that it was being watched. Or it thought that one long and his party on the ground could not threaten itself hanging on the high cliff. So it continued to spit out white spider silk. The white cocoon-like thing is getting tighter and tighter. In fact, in normal times, ghost hunting spiders don't have such patience. They will eat their prey directly after tying it with spider silk. But occasionally they will completely wrap the prey with spider silk and save it until the next time. Come and enjoy again. From what Wolong has seen so far, the current situation should belong to the latter. Ah, Mr. Cat, what is that thing on the cliff? As soon as she came over and saw such a situation, Catherine screamed. Oh, um... It's ghost hunting spider meow. Wen Long replied calmly, as if he was explaining a very common thing. Then what is that white thing on the side? It seems to be moving, and there are sounds inside. Catherine asked again. I don't know about that one. It might be a human, an animal, or something else. That's why I wanted to get it down and have a look. Meow. When he said this, Wen Long didn't notice that Catherine his body trembled. People, after explaining to Catherine, Wen Long said to Hai Tang, Hey, Hai Tang, can you cut off the part of the white spider silk spindle that connects to the cliff? Meow? Wen Long said to Hai Tang, Yes, Hai Tang can do it. Compared to Catherine, Hai Tang was much calmer. Chapter 146 Overcoming Fear 1 While speaking, Hai Tang had already drawn out the arrow and put it on the bowstring. Her movements were very neat, fully demonstrating her rigorously trained skills. Then the arrow shot out. A very ordinary arrow, but extremely accurate. The arrow passed over the spindle-shaped object surrounded by white spider silk, instantly cutting off the silk thread connecting the spindle-shaped object to the cliff. And then, the white spider silk was entangled. The spindle completely lost its support and fell down. Stupid woman! Catch it quickly! Meow! Wen Long shouted. Oh! Okay! After being reminded by Wen Long, Catherine suddenly remembered to catch the white spindle. After all, it fell from such a high place. If it was an ordinary animal, it would be okay. But if it were a human, I'm afraid you might be injured if you fall. So the safest way is to catch it first. So Catherine took a step forward, right under the white spider silk cocoon, stretched out her hands, and easily picked up the fallen white spider silk cocoon. At the same time that Catherine caught the white spider silk cocoon, when Long also rushed over, then drew out his two knives, and made a circle on the spider silk spindle. In an instant, like a sharp knife cutting through the tangled mess, the entire white spindle spider the silk cocoon completely fell apart. The white spider silk cocoon spread out, revealing a black thing inside. Because of the darkness of the night, everyone couldn't see clearly at first. But soon, when the black thing slowly unfolded, at that time, people discovered that the one wrapped in the white spider silk cocoon turned out to be a black elu cat. This elu cat was probably still in a semi-comatose state due to lack of oxygen. Although its body was still moving, its consciousness didn't seem to be fully awake. Black Elu Cat? Wen Long was stunned for a moment, then frowned. Obviously, Wen Long didn't have a good impression of his own kind. Mr. Cat, it's an Elu Cat. It's actually an Elu Cat. It's so cute. Catherine said in surprise while hugging the Black Elu Cat tightly. Hey, woman, I think it would be better for you to stay away from that Elu Cat. Meow, Wen Long said. Hey, why? while Catherine was expressing her doubts. A cold wind suddenly hit her head. This made Catherine's heart tighten, and her body reacted instinctively and hid to the side. Bang! And just as Catherine dodged, a huge spider hit the ground, 
making a hole in the ground. Catherine looked back and saw that what fell was the huge spider that had been hanging on the cliff before. The ghost hunter spider, with its gray and spiky carapace and the eye-like patterns printed on its carapace, was staring at Catherine. In an instant, Catherine took several steps back. Mr. Cat, this thing seems to be very powerful, Catherine said with some lingering fear. It's not powerful at all. It's on the same level as the big strange bird. At most, it just looks a little scary. Meow. But, what but? Meow? Mr. Cat, Catherine said a little embarrassed. I have been a little afraid of spiders since I was a child. Oh, that's great. When Long showed a look of gloating. Then I'll leave this ghost hunting spider to you. Woman. Oh, by the way, little girl Hightang. You don't want to help, meow. But Mr. Cat. Sister Catherine. Hightang looked at Catherine with some sympathy. When Long added, It doesn't matter. This is a trial. A trial. If you want to be a qualified hunter, how can you not overcome the fear in your heart? Don't you think so? Little girl? Meow. That's it. Mr. Cat. What you said is exactly what you said. Haitang's father also said something similar back then. Haitang also said thoughtfully, with an expression of approval on Wenlong's face. But Sister Catherine, what's in your hand? Leave that black yellow cat to Haitang. Please let go and fight the monster. And try to overcome the fear in your heart. At this time, only Catherine looked desperate. Originally, after when Long refused to help, Catherine turned to Hai Tang for help. But she didn't expect that Hai Tang would no longer be able to rely on her. But at this time, Catherine could no longer think too much. The huge ghost hunting spider had already rushed towards Catherine. This seems to be a matter of course. After all, when the white spider silk cocoon was shot down at the beginning, Catherine was the first to catch the spider silk cocoon with her hands. Therefore, in the eyes of the ghost hunting spider, Catherine was the one who wanted to rob its food. Enemy. However, Catherine seemed to lose the ability to react when the ghost hunting spider rushed over. Seeing the ghost hunting spider rushing over, she still stood there blankly. Even Hightang took the black yellow cat away from her hands. Catherine didn't even know. Spiders are so disgusting. If I saw a spider when I was a kid, my brother would kill it for me. Catherine was still immersed in the fear of spiders. The ghost hunting spider had already rushed to Catherine's eyes and waved its two front paws towards Catherine. Crack! Catherine was hit on the shoulder. And then the huge impact caused her whole body to flip to the ground. And then rolled on the ground several times. Looking quite embarrassed. But luckily, because Catherine is wearing a Sariman suit. And this Sariman suit has been carefully crafted by Master Luo's superb skills. Its armor level has reached level 19. The defense level of this level of armor is only the attack of the level 10 ghost hunter spider is nothing to worry about. So it seemed that Catherine had suffered a lot of damage when she was knocked to the ground. But in fact this was not the case. When the ghost hunter spider attacked Catherine, most of the damage had been absorbed by the armor. However, this blow still made Catherine sober. Catherine struggled to get up from the ground, and then pulled out the sword on her back. No, it's just a spider. There's nothing to be afraid of. Catherine said, as if talking to herself. Although Catherine said this, when Long on the side could still see that Catherine was actually just emboldening herself. In fact, she was still in a state of chaos, and the big sword in her hand did not give people a sense of deterrence at all. Seeing that the attack failed, the ghost hunter spider launched a new attack this time. This time, the ghost hunter spider changed its attack method and instead spewed out a large amount of white spider silk, which immediately wrapped around Catherine like a living rope. Chapter 147 Overcoming Fear 2 Catherine hurriedly tried to use the big sword in her hand to resist the attack of the ghost hunter spider, but she forgot that it was not an ordinary attack, but a tough, soft and bendable spider silk. As a result, the big sword not only failed to block the spider silk, instead, part of the spider silk wrapped around Catherine's wrist, and another part wrapped around Catherine's body like a rice dumpling. It can be said that the current situation is already very bad for Catherine. Although the ghost hunter spider is only a monster on the same level as the big monster bird, based on pure strength, Catherine should be able to cope with it. But because from the beginning to now Catherine is in fear of this big spider, so Catherine fell into passivity from the beginning. That's not possible at all. You're trapped so quickly. Meow. Seeing Catherine's fussy look, even when Long couldn't help but shook his head. In fact, when Long also knows that for most people, almost everyone has something they are afraid of and these things are often diverse and different. For example, 
some people don't feel scared at all when they go to the cemetery at night. But they will feel scared when they see dense ants crawling on the ground. Some people are not afraid of dangerous creatures such as centipedes, spiders, and poisonous snakes. But their scalps will go numb when they see frogs in the pond. These things vary from person to person. Many things that may seem normal to ordinary people may seem normal to some people. An existence that I would rather avoid. So Wen Long knew very well that in normal times, Catherine's performance should not be so bad. But judging from the current situation, Catherine still failed to overcome her fear of spiders. But even so, Wen Long didn't mean to blame Catherine. Rather, Wen Long was glad that this problem was discovered early. After all, the ghost hunter spider is relatively weak. If he encounters a stronger horror hunter spider, that might not even give Catherine a chance to adapt. Looking at the battle situation at this time, Catherine's body has been entangled with the spider silk several times. But even so, the ghost spider still can't do anything to Catherine. If the person who had just been entangled by the spider silk was an ordinary person, then it was almost foreseeable that that person would be hopeless. This is because the ghost hunting spider silk is famous for its toughness. Even a thread as thin as a hair can easily lift an object weighing a ton. Not to mention that the one wrapped around Catherine's body is as long as one ton. The thick one is so thin that it would be impossible for an ordinary person to break free. And in the end, they would have to be slaughtered by the ghost hunter spider. But Kaiser was different. Even though Catherine was in chaos because of the terrifying appearance of the ghost hunter spider, the strange power of her body was still clearly there. So although Catherine was entangled in finger-thick spider silk, after Catherine struggled several times, all the spider threads were broken. Ah! It's so disgusting that these white, sticky spider threads are wrapped around my body. Even if Catherine had broken the spider thread wrapped around her body, Catherine could not stop the tiny mucus on the spider thread. It was the mucus that allowed the spider thread to still wrap around Catherine's body after it was broken, making Catherine's whole body irritated. A feeling of disgust arises. So Catherine began to clean up the spider silk on her body again. Cleaning off the spider silk stuck to her body bit by bit but she completely forgot that the ghost hunter spider started to launch a third round of attacks, probably seeing that the previous claw attacks and spider silk had no effect on Catherine. This time the giant ghost hunting spider began to use its most terrifying move. The ghost hunter spider first spun out new spider silk and wrapped it around the cliffs on both sides of the mountain road. Then it began to shrink the spider silk and hung its body in midair. Then the ghost hunter spider suddenly stretched its spider silk, and its whole body was like a swing swinging over in the same way. The target was naturally Catherine, who was standing on the ground just cleaning the spider silk on her body. Because when the ghost hunter spider lifts its body, the body is pulled very high. In addition, as a carapace species carrying a thick carapace, the ghost hunter spider weighs several tons, so it is hit from a high place like a swing. It can produce high speed and very large kinetic energy. Considering this, coupled with the sharp corners on the ghost hunter spider's carapace, which can produce great destructive power when impacting. Wen Long also became a little worried. Stupid woman. You are still cleaning up some spider webs at this time. Get away quickly. Meow. Ah. Uh. Okay. Okay. After being reminded by Wen Long, Catherine remembered to avoid the attack of the ghost hunter spider. In panic, she rolled over and escaped without being hit. However, the sharp horns protruding from the ghost hunter spider's carapace were larger than Catherine imagined. It was still longer, and even though it escaped the impact, the sharp angle still scraped across Catherine's body, leaving a trail of blood on Catherine's body, even though it was just a small wound. Wen Long couldn't stand it anymore. No matter how good the armor is, it can't withstand such torture. Meow. So Wen Long glanced at Hai Tang beside him, and then said as if chatting, Hey, little girl, have you ever eaten a ghost hunting spider? Meow. Huh? Eat? Hai Tang was stunned for a moment not knowing what Wulong was asking. But after noticing Wulong winking at her, the smart Hai Tang immediately understood. Ah! Hai Tang has eaten it! Yeah! It tastes pretty good! Meow! Wulong deliberately raised his voice. How should I describe the taste? It's a bit strange, but it's still delicious. I don't think it's strange at all. Look! This ghost hunting spider belongs to the crustacean species. And monsters, like shield crabs and sickle crabs, also belong to the crustacean species. Little girl, don't you think their meat is is the taste actually very close? Meow? The meat of the shield crab and sickle crab that Wen Long mentioned are both famous and delicious ingredients in this world. And they are famous for their delicious taste. Ah! Yes! 
because Haitang has never eaten the meat of shield crab and sickle crab. I don't know, but it is indeed very delicious. Haitang continued. At this point, Catherine also noticed the conversation between the two. Although she still felt that the ghost hunting spider looked really scary, she somehow started to imagine the scene of peeling off the ghost hunting spider's carapace and eating the meat inside. At this time, the ghost hunting spider hanging in the air collided with her again. This time, Catherine had no time to dodge and could only defend herself with her big sword in a hurry. However, her center of gravity was unstable due to her lack of movement and she staggered. After taking a few steps back, he was almost knocked to the ground. But even so, Catherine still couldn't forget to look back and ask, Mr. Cat, is this food really delicious? Chapter 148 Overcoming Fear 3 Of course it's delicious. It tastes great. Meow, Wenlong said, looking at Haitang again. Sister Catherine, Haitang also thinks it's delicious. Haitang also said, But this thing is so scary. Catherine still couldn't accept it. What's wrong with the scary appearance? There are so many things in this world that look scary but taste delicious. When we describe a person's courage, we call him the first person to eat crabs. This statement shows that even if it is something as delicious as crab, people did not dare to eat it at first. Meow! Hey, it's really like this. Catherine was doubtful. It's a pity that you are afraid of spiders, so you can't eat this food. When Long shook his head regretfully. But it doesn't matter. I will eat your portion when the time comes. Meow! Mr. Wu Mao, you bullied me again. How can you even give me my share? When Wen Long said this, Catherine almost cried. It's not that I don't allow you to eat this time. It's because you can't eat it yourself. Uncle Rome, let me think about it first. Will it be fried in oil? Or steamed? Meow? Hai Tang thinks steaming would be better. Hai Tang raised her hands to express her approval of steaming. Hai Tang raised her hands to express her opinion. Really? I like to fry it in oil and then sprinkle some minced garlic on it. TSK TSK. Wen Long touched his beard to make a meaningful aftertaste gesture. After hearing the conversation between Wen Long and Hai Tang, Catherine's mind was immediately attracted. Although she is still hunting, Catherine feels that her fear of ghost hunting spiders seems to be decreasing. Is this really delicious? Catherine thought to herself. Which one is better? Steamed or fried in oil? It seems that steaming is better. Although fried in oil is also delicious. Eating too much can easily lead to acne on the face. Ah. Ah. Why did I think that thing was delicious all of a sudden? It is obviously such a terrible thing. After thinking about it for a while, Catherine felt that her mood seemed to relax a lot. Looking at the scary ghost hunting spider again, it seemed that it was not as scary as before. So Catherine took a deep breath and then calmed down a little. Steam or fry? That's the question. At this time, the ghost hunting spider used the spider silk to swing over again because the previous attacks failed to cause significant damage to Catherine. The ghost hunting spider was really angry this time. The ghost hunter spider wanted to get rid of the troublesome woman in front of it as soon as possible. So it used all its strength, which accelerated its body's metabolism, caused blood to flow to all parts of the body more quickly, and also allowed it to carry the carapace on its back. The pattern on the pair of blue eyes gradually turned into a more terrifying blood red. It seems that this is the last blow of the ghost hunter spider with all its strength. Even when Long felt the momentum of the ghost hunter spider, and couldn't help but become nervous. If the stupid woman is still in the same sleepwalking state this time, then even if you have high-level armor, you can't just sustain a slight injury and be fine. Meow. On the other hand, although Catherine still looked a little nervous, the fear seemed to have disappeared just now. But Catherine still lowered her head, as if she was thinking about something. It's so hard to choose between steaming or frying. Steaming or frying. Steaming or frying. The body of the ghost hunter spider has once again risen to the height of the cliff. In fact, if compared with the previous situation, people will easily find that this time the ghost hunter spider is in a higher position than any previous time. Obviously this is to obtain more gravitational potential energy. And it is also the impact speed of the ghost hunter spider to reach an astonishing limit in order to make it fall. Then the ghost hunting spider swung down again like a swing. This time faster than any time before. And not just a little faster but a lot faster. So fast that it even exceeded Wenlong's expectations. This proves that the ghost hunting spider not only relies on the gravitational potential energy of falling from high speed, but also uses the power of its own limbs to kick off the cliff with all its strength at the moment of falling, allowing itself to gain faster speed. Finally, at the same moment, 
Catherine bit her lip as if she had made up her mind, and then raised the sword in her hand again. Mr. Cat, I have decided, Catherine suddenly shouted loudly. It was like suddenly making an important decision in life. Huh? Wenlong was stunned for a moment, completely unaware of what decision Catherine had made. Wenlong wanted to ask something, but he couldn't say it, because at this moment, the ghost hunting spider, which was already in a state of anger and exerted all its strength, had approached Catherine at a very high speed. Similarly, Catherine did not have time to explain too much. In order to face the full attack of the ghost hunter spider, which was already close at hand, Catherine did not even do any defense, but directly chopped down the big sword in her hand. Crack! The horrible fong great sword made of the material of the salmon beast instantly cut open the sh. L of the ghost hunter spider. And then the terrifying looking ghost hunter spider was completely split in half from the middle by Catherine. Originally, crustacean monsters like the ghost hunting spider have relatively strong resistance to slashing attacks because their bodies are covered with carapace. In many cases, even slashing type weapons of the same level will be damaged by the hard sh. L. Bounce away, causing the effect of flicking a knife. Therefore, under normal circumstances, it is simply an impossible task to cut the ghost hunter spider in half from the middle with one sword. However, the level of Catherine's Terrafong sword is too high compared to the ghost hunter spider. It is high enough to ignore the crustacean's defensive advantage in slashing. In addition, Catherine herself is much stronger than ordinary people, and that the extremely high relative speed caused by the ghost hunting spider hitting it at its extreme speed undoubtedly increased the power of Catherine's sword. In this case, it is not surprising that he was split in two by a sword. The two parts that were divided into two parts passed through both sides of Catherine's body and then fell to the ground. Due to inertia, they rolled a long distance on the ground before finally stopping. Even the crustacean ghost hunting spider was cut in half, and even the charged attack was useless. It seems that the fear of spiders has been cured. Naya! Seeing that the ghost hunting spider had been hunted, Wenlong felt relieved. Before this, Wenlong was a little worried that Catherine would lose her grasp of the timing due to nervousness and get injured. Now it seems that all this is too much. Considered. Oh! By the way, at this time, Wenlong remembered what Catherine had not finished saying before. So he asked, Woman, you just said you decided. What exactly did you decide? Meow? Ah, that? Catherine raised her hand and pointed at the ghost hunting spider that had been split in half. I decided to steam half and fry half in oil, so that both flavors can be enjoyed. Did you eat it? Chapter 149 Black and White Cats Are Not Good Cats 1. Snapped. One long jumped up and knocked Catherine on the head. Eat, eat, eat. You know how to eat. When it comes to eating, you stupid woman really dares to eat anything. Meow. Hey, isn't that what you said? Mr. Cat? Catherine looked aggrieved. If I don't fool you, can you kill this ghost hunting spider? Meow. Well, that's true. Catherine smiled sheepishly. At this time, the black elu cat that had been lying in Haitung's arms moved again. Ah, Mr. Cat, this Elecat seems to have woken up, Tang said. Put him down on the ground and let him wake up on his own. Meow. Understood. So Tang laid the black Elu Cat flat on the ground. After a while, the Elu Cat slowly opened its eyes. Did you save me here? Meow? Well, of course we saved you. Otherwise you would have been eaten by the ghost hunter spider. Meow. As he said that, Wenlong also pointed at the ghost hunter spider that had been cut in half on the ground. So it's really like this. Now that I think about it, it really feels like a nightmare. Everyone, thank you so much. Meow! The black yellow cat stood up. Judging from his agile movements, it seems that there is nothing serious about the body. No need to thank us, Wolong continued. We don't need your thanks. But I just want to ask you, who are you? How did you get caught by the ghost hunter spider here? Meow? Oh, that's it. It's like this. The black elu cat cleared its throat and said, The younger one's name is Heishan. And he is the king of the black elu cat tribe in the nearby Sifeng Valley. The tribe has been affected recently. The attack from the nearby white cat tribe caused heavy losses. So I came to the village to ask for help. Unexpectedly, my request for help was unsuccessful. But I was caught and tied up by the ghost hunting spider here. Thanks to all the benefactors. The little one was able to escape. Meow. White cat. How did you come into conflict with the white cat tribe? Meow? 
when Long continued to ask. It was the White Cat tribe who attacked us first. I don't know the specific reason. In short, they attacked first and we were forced to fight back. Meow. Heishan shook his head helplessly. Oh, is it really like this? Meow? Wen Long looked a little unconvinced. Of course it's true. How could you lie to your benefactor? Meow. Heishan's watery eyes widened, showing a pitiful look. Mr. Cat, let's help him too. Look how pitiful he is. Catherine on the side also said, Don't be stupid. When Long said to Catherine calmly, Hunters should not get involved in the conflict between Elu cats. Otherwise they may not be able to help anything. But will create more chaos. Meow. That's true. Aishan also nodded and said, Although it's too late for me to be grateful to all my benefactors, and I will definitely not have any prejudice. There are still many Elcats in our tribe who don't like humans. So if humans intervened in this matter, it would probably only cause more trouble. So my goal this time is to go to the village to find fellow Elcats to help. Naya! Hey! That's it! I thought all Elcats could live in harmony with humans. Catherine looked a little disappointed when she heard that she couldn't participate. So if possible, I still hope that this benefactor can help me. What Wolong didn't expect was that Montenegro turned his pleading eyes to him again. Judging from the equipment on your benefactor, he must be a master among our Elcat clan. And if we can get your help, then we will definitely be able to defeat those hateful white cats. Meow. Help you? Why should I help you? Meow? Wolong asked. My benefactor, this is a war that affects the life and death of our black cat clan. If you can help us win, there will be no problem in giving up the position of leader of our black cat clan to you in the future. Meow. Oh, but I'm not a black cat. Meow. Wen Long said again. That's no problem. Regardless of whether it's a black cat or a white cat, they are all L cats. It's better to let a hero like you lead our tribe than to let those white cats show off their power. Meow. Oh, that's it. But I'm sorry. I'm not interested in participating in your fight. You can find someone else. Meow. As soon as Heishan finished speaking, Wen Long quickly refused. In fact, this is because Wen Long already has the answer in his heart. This answer had been determined from the beginning of the conversation between Wen Long and Heishan. Just to get more information, he asked a few more times. Years of hunting experience have taught Wen Long that black cats and white cats are not good cats. Whether in the Monster Hunter game or in the current Monster Hunter world. Let's talk about these black cats first. If Wen Long had to use one word to describe their bad qualities, it would be thieves. On the surface, thieves do not seem to be particularly evil beings. But to Wen Long and most hunters, the actions of the black Ella cat who appears as a thief are simply heinous. These black Ella cats have a special weapon. The front end of the weapon is something similar to a cat's claw. And the back is connected with a wooden stick. It looks a bit like a small cat claw rake. On the surface, this weapon does not seem to have any offensive power. And even from the shape, the shape of the cat's claws looks quite cute. But once it is hit by such a weapon, a very terrible thing will happen. That means one of the props in your bag will be stolen. This small size cat claw rake scratches you once. And you will have one less item in your pocket. If it scratches you again, you will have one less item in your pocket. If it keeps scratching you, it will even steal the items in your pocket. All naked. Therefore, in the long hunting era, countless hunters went to fight against powerful monsters after being fully prepared. As a result, during the battle with the monsters, these black cats sneaked up from behind and had their carefully crafted equipment stolen. As a result, the preparations made in the previous few months fell short, and they finally had to choose to retreat. Even Wen Long himself had experienced such pain in the game. At that time, Wen Long, who was not wary enough about the Black Ella Cats, had prepared a set of traps to capture a certain high-ranking cat, level monster. But when Wolong beat the monster to death and was about to capture it with a trap, he found that the trap in the bag had been stolen by those black elu cats. The mission at that time was to capture a living monster for a biologist. The trap was lost and it was impossible to capture it alive, which directly led to the failure of Wolong's mission. Therefore, until now, Wolong has no good impression of these black elu cats and naturally he is not willing to help them. Chapter 150 Neither black nor white cats are good cats too. Besides, black cats are like this, and those white cats are no better. If black cats are thieves, then those white cats can simply be called terrorists. Among the Elcat clan, unlike the black cats whose weapons are small cat claw rakes, 
The weapons of the white cats are richer. There are generally two types of weapons of the white cat tribe. One is a pickaxe-like melee weapon made by tying the teeth of large beasts to a wooden stick. Although this weapon cannot steal things, it is more lethal than a cat's claw rake. The other one is filled with various explosives in wooden barrels. When it explodes, its lethality cannot be underestimated. Although under normal circumstances, as long as you don't mess with these white cats, there won't be any big problems. But once you mess with them, they will attack in groups. Not only will these white cats throw the barrel bombs they carry on their backs, some of the radicals will even rush towards you directly with those barrel bombs in their arms. Quite a bit like death. Of course, a barrel bomb with the size of a white cat is difficult to kill. But it is enough to make most hunters drink a pot. Especially in the process of hunting. When you are fighting a powerful monster, if you are suddenly hit by a barrel bomb of a white cat sneaking up from behind, and you fall down at a loss, it is very likely that you will be killed directly killed by monsters. Because of this, Wolong had already formed the idea in his mind that, no matter black or white cats, they are not good cats. So Wolong decided from the beginning that it would be best to let both sides suffer without helping them. Idea. After all, as long as the war between black cats and white cats continues, they will inevitably have no energy to cause trouble to the hunters. Of course, what Wolong wants to point out here is that the white cats mentioned here are different from the previous one which was all white and looked more like an ornamental pet. Although the white fur is snow white, the white color is more like the result of the mutation of albinism. It is extremely rare and has no population characteristics, so it is not considered a member of the white elecat family. As for those white cats who dare to rush towards the enemy with barrel bombs, their hair is not actually pure white, but a color closer to a light beige, which is different from that of ordinary elecats. Their personalities are also more violent and aggressive, but because their coat color is close to white, they are collectively called white cats. Yes. Yes. That's a pity. Meow. Because he was rejected by Wolong. Heishan looked a little disappointed. And said, Young man can also understand the difficulty of the benefactor. But it doesn't matter. The benefactor can save the little one. It is already a huge favor. I don't dare to expect too much. I just hope to follow all the benefactors to Milad village. There. I will recruit some friends, who are also members of the Elcat clan. Help us black cats. Meow. Well, then, just follow us to the village. We are going anyway. But no matter how many things happen, we won't help. Meow. Wenlong said. Okay. Thank you, benefactor. When this matter is over, I will definitely thank you again in the future. Meow. Oh, by the way, you are not allowed to steal anything from everyone here including the things in the caravan. Otherwise I will make you look good. Meow. Wen Long couldn't help but add. I understand. I will definitely not do this. How can I dare to steal things from my benefactor and my benefactor's friends? Meow. Heishan also replied quickly, with a pious look on his face. So that night, Heishan followed Wen Long and others to rest in the caravan camp until early the next morning. When I woke up in the morning, the atmosphere in the entire caravan seemed quite relaxed and happy. After all, there were still a few hours to return to Milad village. At that time, the business trip could be declared to be a perfect end. Unlike most humans who are in a relaxed mood, the first thing Wenlong did when he got up in the morning was to put his hand into his pocket and touch the celery he had put in his pocket before. This with polygonum is the favorite of Elucats. This is especially true for the black cats, who also belong to the Elucats. One long remembers that when he was hunting, in order to prevent the important props on his body from being stolen by the black cats, go. One of the ways is to bring some Mutian polygonum with you, so that when the black cats steal things, they will first target Mutian polygonum. It can be said that this is the nature of Elcats, especially the black cats. No matter how precious things are, they are not as important as Mutianly in their eyes. And whether you put it in your bag, pocket, or anywhere else, they can smell it and look for it and steal it. So if he wanted to know whether the black yellow cat named Black Mountain was committing theft last night, Wen Long only needed to check the number of Mutian polygonum in his pocket. If the number of mutant polygonum has not decreased, then it can be certain that Montenegro abided by the agreement last night and did not steal anything. As a result, Wen Long counted the number of Mutian polygonum in his pocket and found that it had not decreased. However, Wen Long was still a little worried so he counted it again. After confirming that it had not decreased, Wen Long felt relieved. 
It seems that this Elucat named Black Mountain actually keeps his promise. Meow. When Long thought this way. After that, the caravan set off as usual. The journey was uneventful, and no danger was encountered. A few hours later, at noon, the caravan led by Mr. Hessen finally returned to Milad Village. However, what surprised Wen Long and Catherine was that when they returned to Milad Village this time, the caravan had just arrived at the entrance of the village. Wen Long saw a group of villagers coming to greet them. It felt like they were welcoming the return of victory. Like a hero. What's going on? How can I be welcomed as a hero just after coming back from Midge Bolton? Meow? At first, Wen Long couldn't understand this situation. But soon he understood. After all, Major Bolton is a big city. Even if there are no products from Milad Village, Major Bolton can still mobilize them from other villages. But Milad Village is different. Without the various exquisite commodities flowing from Midge Bolton, the small Milad Village has no way to obtain the same things. This time, the trade route from Major Bolton to Milad Village has been closed for too long. Many of the goods from big cities that the villagers need have not been supplied. Now it is difficult to wait for the caravan to come back. For those who have been this is great news for the villagers who want Major Bolton's goods. So it is natural for them to come out early to greet them. Chapter 151 Big Sale Then, dear benefactors, I will take my leave here. If we meet again by chance in the future, I will definitely express my gratitude. Meow. After entering Milad Village, Black Cat Haishan also said goodbye to Wen Long and others as agreed, and then left the team. After seeing off Haishan, Wen Long was relieved. After all, even a hunter of Wen Long's level lived with the leader of a thieves group every day and had to worry about whether the other party would steal things at any time. Can't relax? Okay, let's start selling goods now. Meow, Wen Long said. According to the previous agreement between Wen Long and Mr. Hessen, as long as Wen Long can help Mr. Hessen open up the trade route between Major Bolton and Milad Village, then Wen Long will be fully responsible for the Basie Chamber of Commerce's trade in Milad Village. This means that after the caravan successfully arrives at Milad Village, all the goods of the caravan will be transferred to Wen Long at a lower profit, and will be sold by Wen Long, and Old Man Heezen will no longer interfere. In addition, the same is true for the purchase of goods. All goods shipped from Milad Village to Major Bolton will be purchased by Wen Long and then transferred to Mr. Hessen, and Wen Long has the right to earn an intermediary fee from this. Fee. So Wen Long, Catherine and Hai Tang unloaded these goods from the herbivorous dragons back directly at the village market without having to hawk them. The crowd around them had already poured in like a tide. Did you see this? The coat made of the fur of the snow-capped mountain creature Bobo has much better thermal insulation properties than the coat made of the fur of the big wild boar. Meow! I want I want! This is mine! I came here first. As soon as Wen Long took out the coat made of Bobo's fur, it was sold out by the villagers. This is dried fish made from large tuna that can only be found on the seaside. It is delicious and has few spines. Catherine was also promoting it hard. Oh, big tuna. Our family likes to eat this. We haven't eaten it in a long time. Give me two, a village woman said. Although it seems a bit expensive, please give me two. Otherwise, I don't know when I will be able to eat them next time. Big tuna. How much is left? We have bought it all at the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel. We haven't had food from outside for a long time. So we can make some unique specialties to attract customers. Even the owner of the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel Coral also came to buy the goods. Unlike Wen Long and Catherine, the younger Hai Tang simply took out a beautiful hair accessory and put it on her head. This kind of hair accessory with peculiar patterns and luster and oriental style, combined with Hai Tong's delicate and well-behaved face quickly attracted the attention of some young women. Hey, little girl, what are your hair accessories made of? This is a hair accessory made of tortoise SH. LSH. L, which is taken from the SH. L of a marine turtle called tortoise SH. L, this special style is made by craftsmen from Jian Village in the Far East. Speaking of these hair accessories, Hai Tang actually spoke eloquently. Tortoise SH, L armor. I've never heard of it. But it's really beautiful. After several young women selected for a while, they bought these hair accessories made of tortoise sesh, L armor without hesitation. Of course, in addition to these commodities that ordinary villagers need, Wolong also specially equipped the hunters in Milad village with some necessary hunting props. For example, there are traps, ghost medicine, and hardening medicine that are not available in Milad village. The largest number of them are the recovery medicine 
that hunters consume the most when hunting. For this reason, when Long deliberately reduced the number of other products and deliberately increased the number of recovery medicines. When selling, the price of these recovery medicines was only sold at a very low profit. That is, each bottle was only sold for 10 pieces. Silver. Wen Long did this for two reasons. On the one hand, using certain special offers to increase sales is also a sales strategy for merchants. For example, many restaurants will launch some special dishes with almost no profit to attract customers and use wine, drinks or other food to go with it to make profits. For Wen Long, cheap recovery medicine functions as a special offer. It can be said that although the recovery medicine is cheap, the prices of the ghost medicine, hardening medicine, and force-moving medicine that go with it are not cheap at all. While hunters are buying recovery medicines, selling these high-priced medicines is also an important way for Wen Long to make profits. The second consideration is naturally to deliberately discuss Levi and by Mao. Wen Long had obtained intelligence at the beginning and knew that the operating funds of Levi's storm hunting group mainly came from the recovery medicine formula mastered by Levi. During the period when the caravan's upper trade route to Midge Bolton was blocked, Levi relied on the formula he mastered to become the exclusive seller of recovery medicine in Milad village and earned a lot of money. After that, although Wen Long sold a small amount of some more effective recovery medicine G, it was only a short-term behavior after all, and the quantity was not large, so it could not have a significant impact on the entire market. But it's different now. This time the caravan came back from Mitch Bolton, bringing a large amount of cheap recovery medicine. In addition, Wen Long sold it at very low profits so naturally it would be available soon. Completely drive Levi's recovery medicine out of the market. Of course, the hunters were still a little worried at first. After all, Levi's recovery medicine costs 100 silver coins a bottle. But when Long's recovery medicine here only sells for 10 silver coins a bottle, the gap is really huge. Too obvious. Why are the recovery medicines here so cheap? They can't be fake. Right? Someone asked. Don't worry. Our recovery medicine is purchased from the regular pharmaceutical factory in Major Bolton. The reason why it is so cheap is entirely because their pharmaceutical factory operates on a large scale. The production volume is large enough. And the amortized cost is low. So it can make small profits but quick turnover. Meow. Wen Long explained to those who didn't believe it. But Wen Long soon discovered that there was no need to explain anything. Because although some people were suspicious. There were still some people who bought some of this cheap recovery medicine out of trust in Wen Long and Catherine, who solved the Xinglong investigation incident. Soon, the first batch of hunters who purchased the recovery medicine used their personal experiences to tell others that the recovery medicine here was indeed cheap and easy to use. No longer do you need to go to Levi's to buy those expensive recovery medicines. So more people began to flock to Wen Long's side. They rushed to buy Wen Long's bottle of recovery medicine for only 10 silver coins. While Levi's side, which also sold recovery medicine, became uninterested. Chapter 152 Calculation Step by Step Levi, who was resting in the manor, had never been so depressed before. Because Levi had just learned that the Elu cat named Wen Long had brought a large amount of cheap recovery medicine after returning from Mitch Bolton. And then no one came to the recovery medicine business run by his hunting group. That dead cat. It was really a mistake not to kill him. Levi cursed and paced back and forth. Master, Calm down. One long and that woman named Catherine can't hurt our bones even if they do this. It was by now who was at his side to persuade Levi. Some time ago, the trade route from Milad village to Major Bolton was blocked, which caused us to have a backlog of a lot of monster materials that were not sold. Now the caravan led by Uncle Hessen has returned. Although the price of the recovery medicine is therefore, the price of recovery medicine has plummeted. But we can sell all the materials we have accumulated before to Mr. Hessen. Not only can we sell it, but we can also sell it at a good price. In comparison, the price of recovery medicine has plummeted, and the little money we have lost is only its nothing. Meow. Oh, yes, I have hunted so many big strange birds, beaver beasts, and big wild boar kings before. If I take out their materials and sell them to that old man Hessen, I can indeed make a lot of money. Levi, he looked like he suddenly understood, and then said to buy Mao. Then why are you still standing there? Why don't you hurry up and take action? Don't worry. Master, I've already sent someone to take care of it. Meow. Bai Mao said proudly. At this moment, there was a rush of footsteps outside the door. And a hunter from the storm hunting group walked in. Boss. Boss. 
something bad is going to happen. What? Levi asked. We just went to see Mr. Hessen and planned to sell the materials in the warehouse that our hunting group had before. As a result, they said they would not accept our materials. They also said that the Basie Chamber of Commerce's business in Milan Village is now closed. It has been transferred to. Given. The hunter who rushed and hurriedly hesitated in the middle of the sentence. Tell me, who did you transfer it to? We transferred it to Wen Long, the yellow cat who had a grudge against us before. From now on, whatever we want to sell can only be sold to him, and he will be responsible for the acquisition in Milad Village. Asshole. Levi was so angry that he kicked the hunter who came to report the news to the ground. Then he turned around and grabbed by Mao's neck and lifted by Mao up. This is all your good idea. What now? Master, I'm sorry. I didn't expect that when Long could convince Basie Chamber of Commerce to hand over all the business of Milad Village to him. This is really incredible. Meow. By Mao defended himself. You stupid cat. I'm sorry. Master, I'm really sorry. But now we have no other way. The recovery medicine business can no longer make money. And the Basie Chamber of Commerce is no longer willing to accept our materials. But don't we have another trick? Meow. By Mao said with a pleading tone. One more trick. You mean? At this point, Levi's face showed a sinister look. That's it. Master, there are more than 20 people in our storm hunting group. As long as you let me bring everyone with you, I will definitely be able to deal with that guy when long this time. And by the way, I can also help you with that guy. Catch the beautiful woman named Catherine. Meow. Humph. Didn't you fail last time? Levi's tone was full of contempt. Master, that time was different. I admit that I underestimated their strength that time and only brought six people there. So it failed. But this time we find a chance to bring one long and the woman named Catherine together to see them out of the village. Oh, by the way, we will ambush them in the forest when they go to complete the promotion commission next time. More than 20 of us will go out together, using all hunting weapons. We will definitely be able to defeat them. Meow. More than 20 people were dispatched together. And they were still using hunting weapons to deal with the Alucat named Wen Long? Levi thought for a while, but did not dare to easily agree to buy Mao's plan. So he could only say, Although the people in the hunting group are all my subordinates, and they usually obey my orders when hunting, they may not dare to obey my orders if they are asked to do something against humans. After all, this is illegal. Once the news leaks out and is found out by the Hunter Guild, it cannot be covered up easily. Seeing Levi's hesitation, by Mal continued. Master, they might not agree before, but they will definitely agree this time. Meow. Why is this? Because this guy Wen Long has really cut off your financial path this time. Master, you have to know that if he cuts off your financial path, he will also cut off the financial path for our entire storm hunting group. The hunting group has no funds to operate. Everyone. Everyone will be affected. In this case, you are not the only one who is offended. Everyone in our hunting group will have thoughts about him. At this time, we will incite some more and shift all the responsibilities to that one long. And then it will be much easier to encourage everyone to attack one long. Meow. Well, that's a good idea. In this case, we won't be the only ones who want to kill them. So master, please give me this mission. I will definitely be able to complete it this time. Meow. Leave it to you? Huh? Levi sneered and finally said. I will do it myself this time. I will collect the information first. When I am sure they leave the village, I will call everyone to ambush them halfway and kill them. Get rid of it. If I personally take action, I shouldn't need all the people to come together so that the remaining people can still be responsible for the lookout. So that everything can be foolproof. Master is wise. If you take action personally, they won't be able to escape. Meow. Bino also danced and danced in agreement. At this time, Suddenly there were hurried footsteps at the door again. This time it was different from before. There seemed to be a lot of footsteps. Once you heard it, you knew that there was not just one person coming over in a hurry. Sure enough, the door was soon opened again. And this time a full 20 people walked in. It could be said that almost the entire storm hunting group was here at the moment. Huh. I just mentioned them. And they are here. We can take this opportunity to discuss with the brothers in the hunting group. They will definitely agree. Meow. By Mal immediately whispered in Levi's ear. Yeah. Levi nodded. But what surprised Levi was that he, the leader of the storm hunting group, didn't speak. 
and the members who walked and spoke first. Captain, we have something important to report to you this time. The speaker was an old hunter of some age. It was obvious that this time he was chosen as the representative of this group of people to be responsible for fighting with Lai. Wei communicated. What happened? Levi asked. That's it. We have decided to leave the group. From now on, we will no longer belong to the storm hunting group. Chapter 153 The Collapse of the Storm Hunting Group Levi glanced at the people in the hall and found that they all had the same expression on their faces. It could be seen that the so-called withdrawal from the group had been discussed before these people came. Why did you quit the group? Levi forced himself to calm down. Captain, you must have known that all the materials our hunting group hunted this time were refused to be purchased by Mr. Heason of the Basie Chamber of Commerce. He said that if you want to sell the materials now, you have to go to the yellow cat named Wenlong. But the yellow cat named Wenlong didn't accept our things either, which really caused us heavy losses. After all, they were all obtained by hunting hard. If we can't sell them at a good price, then everyone's hard work will be wasted. It's like wasting water. Then what does that have to do with you guys quitting the group? Because the Elkid named Wenlong has already said that he will be the agent for all the Basie Chamber of Commerce's business in Milad Village from now on. And he will never collect anything from the Storm Hunting Group. But if we all withdraw if it's the Storm Hunters, then this problem won't exist. Hearing this, Levi only felt dizzy and took several steps back. Finally, he fell on a chair in the room, avoiding the embarrassing situation of falling to the ground. Then, leader, we'll say goodbye. After saying that, these people began to leave the room one after another, and no one even looked back for a second time when they left. In the living room of this manor, only Levi and by Mal were left. You damn cat. If it weren't for you, how could you be in this situation today? Levi suddenly yelled at by Mal. Owner, no matter how much you argue, it's useless. It's all you. It's all your fault. You trash. The angry Levi vented all his anger on Bai Mao. And he slapped Bai Mao to the ground. He fell to the ground. And then he still felt upset. So he rushed up again and kicked Bai Mao on the body. If I had known better, I shouldn't have trusted you to mess with that Elucat called Wen Long. Now it's better. I'm going to get burned. Bai Mao was kicked in the stomach by Levi. Then rolled out in pain. And finally hit the corner. Get out. Get out. They're all gone. Get out of here too. Levi roared angrily. Okay. Master. This time by Mao didn't defend himself. But struggled to get up. And then staggered out of the hall. When he walked to the door. Bai Mao looked back and said. Master. I will come back. Meow. After saying that. Bai Mao left the manor. After Bai Mao left. Levi felt that his whole body had lost strength. In terms of strength. Levi already knew that he was far inferior to Wenlong and Catherine, who solved the Star Dragon investigation incident and escorted the caravan across the Thundering Sand Sea. Before, he had some hope that he could rely on the storm hunting group in Milad Village. He continued to dominate for a while. But just now, the storm hunting group he had run completely fell apart. Gone! Finally everyone is gone! Levi murmured to himself, then walked to the closet and took out a bottle of good red wine. Levi usually likes to pour a glass of red wine and taste it slowly when he has nothing to do. But this time Levi did not take out the cup, but directly opened the cork on the bottle and then drank from the mouth of the bottle. Get up. Just like this, Levi was drinking alone in his manner. Unknowingly, the sky became darker and darker. Just when Levi was about to go back to the bedroom to take a rest, suddenly, Levi heard a knock on the door. Dong, dong, dong. Dong, dong, dong. Levi, who heard the sound, walked over and opened the door, only to find that it was Bai Mao standing at the door, and Bai Mao seemed to be holding a square box in his hand, and there was a burst of fragrance wafting from it. What? Are you back again? Levi said angrily, but overall his tone was softened compared to before. Master, Master, I came back to see you. I know that you probably haven't eaten all day because you were angry, so I brought you food specially. Meow! Bai Mao stared at Levi with a pair of big innocent eyes, and then said, Huh? Levi sneered. But this time Levi was not laughing at others, but at himself. Everyone has left. But I didn't expect that only an Elu cat like you would be left in the end. It was my fault before. And I was angry. I shouldn't have beaten and scolded you like that. If I really want to talk about this matter myself, I'm also responsible. So I can't blame you entirely. Levi sighed. 
welcomed by Mao into the room, then sat down in front of the table and said, Master, what are you talking about? I, by Mao, am very loyal to you. How could I leave you so easily? The scolding you gave me before was all brought on by me. I cannot blame you. Master, meow. As Bai Mao spoke, he placed the lunch box in his hand on the table and opened it. What was revealed inside was delicious dishes that were not easy to eat at ordinary times. Levi was indeed hungry. After all, he didn't eat lunch or dinner because he was in a bad mood. He just drank some wine, but didn't drink enough to make himself drunk. So he quickly gained an appetite while staring at the food on the table. I didn't expect that you know me well. You know that I am easily impulsive. Levi said this, picked up a piece of tender and juicy venison with a fork, put it into his mouth and chewed it. This is made from the most tender back meat of the elf deer in the Siofeng Valley. After it is grilled and topped with a sweet sauce. It is indeed very delicious. Of course. After all, I have been with you for so many years, Bai Mao said. So, Master, I wonder if this dish is still to your taste. Meow? Well, it's not bad. It tastes good. So Levi ate several bites of venison, and then some vegetable salad, and suddenly felt that his consciousness was a little blurry. This is, endless sleepiness began to hit, and Levi's upper and lower eyelids began to close unconsciously. At the moment when they closed, Levi seemed to see a strange smile appear on the white-haired face. But it was only a moment, and soon Levi still fell into the darkness of unconsciousness under the intrusion of unstoppable sleep. When Levi woke up, it was already the next morning, realizing that something was wrong. The first thing Levi did when he woke up was to immediately reach for his waist, only to find the key that was supposed to be hanging there, already gone. Oops! So Levi immediately ran back to his bedroom. But what Levi saw this time was a mess. The box that was once used to hold gold coins has been opened, and the gold coins inside have disappeared. Not only that, other places in the room have also been searched and clothes and other items have been thrown all over the floor, including the bedroom door and box used to open it. Key. Levi finally understood at this moment. Bye, Mao. You beast. Next time I see you, I will cut you into pieces. Levi's roar resounded throughout the manor. Chapter 154 Review Results Wen Long had long expected the destruction of the storm hunting group, but he did not expect that the storm hunting group would be destroyed so quickly and completely. At the beginning, Wen Long felt that the suppression of the storm hunting group would have to last for at least 10 days and a half to be effective. And although Wen Long also used interests to divide the storm hunting group, Wen Long still believed that a 20 year old there should also be a few core members in a multi person hunting group who will persevere and not be so easily seduced by benefits. But Wen Long's estimate was wrong. It only took one day for the storm hunting group to be destroyed. When Wen Long went over to take a look, he saw a sign for sale hanging on the door of the manor and Levi, the leader of the storm hunting group, and he the white fur of Elicat is missing. It's boring. It's boring. I collapsed like this before I even had time to exert my strength. Meow. Wen Long thought boringly in his heart. However, for Wen Long, the collapse of the storm hunting group is at least a good thing. Without the storm hunting group, the local leader of Milad village, Wen Long will have one less opponent. So Wen Long can safely sell goods his business is temporarily left to Catherine and Hai Tang to take care of, while he can go back to the cave in Seofeng Valley to prepare other things. For example, check the achievements of Big Hui and Xiao Hui during this period, and make new props. If you want to become a top hunter, the reasonable use of various props is also an important part of it. Maybe you can put aside various props in the game and rely purely on your own skills to challenge the limit. But in reality, this it is undoubtedly an extremely stupid thing to do. In real life hunting, Safety is the first factor, and efficiency and success rate must also be taken into consideration secondly. Therefore, if props can be used to ensure the safety of hunters, or to improve the efficiency and success rate of hunting, then Wen Long will have nothing concerned. Moreover, Wen Long also possesses the blending formula of props, which is an important resource that Wen Long does not use in vain. Of course, whenever there is time and opportunity, I will make the most of it. So Wen Long returned to the cave in Xiaofeng Valley. Here, Wen Long asked Dahui and Shao Wei to report on the results of this period. Reporting to the hero, We have been working hard in the fields these days since you left. We have harvested a total of 432 medicinal herbs, 56 seeds of patience, 60 seeds of strange power, 36 dyed fruits, 
and sleep twenty grasses. Fifty-four sticky grasses. Meow, said Big Hui. Well, that's right. It's already amazing that we can achieve such results in just a few days. Meow. When Long first expressed his appreciation to the Hui and Xiao Hui, and then asked, So what are the results of other things? Meow. Reporting to the hero, Xiao Hui said this time, The beehives we cultivated produced eight jars of honey during this period. And what is gratifying is that a new bee colony was born and moved to a new location. In the beehives. So now the original two beehives producing honey have become three beehives producing honey. We will definitely be able to harvest more honey in the future. Meow. Yeah, Wen Long nodded again. The other thing is the cages that Mr. Hero asked us to hang in the woods to attract insects. We check them every day. Over the past few days, we have collected 120 undead insects and 211 bitter insects. 15. Meow. The mushrooms in the mushroom house are also growing quite well. In addition to blue mushrooms, the mushroom house also produced two new mushrooms that we have never seen before. Because I don't know what these mushrooms are used for. I would like to ask you, Mr. Hero, let's check it out. Meow. Oh, a new mushroom I haven't seen before? I want to see it. Meow. With this thought, Wolong agreed to the Hui and Xiao Hui's request and followed them to the edge of the mushroom house. Wolong noticed that in addition to the blue mushrooms, he ordered to grow in order to blend the recovery medicine and recovery medicine G. There were indeed two different kinds of mushrooms. One is a yellow mushroom with black spots and the other is a mushroom with red as the main color, but with white patterns in between. Oh, it turns out they are these two kinds of mushrooms. Meow. With the knowledge accumulated in the game, one long easily recognized the two types of mushrooms. This yellow mushroom with black spots is called a paralysis mushroom, which can paralyze prey, while the red mushroom with white patterns is a nitrifying mushroom, which can burn like gunpowder and even explode. Meow. Thanks to you for being a hero. You can actually know it so clearly. It's beyond our reach. Meow. Da Hui and Xiao Hui were naturally filled with admiration when they heard Wen Long's explanation. Of course, this is just a trivial matter to me. Meow. Wen Long said with a smile. And these two kinds of mushrooms are good things. As long as you know the mixing formula, you can make good props. So this time you made the right choice by leaving the mushrooms I haven't seen before. And you deserve praise. Meow. After saying that, Wenlong took out 20 gold coins from his pocket and gave 10 gold coins to each of Da Hui and Xiao Hui. Not only that, he also took out two polygonum SPP and gave one to each of Da Hui and Xiao Hui. This hero is so generous that he can give out such a generous reward. Meow. Da Hui said in surprise, It's nothing. I happened to make a fortune recently. This little money is nothing. As long as you follow me and work hard, there will be more rewards that are much better than this. Meow. Wen Long said confidently. I understand. Hero. Chao Hui also said. We have been working as rescue cats in the Hunter Guild for such a long time. And we have never received so much reward in total. Hero. You actually gave us so much in one go. So much. It's really admirable. Meow. This big gray and little gray have risked their lives and worked in the Hunter Guild for such a long time without even being given 10 gold coins? How stingy must the Hunter Guild be? No wonder the bonuses from previous missions were so pitifully small. Meow. After hearing Xiao Hui's confession, Wen Long couldn't help but think to himself. So Wen Long said again, Don't worry. The conditions I will give you will definitely be much better than those of the Hunter Guild. Oh. By the way, you can take a day off tomorrow and take the money to have fun in the village. A few female cats are also okay. Meow. Really? Really? Sir Hero? Big Hui! And shall we widen their eyes at the same time? But they still said, This is not good. If we don't take care of it, there will probably be big wild boars and the like. The things used to destroy the crops in the fields. And the honey and the beehives are also what the big strange birds like to eat. What if a big strange bird comes? Meow? Don't worry. I have some things to do these two days. So I will stay here. With me here? Are you still worried that those big wild boars... Big strange birds and the like will come to cause trouble? Meow? Of course you won't be able to do that if you're here. Hirosama. But, okay. No need to say more. You can just go to the village to play. Taking a good rest is also part of the work. This is also so that you can work harder for me in the future. Do you understand? Meow? I understand. 
Lord Hero. Meow. Big Gray and Little Gray nodded happily. Chapter 155 More and More New Props 1. The next day, when Big Hui and Xiao Hui left the cave and went to Milad village for a vacation, Wenlong also began to prepare new props. Needless to say, there is no need to mention the commonly used basic medicines such as recovery medicine G, force removal medicine, ghost medicine, and hardening medicine, with the large amount of materials produced by the farm. It is easy to concoct a considerable number of these props. Not only can its quantity be fully supplied to Wenlong's hunting team, but it is also more than enough to take some of it out of Milad village for sale. Among them, the amount of recovery medicine G is the most abundant. This is because the consumption of recovery medicine G is the largest among the general basic medicines. On the other hand, it is because in Wenlong's original idea, these recovery medicines G also plan to use the cheap recovery medicine to suppress Levi's storm hunting group and plan to sell it at a low price and finally completely block the storm hunting group's recovery medicine business. However, since the storm hunting group no longer exists, these recovery medicines G do not need to be sold at a reduced price. They are still sold at the price of 200 silver coins a bottle. This way, those who have no money can buy them cheaper, but with less effect. Poor recovery medicine. And rich people don't care about the money anyway. Meow. One long believed that although this recovery medicine G was 20 times more expensive than ordinary recovery medicines, considering that the efficacy of the medicine might determine a person's life or death at certain times, there should still be a lot of people willing to spend the money. In this way, even those hunters who are not well-funded will probably buy a bottle of recovery medicine G and keep it in their pockets just in case. In this way, if the injury is not very serious, they usually take general recovery medicine. But if the injury is more serious, they can also take out the more effective recovery medicine G for emergency treatment. Of course, Another more important point is that Wenlong now has a monopoly on the trade between the entire Milad village and Major Bolt Tan. In the absence of competitors, even if the price is a bit high, most people can only choose to accept it. In this way, when Wenlong completed the blending of all the recovery medicine G, the force moving medicine, the ghost medicine, and the hardening medicine, most of the day had passed, which made Wenlong couldn't help but sigh that time passed too fast. I've just mixed all these things, and it's already the afternoon. It seems that next time I have to teach Big Hui and Xiao Hui the basic props mixing and let them do it. Otherwise, I have to do it myself every time. You're a little too tired. Meow. In addition, it is time to recruit some new Ella cats. On the one hand, we need to consider the future development and expansion of the farm. And on the other hand, we also need to consider that we will have to arrange some new tasks for Big Gray and Little Gray in the future such as it said that the blending potion is one of them. But it's really hard to find powerful elk cats like Da Hui and Xiao Hui. Meow. After thinking for a while, Wen Long decided to discuss the matter with Da Hui and Xiao Hui when they came back. After all, with Da Hui and Xiao Hui's experience of working in the Hunter Guild, maybe they could introduce some of their companions to come here to help. So Wen Long put this idea aside for the time being, because Wen Long still had a lot of things to do before Da Hui and Xiao Hui came back, such as using some newly obtained materials to make new props. So even though he had been busy for most of the day, Wen Long did not choose to rest and started to be busy again. The first thing Wen Long took out was a new variety of mushrooms he had just obtained not long ago, paralysis mushrooms. Paralysis mushrooms are mushrooms that contain neurotoxins that can paralyze the user's body for a certain period of time. If mixed with sleep grass that has a hypnotic effect, the effect will be doubled. In this case, even giant dragons it can also make it sleep peacefully. Now, sleeping grass happens to be growing in the farmland. So let's start blending it. Meow. So Wen Long began to crush the paralysis mushrooms and sleep grass at a ratio of 1 to 1 according to the harmony in his mind. And then mixed them to make a prop called narcotic. Of course, this was only the first step for Wen Long to reconcile the props. Because then Wen Long mixed carefully selected round pebbles in size and shape with a herb called sticky grass. And then, he formed another another strange prop. Material Jade. At this time, it was a magical process. The fluffy sticky grass easily absorbed on the smooth surface of the pebbles, turning the pebbles into like a ball of wool covered with hair. And using this yarn ball called Material Jade, Wen Long can easily get some things on monsters and make them unable to remove them for a period of time. For example, this time, narcotics. 
The method is very simple. That is, immerse these furry material jade into the prepared anesthetic. And then the furry part of the material jade is like a greedy sponge, completely inhaling the anesthetic inside. Just leave it like this for a period of time. And when the material jade has completely absorbed the narcotic, the production of a capture anesthetic jade will be completed. Yeah, not bad. Meow. Wolong looked at his work with satisfaction. This time, he made a total of six such narcotic jade for capture and confirmed that each one had perfectly absorbed enough narcotic drugs in it. Wolong then put these prepared capture anesthetic jade into sealed glass bottles in order to prevent the capture anesthetic above from evaporating and ensure that it can still maintain sufficient effectiveness during long-term storage. As for the function of these, narcotic jade for capture. Of course they are used to capture monsters. After all, sometimes, hunters will receive tasks that cannot kill monsters, but can only capture them alive. At this time, it is time to use the capture anesthesia jade. According to Wenlong's knowledge of how to use it, you only need to throw these narcotic jade for capture at the injured monster, and then the adhesive grass with adsorption effect will stick firmly to the monster's body. Even if it is scratched, it's difficult to remove, even if you rub it. Then the anesthetic soaked and it will continue to volatilize and release. So a monster that inhales a large amount of capture anesthetic will fall into a deep lethargy in a short period of time. Well, with these narcotic jade for capture, in the future, we can anesthetize the injured monsters and then capture them alive. And then sell these captured monsters alive to Major Bolton's arena. Not only can we get more money than the Hunter Guild to release tasks of the same level will have 10 times more monetary rewards. And you can also exchange for some rare materials that are usually difficult to obtain. It can be said that you kill two birds with one stone. Meow. Thinking of this, one long smile proudly. Chapter 156 more and more new props too. Of course, since the reward for catching live prey far exceeds the reward for killing the prey, it is naturally not something that can be done easily. In addition to the narcotic jade for capture that one long just completed, there is another thing that is necessary to capture a living monster without fail. And that is a trap. In the world of Monster Hunter, there are two common traps. One is the whole trap. And the other is the paralysis trap. Currently, Wen Long still lacks the materials to make paralysis traps. So what Wen Long wants to make this time is a whole trap. When capturing monsters, traps are important props used to coordinate the capture. Otherwise, if you just use the capture anesthesia jade alone, it is likely to cause some dumbfounding situations. For example, Wen Long did not use a trap when hunting a male fire dragon. Instead, he used a capture anesthetic jade when the male fire dragon was seriously injured. As a result, the male fire dragon forcibly took off at the last moment and flew into the air. At that time, the capture anesthesia jade had its effect, and the male fire dragon fell from midair and fell to death alive. Another time, when Wolong tried to capture the beaver beast, he did not use a trap to restrict the beaver beast's activities. As a result, the beaver beast immediately jumped into the river and diluted the capture anesthesia with the river water. The anesthetic contained in jade naturally escaped the result of being paralyzed. So this time when Long took out the trap mechanism he had purchased in Major Bolton before. This is an extremely sophisticated mechanical device that can be activated instantly once a monster steps in. Previously, when Long took out a small amount and sold it at the market in Milad village. But when Long kept more for his own use. The reason is simple. Because this thing is so useful. In addition to the trap mechanism, making a cave trap requires two other things. One is ivy, and the other is a spider's nest. Speaking of ivy, Wen Long was knocked off a cliff before when he was fighting Xinglong. And when he came back from the bottom of the cliff, he climbed up in a place covered with ivy. So before returning to the cave this time, Wen Long took a detour there early in the morning, cut down some strong and tough ivy, and brought it over. As for those spider nests, of course they are not ordinary spider nests, but the nests of a spider that can spit out extremely strong and tough spider silk. These were also obtained by Wenlong when he was collecting bitter insects and undead insects in the bushes. It's of no use, but it comes in handy now. So Wenlong first laid off the ivy collected the day before and weaved it into the general shape of a web, and then placed the spider's nest in the center of the web. The next thing he just had to do was wait. At first, there was no movement in the spider's nest, but after a while, 
when Long saw some spiders crawling out of the nest. They began to carefully explore the surrounding environment. When the ivy is distributed in the shape of a common spider web, these little spiders crawling around seem to have been activated by some special switch. And they start to spit according to the shape of the ivy. The silk is knotted. It's like spiders usually like to build webs in supported places, like branches or corners of walls. And the shape one long made with ivy is a special shape that best suits the spider's web building environment. When encountering this shape, the instinct in the spider's body constantly stimulates them, causing them to spit out their tough spider silk without hesitation. So a net, with only a simple skeleton quickly turned into a denser and stronger net. The dense spider silk connected the gaps of the ivy. And at the same time, it continued to wrap the ivy in it, increasing the strength of the ivy itself. When the net was completed, Wen Long collected the entire net and put it into the trap. Okay, now the trap is complete. Of course, when it was officially used, Wen Long had to dig a pit big enough for monsters to fall into. He placed the pit trap mechanism at the bottom of the pit and covered it with various camouflages to wait for monsters to accidentally step on it. When you enter, the trap mechanism below will be activated completely popping out the entire net and finally wrapping the monster inside. Such a net covering the whole body and a large pit that cannot be climbed out without climbing will make the monster trapped in it and unable to move. At this time, you can easily capture it with the paralysis jade for capture and you will no longer be afraid of any accidents. Situation. So when Long made five more such traps in one breath, when everything was completed, when Long found that the night was already very dark. Ah! I'm so tired. Although it's a bit late. I'd better take advantage of this moment to make something more. It's best to make it simple. After all, weaving Ivy into a mesh was too troublesome before. With this thought in mind, Wen Long glanced again. This time, Wen Long's eyes rested on the nitrifying mushroom with red and white patterns. Then let's make a power bottle. Just right for that girl Haitang. Meow. Just as Wen Long said, Compared with the previous more complicated cave traps and capture anesthesia jade, the production of the strong shot bottle is much simpler. To put it bluntly, it is to crush those nitrifying mushrooms and put them into some small bottles. Among the empty bottles, this kind of empty bottle with a special hook is very small and can be attached to the tail of the arrow, with the bottle mouth facing the rear. When the hunter shoots the arrow, the power bottle located at the tail of the arrow will be ignited, and then flames will be sprayed backward. The reaction force will cause the arrow to fly forward at a faster speed to enhance the power of arrows. This is like a common firecracker on Earth called a skycracker. However, in the actual production, Wen Long still encountered some minor problems. At first, Wen Long was going to crush these nitrifying mushrooms with stones like crushing paralysis mushrooms. After all, only the crushed nitrifying mushrooms can be better packed into small bottles. But Wen Long soon discovered that this was a dangerous practice. The reason is that when Wen Long crushed these nitrifying mushrooms with stones, the sparks generated easily ignited the nitrifying mushrooms and then burned them. Oh meow! You actually burned a few of my hairs. It seems that the methods in the game don't work in reality. Meow! Although he complained like this, Wen Long quickly found a safer method, which was to wrap these nitrifying mushrooms in cloth, then crush them with stones, and then open the cloth after the crushing was completed. This way sparks won't hit the nitro mushrooms. Chapter 157 Moral Cats 1 Wen Long carefully crushed the nitrocellulose mushrooms and put them into bottles. The result was that it took nearly 2 hours to make 20 for such powerful bottles for something that seemed very simple. Okay, it's finally finished. But it's rare to come back once. So do you want to make something more? Meow? It was obviously time to go to bed. But Wen Long, who was thinking like this, was busy all night. When he realized it, he could already see the morning sunshine. Huh? I did so many things without even realizing it. Wen Long took stock of the results of the whole day and night and found that there were not only six narcotic jade for capture, five cave traps, and more than twenty strike bottles, but even flash jade, dyed balls, and other such things were also made. Among them, the glitter jade is made using a kind of insect called light insect. This kind of light bug like the spider's nest, was also discovered by Wenlong in the bushes. After that, Wenlong collected the light bugs and raised them to keep them as active as possible. Under normal circumstances, this light bug emits weak fluorescence and looks a bit like a firefly. So sometimes in the cave, 
Wan Long also wraps the light bug in a translucent gauze bag and uses it as a lamp for lighting. But when these light bugs die, it will be like their bodies suddenly burning up, and they will instantly erupt with a dazzling light that can cause temporary blindness. It was by taking advantage of this characteristic that Wan Long combined these light bugs with the material jade, letting those light bugs live on the furry material jade, and created a precious prop called Flash Jade. So in when hunting, Wan Long has a method that can make his prey temporarily lose sight. Compared with glittering jade, props called dyed balls are much simpler to make. Simply mix sticky grass and crushed dyed fruits together, and then knead them into balls to create dyed balls, specially used to mark prey. During the hunting process, once it is stuck to such a dyed ball, even if the monster escapes to a distance beyond the reach of the eye, the hunter can still find the traces of its prey based on the traces left by the dyed ball. Well, although I was so busy that I didn't even have time to sleep, I finally made all the props I wanted to make. This way, I will have more trump cards when dealing with monsters in the future. And I want to hunt higher level monsters. It will be much easier. Meow. Looking at the various props around him, Wen Long couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment in his heart. But after scanning around, Wen Long also discovered a problem. Among the props produced this time, it seems that the usage rate of adhesive grass is very high. Whether it is the production of capture anesthesia jade, flash jade or dyed ball, this kind of extremely strong absorption ability must be used it seems that the gray-white herbaceous plants will have to be planted with large gray and small gray next time. So we need to increase the amount of sticky grass planted. Meow. Just as Wen Long was thinking this, suddenly, there was a noise outside the cave. So Wen Long put away the props he made, then walked to the entrance of the cave and looked out. What he saw was Da Hui and Xiao Hui walking back. But what made Wen Long feel a little strange was that behind Da Hui, and Xiao Hui there were actually a group of strange Elu cats following. Hirosama, we are back. Naya, as soon as they saw Wen Long, Da Hui and Xiao Hui greeted Wen Long enthusiastically. Ha, huh. welcome back. But the one behind you is. Wen Long asked with some confusion, reporting to Lord Hero. These are the companions we met in the village. After hearing that Lord Hero has high salary and great development prospects, they all expressed their intention to follow us and come to join Lord Hero. Meow. Big Gray. Said. Ah. So that's it. Meow. Wen Long said with some surprise. Well. That's it. Now the hero's reputation has been well known in Milad village. So everyone is willing to work under the hero. Meow. Xiao Hui also said. Well. Wen Long stroked his beard as if thinking. And then responded. That's right. I do need manpower here. But if you don't have some skills that can impress me. I will I won't take you in. Meow. That's natural. Da Hui also said, I told them before coming here that if they want to follow you, Lord Hero, you must have the strength that will not bring shame to Lord Hero's name. So, Lord Hero, you can choose. They're all ready. Meow. Well, you did a good job on this matter. When Long nodded when he heard what Da Hui said, if that's the case, let me inspect it carefully. Meow. Since he was recruiting new L cats to be his subordinates, Wen Long certainly wanted to be more formal, especially when Wen Long clearly counted more than a hundred L cats behind Big Hui and Xiao Hui. Of course, I don't dare to neglect it. So Wen Long asked Da Hui and Xiao Hui to make some number plates with numbers written on them, and let the L cats randomly draw them. After the drawings were completed, they would conduct interviews in sequence according to the numbers on these number plates. Oh meow, you actually brought so many L cats here at one time. Big Hui and Xiao Hui are quite good at publicity. Eh. But that's right. Even the treatment offered to all cats by the Hunter Guild is usually very low. It's pitiful. Let alone other places. If you hear that I'm treated well here, it's understandable that so many all cats come here at once. Meow. When the all cats who were interviewing were drawing their number plates, when Long Zhe thought to himself, soon, the number plates were drawn and the interview officially began. The first Ella cat that walked in was a female cat wearing a pink dress. She was dressed up in a colorful and charming way. Cat. Uh, what's your name? Meow? Wolong asked. The little girl's name is Monroe. Meow. So what are your specialties? Meow? When long you continued to ask. The little girl's specialty. Ha ha ha. The little girl's specialty is of course being able to warm the bed. Meow. As she said this, Monroe gave Wen Long a wink. Well, I don't need to warm the bed at the moment. 
So please take the next one. After finally sending away the female cat named Monroe, Wolong couldn't help but hold his forehead. This was the first interview. And Wolong felt that there were already a lot of beads of sweat on his forehead. Chapter 158 Moral Cats 2 Hirosama, you are amazing. Meow. Hirosama, you are so awesome. Meow. Seeing when Long said Monroe away quickly, Da Hui and Xiao Hui praised him repeatedly. Ah, what's so great about this? When Long didn't quite understand. Others say that heroes have a hard time with beauty, but I never expected that you, Lord Hero, would be able to face the overwhelming beauty without losing any composure. You really do have a heroic demeanor. Meow. Ah, really? Faced with the compliments from De Hui and Xiao Hui, Wen Long could only smile sheepishly. As a man, of course I like beautiful women. But why did you bring a female cat here? And this is the kind of thing you think of a beautiful country. Meow. However, Wen Long only said I can complain in my heart. At this moment, the second L cat who was interviewing also walked in. This is a gentle Ella cat. He wears glasses and looks like a scholar. Excuse me. What's your name? Meow? It's still a routine question. This is Schrodinger. Meow. Uh, Schrodinger? When he heard the name, Wen Long had a bad premonition in his heart. But he continued to ask. Then what is your specialty? Meow? After years of research, this cat has now made considerable achievements in quantum mechanics. I believe that there will not be another Ella cat in the world who can surpass my research on quantum mechanics. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. When Long quickly interrupted Schrodinger's words. You have been talking about quantum mechanics since you came here. This is too profound. It seems to have exceeded the world's understanding of physics. Meow. Oh. Sir Hero, do you also know about quantum mechanics? Schrodinger's spirit suddenly perked up. And then he said eloquently. In fact, quantum mechanics is not complicated at all. For example, some properties of the particles cannot be determined until the measured external force forces them to make a choice. To illustrate this experimentally, we can assume that there is a cat in a box and a small amount of radioactive material. Within an hour, there is about a 50% probability that the radioactive material will decay and be released if the poisonous gas is released to kill the cat. The remaining 50% probability is that the radioactive material will not decay and the cat will survive. If we do not open the box, the entire system will remain in a state of uncertainty, which means that the cat will die. It's also alive. Okay. Okay. I already know that it is a bit unfair for a talent like you to work here. My temple is small and cannot accommodate a great immortal like you. So you should find another job. Come on. Meow. So the second Elu cat was sent away. And when Long felt more beads of sweat on his forehead. No matter which world. The guy named Schrodinger has a grudge against cats. Meow. When Long complained again. When Long looked at Da Hui and Xiao Hui next to him and found that they were looking at him with admiration. Hirosama, you are amazing. We couldn't understand the conversation just now. It was simply too profound. But you were able to understand it. Naya, really? Actually, as El Cats, it would be better if you don't understand. Fortunately, after two consecutive weird El Cats, most of the El Cats in the back are relatively normal. But more than a hundred El Cats are not a small number after all. The interview continued until the afternoon. When Long Kai finally completed the interview of more than a hundred Elu cats. After careful selection, Wen Long finally chose to keep five of the Elu cats. One of them is an Elu cat with brown fur. It is said that the family has been farming for generations and has good planting technology. Wen Long considered that if Dahue and Xiaoli were to be promoted to management positions in the future, new people would have to take over the management of the farmland. So he kept Elu, who was good at growing crops. The second Elu cat is an Elu cat wearing a safety helmet and carrying a shovel on its back. It is said that this Elu cat once worked in a large mine and has rich experience in digging and distinguishing ores. Wan Long kept this Elu cat here so that he could take a good look at whether there were any mines in the nearby mountains that could be used. After all, some rare ores would be used in future equipment creation and enhancement. So do it now in advance. Being well prepared can be considered as preparing for a rainy day. The third Elu cat is an expert at raising insects. Considering that Wen Long had asked Big Hui and Xiao Hui to hang cages for trapping insects in the forest before. But they only caught some undead insects and bitter insects. So Wen Long chose to keep him here. And planned to give him the task of catching and raising some useful insects. After all, 
there would be many props in the future that would require the use of rare insects. The fourth Elu cat is a master at growing mushrooms. In addition to blue mushrooms, paralysis mushrooms, and nitrifying mushrooms, Wenlong also needs to grow more varieties of rare mushrooms. Mushrooms with special effects are also needed for blending props in the future. Important material. So Wenlong also kept this mushroom growing professional. Finally, the fifth Elkit came from the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel in the village. Considering that more and more Elkits were being hired, an Elkit was needed to take charge of the food. So Wenlong also he hired this Elkat. So, with these five Elukats, plus Dahui and Xiaohui, the number of Elukats working under Wenlong suddenly reached seven. As for the other Elkits, who were not hired, although they seemed a little regretful, they could only leave reluctantly. Okay, I will now announce that from today on, you two, Big Hui and Xiao Hui, will be promoted to the Manor Manager and Deputy Manager respectively, responsible for managing the daily affairs of the entire manor. As for you, you will each perform your duties and help. Let me work together to develop this manor. Do you understand? Meow? After the other El Cats left, Wen Long began to announce the next arrangements to the El Cats, who stayed behind. Understood. Lord Hero. Meow. The seven El Cats said together, Well, that's good. In this case, I can leave with peace of mind. Eh? Sir Hero, are you leaving again? You've just come back. If you leave now, we really can't bear to leave. Meow. Big Hui and Little Hui said immediately. Well, Wen Long also cleared his throat, then patted Da Hui and Xiao Hui on the shoulders, and said sincerely, Uncle, I am a hero who wants to move towards the Great Hunter's Road. Of course, I can't stop at any time. I still can't stop now. There are more difficulties waiting for me to overcome, and more powerful monsters waiting for me to challenge. So I hope you can be my solid backing and witness the moment when I become a legend. Meow. Chapter 159 Onlookers in Milad Village Wen Long once again left the farm in Xiaofeng Valley. And before leaving, Wen Long also explained everything that needed to be explained clearly. For example, arrange the respective tasks of each Elucat. Teach Big Gray and Little Gray how to mix basic potions such as Restoration Potion. Restoration Potion G. Hardening Potion. Ghostman Potion and Forced Evacuation Potion. And instruct them to pay attention. Monster Attacks. You have to work hard and you will definitely get a promotion and salary increase. Win by Fume. Become the winner of Mao Sheng. Etc. As a result, when Wen Long left, a group of Elu Cat shed tears to see Wen Long off. Master Hero. Please come back safely. Meow. Dahui said. Master Hero. We will definitely run the entire farm better. Meow. Shall we also said. Sir Hero. We will keep your teachings in mind. Meow. The remaining El Cats also said. After being reluctant to leave like this for a while. Wen Long finally left the farm. By the time Wen Long returned to Milad village. It was already lunch time. Normally at this time. Most of the villagers in Milad village would have gone home to enjoy dinner. And there should be very few pedestrians on the roads in the village. But this time when Long saw from a distance that the village market stalls were still crowded with people. What was even more surprising was that the mountains of goods that were originally placed there were actually sold out. Almost there. Only a few scattered goods with defects caused by long-distance trafficking are still waiting to be sold. You must know that it took more than 20 herbivorous dragons to transport these products back from Mitch Bolton. According to the normal sales speed, it would probably take a month to reach a similar level of sales. But now, it has only been three days since Wen Long and his party returned from Midge Bolton. And they have sold very little of the goods that originally took a month to sell. Well, it seems that the villagers in Milad village have indeed not bought outside products for a long time. But why are the products almost sold out and there are so many people watching? Meow? With such doubts, Wen Long did not alarm the crowd, but quietly walked over to observe the situation and then discovered the mystery. I see. This stupid woman and this little girl are not businessmen who are good at sales. But they have to admit that they both have existences that can be compared to entertainment stars even standing on the roadside. This alone is enough. Attracting people's attention. Meow. According to Wenlong's classification of women, Catherine should belong to the beautiful, mature and somewhat silly big sister type, while Haikang is more like the cute, sensible and smart sister next door type. It just so happened that the characteristics of Catherine and Haikang complemented each other. This feeling even made Wenlong think that if he stopped being a hunter, 
They could form a group and debut like those entertainment star groups on Earth. Maybe you can get good results too. Of course, this is just a thought. Go away. Go away. The stall has been closed today. Meow. Wen Long unceremoniously pushed aside the crowd who were pretending to buy something, but actually just wanted to kiss Fonza and squeezed in. Ah, Mr. Cat, you're back. As soon as she saw Wen Long, Catherine rushed over excitedly and hugged Wen Long, just like before. Wen Long was almost choked by the squeeze when she saw Catherine hugging Wen Long tightly and greeting him. And at the same time, Hai Tang also started to pack up a small amount of remaining goods and was about to end the day's sales. Many people around him also burst out with, People are not as good as cats. Sighed. And then the crowd of onlookers slowly dispersed with some reluctance. Ahem. Wen Long finally got out of Catherine's arms and said, Looks like everything is selling well. Meow. Yeah. Almost all of them are sold out. Although the remaining ones are a bit flawed. If they are sold at a slightly lower price, there should still be people who want them. Catherine also said proudly, Hai Tang also worked hard to help sell. Hai Tang also said, Well, you all did a good job. Just have a good rest tonight. I'll tell you early tomorrow morning. I'm going to take you to take on a higher level promotion mission. Think about it. You should take on the two star high level promotion mission. It's time to advance to the next level hunter. Meow. Hey, Mr. Cat. Are we able to take on the two-star high-level promotion mission? Haven't I always been a two-star low-level hunter before? How can I skip the two-star mid-level hunter level? Catherine, he tilted his head and asked a little strangely. Of course, because the little girl is a two-star mid-level hunter. So as a hunting teammate with the little girl, you can also take on the two-star high-level promotion mission. Meow! Wen Long explained. Hey, is that so? Catherine looked at Haitang in surprise. And Hai Tang nodded in agreement. It's like this. Sister Catherine, the star rating of a hunting team is calculated based on the star rating of the person with the highest star rating in the team. So the star rating of our current hunting team is actually my hunting star rating. But as long as we complete a promotion mission together, our hunting star levels will become the same in the future. For example, if we can complete a two-star high-level promotion mission together this time, then we will both be two-star high-level hunters. Woolen cloth. So that's it. After hearing Haitong's explanation, Catherine suddenly became confident. It seems that the Salon King is a monster that can only be hunted by two-star high-level hunters. If two-star high-level monsters are just like this, will our promotion task be a bit too easy? Easy? Humph. That's because I have good command. Stupid woman. You have to know that some hunting teams often interfere with each other due to lack of cooperation, resulting in tasks that can be easily completed even by one person. But it turned out that there were too many people and it failed. Meow. There is also such a thing. It is hard to imagine that if there are more people, it will become weaker. That's it. In fact, there are some hunters in this world who are loners. They would rather hunt alone than team up with others. Meow. When he said this, Wen Long remembered an experience he had in the game. At that time, Wen Long took a rookie to hunt an ancient dragon species that could be hunted by himself. He originally promised to help the rookie get good materials and equipment, but the other party not only failed to help. Instead, he rushed forward self-righteously and let Gu Long be beaten until he was sent back by the cat cart three times in a row, resulting in the mission failure. So at that time, Wen Long clearly realized the painful fact that teaming up with a rookie who had no self-awareness was really worse than playing alone. Chapter 160 A Surprising Gift After that, Wen Long took Catherine and Hai Tang to have a sumptuous dinner at the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel, and without hesitation booked the highest grade luxury suite in the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel that he had been reluctant to book before, and prepared to stay there have a good night's rest inside. When I first saw Claude living in this suite, I thought the room was pretty good, but then I went to Meyer Boltan and saw the luxury hotels in big cities. This meter the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel in Lad Village looks a bit shabby after all. Meow. Wen Long thought like this when he walked into the room. Not only Wen Long, but also Catherine reacted the same way. Although Catherine would be somewhat interested in some of the furnishings in the room, like she did in Major Boltan, she would no longer want to see everything as she did before. I'm interested in touching it. Only Hai Tang's reaction was still very intense. Although Hai Tang had also stayed in Major Bolton's hotel for one night, the scene that night still seemed a bit unreal to her. Like a dream. So when this happened when she checked into the most luxurious suite of the Silver Dragon Pavilion Hotel again, she stared at Wen Long with her big watery eyes. 
and then asked, Mr. Cat, can we all live in such a big room in the future? Of course. Let's hang out with this uncle. From now on, whenever we want to live, we can live in such a nice room. Oh, no. I should say a room that is ten times, a hundred times, or a thousand times better than this. Meow. A room that is ten times, a hundred times, a thousand times better? Haitong's eyes sparkled, as if she was imagining what a room that was ten times, a hundred times better than the current one would look like. But soon, the light in Haitong's eyes disappeared and turned into a somewhat puzzled look. Mr. Cat Haigang can't imagine what a room ten, a hundred, or a thousand times better than this would be like. Mr. Cat, I can't imagine what it would be like. Catherine on the side also said, Well, one long thought for a while, and then said, First of all, the furnishings in this room are not high end enough. Even the furnishings in the ordinary rooms of Major Bolton's hotel are not as good as that. Meow. But even if it's Major Bolton's hotel, the furnishings can't be a hundred or a thousand times better than this. Right. Catherine asked again. Of course, it won't work for an ordinary hotel. But it will be different if it is a villa built by me. For example, this carpet. When Malong said this, he deliberately stepped on the velvet carpet under his feet. We can use Chilean carpets woven with bristles can only be made from the small handful of bristles on Chilean's back. Don't have curtains in other places. They can be made from the scales of star dragons. They are sparkling. That's beautiful. Meow. Oh, oh, oh. It seems very powerful. Catherine expressed in amazement. Not only is the improvement of the furnishings not enough. Oh, by the way, the bathroom? Yes. How can the bathroom in an ordinary room be enough? At least there should be a large hot spring. It is not only spacious enough, but also has therapeutic effects. If you can relieve the fatigue of the day, then you are truly worthy of a top-notch mansion. Meow. It's a hot spring. Catherine also began to fantasize. It's true that the bathtub is a bit small. It's almost full if it can accommodate Mr. Cat and I. But little Begonia can't squeeze in. I haven't seen hot spring high tang before. High tang touched his head expressing that he couldn't understand the concept of hot springs. Humph! Don't worry. I will let you see me in the future. But are hot springs and expensive furnishings enough? Of course not. We also need the scenery. Looking out from the windows of the room and the balcony. The scenery must be well. This is an important condition for a top-level villa. Meow! Speaking of this, Wolong and his party all looked out the window of the room. Although the scenery of Milad Village was quite beautiful at this glance. It was still far from the top-notch scenery. But Mr. Cat, is it too difficult to get these conditions together? Is there really such a villa? Even Catherine saw that Wenlong's idea was a bit exaggerated. Well, this. Wenlong thought for a while and found that even he had never seen such a house. So his confidence in speaking suddenly became much weaker. And he could only say with a guilty conscience. Whether it's a human or a cat, we everyone needs to have dreams. Dreams. Meow. When he said this, Wenlong also thought to himself, It seems that I have to find a top architect next time, since such a large farm has been opened up in Xiaofeng Valley. As a farmer, naturally he also needs to have a top architect. What a big house. Otherwise, after bragging so much, you still live in a cave at home. It would be really embarrassing. Meow. After chatting for a while, Wenlong, Catherine and Hai Tang went about their daily training, and then took a hot bath. After getting rid of the fatigue of the day in the bathtub, the three of them slowly go to sleep. Early the next morning, according to plan, Wen Long and his party will go to the Hunter Guild office in Milad Village to receive a new promotion task. However, when going out, Wen Long did not take Catherine and Hai Tang directly to the Hunter Guild office in Milad Village. Instead, he took them to Granny Ruizi first. Hey, Mr. Cat, is it too late to build equipment at this time? Catherine and Haitang both felt a little strange. According to the general rules, the equipment should have been arranged before, and they were both preparing to go to the hunter at this time. The guild accepted the mission and arrived at Granny Ruizzi's forging house. In terms of time, it was a bit too late. Of course it's in time, because I just wanted to give you a surprise from the beginning. So I didn't tell you. In fact, I have already arranged everything. Meow. So when Long stepped forward and... After paying the required gold coins, receive two complete sets of equipment from Granny Ruisi. Hey, little girl, this is for you. Meow. 
Hightang never expected that what she received was a complete set of Salon King equipment. Is this really for Hightang? Hightang was so surprised that she was almost speechless. Well, of course. Otherwise, beside you, little girl, who else can wear this kind of size? Meow. Hightang knew very clearly that the equipment of the Salon King was at least level 20. And with Granny Reezy's skill bonus, it should have reached level 24. Such equipment is undoubtedly better than the Shaylee she used before. A mix set consisting of a hunting bow made of animal materials, and armor made of blue speed Dragon King materials is much stronger. Chapter 161 Putting the Interests of the Team First This King of Sharon suit includes a set of King of Sharon's armor, and a longbow called the Twift Sand Hunting Bow. Among them, King of Sharon's armor is made of King of Sharon's scales and King of Sharon's fins. In key areas, in order not to affect the posture of drawing the bow and shooting arrows, the softer skin of King of Sharon's abdomen is used. The sandy yellow color itself, coupled with the fan-shaped part of the helmet part of the King of Sharon armor, makes this armor full of a style similar to the ancient Egyptian era on Earth. Hightang stroked this exquisite equipment carefully, but still couldn't believe her eyes. Mr. Cat, why do you give Hightang such good equipment? Obviously, Mr. Cat, you can keep the good things for yourself first. Hightang asked a little embarrassed. Ha ha. Brats like you are the ones who need good equipment the most. I can easily defeat monsters without good equipment. Wenlong said with a smile. But soon changed the subject and continued to explain. It's just a joke. Don't worry. I will not joke with the lives of my teammates. Hunting is a very risky thing. And various unexpected situations may occur at any time. So everything I do is based on the it's all about maximizing the team's strength. Meow. Hightang still doesn't understand why giving this equipment to Hightang can maximize the strength of the team. Because your equipment level is the lowest. When Long pointed out bluntly. Hightang, your armor is made of materials from the Blue Speed Dragon King. The basic defense level is only level 5. And the most important thing is that you didn't find the excellent blacksmiths will make it for you. So this set of armor does not have any level bonus when it is made. Besides, your current bow, although it is made of the material of the Sand Beast, Sand Roar. But the same it was made by a very mediocre blacksmith. And its final level is only level 15. Meow. Because High Tank didn't have money before. She could only find the cheapest blacksmith. As for the armor, High Tank thought that as long as she was careful, she wouldn't be hit. Don't think that hunters who use long-range weapons will be safer. Although hunters who use long-range weapons are indeed less likely to be hit by monsters. Compared with heavily armed melee hunters, Long-range light-armored hunters will be safer if they don't pay attention to defense. If you were hit, it would be almost a very serious fatal injury. Meow. Wen Long explained. Hai Tang knows. Hai Tang will pay attention to it in the future. Hai Tang nodded and said. So this set of equipment is given to you. Only by giving this set of equipment to you can the weapon level be raised from level 15 to level 24. And the armor level be raised from level 5 to level 24. Improvement. And whether this kind of equipment is given to me, or that stupid woman over there, it will not achieve such a huge improvement. Meow! Hey! Mr. Cat! What about my gift? What is mine? I want a gift too! After hearing what Wenlong said, Catherine quickly approached Wenlong and asked, Oh! Stupid woman! This is your equipment! Meow! After handing King Shalom's suit to Hai Tang, Wenlong took out a suit from Ghost Hunter Spider. Is this the suit of the ghost hunting spider? Although Catherine didn't know what the ghost hunting spider suit looked like. She could tell from the red sharp horns on the carapace and the red dyed ghost hunting spider used in key parts. Even Catherine can tell what this equipment is made of because of the way it is connected with spider silk. Yes, this is the suit of the ghost hunter spider. Meow. When Long confirmed Catherine's statement. Hey, isn't that even worse than the Shalimone suit I'm wearing now? Why do we need to build such equipment? Catherine didn't understand. It's true as you said. This equipment is not as good as the Swaymon suit you are wearing. But this equipment is a hundred times more beautiful than Suman's suit. Woman, I believe you will look good in it. Meow. Really? When Wen Long said that the ghost hunter spider's equipment looked good, Catherine couldn't help but took the suit and was about to try it on. Not long after, both Catherine and Hai Tang changed into their equipment in the fitting room. As mentioned before, Haitong's entire set of equipment gives people an ancient Egyptian style. Coupled with her petite body and beautiful face. She looks uniquely charming. Oh! Little Begonia is so beautiful! Even Catherine praised in surprise. 
Hai Tang feels that this equipment seems very comfortable to wear. It is obviously made of the scales and carapace of the Salon King. But when worn on the body, it is like a layer of breathing skin. It can breathe well and does not feel uncomfortable. Restrained. As soon as she put on the King of Salon suit, Hai Tang couldn't help but express her thoughts. Well, this is the characteristic of the Salon King suit. When Long explained, this suit allows people to obtain two skills, one of which is wild survival. This skill can increase the hunter's carrying capacity and anti-theft ability. The other skill is hunter life, which comes from King Sharon's ability to adapt to the extreme climate of hot days and cold nights in desert areas, which means it can make people adapt to cold and hot environments. Meow. It's easy to understand that it adapts to cold and hot environments. But are there monsters with anti-theft abilities that can steal things? Catherine asked. Of course there is, and there are more than one kind of cat. At this point, when Long thought of the Black Elu cat he had encountered before Black Mountain, compared to Haitang, Catherine's equipment looks more mature and sexy, especially the mesh part made of ghost hunting spider silk, which is particularly eye-catching. Cat. Mr. Cat. Why do I feel that my armor seems a bit small? Putting on the ghost hunter spider suit, Catherine felt that the armor seemed to be a size smaller than she expected. Aw? Are you small? That must be your imagination. Or the old woman is too old and misremembered your size. When he said this, Wen Long couldn't help but glance at the anvil. Grandma Ruisi continues to work. Yes. Is that true? But it seems that you can still wear it with a little patience. Catherine replied, Obviously it's you. You damn cat. Who wants me to make it smaller on purpose? Granny Ruisi couldn't help but complain to Wen Long in a low voice. You don't have to worry about this kind of thing. By the way, don't you think that this set of ghost hunter spider equipment needs to be tighter to look better? Especially the mesh part. When Long also whispered to Granny Reese, Chapter 162 A More Distant Hunting Ground Humph, old lady, when I was young, my figure would not be inferior to me. There seemed to be a trace of jealousy. When Granny Reese said these words, she was too lazy to talk to Along, but was busy in front of the anvil. In any case, at this time, Catherine had attracted the attention of many hunters who came to build equipment. And a few hunters even whistled. Mr. Cat, I feel like this outfit doesn't suit me a bit. Catherine noticed the looks of the people around her, blushed, and said a little embarrassed, Well, I think it's quite suitable. But I've admired it enough now. You can change it back. After all, you still need to wear equipment with better properties for hunting. Meow. Walong touched his beard and expressed that he was satisfied. So Catherine changed back to the previous Sorry Beast suit. Although the Sorry Beast suit didn't look so sexy, in Catherine's opinion, it gave people a more stable feeling. Okay, now that the equipment has been changed, let's go to the Hunter Guild to accept higher level promotion tasks. Meow. This time, one long, Catherine and Hightang came to the Hunter Guild office in Milad Village together. It was different from before. Sasha, who was standing in front of the counter, saw Wen Long and Catherine from a distance and came over with a smile on her face. A bright smile, as if welcoming a distinguished guest. Ah, long time no see. I didn't expect that after you solved the Star Dragon investigation incident, you actually helped the Basie Chamber of Commerce open up the trade route to Major Bolt Tan? Is this little girl? Halfway through, Sha Xiaokai noticed the petite Hai Tang, as if he had seen some monster, and the smile on his face suddenly froze. Oh. Her name is Begonia. I like to call her Little Begonia. Isn't she cute? Catherine introduced Sasha. No, it's not a matter of cuteness or not. This kid is only 12 or 13 years old. Right? He's actually wearing a suit from the King of Salon? Isn't this equipment that only two-star high-level hunters can have? Sure enough. The people who can team up with you two monsters are also monster-level people? However, Xiao Hai Tang is only a two-star intermediate hunter not a two-star high-level hunter. Catherine explained to Sasha seriously, you are just a two-star mid-level hunter, but you are already using the King of Salon suit? That means that after you have hunted the King of Salon, which can only be hunted by a two-star high-level hunter, you are ready to apply for a two-star high-level hunter. Advancement mission? Sasha looked at Hai Tang in front of her and couldn't help but admire Hai Tang's courage. Because Sasha knows that hunting monsters beyond her level is a very dangerous thing. If she takes a mission from the Hunter Guild and then hunts, at least there will be various guarantees and material support provided by the Hunter Guild, especially among them. The Elecat rescue team has saved the lives of countless hunters. 
But if you are hunting monsters of a higher level than yourself privately, then without the support of the Hunter Guild, the situation will be much more dangerous. Not only will there be no material support, but there will also be no AI when encountering danger. Do Cat Rescue Team for help. That's why Sasha couldn't help but admire Haitong's courage in her heart. But the conversation that followed made Sasha feel even more incredible. What Haitang wants to say is that this Salon King was not hunted by Haitang, but killed by Sister Catherine with a sword. Haitang said seriously, He sword? Sasha could no longer imagine such a scene in her mind. Sasha was very clear about Catherine's hunter level. She was just a two-star junior hunter, and it was reached about 20 days ago. As a result, he can now kill the King of Sharon, who was always known to be difficult to deal with. With one sword, this surge in strength is really too fast. So Sasha said again, Although you said that you solved the Star Dragon investigation incident and indeed returned from Major Bolt in, but to say that you killed the Sharon King with one sword is really a bit exaggerated. I'm not that powerful. Catherine touched the back of her head and said with some embarrassment, Actually, under the command of Mr. Cat, the three of us worked together to kill him. Three people? Although generally hunting teams do not count Elu Cats as one of them. Your Elu Cats do seem to have some strength. Sasha also nodded and said to when long strength agrees. After all, Sasha has never seen the hunting conditions of Catherine and went long with her own eyes. So all hunting results are generally recorded on Catherine's head according to common sense. Unexpectedly, when Long still jumped up, jumped directly onto the counter, and said loudly, What does it mean to have some strength? I am super powerful. Get the mission scroll quickly. We are going to do the promotion mission for the two-star high-level hunter. Meow. Okay. Okay. I'll get it for you right now. Sasha has seen Wenlong's ability to make trouble many times. So when Sasha saw Wenlong jump on the counter, she didn't dare to say anything more. And he hurriedly followed Wenlong's request to get the mission scroll. After a while, Sasha came back holding a scroll. And then she spread the scroll on the counter so that Wenlong, Catherine and Haitang could all see the contents of the scroll. Hunting the Peach-Haired Beast King? Location. Kunbire Wetland? This trip takes three days. In order to hunt the Peach-Haired Beast King, I actually have to go so far away. Hey, Chong Sam girl, don't you? Will you give us a closer mission? Meow? One long glance at the mission scroll and said with some dissatisfaction, There's no way. There's only one two-star high-level mission now. Tasha said innocently, After all, this is Milad Village. And it's rare to have two-star high-level missions. In the past, we had to mobilize old hunters from Major Bolton to complete the tasks. That's true. Thinking that a guy like Levi, who could only hunt big strange birds, could dominate the village and love you for such a long time. Wen Long naturally understood that there was nothing wrong with what Sasha said. Okay then. I'll take this mission next. Although I really don't want to defeat such a rookie monster and go so far. But for such a mission, the Hunter Guild should still provide hunting camps and supplies to support it. Right? Meow? Of course. Sasha nodded, and then pulled out another map. This is the map of Kunbo Wetland. The green dot mark on it is where the guild built a hunting camp specifically for hunters. There are there are various supplies and materials specially prepared for hunters. And you are all two-star or above hunters. So you are already qualified to use them. Chapter 163 Hunter Camp Saying goodbye to Sasha. When Long and his party set off towards the Kunbo Wetland according to the instructions on the map. Because of the long distance, it was already close to dusk when Wen Long and his party arrived at Cumber Wetland, considering that they were not familiar with the nearby terrain, and it was going to be dark soon. The monsters would be even more numerous after dark. The danger was so great that Wen Long and his party had to follow the original plan and first find the hunter camp on the map to rest for the night. Oh meow. It would be great if I could take on a few missions at a time. I could just come out and complete them all at once. Those guys in the hunter guild are just stupid. Wen Long complained as he walked away. There's nothing you can do about it. This is their rule, Catherine said. Humph. Such a rule is simply a shackle for me. And it seriously hinders my speed of leveling up. Meow. In Wenlong's mind, hunting a peach-haired beast king was not a strenuous task. So traveling so far naturally felt like a waste of time. Ah, Mr. Cat. That should be the hunter camp we are looking for. Right? At this moment, Hai Kang spoke, pointing to a big tree in the distance. Huh? Let me take a look. Meow. Wenlong also took the map as he said it, then looked at the direction of the big tree in the distance. 
and at the same time compared the position of the green dot. And said, Well, right there. The little girl has good eyesight. After all, she uses a bow. My father has been training Haitang since he was a child. He said that an archer is to destroy the enemy at a distance. So it is very important to be able to detect the enemy before he gets close. Haitang said, Hey, that's the camp there? Why can't you see it at all? Only Catherine still didn't understand the situation at all. After all, looking in the direction of the big tree from here, she could only see one big tree. There was no sign of a man-made camp at all. Of course you can't tell if you look at it this way. You have to combine it with the map. Stupid woman. This is the ingenuity of building a hunter's camp. It is easy to be discovered from the outside. This avoids being attacked by monsters. But from above the hunter camp has a good view when looking down. And it can provide early warning of possible dangers. Meow. When Long explained to Catherine. So that's it. Catherine said suddenly. I didn't expect this at all. If you can think of it, then the sun has to come out from the west. When Long rudely despised Catherine. This is the result of the old hunters in the guild based on their many years of hunting experience and in-depth understanding of this area. The camp address you selected only after knowing it naturally has its ingenuity. Otherwise it would not have become the stopping point for almost all hunters before heading to the depths of the Kanba wetland. With your hunting experience of more than a month, how could it be possible? Understand this? Meow. Mr. Cat. I will study hard. Catherine said. Okay. Hurry up and hurry up. Although you can already see the camp. It can't be reached immediately. And the sun is about to set. This Kunbire wetland is not a place like Seofing Valley. Powerful monsters appear at night. The possibility is much higher. What Long continued. So along. Catherine and Haigang all quickened their pace. And soon all three of them arrived at the bottom of the camp. Which was the root of the big tree they had seen from a distance. Mr. Cat. This tree is so big. It wasn't until they took a closer look that Wen Long and his party truly felt the majesty of this big tree. This is a big tree that requires seven or eight people to surround it. Under the big tree, there is a tree hole that can accommodate an adult to pass through. Entering the tree hole, you can see that the tree hole is hollow extending to the top, forming a vertical upward passage. In this tree hole, a rope ladder has been lowered from above, showing that there is an artificial traces of carving. Begonia feels like someone has just come to this camp. The careful Haitang looked around and found human footprints near the tree hole. It's normal for someone to come here. After all, this camp is not specially reserved for us. Other hunters heading to Kunbire Wetland will rest here first, Wenlong said. In any case, the camp is just it's up there. Let's climb up. Meow. After saying that, Wenlong climbed up the rope ladder first, while Catherine and Haitang followed closely behind Wenlong. The tree hole was very dark. But when Wenlong climbed to the top, the scene in front of him suddenly became clear, showing a flat open space. And the huge and dense tree in front seemed to exist to hide this open space. In this open space, there are some auxiliary facilities specially set up for hunters. There are beds for hunters to rest. Large blue wooden boxes containing various supplies. And bonfires for cooking. However, there was another hunter team consisting of three people who had arrived at the camp before Wenlong and his party. Hey, look what I found. A hunting team composed of two beauties? It's really rare. When he saw the arrival of Wen Long and his party, a spearman in this unknown hunting team exclaimed, They are indeed very beautiful. And judging from their equipment, although they are still very young, their level seems to be not low. The person who said this seemed to be the captain of the team, carrying a weapon on his back. The hunting bow made from the materials of Peach Hair Beast King shows that this person should already be a two-star high-level hunter. As for the third member of this team, he was a double sword wielder. He ignored the appearance of Wen Long and his party. Instead, he was opening a large blue wooden box in the camp and taking out various weapons from inside. The supplies come out, and this scene happened to be seen by Wen Long. Hey, what are you doing? According to the rules of the Hunter Guild, one person can only receive three bottles of recovery medicine provided by the guild. Right. Do you, a team, want to take all the recovery medicine in this box? Meow? The recovery medicine that Wen Long mentioned for payment was actually the recovery medicine provided free of charge by the Hunter Guild and specially placed in the big blue box in the Hunter Camp. Although every two-star low level and above Hunter can receive such recovery medicine for free at the Hunter Camp, in order to prevent a few people from receiving most of the recovery medicine, there is a rule that each hunting team can only perform a mission at most. 
you can receive three bottles of this recovery medicine. Of course, there are no mandatory enforcement measures for such regulations. After all, although the Hunter Guild has built many such hunter camps near hunting grounds around the world, it is impossible for each camp to be equipped with a manager. Therefore, the enforcement of regulation still relies more on the consciousness of hunters. Chapter 164 Weapons Facing Each Other Obviously, what Wen Long saw was that the members of this hunter team violated such regulations. There were only three people in this team. But the supplies and recovery potions they took out were piled all over the floor. At a rough count, there were 40. Looks like multiple bottles. Moreover, in addition to the recovery medicines for distribution, there are more than 30 bottles of antidote, and the recovery medicines for distribution are also piled on the ground together with the recovery medicines for distribution. Aw? Oh? Do you want to take care of it? It's just an Elu cat. How dare you take care of my affairs? The double swordsman didn't look embarrassed at all when he saw Wen Long pointing out his wrong behavior, but showed a fierce look. We will provide each person with three bottles of recovery medicine and two bottles of antidote. It must be written on the big box. Don't you idiot like you not know how to read? Meow? Wen Long naturally did not show weakness and soon choked. Went back. You Ella Cat, do you believe that I killed you? The man with the double sword was obviously angry. After all, as a hunter, the man with two swords also has two-star mid-level strength. And he would never want to be looked down upon by an L-Cat. Okay, please stop arguing. The person speaking this time was the captain who was wearing a peach-haired beast king suit and carrying a peach-haired beast king hunting bow on his back. We are Major Bolton's crow team. Even if we are, he is also somewhat famous in Midge Bolton. But I have never met you. What? I haven't reported to the Major Bolton Hunter Guild yet. So how can you see me? Wen Long said. What Wen Long said about reporting to the Hunter's Guild in Major Bolton was not a visit to the Hunter's Guild in Major Bolton, like he did last time when he went to visit Roden. But formally, follow Catherine to transfer the Hunter's membership from the Hunter's Guild's office in Milad Village to the Hunter's Guild in Major Bolton. Sure enough, you are not the Hunters of Major Bolton. It would be better for a team of Hunters like you who came from the countryside not to mess with us. But we will not embarrass the two ladies. We will keep the two ladies. What about the required share? No. It was not Wen Long who spoke this time. But Catherine, what you are doing is wrong. If you take all the supplies away, what will the hunters who come to this camp do next? Hai Tang also said, Hai Tang knows. The supplies for the Hunter Guild's hunter camp must be replenished every month. It's only the beginning of the month. And you have taken everything away and the hunters who come later can't get the supplies. Tasted. What does it have to do with us whether they take it or not? It is the greatest gift if I promise to leave you a share. You'd better go away. Don't mess with us. Otherwise it's just you two women and a cat. Looking for death? The man holding a spear also stood up. I hate selfish hunters the most. Because in the place where I used to live, if any hunter took away other people's hunting supplies by himself even though he knew the rules, then, but it's a serious mistake. Meow. For most hunters, many of the props in the hunter camp are very useful. And these props are often specially provided according to the local environment. For example, Wen Long knew that the hunter guild was in the Thundering Sand Sea. The hunter camp provides cold and hot drinks. And the antidote provided in the supply box in the Kunbire wetland is also specially provided based on the local humid and poisonous fog in Miasma, which can easily lead to hunter poisoning. Therefore, if the support of these props is lost, it will reduce the hunter's hunting efficiency at best. But in serious cases, it can often affect the success of a hunt. This is true whether it was when Malong was in the game or in this world now. And the three men obviously knew this. So they were already furious. They took out their weapons and aimed them at Wenlong and his party. What? You want to use hunting weapons directly? Meow? Wenlong said contemptuously. Humph. No one will know if I kill you here anyway. There are swamps and poisonous pools everywhere. If we sink you as far as you want, no one will ever find your bodies. The leader of the team has completely showed a ferocious look in his eyes. Well said. If you sink the body into a poisonous pond, no one will be able to find it. This sentence also applies to you. Meow. Wen Long also drew out his two swords. Mr. Cat, I'm here to help you too. Catherine and Hai Tang also took out their own weapons. The situation between the two sides has become tense, and the battle seems to be about to break out. For this battle, Wen Long was confident of winning. Not only did Wen Long know that his strength was superior to these three men by observing the opponent's equipment, but more importantly, 
Catherine was no longer what she was before. Catherine doesn't even understand. Coupled with the fact that although he is young, Haitang already has quite superb skills. Wenlong's strength can definitely crush the opposing team of hunters. And although Wenlong is a hunter and doesn't like to target humans with hunting weapons, for those who dare to threaten himself and his teammates with death, Wenlong can kill them as if they are livestock. It's not good for hunters to use weapons directly against each other. At this moment, a voice suddenly rang. Only then did Wenlong and others notice that someone else had climbed up from the rope ladder in the tree hole. This time it was a new three-man hunter team. This hunter team is composed of two men and one woman. One of the two men is holding a sword and the other is holding a ballista. The woman following them is holding a katana sword and a small buckler. But if we really want to take action, we are willing to stand on the side of these two lovely ladies. The one who spoke was the young man who used the crossbow among the three, who seemed to be 20 years old. The tone of speaking seemed a bit frivolous, and it can be heard from the voice that the previous words were also spoken by him. Hey, he fei. What are you talking about? We stand with them not because they are women, but because we agree with what they are doing. At this time, the woman holding a sword spoke. As for the man holding the sword, he didn't say anything. He just stared at the large amount of recovery potions and detoxification pills scattered on the ground with cold eyes. And then without hesitation, he pointed the sword in his hand at the three people and wanted to take it away. All supplies and props to men. TCH, there are actually helpers. Seeing this situation, the captain of the crow team already knew that he couldn't beat him. Because even from the equipment point of view, each of the three new people should have three stars. The strength of the hunter. Only the captain has two-star high-level strength. And the other two have two-star mid-level strength. The crow team cannot be their opponent no matter how hard they think about it. Chapter 165. Fellow Countryman Meets Fellow Countryman. How's it going? Now we have more people than you. And we are stronger than you. What the H? L is the crow squad. You'd better be honest and keep everything. I will spare your life. Ha! Meow! See you? His side already had an absolute advantage. And Wen Long naturally began to mock the opponent without hesitation. I saw Wen Long making a face, jumping around, and at the same time booing at the other party. This Elu cat is so mean, said the man in the crow team holding two swords. Shut up! The captain holding the hunting bow scolded the man with two swords and then said, Do you think he is a bitch? That El Cat is so smart. He just wants to provoke us to attack. So that he can be pulled away, the three three-star hunters nearby will deal with us. Otherwise, if the cat takes the initiative to attack first, the people nearby may not be willing to help them. When the captain of the crow team said this, the man with the double sword and the man with the spear beside him finally understood, and looked at Wenlong with a hint of vigilance. I'm sorry, my team members were confused just now and accidentally took some extra supplies to use healing potions and detoxification potions. As the captain of the crow team, I apologize to you. Everything is left to you. We don't need it anymore. It's just a little supply. It's just a recovery potion and an antidote. There's no need to hurt the harmony. Right. As he spoke, the captain of the crow team, who was holding a hunting bow, had a smile on his face. After finishing speaking, he and his team members slowly retreated towards the rear, always facing one long side. They did not turn around until they were about a hundred meters away. He actually ran away. I still want to have a good fight. Meow. Seeing that the other party left like this, Wen Long seemed a little regretful. Thank you, Catherine said to the three hunters who later broke into the camp. If it weren't for you, I don't know what those bad guys would have done. Hai Tang thanks you too. Hai Tang said the same. You're welcome. As hunters, it is our duty to help beauties. The young man holding the crossbow said so, still with a somewhat unserious smile on his face. That's just your obligation. The white-haired, cold-faced man holding a sword said so. I'm sorry. My two friends have a bit strange personalities. So please don't mind. The last person who spoke was the woman holding a sword and a buckler. My name is Lily. And the less serious guy is me. My friend Hefei. And the one holding the sword is Elon. Even if you look at them like this, they are actually good people. Well, let me introduce myself to these two beautiful ladies again. My name is Hefei. I come from Milad Village and am now developing Image Bolton. The man named Hefei said to Catherine and Haitang. Are you also from Milad Village? We are also from Milad Village. When she heard that Hefei was from Milad Village, Catherine suddenly shouted excitedly. Wow, then we are really destined. 
It seems that we can keep in touch with each other in the future. He Fei, you are not serious again, Lily said with a frown. What? Are you jealous? He Fei replied deliberately. Who is jealous of you? Lily rolled her eyes at He Fei, then turned to Catherine and Haiteng and said, I also practiced in Milad village when I first became a hunter, although I later left. But I still can't forget that place. Now I can actually meet you here, who are also from Milad village. It seems that we are really destined. TCH, why don't you just follow my words? He face said at the side. That's different. This is a communication between girls. Okay. Okay. Since we are so destined, let's sit down and enjoy dinner together first. Since we all arrived at the camp at this time, we probably haven't eaten anything yet. He face said. Yes. It's right to eat first. Meow. One long on the side also agreed. So a group of people started to raise the bonfire in the camp and then put large pieces of meat and picked wild vegetables on the barbecue. Although this dish was simple, it was considered the most common dinner among hunters because they knew that the other party was also a hunter from Milad village. The two teams quickly became familiar with each other. Sister Lily, do bad people like just now often exist in the hunter guild? After chatting with Lily for a while, Catherine also asked the question in her mind. That's not true. But no matter where you are, there are always people like this who like to take advantage of others and never consider others. Originally, the healing potions and detoxification potions that were given out are not valuable things. In terms of value, even if they take them all away, it's okay. But considering that it may cause great inconvenience to other hunters and may even put them in danger. Most hunters hate this kind of person, Lily explained. Yes, there has been such a situation before. A hunter who was poisoned managed to escape back to the camp. He wanted to find a bottle of antidote in the camp to treat himself. But he found that the antidote had been taken advantage of. Someone took it away. And the final result can be imagined. He Fei interjected from the side. Hai Tang doesn't like people like this either. Because Hai Tang has no money. She can only rely on a few props from the hunter's camp every time she hunts. Several times. The props were taken away and she had to give up the mission. Hai Tang also said a little sadly. After all. Poor Hai Tang. Failing a mission means not making any money. And it also means that he will be beaten and scolded when he returns home. Naturally, this is an extremely sad memory for Hai Tang, who is already financially strapped. While a group of people were chatting, Wen Long was eating barbecue and did not participate in the conversation. But halfway through eating, Wen Long suddenly remembered a question. Oh, by the way, there should be dry food specially provided for hunters in this camp? Meow? Wen Long asked Lily who was sitting opposite him. Yes, there is indeed that kind of thing in this camp. But the taste is not very good. Moreover, the dry food in these camps can also be left for other hunters in need. So most hunters eat the food they bring, Lily explained. Oh, when Long nodded thoughtfully, then suddenly stood up and walked towards the big blue wooden box filled with various supply props. Chapter 166 The Poisonous Swamp of Cumber Wetland When in the game, when Long often eats the free dry food provided by the Hunter Guild. But a game is a game after all. And dry food can only increase the data in the game. As for the taste, it is not reflected at all. So now Wen Long is curious and can't help but want to try what the dry food really tastes like. Mr. Cat, what are you going to do? Catherine asked when she saw Wen Long walking towards the big blue box. Uncle, I want to try what that dry food tastes like. Meow. Wen Long said this while taking out a piece of stuff wrapped in oil paper from the box. Is this dry food? I remember that in the game, it was called carrying barbecue or something. Wen Long opened the oil paper and took out the contents. Sure enough, it looked like a black piece that looked like marinated barbecue. Mr. Cat, Hai Tang has eaten it before. So Hai Tang advises you not to try it. However, before Hai Tang finished speaking, Wen Long had already bitten into the large piece of black barbecue. Ba! 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 What the H L is this? Why does it taste so bad? Meow! Wen Long took a bite and spat it out. Ha ha ha! Seeing Wen Long's uncomfortable look, He Fei also laughed. This Elu cat is really interesting. Have you never eaten barbecue before? The taste of this thing is definitely not good. You have to know that barbecues are often kept in boxes for months at a time. Moreover, places like Kunbel Wetland are warm and humid. Ordinary food can be stored for just one day. If the barbecue is broken, you want to ensure that it does not go bad or go bad when you carry it. 
so you have to add a lot of additives to prevent it from going bad. How can something like this compare with the taste of fresh ingredients? Lily also said to Wenlong. Okay, I have learned the lesson. Meow. Wenlong took out a glass of water and rinsed his mouth. And then said, This thing tastes just like sawdust. It doesn't taste like meat at all. And it also has a strange spicy smell. Huh? As an excellent hunter, there is no need to be picky about food. As for the spicy taste, it is actually to prevent the insects in the wetland from being interested in this kind of barbecue. So that these barbecues can be preserved longer. Before, Elon, who had been silent all this time, finally said, In any case, although Elon made a fool of himself by eating barbecue, the atmosphere between the two teams became more lively, and even Elon, who didn't speak much, joined the chatting crowd. Well, what are you two girls doing here? The bonfire is almost burning out, and it's almost time to rest. Before that, Lily asked Catherine curiously, We are here to hunt the peach for Beast King. Catherine answered truthfully, Peach-haired Beast King, that guy is not easy to deal with, especially for two-star hunters like you. Why don't you let me? He fey. Help you? He fey on the side also interjected. Thank you. But we have Mr. Cat here. So we are not afraid of the Taomao Beast King. If there are any problems, Mr. Cat will solve them for us. When she said this, Catherine looked at Wen Long beside her. At this time, Wen Long was picking his teeth with satisfaction and enjoying the aftertaste of dinner. Ha ha. Hafei. You are worse than an Elu cat. Seeing Hafei being rejected, Lily immediately seized the opportunity to laugh at Hafei. Ha ha. Hefei laughed sheepishly. But as your senior, I still want to advise you. The peach-haired beast king is very smelly. If you are not careful, the situation will become very bad. Then what are you here for? Meow? After hearing the other party asking about his purpose here, when Long also wanted to ask the other party the reason for coming to Kunbire Wetland. We, our target this time is the Rock Dragon. That is a much stronger guy than the Peach Hair Beast King. But I, Lord Hefei, will definitely take down the Rock Dragon. Hefei said, but the Rock Dragon is not easy to find. Because when it is lurking underground, it looks like an ordinary stone. It cannot be found without careful identification. We have been looking for it for two days, but we haven't seen it yet. Lily also looked a little frustrated when she said this. That's because Yamlong was afraid of seeing me. Lord Hefei. So he hid. Hefei said with a smile. Stop being narcissistic. Just don't hold back when the time comes. Ellen mocked Hefei unceremoniously. In this way, the two teams chatted until very late before resting. When the early morning sun shone into the camp the next day, the two teams bid farewell to each other and set off towards their respective goals. Leaving the hunter camp, and continuing towards the depths of the Kunbel wetland. The surrounding environment became increasingly harsh. Narrow and wet paths, dense reeds, and purple pools can be seen everywhere on the roadside, always giving off an aura of danger. Hey, Mr. Cat, what are those monsters there? Halfway through, Catherine asked Wen Long, pointing to some crustacean monsters in the purple pool. Oh, those are shield crabs. Meow. Wen Long just responded to Catherine's question casually because he was alert to the surrounding situation. There is a shield crab. Is this the shield crab that tastes much better than the ghost hunting spider? Catherine, who suddenly said this, ran over without hesitation. Fortunately, Wen Long had good eyesight and quick feet, and he kicked across, tripping Catherine to the ground. Plop! Catherine was caught off guard and fell to the ground, although she didn't feel any pain because of the protection of the equipment. She still looked a bit embarrassed. Mr. Kitten, why did you trip me up all of a sudden? Catherine asked with a sad face. Not all shield crabs can be eaten. Where do those shield crabs live? Isn't it in this purple pool? My uncle, I am really impressed by you. That purple pool is not called a poisonous swamp. The purple smoke above is poisonous mist. You will be poisoned if you fall in. Shield crabs who survive in such a place. You dare to eat? Not afraid of eating you to death? Meow? Wen Long scolded Catherine unceremoniously. Well, I know I was wrong. Catherine stood up sheepishly. Also, these shield crabs are nothing. If you rush over and hurt them like this, you will be in trouble when their boss comes. Boss? Who is their boss? Catherine asked. Their boss is called the Daimyo Shield Crab. And he is a difficult guy anyway. This ghost place is full of poisonous mist and poisonous swamps. 
so it is not advisable to stay for a long time. So we'd better kill the peach-haired beast king as soon as possible, and then evacuate quickly after completing the mission. Let's not create unnecessary complications. Meow. Chapter 167 Big Ship in the Wetland So Wen Long and his party walked carefully on the path surrounded by poisonous swamps. On the one hand, they had to be careful about the poisonous swamps under their feet. And on the other hand, they had to pay attention to avoid the shield crabs that were running rampant in the poisonous swamps. However, although the three of them paid careful attention to the situation under their feet, they still inevitably inhaled some poisonous mist into their bodies. Soon, the petite Hai Tangjio showed symptoms of mild poisoning. Cough, 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 cough. Hai Tang coughed softly. Hey, does little Hai Tang feel uncomfortable? Catherine asked with concern. No, Hai Tang is fine, Hai Tang said. The little girl still likes to show off her strength. Meow. Wan Long also noticed that Hai Tang's face was a little pale, obviously affected by the poisonous mist. Since you feel uncomfortable, take the antidote as soon as possible. Anyway, before everyone received two bottles at the camp. So there's no need to save. Meow. Well, okay. Hai Tang knows. Following Wan Long's instructions, Hai Tang opened a bottle of antidote and drank it. Her face temporarily became much better. However, the effect of these antidotes can only last for a period of time. If you are not careful, you will still be poisoned. With this thought, Wen Long carefully observed the surrounding environment and found that as the poisonous swamps nearby became more and more dense, and as time went by, the sun began to rise, which caused the surrounding temperature to rise. More and more poisonous mist began to evaporate. Hey, woman, just hold Hai Tang up on this journey. Meow, Wen Long said. No, no need. Hai Tang can leave on her own. When she heard that Catherine was asked to pick her up, Hai Tang immediately declined. Eh? Mr. Cat? Is Hai Tang's foot injured too? Catherine asked. Of course not. It's just that the poisonous mist is still a little heavier than ordinary air. Although it has been evaporated, most of it remains in a relatively low position and settled. And the little girl's stature is already relatively short, making it easier to breathe. Poisonous mist. Coupled with your young age and immature respiratory system, it is naturally easy to be poisoned. Stupid woman, pick up the little girl so that the air she breathes will be fresher. Meow, Wen Long said. Explain to Catherine. Ah, I understand. Catherine nodded, and then picked up Hai Tang without hesitation. Thank you, Sister Catherine, Hai Tang said. You're welcome. Little Begonia is so light. You can pick it up casually, Catherine also said with a smile looking completely at ease. Wen Long also climbed up from Catherine's back, and then lay on Catherine's shoulders. According to the map, just keep going forward. Then when you encounter the next poisonous swamp, turn right, and you should be able to leave this area. Wen Long climbed onto Catherine's shoulders and said while looking at the map, That's so fast. Just get out of here. Meow. Okay. Even with Hai Tang in her arms, and Wen Long hanging on her shoulders, Catherine still looked very relaxed and moved forward quickly. Soon, the surrounding poisonous mist gradually became sparse, which proved that the surrounding poisonous swamp was decreasing. After a while, the normal forest could finally be seen. Hey! Catherine jumped hard and finally left the last poisonous swamp and jumped to a clearing. Okay, Mr. Cat, little Hai Tang, it should be safe here, right? Yes, Wen Long nodded and said. From here, we should be close to the center of the Kanba wetland. According to the records on the mission scroll, the peach-haired beast king should be nearby. Meow. With Catherine's shoulder, Wen Long looked around, but found no trace of the peach-haired beast king. Oh, meow. Let alone the peach-haired beast. There is not even a peach-haired beast's hair. It seems that we can only continue to move deeper into the Kanbo wetland. Meow. So Wen Long instructed, since they had escaped from the dense area of the poison swamp. Wen Long and Hai Tang also got off Catherine and the three of them continued walking like this. Along the way, the trees on both sides of the road were growing crookedly, and many showed withered postures, which seemed to indicate the abnormality of the nearby ecology. Mr. Cat! Sister Catherine! There seems to be something over there! After walking for a while, Hai Tang seemed to have discovered something, pointing to a black object in the distance and said, What the H L is that? Meow? Wan Long also looked in the direction Hai Tang was pointing. All he could see was a black object, a bit like a hill. But upon closer inspection, 
It seemed to have artificial traces. The view here is not good. There are trees blocking it. Let's go to the front and have a look. Meow. The three of them began to speed up their pace. And soon, the full picture of the huge black object was finally revealed in front of everyone. It turned out to be a large ship. Judging from the size of the ship, it should be a large ship that can accommodate hundreds of people. It has a tall mast, but the sails on it have disappeared. As for the dark color, it is obviously not the color of the ship itself, but because the wooden surface has been blackened and rotted by wind and rain all year round. Although the overall frame of the ship is still there, even from the surface it can also be seen that the ship is basically in a state of dilapidation. Hey, Mr. Cat, why is there a boat here? There are obviously swamps around here, Catherine explained. There's nothing strange about this. Many swamps were formed after rivers or lakes dried up in the past. So there should have been a large lake near here. Meow, Wenlong said. Hey, is it actually a big lake? Does that mean this boat was parked on the lake before? As expected of Mr. Cat. He can actually see it, Catherine suddenly said with enlightenment. Well, actually, what I said just now was all made up by me. I don't know what the real situation is. Wenlong shrugged and said. Ah, Mr. Cat, you lied to me again. At this time, Haitang also said, Haitang thinks that such a big ship looks like the big ship parked in Midge Bolton Harbor, which probably means that this kind of ship should be in the sea. Haitang thinks the ship is from the sea? It seems so. Although the sails of this ship are gone, such thick and high masts are indeed not like those of ordinary ships that can sail in lakes or rivers. All I have is that the nearest sea here seems to be dozens of kilometers away. So how could it appear here? Meow? Wen Long said with some confusion. Chapter 168 Melee Peach-Haired Beast King 1. Instead of guessing here, why not go and take a look? With this thought in mind, the three of them began to move towards the location of the big ship. After getting closer, the appearance of the entire ship became clearer. At this time, Wen Long noticed that there was a large hole on the side of the ship, from which he could enter the cabin of this mysterious ship. No one usually comes to this Kunbai or wetland. Maybe you can find some good things if you go in now. Meow. So Wenlong, who was thinking this way, rushed over first, entered the cabin of the big ship through the open hole, and finally saw the scene inside the ship clearly. Judging from what Wenlong saw, the bottom of the ship had completely cracked, and a large amount of mud had entered the interior of the cabin. Except for a few broken clay pots, there seemed to be nothing valuable among the mud. It was probably a ship that used to transport ceramics. And then it ran aground here, Wen Long thought. Ah, no. The bottom of this ship has almost been completely shattered. It looks like it suffered a huge impact. He looks like he was attacked by something. Meow? While Wen Long was thinking about these questions, Catherine and Hai Tang also walked in. Mr. Cat, did you find anything? Hai Tang asked. No, I didn't find anything. There is no peach-haired beast king and there is nothing valuable. Unfortunately, I am still expecting to find some treasure or something. Meow. Wen Long said a little frustrated. Dong, dong, dong. However, at this moment, Wen Long suddenly heard the sound of something hitting the wooden board, which made Wen Long stop and prick up his ears. What's the matter? Mr. Cat? Be quiet. There seems to be some noise. As he said that, Wen Long made a quiet gesture. Oh, Catherine quickly closed her mouth. The sound of dong 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 sounded again. This time when Long quickly determined the location of the sound, which was above the deck of the big ship. There's something on top of this ship. Let's go up and have a look. Meow. Fortunately, there was a wooden staircase inside the cabin that had not rotted away. So when Long, Catherine, and Hai Tang hurriedly walked up the stairs to the upper deck of the ship to take a closer look. Oh meow. I finally found it. As soon as he got out of the cabin, Wen Long saw a huge, orangutan-like pink monster moving on the deck. The biggest difference from the orangutan was that this monster had a strange sky-high hairstyle on its head, which made it look particularly special. Swagger. Obviously this pink monster is the peach-haired beast king that Wen Long has been looking for. At this time, the peach-haired beast king was pacing slowly on the deck, looking like it was taking a leisurely walk. It also held a palm-sized colorful mushroom in its hand, biting it as it walked. Wen Long finally understood that the peach-haired beast king was foraging for food nearby. And because the hull of the shabby big ship is made of wood and it exists in this humid environment all year round, a lot of mushrooms grow on the hull, 
which naturally attracts the favor of the peach-haired beast king. As for the dong 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 sound just now, it was naturally the sound made by the huge body of the peach-haired beast king when it walked on the deck. At this time, Catherine and Haitang also walked onto the deck. When they saw the peach-haired beast king, they immediately took out their weapons and got ready for battle. Is Mr. Cat the peach-haired beast king we are looking for? Catherine asked. Well, that's right. When Long said to Haitang while answering Catherine's question, Little girl, have you ever fought against the peach-haired beast king? Meow? No. Haitang has never seen the peach-haired beast king before. Haitang said truthfully. Well, since you're not familiar with it, you can't go in from the front like you did in the Thundering Sand Sea before. The little girl will support me from behind later. Oh, by the way, there's also you stupid woman. Stay here and don't move. I don't need your help in this battle. Meow. Wen Long said to Hai Tang and Catherine respectively. Hey, why? Catherine expressed confusion. Wen Long didn't explain. He just drew out his two swords and then quickly rushed towards the peach-haired beast king. The alert peach Mao beast king soon discovered that Wen Long was approaching quickly. In fact, when Wen Long and others first appeared on the deck, the peach-haired beast king had already become quite concerned about these unruly guests who were disturbing his meal. Feeling disgusted, now that an Aluma dared to come forward to die, the peach-haired beast king was naturally angry. Ouch! 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 The peach-haired beast king roared wildly, and then rushed towards Wen Long. And its sharp claws were much stronger and faster than the previous Sandalong beast. For such a peach-haired beast king, Wen Long naturally did not dare to neglect. He swallowed the force-moving medicine that he had prepared in one gulp. Wen Long also took advantage of his speed. The moment the peach-haired beast king swung his claws, Wen Long dodged slightly, and then dodged by a hair's breadth. Little girl, it's up to you. Meow. While dodging, Wen Long suddenly shouted. Hai Tang behind him quickly understood what Wen Long meant. She raised her hand and shot an arrow, aiming at the head of the peach Mao beast king. However, because he was concerned about Hai Tang's safety, Wen Long asked Hai Tang to stand at a relatively safe distance to provide support. In such a long-distance situation, even long-range weapons such as hunting bows would have greater power and speed. The reduction in amplitude makes it easier to avoid. This is also true for the peach-haired beast king. The strength of the arrow shot from a distance has been reduced by half. So the peach-haired beast king easily blocked the arrows shot by Hai Tang with his sharp claws and knocked them aside. But this was enough for one long. In just a short moment, the Tao Mao Beast King used his claws to deflect the arrows shot by Hai Tang, and also created a good opportunity for Wen Long. Because the Peach Haired Beast King used his left claw to deflect Hai Tang's arrow, Wen Long also seized the opportunity to jump onto the Peach Haired Beast King's left arm, and then jumped onto the Peach Haired Beast King's back. Then he slashed directly at the neck of the Peach Haired Beast King. Oh meow! Go to H! L! Meow! Hey. by the intense pain, and then extended his claws behind him to attack Wen Long. But Wen Long jumped off the body of the peach herring beast king one step early, and then rolled to the side. Chapter 169 Melee peach haired Beast King 2. Wen Long's round of attacks only left two shallow blood marks on the neck of the Tao Mao Beast King, because it did not cut off the peach haired Beast King's neck artery. It was not considered a fatal injury. The reason why the scars of the two swords were so shallow was not because Wen Long did not try his best, but because Wen Long was currently using the weapons used to deal with the peach haired beast king are really not up to par. The equipment Wen Long is currently using is the suit of the yellow speed dragon king that was previously made by Master Luo in Mij Bolton. The weapon is naturally the Ring Scale War Blade, also made of the materials of the Huang Speed Dragon King. Compared to the peach haired beast king whose level is as high as 20, the Ring Scale War Blade is only a level 10 weapon. Even with Master Luo's technical bonus, the weapon level can reach up to level 14, which is still 6 levels away from the level of the Peach Haired Beast King. It can be said that the current Wenlong is very lucky to use the Ring Scale War Blade to chop the Peach Haired Beast King without being hit by the knife. As for causing fatal injuries to the Peach Haired Beast King in a short time, it is even more unthinkable. Things. After all, it's the peach-haired beast king. Even his neck is so hard. And my current ring-scale war blade is indeed a bit worse. Otherwise it wouldn't have only caused this kind of damage. Meow. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, this ring-scale war blade doesn't rely on one fatal blow to kill the enemy. 
Although Wen Long had already realized that the ring scale war blade could not easily cause fatal injuries to the Peach Mount Beast King, Wen Long did not give up. On the contrary, Wen Long still looked confident. The reason is the special attribute of this ring scale war blade. The paralysis effect, just like the double knife, Kinji Aosha, made from the material of the big strange bird has fire attribute attacks because it uses the fire bag of the big strange bird. The ring scale war blade, made from the material of Huang Sulong King also uses Huang Su Dragon King's paralysis bag full of paralyzing venom and sharp paralyzing fangs, naturally inherited Huang Su Dragon King's ability to paralyze prey. Therefore, although Wen Long's two swords did not cause fatal damage to Tao Mao Beast King, as long as Wen Long can cut the opponent's skin, the paralyzing venom contained in the double swords, ring scale war blade, can enter Tao Mao in the blood of the Beast King. This venom will suddenly attack after accumulating to a certain extent in the body of the peach-haired Beast King, causing the peach-haired Beast King to fall into a state of total paralysis. In addition, an important skill that comes with the Huangsu Dragon King suit is Special Attack Plus 2, and this so-called Special Attack Plus 2 actually means that special effects such as paralysis, poisoning, and sleep can be increased by two levels. In other words, while wearing the entire Huangsu Dragon King suit, when Long's paralysis effect using the Ring Scale War Blade actually reached level 16. The advantage of dual swords is that they are fast and attack frequently. Under such circumstances, the paralysis toxins in the body of the attacked object will accumulate much faster than ordinary weapons. Plus, with the special attack plus 2 skill, even if the peach haired beast king probably won't be able to hold on for long. Meow. It is precisely because Wen Long has such confidence in his weapons that even if each knife can only cause slight damage, Wen Long does not feel panic at all. Instead, he continues to deal with the peach haired beast king, cleverly using his body's flexibility to attack. The peach haired beast king dodged left and right, and then took advantage of the moment when the peach haired beast king's attack failed to stab the peach haired beast king twice. Sometimes these two knives are pierced on the arm of the peach haired beast king, and sometimes they are pierced on the back of the peach haired beast king. However, no matter which part of the peach haired beast king is hit, the paralyzing toxin can pass through the ring scales. The paralyzing fangs on the war blade were injected into the body of the peach for beast king from the open wound. As for Hai Tang, she stood in the distance and continued to support Wen Long with arrows, interfering with the peach haired beast king's attack on Wen Long, and also creating opportunities for Wen Long to counterattack. It can be said that although the situation faced by Wen Long is quite dangerous, the situation is tilting in Wenlong's favor. The longer time passes, the closer it is to victory for Wenlong. However, Catherine, who was watching the battle from the sidelines, did not think so. From Catherine's point of view, Wenlong seemed to be in a very unfavorable situation. After all, Wenlong's double swords failed to cut through the muscles of the Taomao Beast King several times. The skin was open so much that even the blood flowing from the wound was pitiful. So several times, Catherine wanted to help Wenlong. But when she remembered that Wen Long had advised her not to move, Catherine could only endure it for the time being. Standing there and watching Wen Long continue to fight with the Taomao Beast King, time continued to pass. And unknowingly, the Chinese dragon struck a few more times on the body of the peach haired Beast King. Well, it adds up to almost a dozen knives. Right. A few more knives should be enough to put this peach haired Beast King into a paralyzed state. Once it enters the paralyzed state, it will be slaughtered by me. Meow. Just as Wen Long was thinking this, suddenly the peach haired beast king's belly bulged, and his already big belly swelled up like a balloon. This move is exactly one of peach haired beast king's special moves abdominal assault, which raises his abdomen in a short time and hardens it instantly enough to deflect the opponent's weapon attacks. Oops! At this moment, Wen Long felt something was wrong, but it was already too late to put the knife away. As a result, the ring scale war blade which was originally not sharp enough, struck right at the belly of the peach hair beast king, and what was heard was two crisp sounds. Ping! Ping! As if it was struck on an object harder than steel. The ring-scaled war blade in Wenlong's hand was instantly bounced away, and Wenlong himself was bounced back several times due to the huge reaction force. He almost fell to the ground. Mr. Cat! Seeing this scene, Catherine finally couldn't help it anymore. She took a few steps in succession, then raised the big sword in her hand and struck him with a vertical slash move. Stupid woman. What are you doing? Meow. Wolong shouted. Boom. A huge sound sounded. 
the big sword in Catherine's hand, did not hit the peach-haired beast. This smart creature gave up the pursuit of the unbalanced one long at the last moment. Instead, it used its forelimbs to move towards, he ran away from behind. As for Catherine's sword, it was natural that it struck the deck of this broken ship. At the same time as the huge sound sounded, the sound of more pieces of wood shattering also sounded around Wenlong. And then like a chain reaction, Wenlong's feet began to shake. It turned out that under the impact of Catherine's sword, the already somewhat decayed deck finally completely collapsed. Chapter 170 Melee Peach-Haired Beast King 3. When the entire deck began to collapse, not only Wenlong, but also Catherine and the Town Owl Beast King were not spared. Only Hai Kang, who was standing in the distance, jumped back in time and grabbed the edge of the ship. Been affected? After all, this ship is too old, and the deck is mostly in a state of decay. As a result, Catherine's blow directly caused the entire deck to completely collapse. And then Wenlong, Catherine, and the Town Owl Beast King all lost their feet in an instant. He lost his balance and fell from the deck. As an Elu Cat, Wen Long has excellent control over maintaining balance in the air. So Wen Long regained his body's balance when he was halfway down. And then when he landed, Wen Long still maintained the normal posture of a feline. The landing method, with all four limbs landing at the same time, shared the impact of falling from a height. So it was not greatly affected. Also able to maintain balance in the air is this peach-haired beast king. His strong limbs also have strong jumping ability in normal times. In the past, he often jumped up and down from high places. He also has the same knowledge on how to buffer the impact of falling from high places. He was very knowledgeable. So when he landed on the ground, the peach-haired beast king was basically not affected. But Catherine was different. Because she had no experience in falling from high places. Catherine in midair was almost dragged down by a sword that was much heavier and denser than her own weight. Moreover, Catherine kept tightly holding the big sword in her hand and did not know how to adjust her posture in the air. As a result, the center of gravity of the entire body was on the upper body. So when she landed, her upper body landed first. The result was a very tragic way of landing on her face. Hit the ground. Ouch! It hurts. Although the landing was very tragic, Catherine stood up quickly. After all, in the humid environment of the Conbell wetland, the ground was covered with wet soil, which was relatively soft. But Catherine's face and body were inevitably covered with mud, and she looked really embarrassed. This scene reminded when long of a sentence someone said, Every woman was once an angel with broken wings and landed in the mortal world. But some women landed face first. Oh meow! Some people really choose to land on their faces. But even after falling like this, their appearance is not damaged. After all, their faces are all natural and have not been plastic surgery. They just need to be stronger. Meow! Mr. Cat, the peach-haired beast king is running away. At this moment, Wen Long heard the reminder from Hai Tang, turned around and found that the peach-haired beast king was indeed escaping. Oops, it will be troublesome to let it escape. This Kunbuyer wetland is so big. Where will we find it? Meow? So Wen Long, who was thinking this way, hurriedly chased after him, when he saw that the peach-haired beast king was about to escape from the hole at the bottom of the cabin. Wen Long took out a dive ball from his pocket and then pointed it at the peach-haired beast king. Throw it over. Snapped. The dying ball hit the peach-haired beast king accurately and exploded the moment it hit the peach-haired beast king's body. The pink dye inside splashed on the peach-haired beast king's body, leaving an obviously large mark. At this time, the peach-haired beast king had also escaped. And then he jumped directly to a big tree with a strong leap and then jumped again. The powerful jumping ability actually allowed the peach-haired beast king to jump over a poisonous swamp, and then headed towards after running a certain distance ahead. They disappeared without a trace. I'm sorry, Mr. Cat. The peach-haired beast king ran away. Catherine immediately apologized to Wenlong. Catherine knew that she had been too impulsive just now and smashed the deck, giving the peach-haired beast king an opportunity. Otherwise, the peach-haired beast king might not have run away so easily. I told you not to take action. I can handle the situation just now. Forget it. I'm already on the dive ball anyway. It's not too difficult to find the peach-haired beast king. Wen Long he spread his hands and didn't mean to blame Catherine too much. After all, Wen Long also knew that Catherine was suddenly impulsive just to help him. Dying ball? I seem to have heard you talk about this thing. Mr. Cat. But how to use it? Catherine asked again. Stupid woman. You will know later. 
Let's catch up first. Otherwise, we will be in trouble if the peach-haired beast king runs away. Meow. Under the leadership of Wenlong, Catherine and Hai Tang also began to look for traces of the escaped Taomao beast king. According to Wenlong's last sighting, the peach-haired beast king should have jumped over a poisonous swamp and then disappeared into a long reed behind the poisonous swamp. Now Wenlong brought Catherine and Hai Tang to this reed. Among the bushes, it was easy to find the pink liquid spilled on the ground. You see? These pink liquids are the liquid inside the dyed ball. Once the liquid sticks to the monster, it cannot be removed in a short time. Moreover, it is easy to leave these pink stains on the path it walks, which is very conspicuous. Meow. Wenlong explained to Catherine. Well, this pink liquid seems to have a very strong smell. Even before she got close to the pink liquid, Catherine could clearly feel a pungent smell. Yes, this is also to better track prey. After all, sometimes the location of these scattered liquids will be very hidden, and it is not easy to see it simply with the eyes. So as long as there is a strong enough and easily identifiable smell, even if instead of judging with your eyes, you can also smell the direction in which the monster is escaping through your nose. Meow. After saying that, Wenlong took a sharp breath and then said, Follow me quickly. That peach-haired beast king is heading this way. Meow. Along the way, Wenlong continued to follow the traces of pink liquid to find the past. Even if he encountered a poisonous swamp or other reasons that caused the traces of pink liquid to be interrupted, Wenlong could still follow the smell wafting from the wind. The pursuit of the peach-haired beast king continues. After a while, Wenlong finally found the peach-haired beast king. It was an open area. And besides the peach-haired beast king, there were actually a group of small peach-haired beasts surrounding it. Damn it! This peach-haired beast king knew he was in danger and actually ran back to his original group. Now hunting will be much more difficult. Meow! Seeing the small peach-haired beast surrounding the peach-haired beast king, Wenlong knew that the best opportunity to hunt the peach-haired beast king had passed. Now, he could only rely on his strength to clean up the surrounding small peach-haired beasts. Mr. Cat! Let me go first! I won't miss this time! Catherine said to Wenlong at the beginning. On the one hand, this is because Catherine still feels a little guilty for messing up things just now, and wants to make amends. On the other hand, it is because Catherine saw the battle between Wenlong and Taomao Beast King, and her own hands became itchy, and she couldn't help but think he wants to compete with the peach-haired Beast King.